It was cold and dark with only the street lights giving any kind of guidance for me. The wind blew, picking up the remains of the leaves from the ground, making my body shiver. The only piece of clothing that I have on is a tank top and shorts. I don't think it was a wise choice to wear this outside. But who would think I would be out at this time? Not me, that's for sure. Suddenly, I heard a noise coming from the woods. I don't know what my parents were thinking, moving close to a forest or halfway around the world per se, but I didn't have a choice really. The noise sounded like an animal ready to kill. I had a weird feeling in the back of my mind telling me to get back in the house, but I didn't acknowledge the thought. Walking into the woods has probably been the most ludicrous thing I have ever done in my life. I have no phone, flashlight, or anything. I could barely see where my feet were landing or my hands in front of me. As I walked deeper into the woods, it seemed more absurd that I would walk out here alone. The only audible sound I can hear is the owls hooting and a waterfall not too far from where I was heading. The night sky wasn't giving me any sort of contentment as I walked through the woods. The full moon gracefully followed me as I walked and that was probably the only source of light I seemed to have. A snap of a tree branch had me whip my head around to see what was following me. Looking around frantically, I didn't seem to find the culprit behind the noise. I slowly turned around and walked forward to who knows where. All of a sudden, the same noise came again, along with a growling sound. I became even more scared and couldn't turn around to go back home. I didn't know my way around the woods, so it would be impossible to find a different way to leave. I could feel the air around me change to an unpleasant feeling. Taking small but quick steps forward, I didn't dare turn around because I knew I wouldn't believe what would be standing in front of me. Have you heard the saying, curiosity killed the cat? Well, here I am all alone in the woods with no guidance from anyone. You would think that would be the only mistake I've made tonight. No. I turned around and my eyes widened. There standing was a wolf. A wolf. What the heck? I mean, I know anything creature-like can be lurking among the woods, but a wolf was out of the question. I took a step back only for the wolf to bare its teeth at me. I froze, not knowing what to do. The wolf was big with gray fur. What stood out to me though was its eyes. They were a light brown color. It was beautiful, the wolf took a step closer to me. I stiffened. What am I going to do? Would this wolf hurt me? I looked around widely. Would it eat me? Stay wolfy. Don't hurt me. I said, backing up against a tree. The wolf stopped and looked at me, tilting its head to the side. Could it understand me? That's ridiculous. I thought. Are you going to hurt me? I asked. The wolf whined, taking a step forward towards me as if it weren't going to hurt me. Now I'm going crazy. I'm talking to a wolf for crying out loud. I cautiously moved towards the wolf with my hand out. I didn't know whether I should or shouldn't. I hesitated to take another step towards the beautiful creature. The wolf moved along with me, noticing my hesitation, and rested its head on my outstretched hand. I smiled at the sudden movement and slowly patted the wolf's head. It stuck its tongue out wagging its tail. I knelt down and the wolf followed. I rested my arms on the wolf while laying my head on my hands. I know I should be scared of this wolf because at any given moment he could snap and kill me. But something about this wolf told me it wouldn't hurt me. I felt safe with it. As of this moment, I knew moving to England would change my life for good. I woke up to the sun shining in my face. Looking around, I knew I wasn't in my soft and warm bed. No. I was in the woods. Confused, I stood up looking around, trying to figure out what had brought me to the woods in the first place. Flashes of events that happened last night came into view. A wolf. I started to look around for it, but nothing. I was shocked thinking that the wolf didn't kill me. Although I felt safe being near him. With all the thoughts running through my head, I made it out of the woods, walking up to my house. I felt like I was being watched, but when I turned around, nothing was there. I was feeling kinda scared now. I cautiously turned around and raised my hand to knock on the door, seeing that I didn't have my keys. But as I was about to knock, the door flung open with my frantic mom looking all over my face. Annabelle. Oh my gosh, you're okay, where did you go?
She shouted at me. I didn't like lying to my mom, but should I tell her about what I saw in the woods? A voice in my head told me not to and that's what I did. She wouldn't believe it anyway. Uh, I, I just went outside for fresh air. I told her nervously. And why do you look so dirty? She asked, ignoring what I had just said. Go up and take a shower. You have school in the morning. We still have to get some more of your school supplies. Did you forget that? She asked me accusingly. How could I forget? I'm going to a new school and I hate starting over. Something always happens to me. If it's not me embarrassing myself, it's someone else doing it for me. I shook my head and walked into the house, going to my room. I took out some clothes and rested them on my bed. I don't know what time it is, but it's probably late in the day since she was acting like that. I walked into the bathroom, stripping down and turning on the water at a warm temperature. Stepping in the shower, I let the water fall down my body, washing off all the dirt from me. Thoughts of last night came rushing into my mind. I don't know if I was delusional to think about a wolf, but something about that wolf made me feel strange. It made me feel like I was safe and belonged with the wolf. I shook my head and got out of the bathroom after 20 minutes. Wrapping a towel around me, I walked back into my room and dried myself. I put on my clothes and left my hair to air dry. It would turn curly anyway. Annabelle, are you done? It's already 5 o'clock. I don't want the store to close. I heard my mom say from downstairs. 5 o'clock? What time did I get home? I sighed and walked down the stairs where my mom was waiting for me. Ready? I said softly. Okay, good. Let's go. I think that's everything. My mom said more to herself. I nodded and took the bags from her hand since she was struggling. I'm hungry. Can we go get something to eat? I asked her. She nodded. Sure. There is a restaurant that we passed a while ago. She said. We walked to the car and put the stuff in the trunk. Mom? Where's Dad? I asked. I didn't see him when I came into the house. He went to go find a job. He left early this morning though. She said, glancing at me and looking back at the road. I sat back and looked out the window. Why did we have to move to such a place that gets very cold when fall comes around? Soon we were at a restaurant or more like a cafe. It was small but looked well put together. My mom and I both got out and walked up to the door, opening it. Walking inside the door made a ding sound signaling someone came in. A very perky girl who looked to be about 5 feet 2 inches walked up to us. She had brown shoulder length hair and was wearing a red and white shirt with black pants. Hi. My name is Jessica and I'll be your waiter today. She said happily. I'm not sure if she has to act that way because of the job she's doing, but it's adorable. She showed us to our seats and took down our order. I'll be right back with your orders. She said. I smiled slightly at her and she was off to another table. Do you think I could get a job here? I asked my mom. You mean in this restaurant? Sure, I don't see why not. I wasn't particularly talking about this place, but I guess it would do. I would like to do something in the afternoon when I'm finished with school. Going home really isn't fun, seeing as I have nothing to do there. Jessica came back and put our food in front of us. Thanks. I said quietly. No problem. She said and walked away. She seems nice, maybe you can best friend her since you're new here. My mom said. I shook my head, smiling at her. My mother would always care about where it would hurt. But I love her to pieces. If I were to lose her, I wouldn't have a clue on what to do. As we finished up our food, we called for the check and left a tip for Jessica being as she was a nice waiter. When I reached home it was half past eight. I went straight to my room and plopped on my bed, not bothering to change my clothes. Tomorrow would be a tiring day and I would be in for a lot. I woke up to the sound of my mother screaming. Annabelle, wake up, you have school. She said, walking into my room. I groaned. Can't I just stay home? I said, hoping she would say yes. It never came. No, don't make me have to come back in here. She said, looking at me seriously. 
I sighed and got up as she left my room. I took out my clothes, which were unfortunately the uniform of the school I was going to. Once I got those out, I made my way to the bathroom and started to take a shower. After I was done, I brushed my teeth and blow dried my hair. I put on my clothes and started to pack my bag. I should have done this last night but I was too tired to do anything. When I was done with everything, I made my way downstairs to the kitchen where my mom and dad were. My mom was making eggs and bacon. Morning. I said grumpily to my parents. Morning, kiddo. Ready for a great day at school? My dad asked. I rolled my eyes. I would rather sleep in my bed all day. I said. My mom chuckled and put a plate of food in front of me. Eat up, sweetie. I'll take you to school. She said. I nodded and started to eat. I love my mom's cooking and so does my dad. This is his second plate. I smiled to myself and got myself a glass of orange juice. I put my dirty dishes in the sink and got my bag. Finished. I said. My mom nodded and kissed my dad on his forehead. See you later, dad. I called to him when I reached the front door. Have a great day at school. He said, and with that my mom and I were out of the house. As my mom pulled up in the school parking lot, I couldn't help but let my jaw hit the floor, literally. This school could pass for a castle at least. Jeesh. Mom, where are you sending me? I asked her. She smiled. I asked around and people said this was a good school, and with the grades you have, I'm sure you'll be just fine. She said, smiling at me. I slightly smiled back and opened the car door. Don't forget I'll pick you up after school. She said. I nodded and closed the door. I watched as my mom sped off down the road and I turned to the school. People were curiously watching me as I walked inside the school. Man, I hate attention. It's not something I look for when going to school or anywhere, actually. I avoided anyone who was looking at me, which was basically everyone. All I need to do is find the main office. Hi. Someone said, walking in front of me. I stared at the person in front of me, recognizing the girl from the restaurant. Maybe her personality really is preppy and happy. Hi. I greeted her back. You're the girl who was at the cafe, right? She asked. I nodded. Well, I'm Jessica and you are. Annabelle. Pretty name. She said. I nodded and smiled at her. Thanks. So, I'm guessing you're new here, she asked with a hint of hope in her voice. I chuckled slightly. Sure, but I really need to find the main office, I said. Oh, it's right there, she said, pointing to my left. I smiled sheepishly. Thanks. I walked to the front desk to be greeted by an old lady with a smile on her face. Can I help you, dear? She asked me. Yes. Um, my name is Annabelle Thompson and I would like to get my schedule? I asked. Oh, yes, here you go, sweetie. You have your locker number and combination on your schedule. I hope you like it here. She said. I smiled and walked out to be greeted by a smiling Jessica. Let me see your schedule. Was the first thing she said to me. I gave her the piece of paper to hear a squeal from her. We have four classes together, first period being one of them. She said, giving me back my schedule. I looked at the piece of paper, seeing that I had calculus first. Lead the way. Jessica talked all the way from the main office to our calculus class. And that's saying something. Calculus is on the other side of the school from what I noticed. She told me about all the do's and don'ts, who to hang out with, all the groups in the school, and who to avoid. Sometimes I found myself ignoring her because I just couldn't care for the things she talked about. I never really had any friends. I was always by myself because that's what I wanted. The thought of interacting with someone my age never really crossed my mind. I never really cared for it that much. And lastly do not talk or even stare at Nicolae O'Connell. I looked at her. Why? I asked out of curiosity. 
He is bad news. Don't even go near his friend Luke. They are dangerous and you don't want to get involved with them. Anything can happen when you start to hang around them. Jessica said. And how would you know that? I asked. Everyone around here knows it. Not that many people talk to them, but they respect them for some odd reason. If you happen to talk to them you should feel lucky. I nodded. Soon enough, we were standing in front of calculus class. Jessica opened the door and everyone seemed to stop what they were doing and looked at the two of us. And why are you late, Miss Bell? I presumed it was the teacher. Wait, Bell? He couldn't be talking to me. Ah, uh, Jessica. I was just showing Annabelle around. She's new. She said to the teacher. Suddenly, I looked like a deer caught in the headlights. The teacher turned his gaze on me. Oh, yes, Annabelle. Annabelle Thompson, right? I nodded. I am Mr. Ford, and welcome to Calculus. He said with a slight smile. Would you like to introduce yourself to the class? He asked. I took a glance towards the class and back at the teacher. No. I think I'll pass, I said politely. He nodded. That's okay, you can take a seat next to Jessica. He said. Jessica was in the second to last row in the back and I was glad because I was never a fan of sitting in front of class. I am a very shy person. Twenty minutes into class, the door slammed open. I didn't bother looking up. It's probably just some kid that's late to class. Ah, uh, it's nice of you to join us, O'Connell. I heard Mr. Ford say. That name sounds familiar. O'Connell. Oh, Nicoly. The boy Jessica was telling me about. I slowly looked up to see the most gorgeous guy ever. Okay, well, that's cliché. He was good looking all right. He was tall, probably six feet two inches, and he was wearing the school uniform. For a school that has to wear uniforms, this boy surely looked hot in it. You could see his muscles through his shirt. I couldn't help but feel an attraction to him. As my eyes roamed the rest of his body, his eyes met mine. I gasped and raised my eyebrows. His face was just as gorgeous as the rest of his body. But that's not what caught my attention. His eyes looked so familiar. I looked at Jessica and she confirmed my thought of that being Nicoly O'Connell. I know he's hot, right, but don't fall for it. He has girls wrapped around his finger. I nodded. Quick question, he's not from here, right? I mean he looks different from everyone else. I hope that didn't sound mean. I said quietly. Oh, no, it's fine. A lot of guys wish they were him, seeing that all the girls drool over him. He moved here a few years ago with his family. People say that he has other people living with him and his parents, but they all go to different schools. She said. I nodded and turned my attention back to the boy I couldn't take my eyes off of. You may go and take your seat now. Mr. Ford said to Nicoly. I watched as he walked down the aisle of desks. Even his walk was sexy. I shook my head at that thought. I can't betray Jessica. She's the only friend I have so far. All the girls started to fix their hair and stick out their chests. How attractive. Note the sarcasm. I prayed that he didn't see the empty seat next to me. Something about him made me feel a weird feeling in the pit of my stomach. I have bad luck sometimes and this is one of those times. He sat right next to me and smirked. I glanced at him and that was a mistake. I couldn't take my eyes away from him. As funny as this sounds, I felt a part of me becoming complete. Nicholas POV The minute I stepped foot in school I knew I was going to be in hell. School just wastes my time. But knowing that I need an education to be successful in life, I might as well come. I barely do any work, but when I do, I'm satisfied with the grade I get. As I walked down the hall, there were some kids that were roaming around. I knew I was late and I didn't care. There are better things that I could be doing. A girl came out of her class. Not just any girl, but Jenny Webster. She is the queen bitch of this school and my girlfriend. On and off, that is. Sometimes I wonder why I go out with her. Well, if it isn't the macho man himself. 
she said, walking towards me. I'm not in the mood, Jenny. I said, walking past her. Oh come on, I want to have a little fun, maybe I can cheer you up. She said, walking in front of me. I shook my head. I thought we'd broken up? I asked her, playing the innocent card. She giggled, walking closer to me. Oh, baby, you know I didn't mean what I said, I'm sorry. Jenny confessed, poking out her chest even more to distract me. I chuckled inwardly. I walked up to her, making her back up against the lockers. Putting my hand on each side of her head on the locker, I spoke low and clear. Are you really? I asked, leaning closer to her. She moaned and I smirked. Please? She begged. I laughed softly. No, I said and walked away from her. You can't stay away from me forever. I heard her say. I turned around and watched her lean off of the lockers. Watch me. And with that I walked away again, going to my class. Finally reaching my first period class, which is calculus, I sighed and opened the door. I was very late, seeing that I came to school late and Jenny held me back. Ah, it's nice of you to join us, O'Connell. Mr. Ford said. If he wasn't in my pack my father's I mean, I would have ripped his throat out for disrespecting me. Pack, you may ask. I'm a werewolf, soon to be alpha, once my father steps down. Are you sure you want to disrespect me? I asked, using the mind link. I know there are people in here who belong to my pack and could hear what I'm saying, but I didn't care. They knew not to cross the line with me and if they ever did, they would have to deal with the consequences. No, sir, you can't be late to class even if you're going to be elf or not. You need your education. He said. I growled at him, getting frustrated. He's testing my patience and that's something you should never do. You can't tell me what I should and shouldn't do. Who the hell do you think you are? I said. Calm down, I didn't mean anything by it. Mr. Ford said shakily. I took a deep breath and tried to calm down even though I was still angry. You better watch what you say to me. You hear me? I said. Yes, sir. I know he's hot, right, but don't fall for it. He has girls wrapped around his finger. I heard someone say from the back of the classroom. Being a werewolf has its perks. I can hear, see, and smell things from far away. I knew that voice, though. Jessica O'Connell. She's probably talking to some girl about me. My dear sister doesn't like to be seen with me outside of the pack house. In school, she doesn't want anyone to know that we're related. I don't know why though. I'm sexy. But telling people bad things about me seems to be her comfort. Quick question. He's not from here, right? I mean he looks different from everyone else. I hope that didn't sound mean. A soft voice said. It sent shivers through my body. A look of confusion came across my face. But I didn't think too much of it. This conversation my sister seemed to be having was quite interesting. Oh, no, it's fine. A lot of guys wish they were him, seeing that all the girls drool over him. He moved here a few years ago with his family. People say that he has other people living with him and his parents, but they all go to different schools. My sister said. I wanted to laugh, but held it in. It's funny how her mind works. Dude, why are you still standing there? Sit down. I heard Luke say to me through Mindlink. He's my best friend and will be my beta when I become alpha. I looked around and spotted Luke giving me a weird look. He is probably the only person who could talk to me like that. I've known him since we were in diapers and I would be a hypocrite if I treated him differently because of my soon-to-be title. You may go and take your seat now. Mr. Ford said. Walking down the aisle of desks, I spotted my sister. She had that please-don't-say-anything look on her face. I sat down next to an unfamiliar girl who was sitting next to my sister. This must be who Jessica was telling all these lies to. The girl looked at me and I stiffened. The only thing that mattered in this room was her. If the class was quiet before, it is certainly silent now. This girl is the one who would make me do anything just to see her with a smile on her face every day. I would die before anything or anyone harms her in any way. She is my everything. 
I looked at my sister who was doing her work. A smirk made its way to my face. My little mate is probably friends with her. But something looks very familiar about this girl. Oh, fuck. I was with her in the woods. I watched every five minutes to see when class would be over. The impatient side of me was getting worse by the minute. I have never felt so creeped out in my life. Nikoli wouldn't stop staring at me all period and I was getting frustrated. It's like he doesn't blink. I wonder if he has a disorder. His staring wasn't uncomfortable. I was actually feeling calm but my mind was telling me a different story. I don't know what's going on, but something weird is happening to me. Feeling attracted to a boy I have no clue about is scaring me. All the more reason for me to leave this class, right? When the bell rang, Jessica turned to tell me something but I didn't wait to listen. I sprinted out of that class and down the hall to find my next class. English. I don't have a clue on where it is, but I'll find it. Five minutes later and I'm still trying to find this bloody class. I should sue this school for being so big. Yeah, I know, stupid, but I'm serious. I heard footsteps behind me but I kept on walking. Maybe I should ask them for help. When I turned around, there he was. Nicolee O'Connell. On second thought, I could just keep walking and find my class myself. Not even a second later, I felt a hand on my arm. I shuddered at the feeling it gave me. I looked at my hand confused and back at Nicoli. He just looked at me with a possessiveness in his eyes. His eyes. They held something that I couldn't quite put my finger on but I shook it off. Is there a reason why you're holding my arm? I said awkwardly. He didn't say anything but pulled me closer to him. I gasped, taken aback by his actions. He rested his head on my shoulder. My heart started to beat faster. MHM, you smell good, he said. Oh God. His voice is so sexy and deep. Wait. What? No. I tried pulling away from him, but his grip was too strong. Can you let me go, please? I asked shakily. He leaned closer and slowly planted a kiss on my neck. If he wasn't holding me, I would drop to my knees. You taste like strawberries. My favorite. He breathed out. I bit back a moan. What is he doing to me? Who is this boy? I don't know what he's doing, but my body isn't supposed to react to him like this. It's scaring me to no end. The thought of Jessica and what I promised her came to mind. Do not talk or even stare at Nicolie O'Connell. It was as if I could hear her like she was standing next to me. Somehow, I felt like I had betrayed her already. I need to leave. I, I have to go. I said, finally being able to pull away from Nicolie. Suddenly, I felt cold and empty. Shaking my head, I glanced at him. Did he ever smile? I wonder if his smile is as sexy as the R and O. I stopped myself before I could think anymore. Nicoli pulled me back to his chest. He's really warm, well, more like hot. Mine. He growled. My eyes widened. I dismissed the growling sound and ripped away from his grip. Yours? I am no one's property. I yelled, getting angry. He looked surprised for a moment before a hard stare was set on his face. You are mine. Understand that? He said lowly in my ear. A strange feeling was set at the pit of my stomach at his closeness, but I stood my ground. I belong to no one. Does it look like I have a stamp plastered on my forehead that says? Property of Nicoli O'Connell. I don't think so. I said, getting worked up. He growled again but his eyes were black. Pulling me by my shirt, he backed me up against the lockers. Say my name again. He demanded, resting his body on mine. I bit my lip from letting out an embarrassing sound. Why? I asked, confused. Because you would be saying my name a lot. Nicoli said in a husky voice. Nicoli said in a husky voice. He lowered his mouth to kiss me but someone stopped him. What are you doing? The person said. It was a girl's voice and for a minute I thought it was Jessica. When I looked over Nicolie's shoulder, 
I saw a girl with too much makeup plastered on her face wearing the school uniform shorter than it was supposed to be. Her chest could fall out of that shirt at any given moment and her skirt was way too high, almost showing her butt. Nikoli growled softly. Why does he keep doing that? What do you want? He asked in a menacing voice, turning around to the girl. I want to know why you're about to suck this girl's face. She asked, looking at me in disgust. I looked down at my feet. What am I doing? Was I really about to kiss him? I couldn't have. I shouldn't. That's none of your business. We broke up, remember? Nikoli said. This is his ex-girlfriend. Oh, crap. She looked like she could snap my neck at any given moment. I may seem tough, but I never got into a fight. I never needed to. I never bothered anyone. No, no, we didn't. I said I was sorry. You can't leave me and definitely not for that trash. She said. I flinched. Maybe I should just go. I slowly slipped out from under Nikoli and walked away quickly to the corner of the hallway. Was he just using me as a rebound because he broke up with his girlfriend? I felt a little sad, but it didn't matter. I was nothing to him in the first place. I need to stay as far away from Nikoli as possible. This day just keeps getting weirder and it's not even the end of the day yet. The end of the day came slower than I hoped it would. I just wanted to get out of this school as soon as possible so I could go home and relax. I hated school so much. I was currently putting things away in my last period class, art. I can't draw, but I hope by the end of the school year, I can at least draw a tree. Yeah, I'm that bad. After helping the teacher, I slowly made my way to my locker, which I found during lunch with the help of Jessica. She has been helping me with school stuff and I'm really grateful to her for that. I would have been lost without her on my first day. My locker was close to the exit of the school and I was thankful for that. In any case, there's a fire, I could just make a run for it. Not that there's a risk of fire, but still. I heard someone calling my name and I prayed to God it wasn't Nikoli. Oh wait, he doesn't know my name except for Jessica and I hope it stays that way. I'm really not in the mood to talk to him right now. I unlocked my locker and took out all the books I needed to take home. Hey Annabelle. I heard Jessica say. After taking out my books, I closed and locked my locker. Hey. I said nervously. After having that encounter with Nikoli, I didn't want to see Jessica right now, or Nikoli, for that matter. I was never one to lie. If I did, you would see right through me. We made our way through the front doors of the school and walked out. What's wrong? Jessica asked me. See? I didn't even say anything yet and she already sensed it. Uh, nothing. Why do you ask? I said, playing with my fingers. I was trying to avoid eye contact with her. What happened? She asked again. We stopped and stood at the front gate of the parking lot. I shook my head. I never said anything was wrong. I'm fine. I said. She didn't seem convinced with my answer but dropped it. Hey, do you think you can get me a job at the cafe? I asked hopefully. I really would like to do something, seeing that I would be living here for a long time, I presumed and some extra money wouldn't hurt. Sure, I could put in a word for you with my manager. She said. I nodded gratefully and gave her a small smile. Thanks. From across the parking lot, I could see Nikoli staring at me intensely. He really needs to smile. It would probably make him less scary, but he still looked so hot. It wasn't fair. Jessica followed my gaze and glared at him. Don't get sucked into his trap, he's no good. She said. I suddenly felt guilty about what happened in the hallway in second period. I'm not. He just looks so intense. Does he ever smile? I asked, looking at him again. She shrugged. Probably not. The girl from this morning came out of the school. She had a scowl on her face. That's Jenny Webster. She is the slut of the school and Nicolie's girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. They are on and off sometimes. Jessica explained to me. Never get on her bad side, though. 
The girl, Jenny, stopped and looked at us. Uh-oh, this is bad. It's nice of you to talk about me, but keep my name out of your mouth. She said, glaring at Jessica. And you? She pointed at me. Stay away from my man or you'll regret it. She said and I looked at her speechless. What is she talking about, Annabelle? Jessica looked at me. She was having a make-out session with Nicoly. She needs to learn to keep her mouth away from what isn't hers. Jenny said. I never kissed him. I don't want to and if you so desperately want him, you can have him. He's all yours. He was never mine in the first place. I said. When I said that, I felt like my heart broke in half. But what's that all about? Jenny smiled at me. Glad you understand. Jessica, tell your brother to call me. Jenny said, smiling wickedly at her and walked away. I turned to Jessica. You're what? I asked. She sighed. Yeah, Nicoly is my brother. I looked at her. I felt betrayed to be honest. I felt so guilty about the encounter with Nicoly and all of this time she was hiding from me that he was her brother. So, I'm guessing the people living with him and his parents are you. I said, getting a little angry. I don't like being made a fool out of. How could you lie like that? Suddenly, I didn't feel so guilty about my encounter with Nicoly. I did it because I wanted you to be my friend. Every girl that becomes my friend only uses me to get to my brother. I thought it would be different with you. She said. I sighed. Look, I don't like your brother in the slightest. I don't know him, so it would be impossible for me to. I promise nothing could or would happen between me and your brother. I won't do that to you. I said. Again. I thought. Jessica is actually a good friend. She became friends with me and I think I should at least return the favor. She smiled. Great. I saw my mom pull up in the parking lot. I have to go. See you tomorrow. I said. She nodded and smiled. Okay, bye. This should be easy. All I have to do is stay clear of Nicoly and his crazy ex-girlfriend. What could possibly go wrong? I walked into the school being cautious of my actions. I didn't want to bump into Nicoly. Anything could happen and I don't want to do something I would regret. Something about Nicoly seems so familiar. The only thing I could think of was his eyes. It reminded me of the wolf I came in contact with in the woods, but it could be a coincidence. A lot of people have brown eyes, and maybe animals too. I looked from left to right and when I didn't see anyone, I walked to my locker. It may sound extreme, but I don't want to make Jessica think that I'm only her friend because of her brother. I'm not like that and would never want to be like that. I heard a chuckle from behind me. A body was pressed against mine. I shuddered and felt something only one person could make me feel. Were you looking for someone? Nicoly whispered in my ear. I opened my mouth to say something but closed it back. He backed away a little so I could close my locker. I turned around and came face to face with a smiling Nicoly. I was surprised, but looked at him with a blank expression on my face. He looked like a little boy who just got what he wanted for Christmas. I knew he looked better if he smiled. Uh, I was just leaving, I said, trying to move away from him. A frown came upon his face. You're avoiding me because of Jessica, aren't you? He asked, getting angry. I backed away a little. His nose flared and he clenched his fist. Don't you have a mind of your own? He asked. Suddenly, my mouth went dry. He looked at me like he was actually hurt because I was avoiding him. But why? Um, Jessica, who is your sister, happens to be my friend and I'm sorry if I'm trying not to mess it up. Now, if you excuse me, I have a class to get to. I said, trying to be confident. I walked past him only for him to pull me back. You'll come running to me soon. I guarantee you. He said. I can almost see him smirk from behind me. Him having good looks gives him one point in my book, 
but that big ego of his makes me want to take it back. Hey, babe. Jenny said, walking up to us. She had that fake smile on her face. I don't know how, but I seem to dislike her by the minute. She gave me a once-over and looked at me in the same way she did yesterday. Disgust. She then turned her attention to Nicolie. Don't give me that face, baby. She said. I took this as my time to leave. No, don't. Nicolie said to me, keeping his grip on me. Why are you so interested in her? Jenny whined. I thought you loved me. She said, trying to pout and give him a puppy face. I wanted to vomit. She looked constipated rather than cute. I guess I don't. I've got my eyes set on someone else. Nicoli said. I could feel his eyes on me. I didn't dare look at him. Nicoli walked off pulling me along with him. You would so pay for this? Jenny whispered, so only I could hear. I let Nicoli pull me to our first class. I just hoped Jessica wasn't there. As I walked in, everyone stopped what they were doing and looked at Nicoli and I. Maybe just Nicoli. I hoped so. Attention isn't really something I like very much. Jessica was glaring at me and looking at my hands still intertwined with Nicolie's. I pulled away and walked to my seat. Hi. I said to Jessica. She looked at me and turned her gaze to the front of the class. Great. She's mad. Now you want to talk to me. Just go hook up with my brother. She said without looking at me. It's not like that. I tried to explain. Oh yeah, tell me nothing is going on with you two because I know what I saw and probably the whole class saw you two holding hands just now. She said, getting agitated. Can I just explain this to you later please? I asked, not wanting to talk about this anymore. Fine, you have a lot of explaining to do. I nodded. It hasn't even been a full month yet with me in this school and I already have so much drama to deal with. Lunch couldn't go any slower. I was sitting at a table with Jessica explaining everything that happened with her brother yesterday and this morning. She was listening quietly. He said I would come running to him soon. I said as I finished telling her about this morning. Jessica didn't say anything for a while but just stared at me. Are you okay? I asked. Why yeah, just thinking about this situation here. She said shakily. I have a feeling she knows what's going on and I'm going to find out. I didn't push the matter any further, knowing that if I did, I wasn't going to like what I heard. It was quiet for a moment between us. All that was heard through the cafeteria was the noise of all the teenagers gossiping and having their own conversations. So, I asked my manager if you could get the job and he said you have to come and see him. Jessica said, changing the subject. Okay, thanks. Does it matter when? She shook her head. I nodded. Do you like my brother? She asked suddenly. What? Just yesterday she was telling me to stay away from him. This morning she was angry that Nicolie and I were holding hands and now she's asking me if I like him. She was so confusing. First you tell me. I started but she cut me off. No, no, I take it back. Forget everything I said. She exclaimed. I looked at her like she was crazy. Okay, but I don't want to. He creeps me out. I said. Jessica shook her head vigorously. You can't stay away from him forever. You're going to need him at some point and, trust me, you wouldn't want to wait very long. She said. Then I would take that chance if I have to. School ended rather quickly today. I figured I would go to the cafe and talk with the manager. Jessica and I were walking out the front doors when a husky voice spoke behind us. That voice could make me do anything that I didn't want to. My heart started to beat faster. We turned around and came face to face with Nicolie and his friend Luke. Hey, Jessica. Nicolie said. She didn't respond to him but only had a glare on her face. He looked at her confused and his gaze stopped on me. Tingles shot through my body as he looked at me. I gasped and looked away. And you are? He asked, stepping forward to me. 
He didn't even know my name, but he had the nerve to tell me I was his. I scoffed and ignored the feeling his stare was giving me. Annabelle. I said blankly. He looked at me for a while and smirked. Annabelle. He repeated. Oh, shit. My name rolled off his tongue perfectly. I bit my lip and played with the hem of my sweater. I knew I would embarrass myself. I would give anything for him to say my name again. I think I need to go to the doctor and get checked out. Something is definitely wrong with me. Luke was standing there with a smile on his face. What's he so happy about? I, I think I have to go. I said, looking at Nicoly. I couldn't seem to find the strength and look away. It was like Nicoly was a magnet and I was constantly pulled towards him. You think or you have to? He asked. My cheeks flushed and I stood there awkwardly. She means she has to go. Jessica said for the first time since we were standing here. She pulled me outside of the school and I looked back at Nicoly only to see him with a dark expression on his face. What's the matter with you? I asked Jessica. She looked at me and back at her hand. Did you see the way you were acting in front of Nicoly? She asked. How was I acting? I wasn't acting in any kind of way. I was simply talking to him. I said. Not that, the way you acted, I know you are his ma. She stopped, surprised at what she was going to say. I mean I know I told you to forget everything I said but I don't want you to. He plays with every girl's heart and I should know that. He's my brother. Suddenly, I heard a growl come from inside the school. Nicoly was furious and breathing hard while Luke was trying to calm him down. What's the matter with him? I thought. He needs to stop with the growling noises. It's weird. I hope he doesn't think he's an animal. I caught his gaze and he calmed down slowly. What did I do? I turned back around to see Jessica with a worried expression on her face. I didn't ask what that whole Nicoly thing was about and I didn't ask her what happened to her. Something is definitely going on. And I would like to find out. I only had one question floating through my mind. Would I be able to stay away from Nicoly? I don't know. Can I try? Maybe. Twisting and turning in bed to find a comfortable spot wasn't going well. It was 11.30 at night and I couldn't find it in me to sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, images of Nicoly came to mind. His face, eyes, body, voice, everything. I've tried everything possible to get him out of my head, but it wouldn't work. It's like everything revolves around him. Lately, all I felt was restlessness. I've never really talked to Nicoly except for the times we ran into each other. More like him finding me, but recently I feel like I needed something. I knew what it was or who, for that matter, but I refused to believe it. Nicoly. He is the only person who can make me feel things I never felt before. He's the only person that can make me feel different. I don't know what it is. I don't know what he did to me, but I felt something for him and I don't know how long I could stay away from him. I got out of bed and put on a pair of sweatpants. Maybe a little fresh air would help. My parents were sleeping, so I tiptoed out of my room and made it down the stairs. I took my keys from the small table by the couch. Yes, I took my keys and phone this time. You never know when I might just need it. I slowly opened the door as quietly as possible. Walking out of the house, there was no one out here. There was a full moon out tonight and I sat down on the bench on my front porch and looked at the sky. I sat outside for about 20 minutes wondering what could have possibly made me think about Nicoly so much. Why do I feel so attached to him? Am I going crazy? I don't think so. Suddenly, I felt like someone was watching me. I looked around, seeing no one around. I think I am the only one outside. A howl from the woods made me jump in surprise. For some reason, I didn't feel threatened by it. Hearing the howl made me realize that I hadn't seen the wolf I came in contact with a while ago. Looking at the front door to my house, I wonder if I should go into the woods. I won't take long like last time. I said to myself. As I walked into the woods, I didn't feel any different from last time. This place doesn't give me a nice feeling at all. Only a crazy person would be oh so brave enough to walk through the woods. 
Apparently, I gave off the I'm a crazy person vibe twice in a row. Instead of going the same way I went a few nights ago, I took a different turn. I ended up in a clearing, like a path. Over on this side, it was a little brighter than where I was before. Letting curiosity get a hold of me, I followed the path. As I looked around, this part of the woods was actually clean, beautiful. I walked further down the path and there were all different colored leaves on the floor. The flowers, which should be withering because of how freezing it was, were still growing and looked healthy. I looked around in awe. Someone has to be living here. I thought. But soon my fondness faded away. A black wolf came out from behind the trees. My eyes widened and a look of terror took its place on my face. There's not one but two wolves in the woods. I walked back slowly away from the wolf. The tree that wasn't too far away from me stopped me from going any further. I closed my eyes. What to do? What to do? I thought frantically in my head. Nothing was coming to me. I haven't a clue on what to do. Opening my eyes, the wolf was right in front of me. I yelped and tried to back into the tree more. I wish this tree would make me invisible right now. The wolf never did anything. It just stared at me and bared its teeth. I was beyond scared. Suddenly, the wolf backed away and ran off into nowhere. I sighed a breath of relief. Sliding down the tree, I rested my head on my knees. There are wolves in these woods and they're not just my imagination. What world am I living in? Lifting up my head, I started to get up. I dusted off the remains of the leaves that were on my pants. A soft noise caught my attention. It almost sounded like a whine. What if it's another wolf? I don't think my heart can take another scare. I slowly looked towards the noise and surely there was another wolf. Not just any wolf, but mine. Mine? Excitement flowed through my body. I walked closer to it, resting my hand on its head. I slowly stroked its fur. I haven't seen you in a long time, I said to the wolf. The wolf wagged its tail. I giggled and for the rest of the night I sat there with the wolf in peaceful silence. This wolf may be more special to me than I thought. Nicholas POV I was in my room listening to music when my sister Jessica barged in without knocking. The hell? Ever heard of knocking? I said irritatedly. She was the last person I wanted to see right now. I was frustrated. I have a mate who doesn't have a clue of who I was, besides all the lies my sister tells her. She's so innocent and she doesn't even know half of what goes on in the world she's living in. Jessica stood at my door just looking at me. You look like shit. She said bluntly. I glared at her. Oh, really now? I wonder why. I said sarcastically. She sighed. What do you want? If you have nothing to say, then get out. I growled out, not wanting to look at her. From the corner of my eyes, I saw her flinching. Serves her right. Why did you have to pick my friend as a mate? She finally asked. I glanced at her and she looked sad, but behind but I could clearly see her anger. I glared at her. You think I chose her? Fate did. And I'm damn well happy I got a mate. I don't care what you tell Annabelle about me. I will have her as mine and you won't be able to do anything about it. It's hard loving someone you know nothing about. Now would you excuse me and get the fuck out of my room? I roared, getting up. I was sick of the games my sister was playing. Jessica looked down at the ground and scurried out of my room. I ran my hand through my hair and leaned against the wall. Times like this would be good for someone's mate to calm them down, but I don't have that at the moment. The first time I saw Annabelle was in the woods. I knew she would be something special to me. I didn't know it would be this hard to get to know her. I never signed up for this type of torture and believe me, this is the worst torture anyone could get. I sighed and looked around my room. Clothes, papers, books everywhere. I wonder if Annabelle likes clean or messy places. I groaned. I wouldn't know. Son, come to the office. I need to speak with you. My dad said with authority in his voice through the mind link. I pushed myself off the wall and walked out of my room. Walking down the hall, I made my way to my father's office. 
I knocked on the door and I heard my dad say come in. I opened the door and stood in front of him. You wanted to see me? I said emotionless. Yes, as you may know, I am going to be stepping down from the Alpha title soon. Everything will be in your hands afterwards. It has come to my attention that you didn't come across your mate. When you become Alpha, your mate will make you stronger. You don't have much time. My dad said. I sighed. I found my mate, dad. I said softly. He looked surprised. Really? Then why didn't you say something? He asked. Because your precious daughter told her to stay away from me. I said, getting worked up. You will not raise your voice at me. My father roared. Sorry. I muttered. Invite this girl to dinner some day. My father said. Can I at least do it when I know she's mine? I asked with a sigh. He nodded. Dinner's almost ready. Your mother is downstairs. I nodded and left my father's office. Soon it would be mine. After dinner, most of the time I stayed in my room. Never in my life have I thought I would find my mate. Now that I have her, it's hard to even get close to her. Hours passed and I wasn't tired. A sudden bolt of energy just burst inside of me. I smelt the scent of strawberries. Annabelle? She's here. A smile that I didn't know was there made its way onto my face. I bolted down the stairs and ran outside. How can she be here? Suddenly, I felt fear seep through me, but it wasn't my fear. It was Annabelle. I followed her scent and found a wolf in front of her. I growled and turned into my wolf. I took a closer look at the wolf that was in front of her. It was one of my pack members. Nathaniel. No! If you touch her, I will kill you in a heartbeat. I growled using the mind linked to him. Nathaniel snapped his head in my direction. This is. I cut him off. Yes. Now leave. I snapped at him. He backed away from Annabelle and ran in a different direction. My attention was back on Annabelle, who was sitting on the floor. She had her head in between her legs and I stood there waiting for her to look up. I whined, getting impatient. I just wanted to see her face. When she looked up, it was like I could feel the excitement she gave off. Something in my heart swelled. She was happy to see me. As she walked closer to me, I took a few steps forward to her. She outstretched her hand and rested it on my head, slowly touching my fur. Her touch was everything to me at the moment. I wagged my tail, loving the way she touched me. She wasn't scared of me. I haven't seen you in a long time. I heard her say. She giggled and my ears perked up. I would give anything for her to look so happy around me. I just need to find a way to talk to her. She sat down and I followed her. For the rest of the night we sat there in silence. I didn't have a care in the world at that moment. I had my mate beside me whether she knew it or not and I would remember this forever. I hoped that soon enough I would be able to have this same moment together with her, without me being in my wolf form. I woke up in my room the next morning. The sun was shining in my room through the window. How did I get here? I don't remember coming back to my house. I shrugged and got out of bed, making my way to the bathroom. I stripped out of my clothes and hopped in the shower. Is it weird to have feelings for a werewolf? I asked myself. Last night was perfect. There's something about that wolf that makes me feel happy. I can have a bad day and when I see the wolf everything just disappears. I sighed and got out of the shower. I brushed my teeth and walked back into my room. Taking out my uniform, I put it on and brushed my hair. Honey, are you up? You have to get to school. I heard my mom say. I grabbed my bag and walked downstairs. Morning, mom. I said, smiling at her when I walked into the kitchen. Well, don't you seem a bit cheery today? My mom said, putting a plate of food in front of me. She smiled. No. Just in a good mood. I said, taking a bite of my food. Hey, where's dad? I asked, since I didn't see him in the kitchen. He went to a job interview in a law firm not too far from here. She said. 
I nodded and finished the last bit of food that was on my plate. Ready? My mom asked. Yes. My phone started to ring. I picked it up and Jessica's name was flashing on the screen. Hello? I answered. Be ready, I'm coming to pick you up. She said. With that, she hung up. I looked at the phone confused. Uh, mom. I have a friend coming to take me to school. I asked her. Sure, just call me when school's finished. She said. I nodded. Soon a honk was heard from outside. That's her. See you later, mom. I said. Bye, sweetie. I picked up my bag, phone, and keys and opened the door. Whoa. Who knew she had a car like that? The window to the front rolled down and the least expected person I thought I would see was in there. Nicoli. He looked gorgeous. I was speechless. What is he doing here? I thought Jessica was supposed to come here. Wait, how does he know where I live? Nicoli got out of the car and walked up to me. Like what you see? Like what you see? He asked, smirking at me. I just looked at him, not knowing what to do. He stroked my cheek and a calm feeling overcame me. Nicoli looked at me intently and stepped a little closer. I stepped back, hitting the door softly. Come to think of it, I didn't move from my porch. H how do you know where I live? I asked, stuttering. It's really not that hard to get. He said. I looked at him confused and he just smiled at me. I found myself smiling back almost immediately. I think we should go. I suggested. He nodded and took my hand. Tingles shot through my body. How could one simple touch make me feel so many emotions? He was driving me crazy. Nicoli led me to the car and opened the door for me. A gentleman, I see. I thanked him and got in the car. He walked over to his side of the car and got it. Turning the key, he looked at me. What? I asked, confused. Put your seatbelt on. He said calmly. I laughed. Seriously? I don't even put my seatbelt on when my parents drive. I looked at him and he looked serious. Seriously? I am not a child. I said, getting angry at the way he was looking at me. No, but it's my job to make sure you're safe. He said. Just hearing that sentence made me think about the wolf. I felt like it would protect me if anything were a threat to me. I shook my head to get rid of the thoughts I was thinking. No, it's not possible. Nicoli leaned over me and pulled the seatbelt on me, looking me in the eyes. I stared back at him getting lost in his. His face was so close to mine that if I moved any closer, our lips would touch. He kept looking at my eyes and then my lips, as if asking for permission to kiss me. But why would he want to kiss me? Then Nicoli did the unexpected and pressed his lips against mine. He kissed me. Oh God, his lips were so soft. I tried pulling away, but it was no use. All the energy was sucked out of me from just this one kiss. I found myself kissing him back. I took some of his shirt and balled it in my hands, pulling him closer to me. Nicoli growled in my mouth and I let out a moan by accident. He bit my lip and that put me in overdrive. What's happening right now? Everything was such a blur. Nicoli put his hands on the window beside my head to steady himself. His body was so close to mine. What are we doing? I asked with a whisper, pulling away from him. He growled and shook his head. Something you and I both know we wanted to do. He answered my question, placing his lips on mine again. Suddenly, my senses came back and I pushed him away from me. You can't just go around kissing people. I said breathless. Nicoli only chuckled and brought his face to mine. Really? That's not what you said a few seconds ago. He said huskily. I opened my mouth to say something, but nothing came out. Just drive. I said, crossing my arms over my chest and looking out the window to avoid his gaze. As you wish. I heard him say, but I swear I could feel him smiling right now. What just happened? Kali was driving rather slowly in a car like this. 
what's the reason for me having on the seatbelt if he wants to be so cautious right now? I thought to myself. I sighed. It will be a long drive to school. We are probably late. I looked out the window just admiring this place. I have to say, even though I didn't want to come here, England is really a beautiful place. From the corner of my eyes, I could see Nicoly looking at me. I could feel my face getting hot for some apparent reason. I cleared my throat and looked away. I really want to stay alive, so can you look at the road please? I said. He looked away as soon as I said that and I swear I saw him blush. I giggled. What's so funny? He asked, smiling. I laughed. You blushed. I teased. He shook his head. I don't know what you're talking about. He said, playing innocent. I smiled. You do know that we're late for school, right? I asked him. He shrugged. Let's not go to school today. I looked at him confused. Why? Don't you think it would be a little weird? Both of us aren't in school when Jessica is probably waiting for me. I said. He stopped the car and looked at me. Do you really want Jessica to rule your life? Live a little. He said, watching me intently. I looked at him unsure. I don't know. I said, trailing off. Come on. What she doesn't know can't hurt her. He pleaded. Why do his eyes have to be so alluring? I sighed and nodded. Okay. He smiled widely at me and started the car again. What's with you and the smiling lately? I asked. He's been smiling around me a lot and I just want to know if he's feeling okay. What? I can't smile around you? He asked. I laughed. I didn't mean it like that. We drove in silence for about 30 minutes. To say that I was nervous was an understatement. I have never skipped school before, let alone with a boy I know nothing about and who I promised a friend I would stay away from. Where exactly are we going? I asked. You'll just have to see and find out. He said with a smirk. I'm not sure exactly what I find myself doing with Nicoly, but being close to him just makes me happier than I usually am being away from him. Nicoly soon stopped and I looked around. All that could be seen were trees. Where are we? I asked. Come. I want to show you something. Nicoly said to me. He got out of the car and came to my side, opening the door. I got out and he led me into the forest. Uh, the woods? I asked, confused. He took my hand and led me into the woods. We walked for about five minutes and we were by a lake with a treehouse. I smiled. Don't tell me that this is yours. I said, looking at him. What? You don't think it can be? He asked, pushing me lightly. I giggled. I seem to be doing that a lot. Why are we here? I asked, looking at the treehouse. My dad and I built this when I was little. I come here when I'm having a tough time. He said. I was confused. Then why do you want to share it with me? I asked. I hope one day it will mean a lot to you as it does to me. He said, looking at me. Come on. We climbed up the treehouse and went inside. Hmm. So, the big bad boy has a treehouse. I said, looking around. He laughed. Not everyone has the right impression of me. He said, sitting down. I followed suit and put my knees up to my chest. And why is that? I asked. Not everyone knows everything about me, and for them to believe it just pisses me off. He said, looking straight at me. I have a feeling this is about me. I said. He chuckled. Why do you believe everything Jessica says? She may be my sister, but she's a pain in the ass sometimes. He said with a slight smile. I shrugged. I guess because she's my first friend here. I thought I owe her something at least. I said, embarrassed. You know I'm not really a bad guy. Nicoly said. I nodded and sighed. I know that now, I said. I glanced at him and he had his head down. What's wrong? I asked, concerned. He looked up at me. It's nothing. He said. 
I gave him the look and he sighed. I'm fine really. So tell me about yourself. I shook my head, knowing that he was trying to change the subject. There's not much to tell. I moved here from New York. I said. Nikoli chuckled. How about I ask the questions? He suggested. I smiled and nodded. What's your favorite color? He asked. I looked at him blankly. That's your question? Really? Just answer the question. It might come in handy later on. He said, laughing. Green and baby blue. He nodded. I like red. We asked questions back and forth for probably the whole time there. I didn't feel bored, not even once. Nikoli was lying down on my lap. My hands were in his hair. I love his hair. It was jet black and it felt so soft between my fingers. It reminded me of the wolf again. Why did I always compare this boy to the wolf I happen to be fond of? Of course, I have no idea, but every time I look at him there's always something new I find about him that relates to the wolf. I wonder what time it is. I checked my phone that was next to me and it read 2.30. What? I have to get to the cafe in 30 minutes. Yeah, I got the job when I talked to the manager. I have to go. I said to Nikoli. Why? What happened? He asked worriedly. No, nothing. I just have to get to work in 30 minutes. I said. Okay then, let's go. He got up from my lap and helped me up. We climbed down the treehouse and walked back to his car. Once we got back to the car, he climbed in and we sped off to the cafe. It didn't take long for us to get there, seeing that he drove like a madman. Jeesh you could have killed me. I exclaimed, holding my heart. I would never let that happen to you. He said with a little hurt in his eyes. I tilted my head to the side and looked away from him. Opening the door to the car, I got out. I looked back at Nikoli. Thanks Nikoli. For today. I had fun. I said. His face lit up. No problem. Maybe we could do it again. He said. I nodded. I'd like that. I closed the door and walked up to the cafe's entrance. Taking one last look at Nikoli, he winked at me before speeding off. I smiled to myself and walked into the cafe only to receive a glare coming my way from none other than Jessica. I didn't even care. Right now, nothing can kill my mood, all thanks to a certain guy who showed me a different side to him that no one knows about. Maybe he's not so bad after all. Have you ever felt like you were slowly being sucked into a black hole? Well, that's how I was feeling as Jessica was staring at me. More like glaring. I didn't know what her problem was in the first place. She was the one that told me not to stay away from Nikoli and now she wants to have a glaring competition. What's the matter with you? I asked, pretending not to be bothered by her stares. She only kept looking at me with a menacing look. I don't have a problem. She said, tearing her eyes away from me. I nodded, not believing a word she said, and walked around her to sign in and placed an apron around my waist. Jessica stood next to me as I was tying the apron around me. So why were you not in school? She asked calmly. I glanced at her and walked to the counter and grabbed the pad and pencil. I contemplated whether to tell her about the day I had with Nikoli. I was with Nikoli. I said, keeping the details to a minimum. I thought I told you to stay away from him. She said a little too loudly. People turned their heads to look at us. I blushed and looked down. Would you calm down? I don't know what your problem is. You told me not to stay away from him. I said, throwing her words back at her. Yes, but you don't know what he's capable of. He would break your heart. She said, looking me straight in the eyes. It was as if she was trying to scare me, but for some reason it didn't work. Something in the back of my mind told me not to listen to her. Not everyone has the right impression of me. Nikoli's words echoed through my head. The look on his face broke my heart. Those words seemed to fit into this situation perfectly, because it seemed as though Jessica didn't have a clue about who her brother really was, sister or not. Do you even know your brother? I asked out of nowhere. 
Jessica snapped her head in my direction. She looked at me quizzically. Of course, I do. He's my brother. What kind of question is that? She said. I shrugged. You always find something to tell me about your brother. You always tell me to stay away from him. I said slowly, getting worked up. I watched as Jessica hesitated before answering me. I just don't want you to get hurt. Nicoly only uses girls. He can't love them. She said, not looking at me. Somehow, I knew she was lying. I never thought our friendship would be based off of the lies you're currently feeding me. I said. Who said I was lying to you? Jessica said. I can almost see the wheels turning in her head. You lied to me from the beginning. You told me Nicoly was dangerous and not good to be around and I'm wondering if this goes for you. I said angrily. Jessica looked at me with furious eyes. What is that supposed to mean? She growled out. I was a little taken aback by the noise she made but stood my ground. I don't know if you're bipolar or if you have a different type of disorder. One minute you're telling me to stay away from him and the next you tell me I shouldn't stay away from him. What exactly is your problem? I asked, wanting some answers. I'm only trying to look out for you. She said. Saying mean things about your own brother isn't really looking out for me. I said. Well, don't come crying to me when you get your heart broken. She hissed at me. I knew there was more to this. If she didn't want to tell me, that was okay. I would find out sooner or later if I haven't already figured it out myself. Sometimes I wonder if you really are Nicolie's sister and not some deranged ex-girlfriend the way you talk about him. When you get your act together and you're ready to talk properly, let me know, but until then I need to work. I said, picking up my pad and pencil I had put down when Jessica got a little too carried away and walked to a customer that needed my help. For some reason, I found myself sticking up for Nicoly. From what I could see, Nicoly was a sweet, charming boy who people didn't understand. Something was awfully strange about him, but that made me even more intrigued about him. It's not like I'm using Jessica to get to her brother. I was never one to do that and I don't plan on starting now. Jessica needed to stop being so controlling and learn to be an actual friend. Nicoly was someone that I actually found myself wanting to know more about. He was weird in a good way and I would like to spend more time with him. Somehow Nicoly came into my life and there was no chance of me trying to push him away like I had planned to. Hey! A husky voice said in my ear. A pair of hands wrapped themselves around my waist, pulling me closer to them. I leaned back closer into their chest, knowing exactly who it was. Nicoly. His hold on my waist tightened. Hey, yourself. I said, trying to concentrate on getting my books out of my locker. Every time he touched me it was like everything went blank in my mind. All my worries, confusion, and pain go away. He slowly started to run his thumb up and down my waist. Just that one little gesture slowly set me on overdrive. I bit down on my lip. A strange feeling was set at the bottom of my stomach in a good way. What are you doing? I asked shakily. Nicoly rested his chin on my neck. I could feel him breathing on my neck. What am I doing? He asked, throwing the question back at me. He kissed my neck and I was thankful that he was holding me right now. I took out the books I needed for class and shut my locker. I turned around to face Nicoly and he had a smirk on his face. I leaned on the locker for support, as Nicoly still had his hands around my waist. The space that was between us was unbearable. I wanted him close to me, no, needed him closer to me. As if reading my mind, he pulled me against his body. I gasped and looked at him. His eyes turned black. God, you're going to be the death of me. Nicoly murmured, putting his head in the crook of my neck. What do you mean? I asked as my heart started to beat faster. You have needs that you don't know about. He said in a low voice. I, I don't know what you mean. I said. He pulled away from me and I felt his hand go to the hem of my pants and tugged on it. That's what I'm referring to. He said, his voice was deep and strained. My breath hitched in my throat. I bucked my hips against Nicoly, not really knowing what I was doing. 
He made me feel something I can't quite understand. Nikoli growled. Stop. I bit my lip from making any noise. What is he doing to me? I pushed him away from me and held my books closer to my chest. I, I need to get to class. I said, trying to walk away. Where do you think you're going, kitty cat? He asked, pulling me against him. He pushed me against the locker and I looked at him. He looked like he was holding himself back. But from what? I moaned absent-mindedly and moved closer to Nikoli. What are you doing to me? I asked, looking at him, trying to find the answer I was looking for in his eyes. He looked at me with those intense eyes and smiled slightly. I'll tell you all in due time. He answered back. For some reason, I wanted Nikoli and not in a way, I would find myself thinking about a boy. I wanted him close to me. Closer than I have ever been with anyone or dreamed about. I wanted him to be more than just a guy I had met. You want to be intimate with Nikoli? I heard my conscience say to me. That's exactly how I was feeling. But I had no idea why. I want you. I said, not thinking properly. I pulled Nikoli by the shirt closer to me. I want every part of you and I don't know why. I want every part of you and I don't know why. I want you to be closer to me. I want you to be the boy that I can come to when I need help or I just need to talk. I feel something towards you and I don't know what it is. I don't know much about you, but I want you. You make me feel whole and happy inside. I took a deep breath. I'm rambling, aren't I? I just don't know what it is about you that has me attached to you. I said, looking anywhere but at him. Look at me. Nikoli whispered to me. He put his index finger underneath my chin and turned my face to look at him. I could see the spark in his eyes. He smiled at me and wrapped his arms around my waist. God, you're everything I need, Annabelle. You're everything I look for in a girl. You're what has me breathing every day. Without saying another word, he smashed his lips against mine. Everything was said in that one kiss. Tingles shot through my body and I moved closer to him, wanting more. Whatever this is between me and Nikoli, I don't want it to end. Screw Jessica and her rules. The only person I want is Nikoli and no one can stop me from claiming him as mine. The late bell for first period rang. I giggled. What? Nikoli asked me. I shook my head. We really need to stop being late for this class. This teacher might end up hating us. I said. He chuckled and a smirk was present on his face. I doubt that he'll hate us. Come on. He put his hand on the small of my back and opened the door to the classroom. All heads turned in our direction and I wanted to leave. The attention I was getting was uncomfortable. Why does it always seem you two are the only ones missing from my class most of the time? Mr. Ford said, looking between the both of us. Something in the back of my head told me this teacher knew something and only wanted to test the theory. Nikoli growled next to me. I swear dash. He began to say, but before he could continue, I elbowed him in the stomach. If you wanted to touch me, all you had to do was ask. Nikoli whispered in my ear. I blushed and looked towards the teacher who was looking at me intently. I glanced at the people in the classroom who were gladly taking interest in this situation. I cleared my throat. Mr. Ford we were just late and it's nothing like that. I said, not really knowing what to say. I was never one to be late for class. He nodded. Go take a seat and don't let this happen again. The teacher said. I nodded quickly and began to walk to my seat. Nikoli pulled my shirt from behind and I was standing in front of the teacher again. I watched Nikoli and Mr. Ford in confusion. Nikoli was giving him a glare and Mr. Ford looked scared. I hope you know that's not how you talk to a lady. Nikoli said. I had my head down hiding the blush that would soon appear on my face. Nikoli pushed me lightly and started to walk to our seat. I looked down at the ground so I wouldn't have to see other people looking at me. I felt so awkward. As I got to my seat, I felt a little better since I was in the back of the classroom, but one person just killed my mood. Jessica. 
She looked awful and kept staring at me as I put my book on my desk, opening it to the page that I was supposed to. I sighed and looked at her. Are you going to talk to me like a normal person now? I asked her. She quickly looked away and continued her work. I shrugged. Suit yourself. I said, starting my work. I'm not one to be mean. She brought this on herself from the time she lied to me. I may have let her tell me what to do for the most part, but she didn't have to act like my mother. The only thing that got to me was the fact that she said things about her brother that weren't true. She lied to me. I'm not fond of liars. I would give her another chance if she wants to start over, but if she doesn't want to talk to me it doesn't matter. I always preferred being by myself. The bell rang, signaling the period was over. I gathered my books and started to walk out of the classroom. Annabelle, wait. I turned around and Jessica was rushing to me. Yes? I asked. Look, I'm sorry, you're the only friend that didn't try to use me and I'm sorry, she said. It's fine. I already told you I'm not like that. I said. See you at lunch. She asked. I nodded and we walked different ways to our classes. The final bell of the day rang and I was happy. I wanted to see Nicoly when I saw him not too long ago in my seventh period class. I gathered all my books and grabbed my book bag and quickly walked out of my art class. Why are you in such a rush, kitty cat? I heard an all too familiar voice say. I turned around and Nicoly was leaning against the wall watching me. I beamed and dropped my books, running into his already opened arms. Someone is happy to see me. Nicoly said, chuckling. I giggled and shrugged. Am I supposed to miss you this much? I said, leaning in closer to him. I could feel his chest vibrating as he laughed. If it makes you feel any better, I miss you too. It's hard staying away from you for long. Nicoly said in a hushed voice. I looked up at him and smiled. I want you to meet my parents. Nicoly said suddenly. My heart started to beat faster. Why your parents? I stuttered out. How can I meet his parents? Isn't that a little too soon? I mean come on, I just told him a few hours ago that I wanted to, be more than just what we were, which wasn't anything too deep. Now he wants me to meet his parents. I don't know. I said, unsure. They will love you. He said, reassuring me. I sighed and nodded slightly. Okay. When? I asked. Saturday, if that's okay with you. He said. Yeah, that's okay, with me. I said shakily. He chuckled at my nervousness and picked up my books that I had forgotten about. Thanks. I said. We walked to the front of the school and walked to the parking lot. Do you have to go to work? He asked me as we walked up to his car. I shook my head. No. Why? I asked. Because I'm going to take you home. He answered, making me smile. That wasn't even a question, was it? He smiled. Nope. I got in the car and he pulled the seatbelt over me. I rolled my eyes. Really? I said flatly. He smiled cheekily and kissed my cheek. Only because you're my kitty cat. He said. He closed the door and walked over to the driver's side of the car and got in. Putting the keys in the ignition, he started the car and we were off. How does Jessica get home? You don't take her home, do you? I asked. Oh, no. My dad picks her up. He said. I nodded. As Nicoly pulled up to my house, I dreaded the moment. For some reason, I didn't want to go. I wanted to stay with Nicoly. I shook my head, unbuckled my seatbelt and grabbed my bag. Hey, thanks. I said, glancing at Nicoly. He had a smile on his face. Anytime, kitty cat. I giggled. Is that like a new nickname for me? I asked. It most certainly is. Nicoly replied. It was silent for a second. It was comfortable. Hey, um, do you think I could get your number? Nicoly asked, breaking the silence. I looked at him and his cheeks were flushed. 
I laughed and poked his cheek. Of course, you can, I said. He took out his phone, avoiding my eyes, and I took it with a slight chuckle. I punched in my number on his phone and put the name Kitty Cat. I gave him back his phone and he smiled when he looked at it. Well, I better get inside, I said. He nodded. Wouldn't want your parents to get suspicious now, would we? He smirked. I smiled. I would just tell them the truth, I said. And what might that be? He asked, leaning in closer to me. My mind clouded over. I, I would tell them that you held me up, I said. And get me in trouble? He asked, coming a bit closer. All I had to do was close the gap between us and our lips would be pressed together. I wanted to kiss him. Nicoly looked from me to my lips and that set me off. I pressed my lips to his and he immediately responded. He licked my bottom lip and I smiled, pulling away. Not so fast, I said, biting my lip, teasing him. He growled lowly. That's not fair, he said. I smiled. Life's not fair, I said, teasing him, and opened the car door, sliding out. Closing the door, I winked at Nicoly, mimicking what he did the day he dropped me off at work. I chuckled and I walked up the stairs to my house. I turned around and Nicoly was already watching me. He waved and I opened the door to my house. Is it just me or is the relationship I'm in with Nicoly going faster than I thought it would be? I was currently sitting on my bed thinking about what could happen when I finally met Nicoly's parents. They could either hate me or like me. But I hope for the latter idea. I have never had this problem before. Well, I never had to encounter anyone's parents. Remember, never been in a relationship before? I never had the time to and I never wanted one. But here I am going to meet Nicoly's parents. I'm not even sure what this relationship Nicoly and I have. The light on my phone started to blink, indicating I had a text message. I opened my phone and saw it was from Nicoly. Hey, baby girl. I'm driving up to your house XX Nick. Another nickname, I see. I smiled at the text and walked out of my room, going downstairs to be greeted by a serious father and a mother who was smiling. Dad, you don't have to be so serious. It's just a boy. I said. Yeah, just a boy who is going to take my daughter to his house. My dad retorted back. I sighed and the doorbell rang. I walked to the door, opening it to see the most gorgeous guy right in front of me. Nicoly was wearing a white button-up shirt with black jeans and black and white Jordans. His shirt sleeve was rolled up and not all of the buttons on his shirt were buttoned up. He looked sexy. Like what you see? He asked with a smirk on his face. I bit my lip and nodded. He wrapped his arms around me and pulled me against him. I looked at him and his eyes were black. I rested my hand on his chest to keep steady. You look beautiful, Nicoly whispered in my ear. I blushed. Come on. My parents want to meet you. I said. Oh really? I hope you didn't tell them it was my fault and get me in trouble. Nicoly said, talking about yesterday. I rolled my eyes and took his hand and walked into the living room where my parents were sitting. Mom. Dad. This is Nicoly. I said, introducing Nicoly to my parents. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nicoly said politely. I snickered next to him. He glanced at me with an amused look in his eyes, but looked back at my parents. You're so cute. My mom said. My eyes widened at her words. Mom. I said, embarrassed. Nicoly chuckled and looked at me. I'm just that sexy, huh? He said to me. I smacked him in his chest lightly and giggled. What are your intentions with my daughter? My dad asked him with a glare. I looked at Nicoly, who seemed taken aback by my father's words. Sir, I like your daughter. I just want to get to know her a little bit more. Nicoly said. Where are you taking her? My dad questioned him again. To my house to meet my parents. They would like to meet her. Nicoly said nervously. Why? Dad, this isn't 20 questions. I said, getting impatient. Sorry, 
I just want to make sure that this boy is good enough for you. My dad said. Nikoli growled lightly in my ear. What's up with him and this sound? Well, we are going to go. I said, backing away from the living room. Don't do anything I wouldn't approve of, young lady. My dad called out to me. I laughed and pulled Nikoli along, going out the door. Well, your father is nice. Nikoli said. I smiled. He just wants the best for me. Don't mind him. I said. Nikoli opened the car door for me and I sat down. He closed the door and walked around to get in the driver's side. What? You're not going to buckle my seatbelt? I asked playfully. I'm sure you got the idea of doing it yourself when you're with me. He said. I am not a child. I said, crossing my arms over my chest. Okay, so maybe that action was childish, but so what? But you're my little kitty cat. Nikoli said, starting the car. I smiled and looked out the window. All the questions that I had before started to rush back into my mind. I really want to impress Nikoli's parents. It's weird for me to say that, but it's true. I want them to like me. As we pulled up to a house that was painted white, Nikoli parked in the driveway of his house. His house was huge. How many people did you say lived in your house again? I asked, glancing at him. Just my parents, my sister, and I. He said. I nodded and got out of the car. Nikoli locked the car and wrapped his arms around my waist, guiding me up to the front door. I started to get nervous. Don't worry, kitty cat. They will love you. Nikoli said, smiling down at me. I laughed. Your nickname for me is funny. I said. And why would you say that? He asked. You don't seem like the type to say kitty cat. But I like it in a way. I said, giggling. You better because that's your nickname from now on. He said, kissing my cheek. He opened the door to his house and we walked in. Mom. Dad. I'm back. Nikoli yelled. That was my ear, you know. I said. Ah, let me kiss it and make it all better. Nikoli said, trying to kiss my ear. Ew. No. I said, giggling. I tried pushing him away, but he held my hands down. Just give up already. I am stronger than you. He said jokingly. That doesn't matter. I said, laughing. Really? He asked with a mischievous smile. Nikoli licked my ear quickly and let go of me. That was nasty. I said, wiping my ears. I said, wiping my ears. Someone cleared their throat and I looked up to see a woman and a man. They looked so young. Clearly, that can't be Nikoli's parents. The woman came up to me and pulled me in for a hug. Oh my, you're so pretty. She said, letting go of me. I smiled awkwardly. I'm Nikoli's mother, Marianne, and this is his father, Luke. I'm Annabelle. It's nice to meet you, I said. His father smiled at me. No need to be shy. We're family after all. I looked at him confused. Let's eat, shall we? Nikoli said. Nikoli walked behind me and wrapped his arms around me. Did I mention that you look beautiful? Nikoli whispered to me. I giggled. I looked down and played with his fingers that were around my waist. Did I mention that you look sexy? I said, mocking him. No, but you just did. I rolled my eyes and smiled. I looked up as we got to the dining room and Nikoli's father was looking at me. He smiled and looked at his son. What the heck is going on? Nikoli pulled out the chair from the table for me and I gladly sat down. What a gentleman he is. He sat down next to me. His parents were already seated and waiting patiently for us to settle down. I wonder why his parents wanted to meet me. Where is Jessica? Mrs. O'Connell asked no one in particular. Who knows and who cares? Nikoli responded. I smacked him on the head. Be nice. He rolled his eyes. Always like you to see the good in people. Nikoli said. Nikoli said. 
What's that supposed to mean? What? Jessica was nice to me. I said. He nodded. Yeah, sure. He said sarcastically. I glared at him and he chuckled. Sorry. He said. I shook my head. His parents were both watching us with smiles on their faces. Do you know our daughter Jessica? Mr. O'Connell asked me. I nodded. Yes. She was my first friend when I came here. I said softly. So you're not from here, are you? He asked. No. I simply said. It was beginning to get awkward. Why is everyone asking so many questions? As if Nickley could feel my nervousness, he put his hand on my thighs, squeezing it lightly. I sighed and inched closer to him a little. I saw him smile slightly. His touch just makes me feel complete and calm. Sorry, I'm late. I heard someone say. I looked up and Jessica was standing by the table. Hi, Annabelle. She said. I smiled. Hi. She sat down across from me. Now can we eat? I'm starving. Nicoli said loudly. I giggled but shook my head. Nicoli was holding my hand under the table. We were currently making small conversation while eating. Everyone was asking me a lot of questions, mostly Nicoli's parents. So, Annabelle, what do you think about the supernatural? Mr. O'Connell asked me. I heard Jessica snicker from across the table. Nicoli stiffened beside me. You better get ready, Nicoli. Jessica said. Ready for what? Um. The only thing I could think of was the wolf that I happened to be fond of. I mean, I never saw a wolf until that day. Thinking about that wolf. I haven't seen it in over a week. I was deep in thought. I don't want to tell them about the wolf. It feels like it's my own little secret. Annabelle? Nicoli said next to me. Uh, well anything is possible. I said, trying to beat around the bush. His father looked at me intently. It got awfully quiet in here. You understand what I'm talking about. Mr. O'Connell said. I nodded, not able to talk because I knew I would say something I would regret. Why is he asking me this question in the first place? You mean like witches? I said dumbly. It was the only thing that popped into my head. If I told them about the wolf I saw, surely they would think I was crazy. Mr. O'Connell chuckled. He knew I wasn't being serious about this. Well, can you blame me? I don't think this would have been a conversation you had at dinner. Is it? Yes, like witches. But what I'm talking about is shapeshifters. He said calmly, moving his eyes, to Nicoli. He said calmly, moving his eyes, to Nicoli. I watched them. It's like they were communicating with their eyes. Their mouths weren't moving. Mr. O'Connell's attention came back to me. What do you think about that? He asked me. A person changing into something other than human at will is what you're asking me about? I said. What kind of dinner is this? He nodded. Okay. It seems pretty cool if someone could do that, but I don't think it's possible. I said, shrugging my shoulders. Nicolie's body was tense next to mine. If I'm not mistaken, you said earlier, anything is possible. Mr. O'Connell said, using my words against me. He smirked, knowing he had got to me. Yeah, but let's be reasonable here. It's not likely to happen. I mean, aren't those just myths? I asked, wanting to get this conversation over with. No, my dear, they are certainly true. He said in a matter-of-fact tone. How can you be so sure? I asked, not believing him but I didn't expect the words he said after. My family and I are werewolves. You know that feeling when you just hear something out of the ordinary and you just sit there trying to let it sink in? Well, I was trying to let the words wrap around my head, but it didn't. It went through one ear and out the other. I couldn't believe it. Who could believe such a thing? I looked at everyone at the table who were looking at me worriedly. 
Mr. O'Connell just sat back and watched me with a smirk on his face. I laughed. Tears were falling from my eyes. You're just messing around with me. There is no way this can be true. Annabelle. Nicoly said to me. Hurt was seen through his eyes and I slowly stopped laughing. A sharp pain went through my chest. I winced and instinctively raised my hands to my chest. What the hell? Nicoly, your emotions are strong. Calm down. His father said, with a hint of authority in it. As if nothing was there, the pain went away. I looked at Nicoly and his father. Is this some kind of sick joke? I said. Jessica and her mother never said anything throughout this little discussion. Someone better answer me. I said, getting angry. I thought this was supposed to be a dinner. Not some conference about the supernatural a life. Those things aren't real. I need to tell you something. Nicoly said. If it's about this. I said, moving my hands across the table to make my point about the conversation we just had. Then I don't want to hear it. I continued. No, I please. He asked with pleading eyes. I sighed. Fine. I said. I got up and he took my hand, leading me to who knows where. This better be good. Nicholas POV. Walking up to my father's office with Annabelle by my side was tense. She wouldn't look at me and when I tried to talk to her she wouldn't listen. Telling her what I am would be the hardest thing I would have to do. She can either accept me or not. But she would have to accept me. She's my mate, right? As we reached up to my father's office, I opened the door and let her in. I locked the door when I came in so we wouldn't get any interruptions. I watched as Annabelle looked around in awe. What is this place? She asked, touching all the books that were on the shelves. This is my father's office. It's where he does all his alpha business. I said softly. She looked at me with a scowl on her face. Alpha as in the leader. She said. I nodded. I thought this was supposed to be a dinner. What happened to that? She asked. I sighed. My father wanted to meet you because you were very special to me. I said, walking closer to her. She backed away and fell right onto the couch that was behind her. I pulled up a chair from my father's desk and placed it in front of Annabelle. I sat in front of her. You have to believe me. I pleaded with her. Believe what? That you're a werewolf. Are you kidding me? She yelled. I shook my head. This would be harder than I thought. My little mate is a stubborn one. Just hear me out. I said, looking at her. She sighed and sat back. Enlighten me. Here goes nothing. Centuries ago my great-great-great-grandmother gave birth to a baby. Back in those days, it was very rare for people to give birth back then. If you ever became pregnant, it wasn't likely for the baby to survive. I said, starting from the beginning of the legend my dad told me when I was just a kid. What does this have to do with you thinking you can change into a wolf? She asked, agitated. When the baby was born, it wasn't like any other baby. It had hair all over its body and its eyes were yellow. No one really knows what happened to the baby for it to look like that. All I know is that now in our family we become wolves at the age of 16, I told her. She looked genuinely interested. So what you're saying is that you, being a shapeshifter, have been in your family for centuries. And you can actually turn into a wolf. She asked curiously. I nodded, hoping that she believed me. She pursed her lips together looking at me with an unreadable expression. There was always something about you that had me thinking. She said. So you believe me? I asked with hope in my eyes. She chuckled. No. I don't believe you. Are you trying to make a fool out of me? She asked. I clenched my jaw. Did I mention that this is the hardest thing for me to do? I have never met a girl as stubborn as Annabelle. Believe me, she can be the surest and awkwardest person in the world, but when she has something already in her mind she won't change it. I just want her to believe me. She is everything that I ever wanted and for her to leave me is the most painful thing that could happen to me. 
you feel empty inside and you don't care anymore. I definitely don't want that. I found the only person that can calm me down and I am not letting her get away that easily. A sudden wave of anger rushed through me. I had a glare on my face looking at Annabelle. She looked scared. And Nicoli? What's wrong? She asked. I growled lowly at her. A look of surprise washed over her face. I never really growled at her. And when I did, it was out of playfulness. You want to know what's wrong? I asked coldly. The anger in me was slowly rising to the top. You're what's wrong. I am trying to tell the one person who I thought would believe me the biggest secret I have ever held in my family and she thinks it's a joke. I said, talking about Annabelle in third person. I heard her whimper, but that didn't faze me. She hurt me. It's hard for me to say that but she did. She wouldn't take me seriously and for me to sit here and watch her with her lips trembling didn't make me feel any better. I I. She started to say but nothing came out. I wanted to hear her say I believe you but it never came out. Someone started to knock on the door. I growled loudly. Leave us be. I said. I could feel my eyes turning black. My wolf was on edge. He didn't like the fact that our mate didn't take us seriously. The knocking continued and I was getting frustrated. My wolf was ready to come out to the surface. I clenched my hand and made a fist. Annabelle was looking at me with her big brown eyes. I said go the hell away. My words bouncing off the walls in the office. My breathing became heavy and before I knew it, my clothes were shredded on the floor and I was standing on all fours. I turned my attention to Annabelle, who looked more than surprised. The door busted open and there stood my parents and Jessica standing there with white eyes. Well, I definitely didn't plan for this to happen. Annabelle's POV My eyes widened at the wolf. Realization hit me hard. Nicoly was the wolf. He was the freaking wolf I was fond of all this time. I told that wolf probably everything or mostly everything about me when I was with him. That's if he could understand me when I was talking. It's possible. Nicoly probably knows me better than I know myself. I feel betrayed in a way. I was sitting on the couch with my feet up to my chest right now. I didn't care that I was wearing a dress. I was trembling with fear but I also had a sense of calm going through me. I didn't know what to do in this situation. Everything seemed so unreal at this point. Nicoly turned into a freaking wolf and not just any wolf, my wolf. The wolf that I said was mine. My protector. I guess I have to believe him now. There's nothing else to do but to believe him. It happened right in front of me. Are you okay? Jessica asked, rushing to my side. I looked at her, too shocked to say anything. I looked back at the wolf, well, Nicoly and he had those same eyes that stood out to me from day one. I got up from the couch and made my way slowly to Nicoly. I didn't know what to expect. He was so angry when he turned into a wolf. It was all my fault. I didn't mean for this to happen. I was in denial. I never believed in this stuff. Of course, I read it in books and saw it in movies, which were very interesting by the way, but it never occurred to me that it just might be true. Nicoly was watching me intently. I know he was sorry for what he did by the look he had in his eyes. I inched closer to Nicoly and put my hand on his fur, patting his back. He laid down on his stomach and I sat down crisscrossed on the floor. As Nicoly put his head on my lap, he licked my chin. Ew. Nick. Gross. I exclaimed, giggling. I wasn't scared anymore. I knew this wolf wouldn't hurt me from the first time I saw it. I just never expected it to be Nicoly. Nicoly rested his head back on my lap. Do you think you can change back into a human again? I whispered to Nicoly as I rested my head on his back. I felt him nod and I slowly got up from resting my head on him. As quickly as he turned into a wolf, he changed back into his human form. This would take a lot of getting used to. My eyes widened at what I saw. Nicoly was lying down on my lap naked. Oh my god! I said, covering my eyes. I looked at the door, but Jessica and his parents left. I heard Nicoly chuckle. You don't have to cover your eyes. 
You will be seeing me a lot like this, he said with a smirk on his face. My cheeks flushed and I looked down. My smile slowly faded into a serious expression. Nicoli, why didn't you tell me before? I asked. He turned around and laid his back on my lap, looking up at me. I didn't want you to act like you did just now. I most definitely didn't want to turn into a wolf in front of you. He said, looking up at me with his brown eyes. I sighed. About that. I'm sorry. I just couldn't wrap what you said around my head. I said, avoiding his eyes. He laughed and brought his hands to my face and touched it lightly. I expected that from you. Anyone would. He said. Why did you lie? I asked, wanting to know the answer. I didn't lie to you. I just didn't tell you. I can't lose you, Annabelle. Nicoli said, getting up to sit in front of me. I won't lose you. He said, shaking his head almost like he's trying to convince himself something. I have to tell you something. Nicoli said, searching my eyes for something. I don't know. I nodded. What? He sighed and looked down. You're everything to me, Annabelle. From the first time I saw you, I knew you would change my life. You're so innocent and awkward, but I love that about you. You're my little kitty cat. He said, using his nickname for me. My heart started to beat faster. Nickley traced the outline of my chin all the way to my lips with his finger. He slowly leaned in and kissed me slowly and passionately. I shivered at the softness of his lips. Pulling away, he looked at me with passion and adoration clearly in his eyes. What are you saying, Nicoli? I asked shakily. You're my mate. He said, smiling slightly. My eyes widened. I surely wasn't expecting that. I'm his mate? Me? From all the books that I have read, a mate is someone who is bound to be with you. That's all I picked up. But me? Why me? I looked at Nicoli with wide eyes. My heart was beating faster and faster by the minute. I wonder if Nicoli can hear it. W what? I asked in disbelief. Nicoli uncrossed my legs, pulling me to sit on his lap facing him. You're my mate, Annabelle. You're my light when it's dark, you're my happiness when I'm sad. You're my everything. He said with honesty. I shook my head. I'm nothing special. Suddenly, I felt like I was about to faint. I didn't know what to say. I'm with the most popular boy in school that every girl wants to be with, yet I'm his mate. I felt insecure. Hey, look at me. Nicoli whispered to me. I slowly lifted my head which was looking down at my fingers. What's wrong? He asked worriedly. Why me? I asked him with tears forming in my eyes. I'm not an emotional person, but I never had anyone care about me, except my parents. I push everyone away for a reason I never found the answer to. I don't have many friends because I push people away. Fate. We were meant to be. He said. You're only saying that because you have to. I said, trying to stop the tears from falling. No. I wanted to know you. As hard as it may seem. You were very interesting. The first time I saw you I knew I had to have you. He said, putting the hair that was on my face behind my ear. My heart swelled in my chest, causing it to ache, making it impossible to breathe. I never felt this way before. Hey, Igoo. We turned our heads to the door where Jessica was standing with her hands over her eyes. I looked at her confused. Jeesh, you guys just don't wait, do you? She said, throwing a pair of shorts at Nicoli and walking out. I looked down at our position. Oh my god. I forgot Nicoli was naked. I blushed and got up off him and tried to look anywhere but at him. I heard him chuckle. He stood up and put on the shorts Jessica gave him. I looked up at him and couldn't stop staring. He was so sexy. Like what you see? He asked with a wink. I blushed. Don't flatter yourself, wolf boy. I said winking back at him. He smiled widely at me. Come on! I want to show you something! 
he said. It isn't another tree house, is it? I asked, smiling. He snorted. No. Just come on. He said, laughing. He held out his hand for me to take. I took it and he pulled me up lightly. You're not going to put on a shirt? I asked. He shook his head. There really is no need. I'm a wolf. My body temperature is hot. He said. I figured. Every time I touch him, his body radiates heat like a heater. Plus, I know you like seeing me with my shirt off. Nicoly continued. I blushed a bright pink color and rolled my eyes. S sure. I said shakily. We walked downstairs and turned a corner that led us to a back door. I looked a little closer and we were facing the woods. It looked so familiar. I've been here before. I said to Nicoly. He smirked. I know. He said with a knowing look on his face. My eyes widened at the realization I just had. You were the wolf that saved me from the black one. I said. He nodded, smiling at me. I never saw your house when I came here. I said. I was confused. That's because the lights weren't on as they are now and my house isn't in the clear where a person can see it if they were to come into the woods. He said. I nodded. His house was literally in front of the woods. Come. He said, taking my hand and opening the door. We walked out and walked down the path. So tell me more about your world, Dot. I said, putting the word world in air quotes. He chuckled. My father is the Alpha, like I said before, and I will be taking that spot when he steps down. He explained. Why? I asked. Because I am 18 and the oldest out of my sister and I. I nodded. Remember this? He asked, pulling me to his chest. I giggled. How could I not? I basically told you everything there is to know about me. I said, smiling. By the way, could you understand me in your wolf form? I asked. He nodded. I may not be able to respond with my voice, but I can understand. He said. We sat down by the tree and just talked. Are you mad at me? Nicoly asked me. I shook my head. How can I get mad at you? You're basically trusting me with your secret. I said. I said. He nodded. You know, I would have still had to tell you sooner or later. He said. I looked at him confused. Because you're my mate and plus, it would be hard to keep things away from you. I smiled. I'm glad you told me. I said. Do you accept me as your mate? Nicoly asked as he looked at me. Do I want Nicoly in that way? Yes. He is the only one that can make me happy and feel different emotions that I never felt before. I nodded. No. I want you to say it. I need you to say it. He said in a demanding voice. I accept you as my mate. I said, smiling. His whole face lit up. But as soon as it came, the look on his face diminished and was replaced with a scowl. Nicoly growled lowly although I could see the panic in his eyes. Not for himself but for me. What's wrong? I asked, worried written all over my face. Go! Go back into the house and stay there. He said. Tell me. I said, getting scared. Rogues. What? I didn't want to know. The look on Nicoly's face was enough to get me to move. The last thing I saw before running back into the house was Nicoly turning into his wolf. Nicoly's POV. Turning into my wolf, I was furious. For the past week, rogues had been coming to my territory for reasons that I had no clue about. They just picked the best time to come here, note the sarcasm. The only person that I cared about as of this moment was Annabelle. She wouldn't be able to help herself in this situation. One bad move and she would be gone. I can't let that happen. I hope she's somewhere in the house, far from the windows and doors. These rouges tend to break through windows and doors to get into houses. The amount of times I had to fix them is way too many to remember. A noise that came from my left snapped me out of my thoughts. A menacing growl escaped my lips. 
Suddenly, four rouges came out from the bushes. I stood in a fighting stance, ready to jump at anyone who tried to move forward. Nicolie, why did Annabelle come back to the house looking scared? What did you do? I heard Jessica scream in my mind using the mind link. I didn't do anything. I have something to take care of. I said, replying to her, but keeping my focus on the four wolves at hand. What's going on? She asked. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Whatever you do, do not come out of the house. I said to her, blocking her from my mind. A brown wolf stepped forward. It couldn't have been the leader because it wasn't big enough. I growled a warning, telling the wolf to stop moving. It didn't listen, of course, and I took a step forward to it. Snapping my teeth at him, the wolf lunged forward, making me move out of the way quickly. It fell, hitting its head on the trunk of the tree. I mentally laughed at his stupidity. He should know not to charge at a werewolf, in fact, a soon-to-be alpha when he knew the wolf was paying attention. The wolf got up, shaking its head. It lunged forward again trying to aim for my neck, but I clawed at its face. A whimper came out of his mouth. I watched the wolf's every move, trying to see what he would do next. The wolf recovered from the damage I did to his face and stared at me. We both walked around in circles, wondering who was going to make the first move. I was getting tired of the petty games. I lunged forward, colliding my head with his, making us both fall to the ground. We rolled around for a while and I pinned him to the ground. Teeth snapping, growling, and the sounds of our actions could be heard throughout the woods. I pinned the wolf down, sinking my teeth into its neck, killing him instantly. I growled one last time and stood up looking at the rest of the wolves. A wolfish grin spread across my face. I looked at them as if I was saying who's next. A black wolf, probably the leader of this disgrace of wolves, walked behind a tree turning back into its human form. He came back naked. I grimaced at the image of a naked man in front of me. I stared at the man before me with hatred and disgust. This man looked familiar. Ah, we meet again. He said with a smirk on his face. If only I could wipe that smirk off his face, but it wouldn't be a fair fight since he's in his human form. I snapped my teeth at him. Jason Black. He is the son of the Alpha of the Dark Shadows Pack. Although his father would never let him take the title of being Alpha because of how cruel he is. Given that he turned rogue makes it even harder. My pack, being the Black Ravens pack, had nothing against them. We were actually quite friendly towards each other, but somehow Jason thought we had a little disagreement. He won't stop until he gets what he wants and I have no clue what it is. Son, what is going on? My father yelled through the mind link. I thought I had blocked everyone out. I can't lie to him. He'll just see right through me. Rogues, was all I said. And you think it's your decision to make that no one goes to help when we have rouges in our territory? He asked calmly. I knew he was on the brink of getting angry. Yes, was all I answered. Nothing was said afterwards. Would you mind shifting back so we can settle this like men? Jason asked. I scoffed but went behind a tree and shifted back into my human form. I took a pair of shorts from the bush. I keep spare ones just in case something like this happens. What do you want? I asked menacingly. He chuckled. You really are clueless. Didn't your father tell you anything? He asked with the same smirk on his face. Don't you dare bring my father into this. I growled out. Suddenly, the back door of my house opened and my father came out. He looked at him and the scene around him. His eyes finally landed on Jason. He glared at him. You have no right to be here. My father said with authority in his voice. I suggest you leave before things get out of hand. No matter how much the wolves tried to fight the command, they couldn't. As much as they don't like being bossed around, which is one of the reasons they left their original pack, they have to obey when coming across an alpha, no matter what. Being that Jason has alpha blood in him, he didn't react as much like his little pack of wolves did. They scurried off into the woods, which left only my dad, Jason, and I. What is your purpose of being here? My father asked with a cold look in his eyes. You have something that could be very powerful and useful to me. Jason answered, but looked at me. 
And what would that be? I spat. Your mate. Annabelle's POV. I didn't know what was going on and I didn't think I wanted to know. I already had too much information that needed to be embedded in my brain. My poor little head couldn't take it anymore. What I really want to know as of this moment is what Nicoly meant when he said rogues. I was currently sitting in the living room with Jessica and her mom. I was worried about Nicoly though. To me, it didn't matter if he was a wolf or not. I didn't want him to get hurt either way. Do you think Nicoly is okay? I asked Jessica and her mom. They laughed. I'm positive. Mrs. O'Connell said. I didn't know what to do at this moment. I wanted Nicoly to walk through the door right now. I felt empty. I wanted his hands wrapped around me, telling me everything was okay. I sighed in frustration. My patience was running out slowly. Don't worry your mate will come back. Jessica teased. If that was a way to stop me from thinking about Nicoly, then it sucked big time. I crossed my arms over my chest trying to calm myself down. I have never felt so worried in my life. If this was what Nicoly was talking about when he said your mate revolves around everything you do, then I now know what he's talking about. The minute I saw Nicoly walking through the door looking perfectly fine, I ran to him and put my arms around his neck, wrapping my legs around his waist. He caught me with ease and held me up with his hands just below my butt. I rested, my head in the crook of his neck. You're okay. I whispered softly to him. I breathed a sigh of relief. I'm here, kitty cat. He whispered back to me. I could feel him smiling. He walked to the chair and sat down with me facing him. I lifted my head from his neck and watched as everyone was watching us with smiles on their faces. I blushed and looked down. What is a rogue? I asked, finally being able to get that off my chest. Rogues are another kind of werewolf. They are just like us, but they don't exactly play by the rules of the werewolf world. They don't like being told what to do or live in packs like we do. Nicoly said, roaming his eyes towards his family. So why did they come here? I asked, still confused. That's another thing they do. Werewolves aren't supposed to come to another werewolf territory without permission. Being that rogues don't care, they do it anyway. He said, clearing it up for me. Now all I wanted to know was what they wanted. Surely they didn't come without a reason. What did they want? I asked curiously. Nicoly sighed by my ear. I looked up at him, seeing that he was contemplating whether he should ask me something or not. What? I asked him. He shook his head and looked away. I followed his gaze, which landed on his father. What's going on? I asked slowly, talking to Mr. O'Connell. What's your father's name? He asked. Although he looked calm, I could tell he was getting anxious about something. Kevin Mail Dante, I said. The look that came across his face was making me feel scared for myself. What does my father have to do with them? The look on Mr. O'Connell's face is something you won't see every day. He never feared anything from what I could see. It made me scared just a little of my own father. What does my father have to do with this? I asked. I can't say because it's not my place to tell you. Mr. O'Connell said. I gave him a look. I already knew about their secret. It surely couldn't be bigger than that. How do you even know my father? I asked, knowing that he must have some knowledge of who my father was by the look on his face. I don't particularly know your father. He's well known in the wolf world and very powerful. He said. Excuse me? What? My father doesn't even know people like you exist. I said. Mr. O'Connell shook his head. I think we need to pay a visit to your father. The drive to my house was immensely tense. It was only Nicoly, his father, and myself. No one said a thing. Looking out the window, I thought about all the possible outcomes that could happen as I walked in my house. My dad could tell me he hasn't a clue about what's going on or he could tell me he's a werewolf. I hope for the first one though. I'm sure my dad would tell me if he was a werewolf or not. For crying out loud, my mother would too. Or would they? 
I erased all thoughts from my mind as Nigley pulled up to my house. He unlocked the door and we all got out. Walking up to my front porch, I unlocked the door and we all went in. Mom. Dad. I'm home. I said. In here, honey. I heard my mom say from the living room. I brought guests. I said as I reached the living room. My parents turned around and looked past me. Oh, who is this? My mom asked, referring to Nicolie's father. My mom stretched out her hand to him and he shook it. Hello, I am Luke O'Connell, the father of Nicolie. I have come to talk to you. He said formally. I giggled to myself. Just like his son. I looked at my father, who was sitting on the couch watching Mr. O'Connell with a knowing stare. I raised my eyebrows. What's the problem? My father asked, getting up. Your daughter is in danger. What? I didn't know that. What do you mean danger? My father yelled, looking furious. Nicolay came behind me and wrapped his arms around me. You have to tell her what you've been keeping from her all these years. It's the only way she would be able to protect herself and for us to protect her. Mr. O'Connell said calmly. I can protect her myself. My father yelled. Dad? What's going on? I asked. I have never seen my dad like this before. He inhaled a breath and sighed. Sit. He told us. My mother was looking at me worriedly. We did as my father said and he began talking. I was planning on telling you this when you turned 18, but it seems this couldn't wait. My father said, looking at Mr. O'Connell. Annabelle, your mother and I aren't exactly human. We both belong to the supernatural world of many different creatures. Your mother is a witch and I am a werewolf. I am King of Delamart Emerture of Ask, a kingdom in the werewolf world. I rule over all werewolves. Your mother is my mate. The day you were conceived, everyone knew about you being born in this world. A week after you were born, some people tried to take you away from your mother and I. You are more powerful than you think you are. Being that your mother is a witch and I'm a werewolf, you were born with many gifts but you won't know about them until you turn 18. My father said. I looked at him blankly, not knowing what to say. How could they keep this from me? When is your birthday? Nicolie asked me. I in two weeks. I said, scared for my life now. Then that only gives us two weeks to prepare you for what's going to happen next. Mr. O'Connell said. Dad, what are you implying? I asked. Honey, you're half werewolf, half witch. Well, shit. My life just gets better and better, doesn't it? Who knew my life would be so complicated? Finding out that your boyfriend is a werewolf isn't something you would think someone would tell you. And to top it off, I'm half witch and half werewolf apparently. Not only that, my father's a king, which makes me a princess. I didn't think my parents would keep something this huge from me. I am being hunted down by someone who I don't have a clue about, let alone know what he looks like. This has been the only thing I have been thinking about ever since I woke up this morning. My life just got interesting. Didn't it? At least today's Friday. All I want to do when I come home is sleep. I'm probably running on a minimum of five hours of sleep. Not much if you ask me. Getting out of bed, I walked to my closet to see what I could wear. I wasn't trying to spend too much time on picking out an outfit. Every Friday we were able to wear regular clothes and, right now, I wasn't in the mood. I settled on a black tunic with black skinny jeans and wedge sneakers. This is exactly how I felt at the moment. Sighing, I trudged to the bathroom and took a shower. I was hoping it would make me forget about yesterday, but sadly it didn't. I sighed in frustration and walked out of the bathroom 30 minutes later. I put on my clothes, picked up my bag and phone and walked downstairs. Hey, sweetie. My mom said, smiling at me. I slightly returned the smile but didn't say anything. I haven't spoken to my parents after what I just learned last night. After Nicolay and his father left, I went straight to my room. My mom put a plate of food in front of me. I'm not hungry. I murmured to her before walking past the kitchen and going to the door. 
As I opened the door, Nikoli was standing there about to knock. One look at him and all my worries were gone for the moment. Hey, kitty cat. He said, kissing my cheek. I smiled and walked out of the door. Hi. I said. We walked to his car and I opened the door and hopped in before he could get it for me. When he got in the car, I smiled cheekily at him. Not cool. He said, smiling. I giggled. I sighed happily. Every time he's near me, everything disappears. It's only me and him together. So how are you holding up? He asked, taking a glance at me. I shrugged. What can I do but take in all the information? I said, looking out the window. In no time, we were parking in the school parking lot. I groaned and closed my eyes. I can feel something is going to happen and not a good thing. I heard Nikoli chuckle. Tired, I see. He said. You have no idea. We both got out of the car and Nikoli wrapped his arms around my waist, guiding me to the school. As we stepped in, we were stopped by none other than Jenny. I sighed inwardly and rolled my eyes. And what do you want? Nikoli asked, annoyed. You should already know what I want. Jenny said, trying to sound seductive. She failed. I snickered. And what the hell are you laughing at? She asked, glaring at me. I felt Nikoli grip my waist tighter trying to calm himself down. I smiled innocently. Just the fact that you would give anything to get a boy in your pants. Can't keep it close, can you? I asked. I was really getting annoyed with her attitude towards me. I never did anything to her. She raised her hand to hit me in my face, but before her hand could reach me, Nikoli grabbed her hand. If you know what's good for you, I would think twice before hurting her. Nikoli growled with a murderous look in his eyes. A crowd started to form around us. Jenny had a scared expression on her face. She snatched her hand away from Nikoli and looked at me with disgust. This isn't over. She threatened and walked away. Well, wasn't that fun? I said, trying to lighten up the mood. Nikoli was still holding on to me tightly. Don't you all have something better to do than stand there? Nikoli said to the crowd that formed not too long ago. Everyone hurried to their classes, which only left Nikoli and I in the hallway. I turned around to face Nikoli. Calm down. I said softly to him. He looked at me and his face softened. Kiss me. Nikoli whispered against my lips. I shivered at how close he was. I licked his bottom lip and he growled. Don't. He said, his voice strained. I giggled and pecked his lips. I tried pulling away, but Nikoli rested his hands on my face, keeping me pressed against his lips. He groaned and bit my lip. I ran my hands through his hair. He pulled away. I moaned in frustration. Now you know not to tempt me, Nikoli said against my ear. I was walking to my last class of the day with Nikoli by my side. He has been protective of me all day and I couldn't blame him. Once we got to my class, we stopped in front of the door. Are you sure you're going to be okay? He asked me. I smiled and nodded. No one is here to hurt me, I said. He shook his head. You never know what might happen. Just be careful at all times. Okay? I nodded. Behind Nikoli, there was a shadow of a person standing by the wall. His eyes were watching my every move, but I couldn't see his face. What's wrong? Nikoli asked. I looked at him and then behind his head. Nothing. I'm fine. I said, trying to prevent him from turning around. The shadow just stood there watching me. I shivered under his stare and not in a good way. Nikoli finally turned around behind him. As fast as the shadow came, it disappeared before Nikoli could see it. What happened? He said in more of a demand. I thought I saw something but it was nothing. I promise. I said, trying to convince him I was okay. He already had a lot to worry about. Putting more on his plate would just be selfish of me. He sighed, knowing this conversation wouldn't go anywhere. Okay. I'll see you after class.
he said, kissing my cheek. I nodded. I watched Nickley walk down the hall and turn the corner. When I turned around, I saw a boy standing right in front of me. He looked about my age or probably a year older. He was attractive but not my type. His eyes were an ocean blue color and his hair was a brownish color. Excuse me. He said. Yes. I asked warily. I have never seen him around here before. I was wondering if you could show me around here. I'm new. He said with a raspy voice. Any girl would go head over heels for a boy with that type of voice, but I couldn't care less. I already have someone that can take my breath away with just his presence. I smiled slightly. Sure. I said softly. Something about him made me feel uncomfortable. The way he looked so sinister, but innocent in a way was weird. What class do you have next? I asked. Art. I smiled. I have that class. It's right here. I said, pointing to the door behind me. He flashed me a toothy smile. What's your name, beautiful? I snickered at his attempt to flirt with me. Annabelle. You? I asked. He smirked devilishly and answered. Jason, Jason Black. There's something wrong with that Jason kid. Ever since we got into art class, he wouldn't stop staring at me. It wasn't the type of stare I got from Nicoly when I first met him in calculus. I didn't feel delighted or calm. I was quite disturbed and uncomfortable. I knew it showed on my face. Yeah, I know I can't draw, but that doesn't mean I don't want to concentrate on my work. Somehow he knew how I felt by the smirk he had on his face. Right now, I wanted this class to be over. It didn't help that he was sitting across from me either. He could see me perfectly and I wasn't okay with that. It freaked me out even more that he didn't even blink. Sighing in frustration, I tried to focus on my artwork. So far, the only thing on my paper was a straight line. Yeah, I know, pathetic. I glanced at the clock on the wall, just above the whiteboard. I had 20 more minutes in this class and for me that was like being set on fire and waiting to die for the pain to relinquish. Noticing that I only had 10 more minutes of class, I started to pack my things away. I wanted to be the first person out of this classroom and jump into the arms of the one person I could call mine. As the bell rang, it was like music to my ears. I sighed in relief and picked up my bag and quickly walked out of the classroom. I wasn't fast enough because a hand grabbed me by my wrist, spinning me around to face them. Jason. You can't just leave that quickly. He said, gripping my wrist tighter. Fear crossed my face. What do you mean? I asked. He smirked at me. You're the only person who I know here, for now. I'm sure you don't want to leave me here by myself. He said. I looked at him. School is over, I said in a, duh, tone. Don't use that tone with me, he yelled. I flinched and tried to pull away from him, but his grip only tightened. What do you want from me? I asked shakily. Oh gosh. Where's Nicoly when you need him? I looked around and there were people out in the hallway who seemed oblivious to what was happening. To them it probably looked like we were just playing around, but we were far from that. The way he was holding on to my wrist hurt. I want everything. He said, scanning my body like I was an object. I can't give you anything. I said. His laugh echoed throughout the hallway. Oh, but you will. He said, dragging me to a nearby closet that I hadn't noticed before. I eventually pulled away from his grip after one too many attempts that failed. What is your problem? I asked, getting aggravated with this boy. I only helped him and quite frankly, I didn't have to, but I was being nice. Right now, it's you, now do what I say and there won't be a problem. Jason said lowly. I shook my head and started to walk away. Bad move. Jason came behind me and picked me up from my waist, covering my mouth so I wouldn't scream. He threw me in the closet and came in closing the door. Now you just made us have a problem. He said, smiling wickedly at me. He started to take off his shirt. I was already panicking. Who is this guy? 
He grabbed me by the neck and smashed my back against the wall. I let out a small cry. Let me go. I said, trying to wiggle myself out of his grip. I'm sorry, but that can't be arranged. He said. He pressed his lips to mine. It felt disgusting. I moved my head to the side, making him kiss my cheek. Don't be shy, after all, you are mine. He said, kissing my neck. I cringed and pushed him away from me. Don't touch me. I was trying to be confident, but I was nowhere near having confidence. I have never been in this situation before. How many times do I have to tell you don't speak to me that way? He screamed, backhanding me in the face. I slid down the wall. Well, that's going to leave a bruise. Tears welled up in my eyes and I refused them to fall. I don't want to give him the satisfaction that what he was doing was hurting me. Suddenly, the door flung open and a tall figure towered over Jason and I. The person took Jason by the neck and threw him out of the closet, making Jason hit the wall. I was terrified. The figure crouched down to my level. I didn't dare look at them. Kitty cat? I heard them say. My head snapped up to look at the person. Nicoli. I said in between sniffles. He looked pained. I'm so sorry. He said, the hurt evident in his voice. I shook my head. Nicoli picked me up and carried me into the hallway. No one was there. The only people that were there were Nicoli, Jason, people I had never seen before except for Jessica and Luke. And then there was me. Everything's okay. Nicoli whispered to me. He gave me to Luke, who held me close to him. It didn't feel the same as Nicoli's touch, but I didn't care. I was too scared. The look in Nicoli's eyes was deadly as he walked up to Jason. You will regret touching her. Nicoli growled out at the boy on the floor. Jason laughed. Now, now you wouldn't want her to see what a monster you truly are, do you? Jason said with a smirk on his face. The only monster here is you. Nicoli said back to him. With that, Nicoli punched Jason in the face, causing blood to trickle down. I flinched at the sound of the impact of Nicoli's fist connecting to Jason's face. Jason looked at me dead in the eyes. I froze. Determination was evident in his eyes. You will be mine. To say I was terrified was the wrong word to use. I was frozen in place while Luke was holding on to me. Someone is actually out to get me. Was Jason the shadow I saw earlier today? If it was, then I felt stupid. I was actually talking to someone who plans on making me their property. The only thing I wanted was Nicoli. I wanted him to hold me and never let go. But, of course, he would have to let go sometime. Nicoli walked up to Luke and I and picked me up. I wrapped my legs around him and buried my head in the crook of his neck. I relaxed immediately at his touch. Are you okay? Nicoli whispered to me. I shook my head a no. He hugged me tighter. I'm so sorry. He said. I didn't say anything but snuggled more into him to show that it was okay. He started to walk out of the school into his car. I didn't look back, knowing that there were people behind me with worried faces. I didn't want anyone to worry about me. It made me feel vulnerable and I probably was right now. You are more powerful than you think you are. My father's words floated in my mind. I mentally rolled my eyes. I didn't feel powerful. I felt small compared to everyone else around me. I felt weak when I knew there were people out there stronger than me. Nicoli opened the door to the car. He was going to set me down on the seat but I held him tighter. He chuckled. Luke, do you mind driving to my house? Nicoli asked Luke. Technically, it's our house, but sure. Luke responded jokingly. Nicoli got in the back with me and I sat on his lap face front. Jessica sat in the front with Luke. I rested my head on Nicoli's shoulder. No one said anything for a while. Hey, look at me. Nicoli whispered to me. I slowly lifted my head from his shoulder and looked at him. He touched the side of my cheek where Jason hit me. I flinched. A bruise had probably already formed. I'm really sorry. Nicoli said. Stop saying that. It's not your fault.
I said softly, looking at my lap. It is. He growled with so much pain in his voice. I winced but pulled him into a hug. He pulled me closer to him and inhaled, calming down instantly. I'm fine. See? I said, kissing his cheek. I felt something fall on my shirt. I pulled away and raised Nicolie's chin with my finger. You're crying? I asked. Pain engulfed me. Please don't feel bad. You didn't know. I said, trying to ease the pain from him. It's only natural that I feel this way. You're my mate, Annabelle. I failed you. He said, gripping my waist tighter. I wiped the tears that were on his cheek. You didn't and don't think that. I said. I'm here, aren't I? Yes, be dash. Aren't I? I said a little louder. I just wanted him to see that it wasn't his fault. At least he got me out of there before anything worse could happen and I could think of a lot of things. He sighed and nodded. I groaned. I want to see a smile on that sexy little face of yours. I said, trying to lighten up the mood in here. It felt so suffocating. I poked his cheek and he smiled slightly. Not what I was looking for, but I'll take it. I said. He chuckled. I smiled cheekily at him. I won't make him feel like he deserved to feel the way he did because he didn't. Nicoly put his head on my chest, making me rest my hand on his head. God, you're beautiful. He said to me, looking at me through his eyelashes. I smiled. And you're sexy. I said. He pecked my lips and I pouted. He smiled and kissed me properly this time. It was slow and passionate. If I could stay like this forever, I would. I wrapped my arms around his neck, pushing myself closer to him. He groaned. I smiled and ran my fingers through his hair. Don't tempt me, kitty cat. Nicoly said through the kiss. I giggled and sucked on his bottom lip. He growled. Kitty cat. He warned. I pulled away. His eyes were still closed and I snickered. He opened his eyes and they turned black. I gasped. My heart started to beat faster. In a good way though. What did I say about tempting me? He said. I shrugged and smiled innocently. Hey you two, we're here, get out of the car before I puke. Jessica said. I turned to her to see her face scrunched up. I laughed. At least we got over the situation before. We all got out of the car and Jessica unlocked the door to the house and we went in. Annabelle, he knows who you are. He knows what you look like. He won't stop until he gets what he wants and that is you. Mr. O'Connell said. Nicoly, his father and I were sitting in his office discussing what happened in school. To be honest, I don't know why this Jason Black person is after me. I hadn't done anything to him. Wanting someone just because they are going to have more power than you is really pathetic. It just shows how low you would stoop just to have more authority over others. I wouldn't dream of leaving Nicoly. It's no use. I won't let it happen and if I did, I would be stupid for it to happen. What would he do with me? I asked. Nothing because he's not going to take what's mine. Nicoly growled out. You have to be careful. Mr. O'Connell said with seriousness in his voice. That scared me. I nodded. I can't believe someone is actually out to get me. I was walking through the woods, which happened to be a daily routine lately. The sun was setting and the sky looked beautiful. It had a tint of orange and red. Lately, I find myself in the woods all the time. There's always this voice in my head calling out to me. As I was walking through the woods, I felt a chill in the air. It was weird because it wasn't chilly. I had on a pair of pajama shorts and a white long sleeve shirt. Come to me, little one. I heard that voice say. I turned around but no one was there. It happened all the time. I would be doing nothing but minding my own business and the mysterious voice would call out to me. I would look around to see if anyone was there, but, just like always, I would find nothing. The air around me started to change. It felt different. The trees started to sway from side to side and the wind started to pick up rather quickly. 
I took in my surroundings and everything looked the same. Come to me. The voice said again. What do you want? I yelled frustratingly. I don't know who the voice belonged to. All I knew was that the voice belonged to a man. His voice was very raspy but held something that I'd heard before. Follow the path to where you are destined to end up. The voice said. There wasn't any sort of path that I could follow in the first place. Suddenly, fire started to erupt through the bushes around me. Panicking, I didn't know what to do. Slowly, a trail formed. Go, the voice said. I looked around one last time before following the trail before me. The sun had set already. The moon shone in the sky and the only thing that was being heard was owls hooting. I shivered and walked a little faster. You're almost there, Annabelle. I heard the voice say. I froze in my tracks. How did the voice know my name? It never said my name before. How do you know my name? I called out, as I knew the voice would never answer me. As I predicted, the voice never answered back. I continued to walk and I was standing in the middle of a circle. Where was I? I've never been to this part of the woods before. Why did the voice lead me here? You found me. A voice said. It wasn't the voice I got used to over the weeks. I snapped my head to the left and there stood Jason Black. Jason. It was him who the voice belonged to. J. Jason? What are you doing here? I asked shakily. Me, I think that question is for you to answer. He said with that disgusting smirk on his face. I glared at him. What do you want? I asked, all the nervousness leaving me. I thought I made myself very clear to you already. I want you and you're going to be mine. He said, stepping closer to me. I took a step back. I will never be yours. I said. He laughed dryly. We'll see about that. Turning around, he spoke something quietly and two men came out with something or rather someone tied up. I didn't see the person's face. His head was down and I could see the light trickle of blood down his face. Now, you either be mine or your precious love dies. He said simply. Precious love? The only person I love is. Nicolie? I whispered. The person's head slowly lifted up and my eyes met the ones of the only person I could ever love. Annabelle, I I love you. He said, coughing up blood. A tear fell from my eyes. What do you say, kitty cat? Jason said, emphasizing on the nickname Nicoly gave me. A scowl was placed on my face as I looked at Jason. You don't get to call me that. I snapped. He smirked. Oh, but I do. You don't have much time. You see Nicoly over there has Wolf Bane in his system. The more he's out here not getting the treatment he needs, He's slowly dying. Your only choice is to come with me or Nicoly dies slowly but painfully. Jason said with an evil smirk on his face. I stared into his eyes and started to shake. Lightning struck, causing a fire to occur. Thunder rumbled from the sky above us. What's happening? Your powers are developing. I heard the voice say. I scoffed. I haven't even turned 18 yet. I looked up at the sky and a black cloud was forming. I clenched my fist. Oh, feisty are you now? Jason said to me. A growl erupted from my mouth. You'll regret ever messing with me. I sneered at him. Really, what are you going to do? Jason asked. I raised my fist and connected it to his nose. That, I said. Looking at Jason with venom in my eyes. You little bitch. He said, holding his nose. I smirked. You think you can ruin me? I asked with a humorous laugh following along. A wicked smile graced my face. I think you thought wrong. I said dryly. Feeling heat push itself through me, I grabbed Jason by the neck, lifting him off the ground. Remember this? I asked. Jason screamed in agony. Not so tough, are you? I asked. I threw him into a tree. You need to stop. The voice appeared again. And why the hell should I listen to you? Wait, who are you? 
I replied back to it. The voice was that of a woman. Her voice was soft but held power. You're not an evil witch, Annabelle. The voice said, not answering my question. I laughed. Aren't you a little too late on the warning? I said. The voice never replied back to me. Turning around to face Jason, he was running towards me. I got sidetracked. I turned into a black shadow, letting Jason run right through me. You got your powers? Jason asked in disbelief. His lips turned upwards into a smile. Oh yeah, you would be great by my side. He said. I growled and walked up to him. Do you honestly think I would go anywhere with you? I asked viciously. Why wouldn't you? He said smartly. I growled. The ground beneath us started to shake. What's going on? Jason asked. You need to calm down, Annabelle. The voice appeared again. Not likely, I said. This feels good. The power that's within me made me feel untouchable, powerful. You're not like this, Annabelle. You weren't meant to be. The voice said. You don't know anything about me. I said, but the voice never said anything back to me. I might just kill you, that's what's going on. I said, finally replying to Jason's earlier question. You can't kill me? He said, and I smiled. I closed my eyes and reopened them slowly. Oh, really now? He backed away. Why? Your eyes, they are red. He stuttered out. I laughed. So you do have a brain. I said, tilting my head to the side. You don't have the heart to kill me. It's not in your nature. Jason said. Katamelementi eschatiety memo root. I murmured over and over again, looking at Jason. In one swift move, Jason fell to the ground screaming in pain. S. Stop. Make it stop. He cried out. I chuckled. A duvet. I said, and Jason laid lifeless on the floor. Oh, it's in my nature. I said, chuckling softly. I woke up breathing heavily. I touched my face and sweat was dripping from my forehead. Looking around, I was lying on my bed tangled in my sheets. What just happened? That dream seemed so real in so many ways. If I was like that as a witch, what would my wolf be like? I couldn't go back to sleep that night. Every time I closed or tried to close my eyes, I could feel the dream trying to fight its way back into my mind. I didn't want to be evil. Hell, I was never a violent person. Surely changing some things about you doesn't mean you have to change everything about you. I'm only going to have more power and strength. What's so bad about that? Oh, yeah, just the fact that people are trying to kidnap me for their own benefit. I sighed. I wish my life would go back to how it was. I wish that my parents didn't tell me anything. Maybe I wouldn't be so worried for myself. I sat up on my bed sighing loudly. Ugh. Why does life have to be so complicated? I really needed something that would make me fall asleep easily. I looked around my room and for once in my life I didn't feel safe. My room had always been my safe haven. It was where I could go when I needed time for myself. Lately, I haven't been feeling that way. I felt like someone had been watching every move I made. My curtains were closed because it was like someone was just waiting for the right time to attack me. My parents didn't know and Nikoli didn't know. I couldn't risk letting him know. It would be wrong of me to make him worry about me more than he already was. Suddenly, I didn't feel so good. Just thinking about all of this made my head hurt. My phone started to make a vibrating sound. Nikoli. He just texted me. I smiled slightly. Hey, kitty cat, Nikki. Don't judge the name I have for him on my phone. I think it's adorable. And what are you doing up at this time? I looked at the time on my phone and it was 12.30. I should be the one asking you that. I don't feel good. I really didn't know what to do. What if Jason came and took me away unexpectedly? What if I wasn't prepared? What would happen then? Ugh. So many questions. All of a sudden, my phone started to ring. Nikoli. Hello? I said. What's wrong? 
Kitty cat? He asked me as soon as I answered. I don't know. I just don't feel right. I said truthfully. Do you want me to come over? He asked with worry in his voice. See? The reason I couldn't tell him about what I have been really feeling ever since that dream. I intended to keep it vague. Yes, please. I said softly. I needed him right now. Okay. I'll be there before you know it. He said. I nodded, forgetting he couldn't see me. Okay. I said. We hung up and I just sat on my bed with my knees pulled up to my chest waiting for Nikoli to arrive. Evil. Jason. Kill. Witch. Wolf. I put my hand over my head trying to make my thoughts go away. I put a pillow over my face and screamed, making the noise seem like muffles. Kitty cat? I instantly took the pillow from my face and looked up to see Nikki standing in front of me. Nikki? I said. He smiled. New nickname, I see. He said, sitting down on my bed. I chuckled lightly and nodded. What's wrong? He asked me. I shrugged. I've just been shaken up by the whole Jason thing, that's all. I said. That was partially true. He picked me up and sat me on his lap. Don't worry. No one is going to take you away from me. He said into my ear. I shivered at the sound of his voice and shook my head. What if something happens and you're not there? I said. I know I'm relying on Nikoli to protect me, but I can't help it. I haven't been myself lately and everything is going downhill. I will always be there for you, no matter what. He said, kissing the top of my head. I think you need to rest kitty cat. I could hear the concern in his voice. I nodded. I lay down on my bed and Nikoli got up. Don't leave, please, I said. Wouldn't dream of it. Nikoli took off his shirt and pants and he was only in his boxers. I bit my lip looking away. I heard Nikoli laugh and he got in the bed next to me. He put his arms around me and pulled me closer to his chest. He kissed my neck. Nikoli? I breathed out. Hmm. He said, continuing to leave kisses on my neck. W what are you doing? I asked, feeling tingly inside. God, Annabelle. You're tempting me. Nikoli growled out. How? I asked. I can smell you. He said. He said against my neck. I bit my lip. I don't K dash. I stopped talking as Nikoli's hand roamed over my lower half. Annabelle, haven't we been through this already? He said. I blushed. Oh. I said sheepishly. He bit down on my neck. I gasped. Pleasure shot through every inch of my body. It was so blissful. I heard Nikoli growl. He kissed my neck one last time. What did you do? I felt like all my energy was sucked out of my body. I claimed what was mine. Nikoli said. You marked me? I asked. He licked where he just bit me. I gripped the sheets tighter, biting down on my lip for me to not make any noise. Does that answer your question? Nikoli asked with a smirk. I giggled. Get some sleep, kitty cat. Nikoli whispered to me. I nodded. I rested my head on Nikoli's chest and soon fell into a dreamless sleep with a smile on my face. I was officially Nikoli's mate. Don't give them too much trouble. Nikoli said. I rolled my eyes. Since when do I give anyone any trouble? I said to him. He smiled cheekily at me. You perv. I said, smacking him on his shoulders. He fake pouted and I laughed. See you later. I said. He kissed my cheek and I got out of the car and walked into the cafe. Just like always, Jessica was standing by the door waiting for me. You're late. She said. I laughed. Sorry, I got sidetracked. She looked at me cautiously and sniffed the air. I looked at her confused. He marked you, she said, referring to Nikoli. I smiled at her facial expression. I never thought my brother would find his mate. He's all grown up, she said dramatically. 
I laughed at her. Let's get to work, shall we? I said. Jessica nodded. We shall. She replied. I rolled my eyes and we got to work. Hey Annabelle, bring this food to table late. Natasha said. She was one of the workers here who also happened to be the manager of the cafe. I nodded and took the tray of food. Man, whoever ordered this food must be really hungry. I walked over to the table and put down the food on the table. I looked up and four guys were watching me closely. The only person I knew out of these four was Luke. Hey Annabelle. I smiled. Hey. Do I have anything on my face? I asked, as the other boys were looking at me closely. No, no, your face is fine. A boy with dark hair stuttered out. I looked at him. I glanced at Luke, who was smirking for some odd reason. What are you doing here? I asked Luke. Just checking up on you. He said casually. And why would you do that? I asked, frowning. Nicoly asked me too. He wanted to make sure that you were okay. I rolled my eyes. Why couldn't he do it himself? I asked. Do what for himself? Another voice said behind me. I turned around and Nicoly was smiling at me. You have people looking after me now? I asked, raising my eyebrows. He chuckled. I have to. It's for your safety. He said. And why couldn't you just do it? I asked boldly. His laugh rang through the cafe. Because you definitely won't get any work done. He said, whispering it in my ear. Oh shit. Aye aye. I couldn't get anything out. Just that one simple phrase set me off. I cleared my throat. Annabelle, get back to work. I heard Jessica say. I shook my head and pushed Nickley away from me. You better watch it. I said. Oh. I'm watching it all right, he said, pulling me by my waist. I think you better go before you get in more trouble, he whispered. He let me go from his grip and I backed away, more like I stumbled. I looked back at the guys at the table. Uh, I hope you like your food. Bye, I said quickly and left. Dude, she's so adorable. I heard someone say. I rolled my eyes and got back to work. I was taking an order from one of the customers when I started to get a headache. It wasn't one of those simple headaches that goes away after five minutes, it was like someone was hitting my head with a hammer in the same spot. I held my head, shutting my eyes close. Miss, are you all right? I squinted and looked at the man. I, I am fine. What was it you wanted? I asked. I wasn't really paying attention. I felt like throwing up. My body started to get extremely hot. My breathing became uneven. What's happening to me? Annabelle, what's wrong? I heard Jessica ask me once she saw how I looked. I didn't feel so good. I shook my head. Bad move. That made my head even worse. I held my head in my hands. I let out an excruciating scream. Curling up in a ball on the floor, I cried. Whatever this was, it hurt like hell. I groaned. Sweat rolled down my face. This couldn't be an allergic reaction. I haven't eaten anything that I wasn't supposed to. Annabelle. What happened? I heard a familiar voice say. I didn't reply. If I did I might just throw up. Nicoly touched my forehead. Shit. She's changing. Nicoly exclaimed frantically. Changing? What? My birthday isn't for another week. I felt Nicoly pick me up and hurriedly walked out of the door. In no time, we were in front of his house. He got out of the car and ran to my side, opening the door and picking me up. Dad! Nicoly yelled as we got into the house. My eyes were still closed. If I opened them I would feel like they would fall out. I groaned and rested my head on Nicoly's chest. Shoo! It's going to be okay, Nicoly said, trying to soothe me. Take her outside, Mr. O'Connell said. Nicoly started to walk and I gripped his shirt. The pain in my head became worse. 
I screamed, trying to make it quiet by balling up a fraction of Nicolie's shirt and biting down on it. I didn't care. I want this to stop. Tears fell from my eyes. Put her down on the floor and take a step back. Mr. O'Connell said. No. Why would I put her on the floor? He asked. Just do it. I felt my back hit something soft. Your father is on the way, Annabelle. Mr. O'Connell said. I was supposed to care about that when I felt like I was about to die. I groaned in response. What felt like hours was actually minutes. I felt every bone in my body start to break. Crack. 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 You could probably hear it. Once everything stopped, I didn't feel like myself. I felt heavier. I'm here. I looked up and I saw my father. Annabel, you're a wolf. He said. I tried to tell him I wasn't, but when I opened my mouth a howl followed. I looked down at my body in terror. My skin was replaced with black fur. I was a freaking wolf. Oh no. He said. What? Nicoly asked. Her eyes are red. He said. What? It can't be. What's wrong about that? Mr. O'Connell asked. Her eyes are a rare color. Not many people of our kind have those colored eyes. This could mean she would become a stray and turn evil or she might not. My father explained. What happens if she turns evil? Nicoly asked with a horrid expression on his face. There might not be a chance of her coming back. I woke up to a beeping sound in my ears. Ugh. What is that noise? Can't a girl sleep peacefully for once? I tried opening my eyes, but it was no use. The beeping sound got louder and louder by the minute. I groaned and finally was able to open my eyes. I was in a bed with people walking around. Nurses. Am I in the hospital? What happened? Come to think of it, I don't even remember. Good, you're awake. Someone said beside me. Turning my head to where the voice came from, a man was smiling down at me. The way he was looking at me almost made me laugh, he looked like a puppy. You're a nurse? I asked, trying to keep my composure together. He continued to smile with a confused look on his face. Why, yes I am. He said. I giggled. Why am I in the hospital? I asked him. You're not. You're in the care of the pack doctors in the O'Connell's home. He said. I looked at him weirdly. They have a hospital in their house? I asked, confused. The man laughed. No, they have a little infirmary in the basement of their house. I'm sure going to a regular hospital would cause people to ask questions. He said. Questions? May I ask what happened? I asked. You don't remember? I'm sorry, but it's not for me to tell you. I will call Nikolai and your father here to come see you now. The doctor said. I nodded slowly. By the way, what's your name? Harry Nicholson at your service. He said. I laughed. I sat up thinking about what could have possibly gone wrong that even Harry couldn't tell me why I was in here. I hoped it wasn't bad. Everything that happened last night was a blur. I sighed and rubbed my eyes. Annabelle? I peeked through my fingers and Nicolie was walking well, running up to me. I took my hands away from my face and smiled up at him. Thank God, you're all right. He said as he stood by my bedside. He kissed my forehead and caressed my cheek. How are you feeling? He asked me, concern evident on his face. I'm fine, never better. Do you know what happened? I asked. Hopefully, he would be willing to tell me. He looked hesitant but nodded. I'll tell you when you get out of here. He said. He said. I sighed. Is it that bad? I asked. For someone else of our kind to do it, no. But for you, it's a little extreme. Don't worry, everything will be okay. He said. I nodded. When can I get out of here? I asked. I'm not sure. I'll go ask. Nicoly said. He smiled at me and left. In a few minutes, he came back. 
You can leave now. He said. Harry came back and did a little checkup and unhooked me from all the wires that were stuck to me. He smiled at me. It was nice taking care of you, kid. Harry said with a cheeky grin on his face. I giggled and got up with the help of Nicoly. Uh, no. I will be carrying you. Nicoly said. I shrugged. Fine by me. I said. He laughed and picked me up bridal style, taking me upstairs. I couldn't be any more shocked than I already am. This has got to be a sick joke or something. What did I look like? I asked Mr. O'Connell. Nicolie's parents, my parents, Nicolie and I were all in Mr. O'Connell's office discussing what happened. After Nicolie took me to Jessica's room, who gave me clothes to change into, his father wanted to speak to me. You were a black wolf with red eyes. Nicolie said. I already knew that but still I couldn't believe it. I looked exactly like that in my dream except I was a witch with red eyes. Surely that has to be a coincidence. What's the fuss about then? I asked. It shouldn't matter what my wolf looked like. Maybe my dream was just a nightmare from all the information everyone was feeding me. There is a 50-50 chance of you becoming evil. Your wolf is rare in our kingdom. You either fight it or endure it. My dad said, looking at me with sad eyes. My eyes widened. This can't be happening. I have something to tell you guys. I said nervously. Maybe telling them my dream might be the best thing to do right now. What is it? Nicoly asked. A few nights ago, I had a dream that I was a witch with red eyes and I killed Jason. I said, avoiding eye contact from everyone. Gasps filled the room. My mother started to cry. My poor baby, what's going to happen to her? My mother cried out. I don't know, we would just have to wait and see. My father said. Why didn't you tell me? I looked up into Nicolie's eyes that were filled with pain. I didn't think it meant anything. I said defensively. What else happened in your dream? My father asked. Well, I turned into a black shadow and I picked Jason up by his throat, throwing him into a tree. I said, my gaze fixated on my lap. Shit. I heard my father say. What? I asked. Your abilities aren't going to come on your 18th birthday. It has already started. In your dream, you already have two abilities that have already started to develop. These two abilities can be very valuable for someone to want you. You can see the future and you're able to shapeshift into anything when danger comes your way. The one that is most common for you is a demon. My father finished. I looked at him in disbelief. I turned into a demon. I said, exasperated. What's going to happen on my 18th birthday? I continued to ask. You will be at your absolute strongest, and we won't know what's going to happen to you until that day comes. My dad said. I don't want to be evil. I cannot be evil. What else happened that night I shifted into a wolf? I asked. Something told me they were only telling me this because I had done something horrible. A look of hesitance crossed everyone's face. Well, I said impatiently. You almost killed your father. I have only one thing to do. I either let the darkness take over me or I try to find the light. I was walking to lunch with Jessica and Luke. You could say Luke and I have been hanging out lately. Nicoly ordered him to a watch me when he isn't here. As you can see, he's not here. I don't know why he thinks I need a babysitter, I was fine. I mentally sighed in my head and walked into the cafeteria with Luke and Jessica by my side. Are you eating? Luke asked me. I shook my head. No. I'm not hungry. I grumbled. Oh come on don't be like that, think of me as a friend. He said. I laughed softly. Yeah. Whatever you say. I said. He chuckled. Jessica, are you eating? I asked her. She looked at me like that was the most ridiculous question ever. Well, duh, I'm a growing wolf, you know. She said, whispering the last part so no one could hear. I laughed and walked to the table with Luke. If I didn't know Jessica was a wolf, I would have looked at her like she was crazy. 
I mean I have never seen a small girl like Jessica eat so much. As we sat down at a table, Jessica started to scarf down her food. I looked at her in amazement. You know, any normal human being wouldn't eat like that. Luke said. I giggled. Well, if you must know I am not particularly human, am I? She asked with her mouth full. I looked at her in disgust. Not cool. I said, scrunching up my face. The bell rang for us to get to our next class. I groaned. I feel like something is going to happen today. Yeah, yeah, we know, none of us want to go to class, but you are going to get your butt up from this chair and go anyway. Jessica playfully scowled at me. I chuckled and got up and walked to the gym. At least, I have it with Luke. Poor Jessica. Oh, uh, well, I'll see you next period. Jessica said dramatically. I rolled my eyes and nodded. Sure thing. We walked our separate ways and Luke and I walked to the gym. So, Miss Thompson. Luke started. I glared at him. He chuckled. You know you have Nicolie totally whipped. He said. I blushed. That dude would do anything for you and I mean literally anything. He continued. Are you trying to embarrass me? I said as I felt my cheeks growing warmer within a second. He looked at my face and burst out laughing. Damn, I don't think I've ever seen someone's face so red when they aren't mad. Luke said. I shook my head. Shut up. I murmured. We got to the entrance of the gym. Luke opened the door. You first, madam? He said with a posh accent which didn't sound too right. I raised my eyebrows and walked in. Class hadn't started yet, so everyone was talking and fooling around. Well, 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 if it isn't the boyfriend thief. I heard a voice that I didn't want to hear right now. Jenny Webster. She hadn't bothered me in a while and I was starting to think she actually realized and got it through her thick skull that Nicolie didn't want her. Or the fact that I don't get offended by her outburst, but I guess I was wrong. I ignored her and walked to the bleachers, sitting down with Luke following me. Just ignore her. Luke whispered to me. I glanced at him. What do you think I'm doing? I snapped. He raised his arms in surrender. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. I chuckled. It's cool, you couldn't beat me if you tried. He said, trying to look all cocky. I laughed. Sure. I said. Uh, too scared to say anything back now that your precious boyfriend isn't here. Jenny said. I scoffed and ignored her still. She walked up in front of me and a crowd started to form around us. Hey, I'm talking to you. She said, pushing my shoulder a little too hard. She was beginning to get on my nerves. Hey, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Luke said, standing up. She laughed that annoying laugh of hers. And what are you going to do about it? She sneered at him. He chuckled. Oh, not me, her. He said, pointing at me. I was too busy looking down at my lap to see what Jenny was doing. Please, she couldn't hurt a fly. Jenny said, chuckling. People around us were laughing. I cracked my knuckles, not wanting to do anything. You couldn't do anything even if you tried. She taunted me. An emotion I couldn't quite place sat in the pit of my stomach. Rage. Anger. I don't know. I just felt so much hatred towards this girl. I clenched my jaw and glared up at Jenny. She looked taken aback by my facial expression, but it was soon replaced with a glare of her own. Do you really want to know what I can do? I asked through gritted teeth. I stood up in front of her. You mean what you can't do? She said. I growled lowly at her. For some reason, I felt like I was better than her. I felt like I could do anything at that moment. I was tired of this girl. I haven't done anything to her. Now she gives me a reason to hurt her oh so badly. I could smell the fear coming off from her. I think you're scared. I said, looking her in the eyes. She laughed. No, why would I be scared of you? She spat. Because you know I can hurt you. I said calmly, 
but I knew she could sense the danger in my tone. This wasn't me. Someone else was talking for me, but it was through my mouth. I couldn't really explain it. All I knew was that I wasn't myself. Annabelle, don't do this. I heard Luke say. I didn't dare listen. The only thing my eyes were focused on was Jenny. Everyone else in here didn't matter. Do you know what I do to people like you? I asked. My voice sounded like two people were talking. Jenny backed away from me, hitting her back against the wall. You won't do anything. She said, scared. I like the fact that you're confident even when you're in this situation. I said with a humorous laugh. Now what should I do with you? I continued, tapping my index finger on my chin. I smiled evilly and looked back at Jenny. She gasped and cowered back in fear. Eerie eyes. She said. I laughed dryly. Oh, I know. I said. I was standing right in front of her. This might hurt a little. I whispered in her ear. I took a step back and concentrated on her. I wanted this to be the most painful thing she would ever feel. Considering that I don't have to touch her is a bonus. I don't want to have to touch her filthy body. I looked at her for a few seconds. See you can't D. She was interrupted by the screams that overtook her. Sorry. What were you saying? I asked, laughing to myself. The only thing I heard were her screams. About five minutes later, I figured I should stop torturing her. I knew what was happening to her was because of me. But to her and to everyone else apart from Luke, they thought that Jenny was screaming for the heck of it. I backed away from her and walked away. People cleared the way and I sat back down on the bleachers. What did you do? Luke whispered shouted to me. He looked panicked for some reason. I did what I should have done a long time ago. I said calmly. You used your powers for the wrong reasons. Luke said. I shrugged. It was only a matter of time before I did. I said, smirking. This isn't you, Annabelle. Luke said, frowning. A frown crossed my face too. What am I exactly? I didn't want this, yet I got it. I'm not the one doing this. Someone else is. But who? A voice echoed within me. You what the hell were you thinking? My dad yelled at me. I was sitting on my bed in my room trying to ignore my father's presence, but with the way he was screaming, it was almost impossible. She was getting on my nerves. I said for the hundredth time. I don't think you understand the concept of using your powers for good, and not just because you feel like it. My dad said, getting angry by the minute. I understand. I just don't care. I said, shrugging my shoulders. If this were a cartoon, my father would have smoke coming out of his ears already. Are you insane? Annabelle, I'm trying to help you and you're not listening. My father yelled. His face was red, showing the anger that was brimming in him. You're not supposed to be like this. I don't want you to become so dangerous. You're not evil. He said softly. I clenched my jaw. Do you know how many times I have heard that? I bit my tongue from saying anything I would regret. Can you get out of my room? I spoke, venom making its way into my tone. Annabelle, I. My father started but I cut him off. Get out! I yelled. I didn't look at my father. I already knew he had that sorrowful look on his face. He sighed. I heard the door open and his footsteps sounding farther away by the second. I sighed loudly and put my head face first on my pillow. That is evil. This isn't like you. Just shut up already. I said to myself. This isn't helping. I need to do something. I took my phone from my nightstand and unlocked it. Looking through my contacts, I found Jessica's name. Hello. She said when she picked up. Hey. Can I come over? I asked. Why are you asking? Just come over. She said with a slight chuckle. Okay, be there in ten. I said. We hung up after saying our goodbyes. I picked up my keys and jacket and walked downstairs. Where do you think you're going, young lady? 
my mother asked in a strict tone. I looked around me and stared at the door. Out, I said in an obvious tone. You're not going anywhere, with your changes, you can't go out, she said. I laughed. Oh, yeah. Watch me, I said. I opened the door and walked out. Bye, I said, closing the door before she could say anything else. I walked through the woods. It was the only way I knew to Nicolie's house and it was faster. The woods had a calming sense over me like Nicolie did and I liked it. Taking a deep breath, I thought over everything that has happened to me over the last few days. What am I becoming? In no time, I was at the back of the house. I opened the door and stepped in. I walked to the living room and pulled out my phone. I'm at your house. I texted Jessica. I looked up to see a few shocked faces. Mr. O'Connell was one of them. I think I just disturbed a meeting. Oh, sorry. I said. Where did you come from? Mr. O'Connell asked me. From the back door. I walked through the woods to get here. I said, shrugging. So, you're our soon-to-be Luna. A man who looked to be in his early thirties said. Excuse me? I asked. Dad, I Annabelle. I turned around and Nicoly was standing in front of me. His face beamed but then dulled down. What the hell were you thinking? He yelled. I flinched but held my ground. You know that's the same exact thing my dad said. I replied. Do you know what could happen to you? He asked. I shrugged. I know and I don't care. Like I told my dad, she deserved it. It doesn't matter what she deserved. You just broke the only barrier you had of not becoming what we all fear you might become. He said. I scoffed. I'm not becoming anything. I'm just going through some changes. I said. You're becoming what I don't want you to be. Nicolie whispered, pulling me by the waist. I sighed and rested my head on his chest. Don't worry. I'll be fine. I said, but I didn't know if that even convinced me. Nicolie, you're keeping my guest hostage. I looked up and Jessica was standing at the foot of the stairs. Gotta go. I said and ran to Jessica. What's a Luna? I asked Jessica as we were sitting on her bed. It's like a leader, while the man is called an alpha, the woman or the alpha's mate is called Luna. She said. So, you're saying I'm Luna because Nick is going to be alpha soon. I said, summing up the whole thing. She nodded. Pretty much, now what's up with you and Jenny? She asked. I rolled my eyes. Not her too. I was slowly getting irritated of this subject. I get it. I used my powers for the wrong reasons. Nothing. She just got on my nerves today and it ticked me off. I said. Is it because your powers are slowly coming in? She asked. I rolled my eyes. Is everyone going to put everything on my newly found powers? I don't know and I don't care. I snapped at her. She flinched and I sighed. Sorry. I apologized. She shrugged. It's fine. She said. I felt something in the pit of my stomach. My heart started to beat faster. You have to come to me. A voice said. It was the same voice I heard in my dream. What's wrong? Jessica asked. I looked around the room. I need to get out of here. I got up, ran out of the room and down the stairs without saying anything to Jessica. The full moon is tonight. The voice said again. You better not do anything out of the ordinary like you did last time. It said, taunting me like it wanted me to do the opposite of what it said. I stopped at the bottom of the stairs feeling dizzy. Annabelle, what's wrong? Jessica asked as she followed me out of her room. Nothing. I said. I walked down the remaining stairs quickly away from her, not wanting to be near her right now and I didn't even know why. What does the full moon have to do with all of this? I thought I was a shapeshifter who could change whenever I wanted? As if reading my mind, the voice appeared in my mind. Indeed you can, but you're not like any other. 
I groaned. Annabelle, tell me. Jessica insisted. I turned around and faced Jessica with a glare on my face. Why don't you just shut up? I roared at her. She rolled her eyes. Annabelle, let's go outside. She said, taking my wrist. She looked around her and I realized that I was yet again in the living room interrupting whatever this was. Can't they just go home? Oh, wait, this wasn't even my home. What's going on? I heard Mr. O'Connell ask. I laughed. Your daughter is getting on my nerves. I said through gritted teeth. The full moon. He whispered, but I heard it. Take her outside. Nicolie said hurriedly. Am I your property or something? I asked Jessica. She looked at me confused and shook her head. Then let go of me, I said. She immediately took her hand away from me and I smiled. Go? The voice said. Go where? I asked myself. I dashed out of the house and ran through the woods. As soon as I stopped, a blood-curdling scream came out of my mouth. Good, you're changing. Your powers would be on full blast. The voice said. I looked down and I was in my wolf form. Whatever I say, do it. Now follow wherever my voice takes. I ran to where the voice led me to. As I looked around, I was in the middle of a circle surrounded by candles. This seems so familiar except the candles. Where am I? I changed back into my human form and, due to me being a witch, I was fully clothed, but in a different outfit. The voice in my head felt like it was no longer in my head. I felt sort of empty. This feels like the dream that I had. A snap of a twig brought me out of my thoughts. My heart started to beat faster and faster by the minute. What if my dream is about to come true? The only good thing that happens out of this is that I killed Jason. I hope Nicolie isn't here. I turned around and saw nothing. You found me. A raspy voice said. I knew that voice. Jason. I started to panic. My dream can't be real. Why am I here? I growled out. I believe you wanted to be here. You're the one that led yourself to me. Jason said. Whatever it is you want me for, I won't do it. I said shakily. His laugh boomed throughout the woods. He walked out of the darkness that surrounded him. Right now, I didn't feel so powerful. I felt small compared to him. Oh, you will, and if you won't, I'll just have to convince you. After all, it's only a matter of time before you actually turn evil. You're going through a phase right now. He said confidently. How do you know all of that? I asked, slightly regaining my confidence. I have my ways. You will be mine one way or another. Jason said, with a smirk on his face. I tried running out of the circle, but a force held me back. What the hell did you do? I screeched in horror. You didn't actually think I would let you get away from me, did you? Jason taunted me. Because your powers are on full blast due to the full moon, I can't have you running out on me, so I hired a witch to do this for me. He continued. I scoffed. Are you that scared of me? I asked, rolling my eyes. He chuckled. Oh, I'm not scared of you. You should be the one scared of yourself. You don't know the things you can do. He said softly. He walked closer to me and if it weren't for this force field he had put up I would have destroyed him. I want you on my side. I could love you more than Nicolie can. He said. I growled. You're nothing but a sick bastard, you know that. I yelled. Jason glared at me and backed away. Have it your way. He said. Guys. He yelled. As if on cue, two men came out of nowhere and stood behind Jason. I had a feeling I already knew what I was about to see. Jason stood in front blocking me from seeing whatever he was hiding. Now you either do as I say and become the woman I want you to be or you will be mateless for the rest of your life. Jason said slowly to me. He moved to the side and a beaten up Nicolie came into my view. I crumbled to the floor and looked at him. Nicoli? I whispered. I whispered. His head slowly lifted up and his eyes fixated on mine. 
I love you. He mouthed. A soft whimper came out of my mouth. You just couldn't stay away from me and your precious mate couldn't stay away from you. Now look at the mess you brought him in. Jason said, laughing cruelly. I don't want you or any of this. I hissed. But after this, you will? Jason said. I'm doing you a favor. You know you want to be evil, but everyone is telling you you're not like that. Being that Nikolai is the one that doesn't want you to turn evil the most, I'm giving you the satisfaction of taking him out of your life. Jason continued. I growled. You do not have the power to do that. I said. I could feel my body temperature rise and my eyes change color. But I do. You see, I have a witch that's lurking somewhere around here chanting a spell on your dear mate. The more she chants that spell, the more Wolf Spain Nicolae would have in his system. Only, I have the authority to tell her to stop. When I do, the poison would leave Nicolae's body. All you have to do is take me up on the offer I gave to you and Nicolae would be fine. Jason said. I glared at Jason. He is one sick bastard. The clock is ticking. You only have a few minutes left. What would your answer be? He said, getting impatient. I looked back at Nikoli. He was already staring at me, telling me not to do it with his eyes. But I had to. Either he dies or I become what everyone fears of me becoming. I took my eyes away from Nikoli and looked back at Jason. Fine. I say. Jason smiled widely at me. The force that was keeping me away from going anywhere disappeared and I ran to Nikoli. The two men that were holding onto his arms let him go, making him fall face first. I growled and the two men backed away. I bent down to Nikoli. W what did you do? Nikoli tried saying. I did what I had to do. I said. Nikoli looked up at me after much struggle. You didn't have to do anything. I would have died for you rather than you becoming everyone's worst nightmare," he said, trying to lighten the mood. It didn't work and he knew that. I love you, he said, a tear falling from his eyes. I promise I will come find you, he promised. I love you too, I said, already crying. All right, that's enough, Jason said, dragging me away from Nikoli. No. Please. Let me go, I said, thrashing around. I was too weak from the force field he put up to use my powers. No can do, sweetheart, Jason said. The last thing I heard was Nikoli calling my name before I blacked out. Well, this wasn't what I dreamed would happen. Jason's POV As I dragged Annabelle away from Nikoli, I couldn't help but feel happy. You may think I'm delusional and sick, but I don't think that low of myself. I thought of myself as someone that would do anything to get what they wanted. Perseverance is what I like to call it. Taking Annabelle wasn't only for my own benefit or to be the most powerful werewolf. I wanted her to love me. Yeah, I didn't deserve love and she wasn't the only person who thought that. The moon goddess told me that. The moon goddess wasn't more or less a human than us. She was just like us, but just a more powerful being with the help of nature. She controlled who of our kind were destined to be with. Our mate, when I just turned 16, she paid my family a visit and told me she wouldn't give me the satisfaction of having someone to love. She thought I was incapable of love because of the way I had been behaving and doing everything that I wasn't supposed to. I remembered it like it was yesterday. A knock on the door had me groan in protest. I was relaxing on the couch with a girl who I still had yet to remember her name. I think it's Maya. No, Ariana, she's human, who cares? I shrugged, got up and opened the door. My parents were in their room doing who knows what. They are happily married and are mates. I wonder what my mate would be like. Opening the door, I came face to face with the most famous lady in the wolf world, Celeste Fitzgerald. She is the moon goddess and rarely shows herself to people. It's a pleasure for you to be here. I said, bowing my head in respect. She smiled and stepped in. She looked straight ahead of me and saw Giselle Lauren whatever, a girl on the couch. I will figure it out later. A human. 
She asked, perplexed, it's rare for a werewolf to date a human. We only come in contact with them if we absolutely have to, like when going to school. A werewolf being mated with a human is rare also. The moon goddess or celeste, you could say, would have had a good reason for it to be so. I laughed nervously. She's just a girl I'm with. I said. She nodded. And your parents? She asked, looking around. They are upstairs. I'll go get them. I said to her and rushed to my parents' room. I knocked on the door but didn't go in. Who knows what I would see? Mom, Dad, we have a guest that wants to see you. I heard shuffling and my mom answered. Okay, we'll be down in a minute, honey. She said. I walked back downstairs. They will be down soon. I told Celeste. She nodded and took a seat in the living room. I tapped the girl on the shoulder and nodded my head for her to follow me. She got up and I opened the door. You need to go. I said. What? Why? And who is that lady? She asked me. I ignored her question. There are some things that need to be taken care of. I'll call you. I said. She smiled and nodded. Okay. Bye. She left and I shook my head. I was never going to call her. Walking back into the living room, my parents came down the stairs. Jason, where is the person you were talking about? My mom asked. I pointed to Celeste and my mom gasped. Celeste turned around and smiled. I'm so sorry to come here unannounced. I have some important news to tell you all. She said, my parents and I took a seat on the couch facing her. I came here to inform you that I can't give Jason his mate. I looked at her in pure horror. I have been waiting ever since I turned 16 for my mate, and now I can't have one. I laughed. You're joking, right? I asked. My father hushed me to be quiet. And why is that? My father asked. I have been watching your son, and he doesn't really deserve to have a mate. The way he treats people and behaves is unacceptable. I don't want his mate to feel unwanted. She said. I looked at her like she was crazy. Why would I treat my mate like that? When you get your mate, you would do anything for them. I would never treat my mate like that. I yelled at her. She put her hand up telling me that's enough, but I didn't stop. You are one crazy lady. Out of everyone, you should be the one to know that mates would never treat each other like that. I said, with that, I stomped out of the house. It's been two years. Ever since that day, I had acted differently. I left my pack because my father said that I couldn't take the alpha title if I didn't change my ways and because I didn't have a mate made it worse. In order for you to become alpha, you need to find your mate first. The alpha becomes stronger. I have watched Annabelle ever since she moved here. I already knew who she was, including her family. I wanted her as my mate, not as Nicolie's. I wanted her to love me. Before I left the woods with Annabelle, I gave her to two men that I brought with me. I walked over to Nicolie and crouched down to his level. He was sitting up against the tree trying to get his strength back. I'm going to have so much fun with your little mate. I said with a slight chuckle. You wouldn't dare touch her. He said weakly. I would. She's your mate, but I can change that with a little magic, of course. But for now, she's yours and you're going to be an alpha. An alpha's mate always develops things faster and I'm sure Annabelle hasn't gone through it yet, but it will come soon. I said, beating around the bush. I wanted Nicoli to figure out what mess he got himself into. Realization flashed across his face. No! He said, trying to stand up, but failed. Yes, your lovely mate will go into heat soon and guess who's going to be the one to satisfy her. I said, smiling wickedly at him. His eyes were wild with a glare on his face. You're going to regret everything you have done. He threatened. I laughed. He was in no position to pass a threat my way. You have a week to find out where Annabelle is. If you don't, then she's mine. I found myself in the back of a car. I looked around and saw that Jason was in the driver's seat and the two men that manhandled me were sitting on either side of me. I was still too weak to do anything. Where is this lunatic taking me? I tried finding a way to get out without using my magic, seeing that I couldn't use it at the time being. Don't think you will be able to get out of here, you won't. One of the men said to me. I glared at him and sighed in defeat. What am I going to do? The car ride was silent and I wondered how long Jason had been driving. 
Jason didn't even seem to notice that I was awake. All the power that was being surrounded around me drained my energy. I was in no shape to take on Jason and I needed to figure a way out of this fast. The car began to stop and I looked at Jason. He turned around and faced me. Oh good, you're awake. He said, smiling. I looked at him as if he was crazy. Why the hell are you smiling? I spat at him. His smile only got wider. We're going to have a wonderful time together. He said, getting out of the car. I glared at him. If only looks could kill. It would spare me the trouble of having to go through this torture. The two men who I didn't know the names of, opened the car door and one of them dragged me out. I looked around the unknown area to see a house that looked bigger than Nicolie's. I didn't care though. I liked Nicolie's house better. Welcome home, kitty cat. Jason said, coming towards me. I snatched my hand out of the man who was holding onto me with a harsh grip and looked at Jason. Don't call me that. I said, growling. He smiled. I can call you whatever I want. He said, taking my hand and dragging me towards the house. Once we got in, I was mesmerized by its beauty. I couldn't lie. The house was beautiful. I just want to know why a disgusting man like Jason would have a house like this. The walls were painted white with paintings by famous people placed neatly on them. The living room had a nice flat screen TV with a fireplace and everything in it was red. You like it, I thought I should buy a place that would be suitable for you. Jason said. Is this man crazy? What is wrong with you, I will never love you, get that through your thick skull. I screamed at him. Jason looked over at me with a glare plastered on his face. You will, all in due time, love. He said. I scoffed. That would never happen in a million years. The world would have to be handed over to zombies for that to happen and, since that won't happen, it's never going to happen. Jason led me upstairs, which I have to say was carpeted. I may like this house, but I didn't like the person who lived in it. I glanced at Jason with disgust in my eyes. We reached a door and he opened it. A room. I hoped I would at least get my own room if I had to stay here. I was slowly getting my energy back. By tomorrow, I should be able to make an exit out of here. I hope this is my room and my room alone. I said, watching Jason's every move. He looked at me. Not everyone can get what they want, can they? He said. This would be our room since we are going to see a lot of each other. He said with a smirk. If only I could smack that smirk off his face. I scowled at him. You aren't going to step foot in this room while I'm in it. I'm sure you have enough rooms here that we wouldn't need to share. I said, crossing my arms. Now I want you to cast this spell. Jason said. I didn't need to ask him what kind of spell this was. Apotheosis synthetic. Just by the name of it, I knew it was a dark spell. Now why the hell would I do that? I will not do your dirty deeds for you. I said. Jason, A, which that was helping him, and I were outside in the woods. It seems as if everyone who were werewolves moves to some place where there is a forest nearby. You will do this for me if you want to see your poor mate again. He growled out. I knew he was manipulating me. Like I said, I will not. I don't have the energy anyway, thanks to you. I said angrily. Oh, but you will, Nima? He said. The witch came up to me and started to murmur a spell that was unknown to me. Akinala menis tech scrushi. He said. I didn't know any spells. I barely knew what I was and what I was capable of doing. I haven't been trained like my father said I had to be. We didn't think I would be in this situation anytime soon. Now do as I say. Jason said. I didn't know what was happening. I opened my mouth to do as he said. From what I could tell, the witch cast a spell that made you do whatever someone told you to do. As I was about to say the spell, I could hear a voice in my head. No! Don't do it! The voice said. It was a male's voice. Who are you? I asked the voice. It's me, Nicolie. Please tell me you're okay. 
he asked worriedly. I dismissed his last question. How did you get into my head? I asked, surprised. We are bound together. I claimed you and we are now one, but not completely. I will explain everything another time. Tell me you're okay. He said. I'm fine. But how did you know what I was going to do? I asked. I can hear you. Because we are bound together, I can hear your thoughts and things around you. But I don't know where you are. Do you know where you are? He asked. No. All I know is I'm in a house and I don't know where it is. I said, tears wanting to spill from my eyes. I'll find you. I promise. I love you. Nikoli said. I love you too. With that I felt him disappear. Well, are you back to reality? I heard Jason say. I'm not doing it. I said bluntly. He looked taken aback and looked at the witch beside him. What happened? He asked, getting angry. Why are you doing this? I asked, disrupting the answer the witch was going to give. He chuckled. Because you have what I want. He said calmly. And what exactly do I have that you want? I said. Power, of course. You have the power to do what I want and you're going to do it whether you like it or not. He said, walking up to me. What is the real reason you want me here? I asked. No one can just take someone for one reason, of course. There is always another catch to cover up their original plan. I stared at him cautiously waiting for him to answer my question. Well, I said, getting impatient. Love. He practically screamed at me. I was surprised by the answer he gave. I started to laugh. You? Love? I said in between a fit of giggles. That's ridiculous. I said. Jason looked beyond furious, but I didn't stop laughing. And what is so funny about me wanting love? He spat. I soon stopped laughing and had a serious expression on my face. You can't love. You will never be able to love. You are incapable of loving someone. The way you treat people, for example me, isn't going to get anyone to love you. I said, getting worked up. And if you think you brought me here to love you, then you're just setting yourself up for failure. I continued. Something in me woke up and I was glad that I had the strength for this. You are nothing but a man who can't accept the fact that you don't have what other people have. It's your fault that you can't love. Your actions say it all. I said. Jason never said anything. He just stood there breathing heavily. If you want love you're going to have to change and you and I both know that won't happen. I watched as Jason stood there. He didn't do anything for a minute and I just watched him. How dare you? He said, his voice getting louder with every word. I laughed. I don't know what he didn't get out of the little speech I just gave him. Let's see, you brought me here thinking that I would fall for you. I said. You think that I will love you. How can you think such a thing? I have a mate for God's sake. Have you thought about that or are you just stupid? I asked. So are you saying that if you didn't have a mate, you would love me? He asked, smirking. Was that all he got out of this? I rolled my eyes, getting angry. That is the last thing I was getting at. I'm saying that your head is too thick to register any new information. I said, walking up to him. With every step I took, he backed away. You are the most ignorant person I have ever met in my life. You are making my life miserable because you want to satisfy yourself. You think everything revolves around you. You have people doing your dirty work. I said, glancing at the witch and pointing to myself. You're not going to get far in life if you keep this up. I yelled. Jason looked scared for a fraction of a minute, but he held his ground. You can't do anything about it. I have you and you're not going anywhere. Jason said. I would make sure of that. He continued. I chuckled. Is that so? I asked with a small smile on my face. It is indeed the truth. I shook my head. 
You don't listen, do you? I asked. I felt myself becoming a whole completely different person. I wasn't myself at that moment and I didn't care. Jason needed a lesson to learn and I was going to be the one to give it to him. I felt my eyes turn from brown to red. I tried fighting off the change I was going through, but I didn't have the strength to fight it. I was way over the top to even try. I took a slow step towards Jason, who didn't look the least bit scared. That's about to change. I thought, smirking to myself. You should stop if you don't want to get hurt. Jason said, glancing at the witch, Nima. I laughed. Letting other people fight your battles, I see. I said, glaring at him. I want to teach you something you'll never forget. I said. Before he could even ponder on what was going to happen, I dashed forward and lunged for his neck. As I gripped onto his neck I made sure I squeezed it hard. Now. Do you have anything to say? I asked. From the corner of my eye, I could see Nima coming towards me. I didn't know what I was doing, but I took my free hand and stretched it towards her. In no time, she was lifted off of the ground and into the air. I was shocked but masked my face to be neutral. I looked back at Jason, who also had a shocked look on his face. I smirked. Cool, right? I said. Now what makes you think you can rule me? Do you have any idea of what I can do? I continued to ask, but this wasn't my voice. Jason tried to say something but I only squeezed his neck harder. My questions weren't to be answered. All of a sudden, I was pulled off of Jason. He fell to the ground gasping for air. I whipped around to see the two men that had the nerve to manhandle me. Don't you know it's wrong to put your hands on a lady? I asked. In a flash, I snapped the first person's neck who was close to me. He's lucky he's a wolf or he would be dead. I took the other man's hand that was on my shoulder and flipped him over, breaking his hand. He fell over in pain. It's such a shame that I didn't know any of your names. I said innocently. I turned back to Jason, who was starting to get up. Nima was by his side. Ugh. I forgot about her. Do it, do it now. A voice said. It was the voice I knew all too well. So now she wants to come back, whoever she is. And now you chose to come back. I thought. I'm here to help. It said. Help? You made me get into this mess. You told me and I repeat follow wherever my voice takes you. I said, starting to get more angry. I looked at Nima and Jason, who got up from the floor. I wasn't the one to get attacked, so I watched carefully. I didn't think you would end up where you were. You have a gift of seeing the future, but it will not always go right because you are new to this. The voice said. I scoffed. Yeah, right. Nima approached me and I stood there getting bored. Why are you helping him? I asked, trying to spark up a conversation. I knew this would be a long night for all of us. I don't have to answer to you. Nima said. I laughed. Oh, I love your attitude. I said. Do it now. The voice said again. Do what? I asked. A spell to cause pain and inflammation. It is the only way to stop both of them. The voice said. Isn't that dark? I said, more of a statement than a question. No, it's a defense spell, although if you use it in the wrong way, it can be classified as dark. It said. But I don't know any. I said, confused. Oh, but you do, think. I racked my brain but didn't come across anything. What? Too scared to take the first move. Nima taunted me. I saw Jason run towards me and the first thing that came into mind I shouted out. In Yero Comtadit and Lagnada. Dark clouds started to form in the sky and a wicked smile came across my face. My energy was coming back quickly. This will be fun. I have something better in mind. I told the voice who seemed to be with me at the moment. It seemed as if I knew everything I needed to know. My brain had all the information I would need to win this battle. The voice inside my head was no longer needed, but I knew better to think that. In Yero Comtadit and Lagnada. 
I repeated the spell again with much more force. The clouds that were present in the sky became darker within a moment. As if a tornado was coming, the clouds started to circulate throughout the sky. I watched in amazement at what I was able to do with just this one spell. Thunder started to roll and lightning started to strike above me. I felt a bolt of energy course through me. My laugh fell in place with the noises that were being put together by the rumbling of the thunder itself. Placing my gaze on Nima and Jason, I found them being pushed down by the foot of a tree. The tree itself had red eyes. This was the beauty of the spell I had just cast. Everything that was dead or non-moving started to come alive. They were all now under my command and would do as I say. It made me feel like I had the power to rule over anything. This might not be a spell to cause pain and harm to the body, but I will use that spell later on. I had a feeling that this encounter would go on longer than I expected and I would need a spell that was much stronger than this one. No matter though. This spell has its perks and I intend on using it to its greatest power. Nima, do something. I heard Jason hiss at her. Who knew a boy who was supposed to be cleaning this mess up was only making it harder for himself? He should have known what he got himself into the minute he took me. He knew I would become evil, which to my distaste didn't want to happen, but I had no control over it, and he knew what would happen. He knew all the damage that would be done, but he still wanted me. At the realization of him having somewhat knowledge of how everything was going to pan out, set me on a whole different level. I was beyond mad, beyond furious. I had a rabid, violent emotion in the pit of my stomach. He never wanted love. He wanted to turn me into the person that I am now, to use me to his own advantage. I was going to be his personal slave that would do anything he wanted. So much for wanting love. I thought bitterly. He lied to me only to get what he wanted the whole entire time. I looked into the eyes of the bastard himself and smiled evilly. Playing fire with fire only gets you burned. That would be something Jason would learn at the end of this. I said to myself. I tilted my head to the side, looking at him menacingly. Fear struck through his eyes but was replaced with a blank expression. I chuckled softly. He should be scared. I lifted the trees from his body and he breathed a sigh of relief. I growled. The only feeling he should have is fear for his life. Jason scrambled up from the ground. You little insolent girl, how dare you disrespect me? He roared. He has the nerves to yell at me. Do I look like a fool to you? I asked, a glare set on my face. I should have you know that it is you who is the fool. You thought you could overpower me? Now you'll know that you can't use me. I said. And what are you talking about? He asked. I glowered at him. You lied to me. Did you expect me to feel sorry for you? Because then you thought wrong. You didn't want me for love only. You wanted to turn me into this other person so you could be in control. I said between gritted teeth. He smiled. Oh, I didn't lie to you, I just simply didn't tell you everything. I'm glad you cart on. He said. I sneered at him. How many lessons do I have to teach you? I asked. Before he could say anything, I threw him towards the tree, only for him to be back in the same position as he was before. I watched with great interest as Nima and Jason withered in pain on the ground. It was fascinating to know that I can cause so much pain to a person. I laughed inwardly at my assumptions. I walked towards the two worthless incompetent fools and bent down to their level. Not so tough, are you now? I whispered to, Nima. She glanced at me but looked away. Why you are too far off? She said to me. And what exactly are you implying? I asked with venom dripping through every word. She stayed quiet for a few seconds before answering me. I was getting impatient and Jason was slowly getting up. I wasn't quite finished with him yet. Looking back at Nima, she grimaced in pain. You're too far in the darkness to come out. She said. I laughed. I'm so glad your brain is still working. I said, feigning innocence. I got up and started to walk to Jason. You won't be able to find the light. She said. I scoffed. 
And you care because? I asked, trailing off so she could continue. She smirked. It doesn't look good on you. A woman like you is not supposed to act this way. For you it isn't attractive. She said. This witch. I laughed at my own joke, which caused Nima to look at me in confusion. I looked at her in disgust and intensified the pain. She would die a slow and painful death on the ground before me. I said the words one last time to have a harsher effect on her. Obitus nopes tra crux. I said. Nima's body fell still on the ground. I watched as her eyes became lifeless and dull. I smiled and backed away from her, lifting the tree off of her body. I turned around to see a crestfallen Jason watching the dead body of Nima. You could be next. I said to him. He snapped his head my way and a growl seeped through his mouth. Why don't you do it already then? He said, looking at me with no emotion. Aww. You won't put up a fight? I asked. There's no need to. The darkness has taken you. He said. You made me this way, you fool. I yelled. Oh, no. I won't kill you. I would torture you to no end. I woke up to a slight pounding in my head. I looked at my surroundings to find that I was in a room that looked awfully familiar. I sneered in disgust as I looked to my right and saw Jason next to me. I pushed him off the bed, which in turn made him fall on the floor with a loud thud. Silently laughing, I shrugged and got out of bed. The hell was that for? He shrieked. I smiled innocently. I told you that you wouldn't step foot in this room while I'm in it and you didn't take my words into consideration. I said, rolling my eyes. I looked over his face to see the scars that were already healing. I glowered at him. Curse the wolf gene. You know, I don't know why you can't just be nice to me. I did you a favor which you should be thankful for. He said, getting up. I glared at him. I think you need to know the difference between a favor and doing something for your own personal reasons. I said, glaring at him. I stomped out of the room and into the bathroom. Taking off my clothes, I hopped in the shower, turning the water to a warm temperature. I stepped in and let the water run on my body. The thought of what happened last night was soothing to me. I smiled a small smile, wondering what it would be like to do it again. The look on Jason's face was priceless. Now what did I say about talking back to me? I asked Jason with a devious smile on my face. He didn't answer but looked at me with wide eyes. He was breathing heavily and I wondered if he would pass out from all the pain I was causing him. I watched him carefully, though I don't know why. He won't be moving anytime soon. Blood seeped through his shirt and I smiled. Have you learned your lesson yet? I asked. Jason looked up at me and smirked. His face was contorted with pain, but he was trying to make it seem like it didn't hurt him. Not quite. I rather enjoy this torturing of yours. He said. I growled. I guess you really don't have a brain. I spat at him. Miko tore and supped crease. I murmured. Now, this spell doesn't only cause pain, it causes one not to speak. Now I won't have to hear anything from your filthy mouth. I smiled evilly at Jason and threw every spell that came to my mind to make him feel worse than he already was. That was only half of what happened. If only I could do it again. I thought to myself. That is if he tries to hurt or force you into anything. The voice said in my head. Are you good or bad because you seem to be giving me mixed feelings? I replied back to it. I am only here to help you. What you did yesterday was completely out of my hands. You did it yourself and I had no control over it. I scoffed. Get out of my head. I said frustratingly. I stepped out of the shower and dried myself. I guess I have to use my magic skills and make myself an outfit. Damn bastard took me away and I have no clothes. I sighed and came up with a white shirt, black shorts, and some sneakers. Looking at myself in the mirror, I thought I looked good. I walked out of the bathroom and back into the room where the bastard himself was. He looked at me and smirked. And where do you think you're going? He asked me. I laughed. I wasn't planning on going anywhere, 
but since you brought it up I might go for a little walk. I said. I've been here for five days and haven't seen anything but the woods. Who said you could go out? He asked. I did. And with that I dashed downstairs and out of the door. What did you do? Jason yelled at me as soon as I walked into the house. It was past night time and I was just coming in from a rather interesting night. I looked at him with a smug expression. What are you talking about? I asked. You killed my men. He exclaimed. I smiled widely. They were in my way. I said casually. If you truly wanted me to stay in this house of yours, you wouldn't have to get your men to do your work. I said, walking past him. He was fuming. I could tell by the dark expression on his face. I crossed the line and I would do it again if I had to. Plus it was only two of them. I continued, glancing back at him. That set him off. In a swift moment, he was in front of me. I felt a slight pain on the side of my face. He slapped me? He slapped me? I said, repeating it to myself again, realizing what had just happened. I looked up at him and smiled. On the inside, I was furious. Tilting my head to the side, I looked at Jason from underneath my eyelashes. You just slapped me, I said. He had a shocked expression on his face, but it soon turned into a scowl. I'm sure you know the answer to that. He said, trying to be scary, but he didn't scare me in the slightest. I didn't know you had the courage to do that. I said, chuckling darkly. He glared at me. You are a pain? Jason said. You're the one that took me. If you must know, I could have left a long time ago. I said, smiling. Why didn't you, do you like me too much to leave me? Jason said with a smirk on his face. I laughed. No. I think it's much more fun to see you in pain. I said. His plan was backfiring big time. It seems as though he's the one who got taken away. Port K. Nani Alderelka. I said. He flew across the room onto the wall. I watched as he fell to the ground and doubled over in pain. You would think twice before you go and put your hands on me. I said. Just then, the door busted open with a fuming face I thought I would never see again. I was happy, very happy, even surprised, but it died down quickly. I glared at the person who was interrupting what I was going to do. Nicoli. Nicoli's POV. I don't know what else to do. Mr. Thompson said. My dad and Annabelle's father were discussing what could be done to get Annabelle back. I was sitting on the couch in the office just thinking of my own plan. We haven't come up with anything yet. We held PAC meetings to update the PAC on what had happened. Everyone is looking to find her, but that's not good enough. I would go by myself if I had to. Annabelle belongs with me. She is supposed to be here by my side. I couldn't help but think it was my fault why Annabelle's was not here. I was too weak to even stand up for her. Why don't I just track her sent down? Why don't I just track her sent down? I suggested. That would be hard because she's been gone for days. Her dad said. I clenched my jaw from saying anything that I would regret. It's better than just sitting here and breathing in air. I only have a week to get her. That's not much time. Two days is all I have and I'm going to use every second of time that I have to find her. I said, getting up. I won't let Jason touch her. Forming a plan in my head, I walked downstairs to the living room where Luke and Jessica were. I need your help. I said to them. Luke and Jessica's heads snapped up at me. Did you find a way to get Annabelle back? Jessica asked anxiously. She hadn't been herself since Annabelle left, neither have I. I felt like there was a piece of me missing. I sighed. No, but I have something in mind. I said, sitting down. Whatever it is, I am okay with it. Luke said. I smiled slightly. He told me that Annabelle and he had created a bond together. I didn't mind because I knew she was mine, but I liked the fact that everyone accepted her for who she was and what she would become if she did the wrong thing. As you could see, everyone adored Annabelle. All we wanted was to find her. 
I need to track down Annabelle's scent. I already know where she was the night Jason took her. I just need to follow it. I said. Luke and Jessica looked at me unsure. Wouldn't that be a bit hard? She asked. I nodded. It will be, but I'll do whatever it takes to get her back. I said with determination in my voice. They both nodded. Start getting ready. I was in my wolf form sniffing the air to get a scent of Annabelle. I had been at it for two hours just trying to be able to sense her. I wouldn't give up until I found her. I had to find her. I found the area where Annabelle was last along with Luke and Jessica. This is it. I mind linked to them. This was my only chance at finding her. I didn't care what it took, I was going to find Annabelle and take her back. I'll make sure of that. Taking a deep breath in, I smelled something like strawberries. Annabelle. I looked to my left and right at Luke and Jessica and dashed for the clearing. I heard the stomping of paws behind me and I knew they were following close behind. I wouldn't stop until I got to where I was going. I didn't care if my energy weakened. I will bring Annabelle back with me no matter if she changed or not. I ran as fast as I could. By dawn the next day, I started to slow down. I pushed myself harder. Nicoly, we have to stop. Jessica said through the mind link. I shook my head. No. I can't afford to do that. I said. Please, we're tired and we can feel your energy dying out. Luke said. Then you can stay behind. I will do this by myself. Before they could say anything else, I blocked them from my mind and ran off. I have to do this. No, I need to do this. Pushing myself to go even harder than before, I made my way to the border of the woods. The woods were coming to an end. I looked around confused. Jason took her to a different city. I growled. I ran along the border of the woods following the scent that was still fresh. The sweet smell of strawberries started to fade away. With each step I took further, the scent was going away. I was losing energy quickly and I hadn't eaten all day. Stopping, I laid down on the ground thinking. What if I don't find her? What if I'm too late? All these thoughts were running through my mind. I shook my head from the negative thoughts and closed my eyes. Waking up, I smelled the most beautiful scent. She's close. I got up and shook my head from the sleepiness and ran towards it. I've gotten more energy from the little nap I had and from the thought of me being close to finding Annabelle. Soon she would be with me. It was already dark outside and I realized I only had a few hours before I had one night left to find her. The woods were coming to a close and I had to change back into my human form. I had a pair of shorts and a shirt that I carried in a bag and took it out. Putting on the clothes, I sniffed the air to make sure the scent was still there. It was really strong. I walked out of the woods and onto the sidewalk, making my way to where my little mate would be. I found myself in front of a fairly large house. It had Annabelle's scent written all over it. I growled at the fact that she was in a house with a boy who surely couldn't keep his hands to himself and I didn't like him with every ounce of my being. I stood in front of the house just watching and listening before I made a move. Suddenly, loud noises were being heard in the house. I started to hear shouts and I recognized one of them being Annabelle. Port K. Nani Alderelka. I heard her say. I squinted my eyes. I didn't know what that meant, but it sounded harsh. You would think twice before you go and put your hands on me. She said again. He touched her. A growl escaped my lips and I burst through the door, seeing Jason on the floor in pain. I glared at him and quickly rested my eyes on Annabelle. She had a surprised look on her face. I could feel her happiness through the bond we had. I was more than happy to see her. She wasn't hurt and I was thankful for that. The look on her face turned into a cold glare in a second. I just then realized that the person in front of me was not the sweet innocent girl anymore. She would always be my Annabelle and I would do anything to get her to see the light. Annabelle's POV I turned around to see Nicoly looking at me intently. I set a glare on my face looking back at him. He intruded on what was at hand. Annabelle. He said softly. I could almost see the fear in his face for some reason. He's scared of me? 
pain shot through my chest and I refused to make it known. I could see that Nikoli felt it too. W what are you doing here? I asked, my confidence lacking. I came to find you, but I can see you can take care of yourself. Nikoli said, looking at me intently. My heart started to beat faster. I felt like he was trying to look into my soul with his eyes boring into mine. I looked away. Well, would you look at this reunion? I heard Jason say. For a moment, I forgot he was here. I see you came before your time is up. He continued. I raised my eyebrows and looked at Nikoli. What is he talking about? I asked. Your dear mate had a week to find you before you went into heat. Jason said. I looked at him blankly. We stood there for a minute in silence and I burst out laughing, shaking my head. Even if he tried, it would have been no use. He wouldn't, couldn't touch me. You would never have succeeded with that plan, I said with a serious face. Jason smirked. Are you sure about that? He asked. I glowered, ready to lunge at him. I backhanded him in the face. He fell to the floor with blood spilling from the corner of his mouth. You must love being on the ground, I said with a chuckle. Annabelle, what are you doing? Nikoli asked. I looked at him. His arms were crossed over his chest and he looked at me with sad eyes. I tried looking away, but it was no use. The pain he had was too much. Now you understand what your actions are doing to the people that love you. That voice in my head said. You never said anything about that. I snarled. No, but I told you I wasn't here to turn you evil. You did it all on your own? It said. I sighed mentally. If you're trying to make me feel guilty for what I am, you're not really doing a good job. I said. I don't have to try. Someone will do it for you. The voice said. And who do you think would? I asked. Nikoli, if you look at him carefully, you'll know he's hurt by what you've become. He fears you and he's supposed to be the one to protect you. It said. Something heavy weighed on my chest. Looking at Nikoli, I realized that I had forgotten to answer his question. I shrugged. Why do you care? I asked. I asked. He clenched his jaw. Because I love you. He exclaimed. Don't you get it? Before Jason took you away from me, I said I love you. I told you I didn't want you to become like this. He said, waving his hands around. You didn't take my words seriously and now look at what has happened. Nikoli said with pain in his voice. I looked away from him. I clenched my fist, not knowing what to do. I let him down. I let everyone down. No. I was supposed to be this. But Jason made me this way. I felt my eyes turn back to their original color and looked back up at Nikoli. He was breathing heavily and staring at me with a glare, but underneath it all I could see pain and love. I could feel the energy slipping away from me. What's happening? Your powers are changing, you don't really want this, do you? The voice asked. I shook my head. No. I just became this person. I said. A tear fell from my eyes. Nikoli slowly walked up to me. He pulled me by my waist and gathered me into a hug. I sighed and leaned into his touch. I didn't hug him back, not wanting to be touched at the moment. You don't need to be this way. You were perfect the way you were. Nikoli said, resting his chin on my head. I shook my head and stepped out of his arms. You don't understand. This is who I am. I can't do anything about it. I snapped at him. He wasn't phased by my outburst but pulled me back into his chest. I understand that you can't do this on your own. You need help and I'm here for you. I definitely know that this isn't who you are. You are much more than what you say you are. He said. My heart clenched and the energy was slipping away from me fast. I felt like the room was spinning. It was a good thing Nikoli was holding on to me. Let me show you that you can change. That you can be my little kitty cat again. He said softly. I sniffed and closed my eyes. 
I wanted Nikoli to be proud of me. I love him. Shakily, I wrapped my arms around his torso. He held me tighter and I melted. Don't cry. We can get through this. He said to me in my ear. Suddenly, the front door opened and in came Luke and Jessica. They both had beaming smiles on their faces when their eyes landed on me. I closed my eyes once again as I was feeling drowsy and couldn't hold myself anymore. I leaned into Nikoli a little more, trying to hold myself up. He noticed my struggling and looked down at me. What's wrong? He asked me. I shook my head. I, I don't know. I said, clutching my head with my hand. I looked up at him and he gasped. I looked at him confused and tried to stand up. That wasn't a very good idea. I started to sway a little. I was going to pass out. Annabelle, your eyes. Nikoli said in shock. What? I asked. They're purple. What does that mean? He asked, confused. He asked, confused. I looked as confused as he did. What did that mean? Everything was becoming a blur. Luke and Jessica were rushing to me. What's happening to her? Jessica asked, exasperated. From the corner of my eyes I could see Jason coming towards us with a menacing look on his face. He was going to use this opportunity to his advantage, seeing that Nikoli was distracted. Nikoli? I whispered, pointing to Jason before I slipped into an unconscious state. What does having purple eyes mean? I was walking in the forest with a force pushing me in deeper. I was back in the same forest. The darkness surrounded me. I didn't have a clue about what was going on, but I didn't question it. I walked and walked until I saw a white light standing or floating in front of me. Raising my eyebrows, I looked at the figure in confusion. What was going on? I thought to myself. I looked around me and saw nothing but trees. The power that the person was giving off was strong. Whoever this person was, they're very powerful. I looked at them cautiously, taking a step forward. The person turned around and looked at me with a smile. Looking closely, the person was a woman. Ah, uh, don't be scared, my child. She said. Her voice was so enchanting and it flowed throughout the forest like a melody. I am not scared, I'm just confused. I said shakily. I cleared my throat and wandered my eyes to the ground. Do you know why you are here? She asked me. I shook my head. No. I was hoping you would tell me. I said. I heard a light chuckle come from her. My dear child, you are not evil. She said. I snapped my head towards her with a skeptical look on my face. What are you talking about? I asked her. I have never met her before in my life. How could she possibly know such information? How did she even know me? You are meant to be good. In the near future, you will have great opportunities coming your way. You would be of great help to our kingdom. She said. I looked at her with my mouth slightly open. I didn't know what to say, which made me look like a fish gasping for air. Kingdom? What kingdom are you talking about? I asked. My child, you are a princess, are you not? Your parents are the king and queen and one day you will take their places along with your mate. She said, smiling at me. Oh, why did you want me to come here? I asked her. Her eyes twinkled with something I couldn't decipher. Do you have any recognition of who I might be? She asked. I looked at her and didn't realize anything. I don't know her and I have yet to know how she knows me. I shook my head. No. How do you know me? I asked curiously. She smiled a genuine smile. One that could mean many things. Annabelle, we are connected in so many ways. I am the voice that has been inside your head all this time. I am half witch and half werewolf as well. I am there when you need me. We are a part of each other, my dear child. She said. My eyes widened at the information I had just received. You can't possibly be telling the truth. I said in disbelief. She nodded. I don't joke around, I don't have time for it. She said. I raised my eyebrows. 
you had time to argue with me about what's wrong and what's right. How do you see joking around any different? I asked. You are very stubborn, as I am too. My responsibility is to protect you along with my other duties. I'm supposed to make sure you make the right decisions, but as I tried, you blocked me out. She said. Her voice did sound familiar in a way. I looked down feeling embarrassed. Was that all you wanted me for? I asked quietly. She shook her head. Don't take the ones who love you for granted. They only want the best for you. Nicoly, he loves you. There isn't any other way to say it. He would do anything to keep you safe and protect you. She said. I opened my mouth to say something, but nothing came out. What's on your mind, child? She asked sincerely. What does having purple eyes mean? I asked nervously. She looked up at me and smiled. There's no need to be nervous. After all, we are going to have to talk to each other a lot. She said. She said. I slightly smiled at the joke she was attempting to make. Now I see that she really doesn't have time to make jokes. There's only three possible answers that can be an answer to this question. She started. 1. You found love that can change the way you are. 2. You are turning good for the better and, lastly, 3. You have the purest heart. In your case, all of those apply to you. She continued. I looked at her surprised, but nodded nevertheless. Who are you? I asked. I never really caught her name. I'm Celeste Fitzgerald, but you can just call me Celeste. She said. My jaw literally dropped. Oh my god. She is the freaking moon goddess. I woke up in Nicolie's arms. He was holding me tightly. That dream seemed so real, but it wasn't. Why do I always have to dream about being in the woods? I thought. Because you are one with the nature. A voice said. I froze. The dream was real. She was real. Celeste? I called out to her. Yes? She answered. She answered. Oh my god. I didn't say anything back to her. I was too stunned. Annabelle? What's wrong? Nicoly asked, concern written on his face. I shook my head. Nothing. I said quietly. I was in a car with Luke driving. Sniffing the air, I could smell the odor of stale blood. What happened? Where's Jason? I asked. He didn't answer. I shook him by his shoulders. Let's not talk about it now. He said, kissing my forehead. I nodded and rested my head on his chest. Hey, Nicolie? I said softly. MHM. He answered. I love you. I said with my whole heart. I could almost see him with a smile on his face. I love you too, kitty cat. I looked up to see Luke parking in the driveway. I lifted up my head from Nicolie's chest and sat up. I sighed in relief. You wouldn't believe how happy I was to see this house again. I got off of Nicolie's lap and got out of the car. Nicolie followed and immediately wrapped his arms around me. I smiled and looked up at him. Don't think you're going to be out of this house unless I'm with you. Nicolie said to me. I scrunched up my nose as he kissed it. That's not fair. I said, pouting. We walked up to the front of the house and Nicolie unlocked the door. Luke and Jessica were walking slowly behind us. As we got inside the house, my parents and Nicolie's parents were arguing. How could you let this happen? Mrs. O'Connell said. She looked like she was going to kill someone. Nicolie cleared his throat, making our presence known. My mother stood up and rushed to me, pushing Nicolie out of the way. He growled lowly and didn't move. I shivered and looked up at him. He looked down at me. Mine. He whispered, putting his hands back on my waist. I bit my lip and looked away from him. Honey, his wolf is in protective mode. Let him be. My father said to her. Son, I'm glad you didn't take my word for it and went on with your idea. Mr. O'Connell said. I could feel Nicolie's eyes on me. I jabbed him in the stomach to get him to answer his father. 
Nikoli turned his attention to his father and nodded. Are you okay? My dad asked. Yeah, I said. I didn't meet his eyes because I knew he had a torn expression on his face. His only daughter was going through something he never had to encounter. He almost lost the one thing that mattered to him besides his wife. He sighed and got up, walking towards me. I felt Nikoli tense behind me. Nikoli, I'm her father. Let me get a good look at her. He said slowly. Nikoli shook his head and stood where he was. My father got closer to me. Nikoli didn't make a move to attack and my father took that as a sign to come closer to me. He looked at my face and studied it closely. You have much more power than you had before. My dad spoke softly to himself. I looked at him confused. What's that supposed to mean? I asked. I tried pulling away from Nikoli, but he only held me tighter. Nikoli, I'm right here. Let me go. I whispered, looking at him. He reluctantly did so and I took his hand, pulling him to the seat next to my mom. You have more strength than before. Something is different about you. He said, looking intently at me. Nikoli pulled me onto his lap, resting his head in the crook of my neck. I giggled and looked back at my father. His eyes widened as he looked at me. His face slowly started to turn into a wide smile. I can't believe it. He said, stunned. Everyone's attention turned to him. Nikoli's head snapped up to look at my father. What? He said for the first time since we came here. Your wolf is the moon goddess. My father said. I heard Nikoli's parents gasp. From the corner of my eye, I could see my mom looking at me with an awed expression on her face. How did you know that? I asked. Your eyes say it all. Mrs. O'Connell said. Legends say that a long time ago a she-wolf was bound together with the moon goddess. She had a natural power that would benefit our kingdom. One day she abused the power that she had and became a whole other person like you did. The moon goddess couldn't stand all the evil deeds of the young woman and, with the power that she held and still has now, left the woman to fend for herself. She said it was to teach her a lesson. You are a rare she-wolf. In many years no one has seen a wolf like you. You hold something within you that can help our kingdom become strong. My father said. Why didn't the moon goddess leave me like she did with the other woman? I asked. She knew who you were and she knew what you could do. She took a liking to you because you have three things she looks for. Mr. O'Connell said. A pure heart, knowing the boundaries of your power and having someone that loves you no matter what. I said, spacing out for a minute. That was what Celeste told me. Well, some of it. Exactly. How did you know? My father asked. She came to me in my dream. I said. I didn't think my father could smile any more than he already is. She used her power to connect with you, and now you have the power to do so. He said. Seeing the way my father looked at me was the best feeling. The last time I saw him was the day I yelled at him to get out of my room and then I was gone. The look on his face showed disappointment which was directed at me. What does this mean? I asked. You're going to be a wonderful princess. I leaned into Nikoli, feeling tired. How much information could one person handle? My brain could only hold so much. No, I'm not dumb, I just can't seem to get away from all the new information I keep learning about myself. And here I thought I knew myself better than anyone. I rested my head in the crook of Nikoli's neck. Someone's tired. He teased. I nodded. I was serious when I said you weren't going anywhere. He said. I laughed softly. I want you to sleep next to me anyway. I whispered to him. He growled and stood up with me in his arms. Where do you think you're going with my daughter? My father asked Nikoli. To my room where she will sleep and she will stay in my house where I can watch and protect her. Nikoli said, with no room for discussion. I didn't bother arguing about what he said. It sounded like he was my babysitter and I was the baby that needed to be watched. As much as I thought that, I didn't mind him watching my every move. I felt safe when he was near me. Nikoli walked up the stairs to his room and opened the door. I had never seen his room until now. 
It wasn't messy or clean. It was like any other typical teenage boy's room. He rested me on his bed and handed me one of his shirts that I could wear. He turned around and let me get out of my dirty clothes and change. You can turn around now. I said. Nicoly did as I said and stripped down to only his boxers. I bit my lip and looked at him. Like what you see? He asked, smirking. I nodded and a yawn escaped my lips. Time to sleep, kitty cat. He said. He climbed in next to me and wrapped his arms around my waist, pulling me closer to him. I snuggled against him and sighed happily. Annabelle, promise me you won't scare me like you did today. Nicoly said. I turned to look at him and the pain in his eyes was overwhelming. I kissed his lips. I promise. I really am sorry. I said. He caressed my face and smiled. Get some rest. I nodded and closed my eyes. Soon sleep overcame me and it was the best sleep I ever had in a long time. Jessica and I were walking in the school with Luke and Nicoly behind us. It was my first day back after a week and I was dreading it. All the looks I was getting from people were horrifying. It wasn't in a mean way, it's just that I don't like attention. Even with my newfound power, I didn't have the confidence to look people straight in the eyes. I sighed and walked to my locker with my bodyguards on each side of me. Don't you guys get bored watching over me every second of the day? I asked. No, you're our future Luna and Princess. How can we? Luke said. Luke said. I just rolled my eyes at his answer. Putting titles in this conversation, are we? I see. I said smiling. I took out the books I would need for my first period class. Ready. I said, and Nicoly took my hand in his and we walked to class. I smiled at the warmth his hand gave off. Walking into class, everyone was looking at Nicoly and I. I would hope that people wouldn't see this as a surprise anymore. Ah, oh, come in, come in. Mr. Ford said. He looked rather happy today and I looked at him confused. He looked at me and smiled. Lou and Abel, how nice to see you again. I haven't seen you in a week. He said with a smile on his face. I nodded slowly and looked at Nicoly. He looked at Mr. Ford with amusement on his face. From my side, I could see Jessica and Luke snickering to themselves. I was so confused. I turned around and I saw some students giving me envious looks and others looking at me with the same look the teacher was giving me. I sniffed the air and I knew there were other wolves in this class. What's going on? Everyone is happy to see that their Luna is okay. I heard a voice say. Celeste. Where have you been? I haven't heard from you in a while. I said happily. Over the past few days, Celeste and I have bonded more than usual. We talked for hours and I really got to know her. She is much like me. I'm sorry. I had some things to check up on about the mating process with other wolves. She said. Hey come and sit here. Nicoly said, snapping me out of my thoughts and conversation with Celeste. He gently pushed me to my seat and sat down on the one next to me. The bell rang for the last class before lunch. I had an uneasy feeling in the pit of my stomach. I walked to the cafeteria and saw Luke and Jessica already seated at our table. I walked over to them. Hey, guys. I said. Hey there, princess. Jessica said. I laughed and sat down. Where's Nicoly? I asked. Luke smirked before answering me. Detention, told our science teacher off. He said, laughing like he remembered what happened. I shook my head. Typical of Nicoly to do that. We talked about random things, but the feeling of being uncomfortable wouldn't go away. I felt a pain in the side of my body, but I didn't know where the pain was coming from. I started to feel extremely hot and sticky. My clothes were clinging onto me and I just wanted to take them off. I groaned and rested my head on the table. What's wrong? Jessica asked. I groaned in response. She's going into heat. Luke said. I snapped my head up at him. Seriously? In school? Luke's eyes were turning black by the minute and I wondered what was going on with him. 
His jaw clenched and he got up stiffly. I'll go get Nicoly. He said and ran off. He's unmated and any female that goes into heat, he would want to mate with them no matter if they have a mate or not. It goes for every unmated male. Jessica said before I could ask a question. I rested my head down on the table, wanting the pain and this other unknown feeling to go away. A few seconds later, I could feel Nicolie's presence getting closer and closer to me. I sighed when I felt a hand on me that shot pleasure through my shoulder. I looked up to see Nicolie, who was restraining himself from doing anything. Nicolie? I moaned out. His eyes instantly turned black and he scooped me up into his arms, sitting down where I once sat. My legs were on either side of him. Being close to him lessened the pain I was feeling, but not the other feeling. It was a feeling of need, want, desire. Nicoli, I repeated desperately. I want you, I said, wrapping my arms around his waist. He growled and that put me on edge. I pulled myself closer to him, wanting to be touched by every part of Nicolie's body. Annabelle. I can't, he said with a strained voice. I shut my eyes from crying. If this was how going into heat felt, then I don't want to feel this again. I didn't want it to be like this. He said in a whisper. He said in a whisper. The pain intensified and I bit down on Nicolie's neck, but not too hard. I heard him groan and I smirked. We can make it special another time. I said. I want you and you want me. I moved on his lap. His hand tightened on my waist and I bit my lip from making any noise. We don't have to mate if you're not ready. I'm not either, but I want you to be the only person I make love to. We can just have fun. I said in his ear. With that being said, Nicoly jumped up from the seat and carried me out of the school, not caring who might see. You want to play? We shall play. He said with his eyes black. He pulled down my pants unexpectedly, making me gasp. He had a smirk on his face and looked at me. Oh snap. Nicolie's POV. Taking off Annabelle's pants, I watched as she squirmed under my touch. I knew she didn't know what was happening, so I wouldn't push my boundaries. As much as I wanted her, I knew I couldn't take advantage of her. When a she-wolf goes into heat, all they know at the moment is pain and they only want one thing to stop it. It seems like they are drunk off of the pain and desire that they can't think straight. I would rather have Annabelle be in pain as hard as it might be to watch her suffer than me taking advantage of her body. Looking down at her, she bit her lip with lust in her eyes. A low growl escaped my lips. I pulled her by her hips, bringing her closer to me and crashing my lips on hers. I bit her bottom lip, making her gasp, letting me slip my tongue in. Annabelle took a fistful of my shirt and pulled me closer to her. God, Nicoly. Annabelle moaned out against my lips. I could feel my wolf wanting to take control and mate with what was his, but I had to restrain him. No. We can't do it now. I said, trying to reason with my wolf. Why not? She's right there wanting us to do it. My wolf said. She doesn't know what's going on. I said, trying to focus on Annabelle. You know damn well she does, and you won't take the opportunity. I could hear her wolf, which is my mate, telling her to mate with us. He said excitedly. I continued to give my full attention to Annabelle. If I kept talking to my wolf, he would only make me give in and I would feel guilty for taking advantage of Annabelle. I pulled away from her. You're holding back. She said. I knew her wolf was in charge. Annabelle wouldn't talk like that. I clenched my jaw and looked at her with an unknown look on my face. I put my hands on either side of her head against the seat of the car. I rested my head in the crook of her neck. Taking a sniff of her scent, I groaned and licked where I left my mark on her. I heard a soft moan escape her mouth. Don't tempt me, kitty cat. I already told you I wanted to wait. You're special to me and I want nothing more to give you what you deserve. I growled out. She pulled herself up and pushed me away from over her, making me sit down. She climbed on top of me and smiled down at me. She bit her bottom lip, knowing that it would drive me crazy. I rested my hands on her hips and held her closer to me. Am I tempting you enough? She whispered, brushing her lips against mine. 
I growled and took her face in my hands, pulling her face close to mine. I licked her lips and she gasped, putting her arms around my neck. Give me all of you. She said. I trailed my hands down her thighs and she jumped at the contact. I was dangerously close to her lower region and I looked her straight in her eyes. It was the color of dark purple which was full of love and desire. I placed a finger inside of her, causing her to let out a cry of pure bliss. This is what you want. I whispered to her huskily. She let out another moan, giving me her answer. Let's take this somewhere else. I said. She smiled. Like your bed. She suggested breathlessly. I growled and pressed my lips to hers hard. She got off of me and I went to the driver's seat and started the car. I drove out of the parking lot of the school and sped off to my house. I looked at the rearview mirror at Annabelle who was already watching me. See something you like? I asked her. She nodded her head. He's looking at me right now. She said, combing her hand through her hair. I stepped on the gas harder, making the car go faster. In about 20 minutes, we were in front of my house. I got out of the car, opening the back door for Annabelle to come out. When she did, I pulled her pants up and picked her up as she wrapped her legs around me. I loved holding her like this. It helped me to know that she was safe. Right now, she was anything but safe with me. I smiled to myself. Oh, now you want to listen. I heard my wolf say. I inwardly rolled my eyes and opened the door with Annabelle in my arms. The door made a loud bang on the wall and my father and mother came downstairs. What are you two doing here? Are you supposed to be in school? My father asked. I gave him a pointed look and he understood immediately. MHHM, go now. Annabelle growled out to me. With those two words, I dashed up the stairs to my room and laid Annabelle down on my bed. I smirked at my little mate on the bed. My parents better prepare for a whole lot of noise. Annabelle's POV I was lying down on Nicolie's bed, watching him looking at me with a smirk on his face. He slowly took off his shirt and threw it on the floor. Biting my lip, I looked over his toned stomach that was ripped with a six-pack. God, he was so gorgeous. My eyes met his and I saw a small glimpse of amusement behind the massive amount of lust that was clear in his eyes. He was teasing me. I groaned and played with the hem of my shirt. The pain was coming again. Do I have to take these clothes off myself? I asked Nicolie with a sly smile on my face. He growled. Don't make this harder for yourself. He said to me. I looked at him curiously. And what do you mean by that? I asked, getting off the bed and walking to him. I mean, I would make you feel things you've never felt before. He replied with a smile on his face. He pulled me closer to him and I wrapped my arms around his neck. Then why don't you show me what you mean? I said, jumping up and wrapping my legs around his waist. He caught me with ease and licked his mark on my neck. I might. Only if you can handle me. He said. I tugged on his hair and pulled his head back. I licked his throat to his chin. I heard him let out a groan. His eyes were closed as I looked at him through my eyelashes. I think I can handle it. I smashed my lips into his and he immediately responded. He walked to the bed without breaking the kiss and put me on the bed. Hovering over me, he slowly started to kiss me more roughly and I responded. It was filled with want and need. I bucked my hips against his and he groaned. These clothes need to come off. Nicolie said, tugging on my shirt. I trailed my hands down his stomach and nodded. He pulled away from the kiss and took my shirt off. He started to place kisses on my neck. I ran my hands through his hair. I felt his hands go to the hem of my pants and unbutton them. Do you think I should take these off? He whispered in my ear huskily. Why are you asking me? Just do it. I said, licking behind his ear. He ripped my pants off of me. I looked down in shock. You ripped my pants? I said incredulously. He smirked. You wanted them off. He said with a smirk on his face. I shook my head and pulled him down to me. I want you now. I said impatiently. Nicolie chuckled. 
You're not ready just yet. He said. He opened my legs a little and sat between them. Putting his hands on my thighs, I inched closer to him, but he stopped me. No. Leave this to me. He said, looking at me. I bit my lip. When will this torture be over? I need him now. Nicolie's finger slowly reached the tip of my lower region through my underwear. I balled the sheets into my hands, letting out a soft moan. My heart was beating faster and my mind was going a mile a minute. I couldn't think straight. All I wanted was Nikoli and I knew I needed him in a matter of minutes. The adrenaline I was feeling was overwhelming for me. I closed my eyes, taking deep breaths. I pushed Nikoli off of me and went on top of him. You wanted them off. He said with a smirk on his face. I shook my head and pulled him down to me. I want you now. I said impatiently. Nikoli chuckled. You're not ready just yet. He said. He opened my legs a little and sat between them. Putting his hands on my thighs, I inched closer to him, but he stopped me. No. Leave this to me. He said, looking at me. I bit my lip. When will this torture be over? I need him now. Nikoli's finger slowly reached the tip of my lower region through my underwear. I balled the sheets into my hands, letting out a soft moan. My heart was beating faster and my mind was going a mile a minute. I couldn't think straight. All I wanted was Nikoli and I knew I needed him in a matter of minutes. The adrenaline I was feeling was overwhelming for me. I closed my eyes, taking deep breaths. I pushed Nikoli off of me and went on top of him. Are you trying to make me suffer? I said in his ear. The look on his face was priceless. He was shocked and I could tell. I traced my fingers over his abs and he let out a growl. I stopped at the top of his pants. I think these need to come off. I said, mimicking what Nikoli had done before. I unbuckled his belt and unzipped his pants. I pulled down his pants and what I saw next had my eyes widen. I glanced at him and he was smirking. I thought you said you could handle it. He asked in a teasing way. I growled. I can. I said and jumped on him, straddling him. I wasn't playing around when I said I wanted you. My hormones were raging and I couldn't take it anymore. Nikoli sat up and held me by the waist. He lifted me up on his member and slowly let me get comfortable. Tell me when to stop or if it hurts. Nikoli said, looking at me in my eyes. I nodded. He slowly started to move and it did hurt for a little while. A while later, it started to feel good and I moaned softly. What if his parents could hear us? Oh my god. That would be embarrassing. Don't worry if you need to scream, do it as loud as you want. I won't stop you. Nikoli said with a knowing smile. This would be one hell of a ride. I woke up to clothes, sheets, and pillows on the ground, all around the bed. I tried getting up, but a strong arm stopped me from doing so. I looked down and saw Nikoli's naked body wrapped around mine. I looked at myself and gasped when I saw I was naked too. What the hell happened last night? Don't you remember? You and Nikoli made it together. I heard Celeste say. Mated? Scenes of what happened last night came to my mind and I sighed with a happy smile. Oh, so that's what happened. I giggled to myself and looked back at Nikoli who was sleeping peacefully beside me. I ran my hands through his hair and slowly got up, not wanting to wake him up. I took the sheet that was on the floor and wrapped it around my body. I walked to the bathroom and turned on the shower. I waited till the water was at a warm temperature and got in, putting the sheet on the floor. I sighed in content as the water fell on my body. Last night was magical. You could sense the love and desire coming from him. Nikoli was so gentle with me and always made sure I was okay. At that moment, I knew he loved me more than the mate bond that we had. He loved me in spite of the fact that we weren't made of for each other and I loved him just as much, probably even more. I never felt this way about a guy before. I turned around to get my soap from the top of the sink when I felt someone grab my arm. I yelped and opened the shower curtain to see Nikoli standing there in his boxers looking tired. What's wrong? I asked. He looked like he was on edge about something. 
he shook his head and got in the shower with me. Well, I'm sure if you asked to join me, I would have said yes. I thought. I heard Celeste laugh in my mind. Something's wrong. She said. Nicoly wrapped his arms around me and put his head in the crook of my neck. Last night was amazing. He whispered to me and planted a small kiss. He whispered to me and planted a small kiss. I blushed and rested my hands on top of his. You made me feel special. I said softly, looking up at him. He smiled slightly. You are special to me. I won't let anyone take you away from me again. He said more to himself than to me. Okay, what was going on? Nicoly. What's wrong? Tell me please. I said. It's nothing for you to worry about. He said, kissing my cheek. That simple sentence made the wheels start to turn in my head. Of course, I would worry. I want to introduce you to the pack as their official future Luna. Nicoly said to me, changing the subject. I gasped softly. Really? When? I asked, getting excited. Today. I want to show you off and for everyone to know that you are mine. He said, taking a sniff of my scent. I turned around and nodded. No one can take me away from you. I told him truthfully. They would have to put up a fight for me to go with them. When I was away from Nicoly for almost a week, I wasn't myself. I missed him so much. I might not have shown it, but I felt it. Nicoly took the body soap that I was taking when he came in here from the sink and opened it. He turned me back around and poured the soap on my back and slowly rubbed it in with his hands. He was so gentle and I loved it. I bent my head down so he could rub my neck. I love you, Annabelle. Nicoly said. I smiled. I love you, too. I repeated his actions, but on him and soon we were out of the shower. I got out and remembered I didn't have a towel. Um, I don't have a towel. I said shyly to Nicoly. Don't worry. I've seen all of you. He said, taking my hand and guiding me back into the room. He gave me one of his shirts and boxers to wear for the time being and I put back on the same undies from yesterday, seeing that my clothes are at my house. I dried myself with the towel Nicoly got for me and changed into his shirt. It smelt like him. Hungry? Nicoly asked as he came out from his closet wearing only a pair of new boxers. As if on cue, my stomach started to growl. I giggled. I guess so. I said, smiling. Nicoly picked me up from the bed and carried me downstairs. I can walk, you know. I said with a chuckle as Nicoly walked down the stairs. I know, but can I hose zero LD you? He said innocently. I shook my head with a smile on my face. As we got to the kitchen, Nicoly put me on top of the counter and stood between my legs. And what would you like to eat? He asked, kissing my nose. I laughed. You could just get me cereal. I said. Is that what you really want? He asked. I nodded. It's not like you can make me real food anyway. I said, laughing. He playfully growled and laughed. I will hold you to that. He said. I nodded. I'd like to see you try. I said. Nicoly got out two bowls and opened the fridge, taking out the milk. He got out frosted flakes and poured some for the both of us. I watched as he took two spoons from the draw and put them in the bowls. Eat up, kitty cat. He said with a smile. We started to eat and the only thing that was on my mind was how Nicoly's mood changed from the bathroom to now. What has gotten him so upset? As we finished up our cereal, I jumped down from the counter and put the bowls in the sink. Nicoly's parents came into the kitchen a few minutes later and to say that I was embarrassed was an understatement. I could feel the heat rise to my cheeks. I take it you both had a good night's sleep? Mrs. O'Connell asked. I nodded and Nicoly chuckled. Morning, Mom, Dad. He said. So when am I going to have grandchildren running around here? She asked. My eyes widened. What in God's name? I'm too young to have children. Don't worry. I won't push you into something you don't want to do. 
I heard Nicoly say to me through the mind link. I glanced at him and smiled. Mr. O'Connell laughed at my facial expression. Don't mind her. She's been wanting Nicoly to have children ever since he was born, he said. I laughed nervously. Wait. Am I pregnant? I blurted out. Nicoly smiled down at me. No. In order for you to become pregnant, I would have had to bite the same spot where I claimed you during the mating process. He informed me. I nodded slowly with my mouth slightly opened. We won't keep you long. I know you guys won't be able to keep your hands off each other since you are new to this. Mr. O'Connell said. I looked at him confused and Nicoly tugged at the shirt I had on. We walked out of the kitchen and Nicoly's laugh rang through the whole hallway. You should have seen your face. He said. I playfully glared at him. It's not funny. Your mother was serious. I said, laughing. When we reached his room, we walked inside and I laid down on the bed. He hovered over me and pecked me on the lips. Let's do something today. Nicoly said. Wait a minute. Don't we have school? Oh God. We skipped school. I shouted. I shouted. Nicoly just watched me and laughed. Don't worry, the teachers there are werewolves and half of them know what happened. Plus, the principal is my father's best friend, so we're clear. He said, still chuckling. I rolled my eyes. Well, don't I feel stupid? I said. You're not stupid, you're just slow at knowing things. Nicoly said with an innocent smile. I gasped playfully and slapped him across his chest. Meanie, I said, pouting. Nicoly took my bottom lip in his mouth and licked it. I gasped. Looking back at him, his eyes turned black. No, I said, pushing him off me. He just chuckled. You know you want me, he said cockily. He said cockily. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, sure, I said sarcastically. Let's go for a run. I want to see your sexy wolf, Nicoly said. I giggled and nodded. But I need clothes. Can we go to my house? I asked. I asked. Nicoly nodded and got dressed in front of me. My jaw dropped. Close your mouth, kitty cat. I don't want to kiss you with flies in your mouth, he said, grinning down at me. I closed my mouth and mastered the best glare I could on my face. You evil little mutt, I said. He growled. I don't like being called a mutt. You'll pay for that, he said. My eyes widened and I dashed out of the room with Nicoly right behind me. I ran down the stairs and into Mr. O'Connell's office where he was with a man with a gray beard discussing something. I always seem to interrupt something. Mr. O'Connell looked up from his papers and looked at me with a smile. Um, sorry, but Nicoly is going to capture me and torture me, I said dramatically. I crawled underneath the desk. Whatever you do, don't say anything. The two men looked at me with amused expressions on their faces. I sat there with my knees up to my chest. Footsteps were coming this way and I peeked through the space that I had and looked at Mr. O'Connell's face. He was looking at Nicoly with the same expression he was giving me. Where is my little kitty cat? I heard Nicoly say. Mr. O'Connell looked at me for a second and back at Nicoly. She isn't here if that's what you're asking. Mr. O'Connell said. I happily smiled at him and suddenly I felt myself being dragged out from under the table. I could smell your scent from a mile away. Nicoly whispered to me. My breath hitched in my throat and my heart started to beat faster. Nicoly picked me up and put me over his shoulder. No. Put me down, you git. I said, hitting him on his back. He smacked my butt and I yelped. He walked out of the office and I glanced at Mr. O'Connell and the man who still had that amused facial expression. I huffed and let Nicoly carry me to who knows where. He dumped me on something soft. Oh, the couch. So, the living room? Now what do I do with you? He asked himself, tapping on his chin. 
I tried getting up, but he stopped me by putting both of his hands on either side of my face on the couch. Shaking his head, he had a mischievous smile on his face. What dash? I tried to say but stopped when he started to tickle me. And no, stop. Say you're the luckiest girl in the world because you've met me. He said. Never. I screamed. He continued to tickle me and I gave up. Oh, my stomach hurts. I'm the luckiest girl in the world because I met you. I said. I said. He stopped and smiled. His face turned to a serious expression. I'd never been so happy till I met you. Nicoly said. Nicoly said. I blushed. He caressed my face with adoration in his eyes. I smiled and pecked his lips. Hey, we didn't even get to go for a run. I said. I said. He chuckled. Way to ruin the moment. I just smiled innocently. I was getting ready for the pack meeting Nicoly called for. I was so nervous. What if the pack doesn't want me as Luna? What if I'm not good enough? I thought. Don't worry, they'll love you. I heard Celeste say. I nodded my head. I was in my room. Nicoly drove me to my house so I could get a change of clothes. I didn't even know if I could go back home. After what happened to me, Nicoly has been very protective. A knock was heard from the other side of my room door. Are you ready? I heard Nicoly say. Yes. You can come in. I said. He opened the door and I turned around. From the expression on my face, I knew he saw that I was nervous. You don't have to be nervous. I'll be right next to you the whole time. He said. I slightly smiled and nodded. He took my hand and we walked out of my room. Walking down the stairs, my mother and father were waiting by the door for us. Honey, you'll do great. My mother said. Could everyone sense what I was feeling? We walked outside and got in our separate cars. Once we all got in, we drove to Nicoly's house where there were a lot of people outside talking with each other. I looked at Nicoly with pleading eyes. He kissed my cheek. I'm right here. He said. I shook my head. What if they don't like me? I asked. Nicoly growled next to me. Don't think like that. They would be proud to have you as their Luna. Nicoly said to me. He kissed my cheek and got out of the car and opened my door. I got out and took his hand, walking up to the front door. We didn't go in but stood on the top step and Nicoly's father started to talk, which made everyone quiet down. As you all know, Nicoly has found his mate. You may have heard of what happened to her but she is okay, as you can see. He said, looking at me with a smile. I smiled back. I would now like to introduce you to Annabelle Ania Thompson. He continued. Murmurs started to flow through the people. Like Mr. O'Connell did, they all probably knew who my father was. Everyone started to cheer and I smiled. Nicoly hugged me from behind and kissed my cheek. I told you they would love you. He said. I giggled. I guess so. I looked around to see how many people were here. Assuming there were over 200 members here. I saw some of the teachers and I wondered what school would be like from now on. I saw Jessica and Luke and I waved them over. They smiled and walked over to us. What's up, my future Luna? Luke said. I playfully rolled my eyes. Really? I said. I said. I felt like someone was watching me. The vibe that I was getting wasn't a good sign. I looked to my right to see Nicoly talking to Luke and Jessica. Looking straight ahead of me, I saw a guy wearing all black looking right at me. Hey, guys? Who's that man? I asked. They looked to where I was looking and they gasped. Shit. I heard Nicoly say. Nicoly's POV. I knew Annabelle would see him sooner or later. I just didn't think it would have been that quick. I could see the wheels turning in that pretty little head of hers. I looked at Luke, who didn't know what to say at the moment. He was frozen in his spot just as I was. Can anyone please tell me what's going on? Annabelle asked impatiently. 
I wrapped my arms around her and glared at the person ahead of me. I wouldn't exactly say that I had the best life before. Since I am the older child out of Jessica and I, I would take the alpha title. My pack is the largest and strongest pack in the USA. A lot of people from different packs are out to take down my pack because they want the power we have. For them to know that the king of our kingdom's daughter is my mate only makes it a bonus for them because they could use her for her power as well, like Jason did or tried to. But since Annabelle is more innocent and doesn't have the evilness in her anymore, it's easier for anyone to take advantage of her. I growled at the thought of someone taking advantage of her. She was mine and I would make sure everyone who tried to harm a piece of hair on her head knew that. Whatever you do, don't pay attention to that person, I said to her. She looked up at me with a blank expression on her face. Please. I'll tell you everything later, I said, wanting her to listen to me. She didn't know how much her safety meant to me. We were having a good time this week not having to worry about anything and then he showed up. I was getting angry by the minute and I knew Annabelle knew it. She nodded and I sighed, kissing her cheek. Go with Luke and Jessica inside the house, I said, reluctantly taking my hands off of her. I heard a soft whimper escape her mouth. I knew it was hard for both of us to let go of each other. Like my father said, it would be hard for us to stay away from each other now that we had done the last process of being mates. Annabelle nodded and walked away with Jessica and Luke right behind her. I walked to my father who was talking to Michael, my history teacher. Dad, we have a problem. I said. He snapped his head to me and watched me intently. I motioned my head to the direction that my worst enemy was and my father's eyes followed. I could literally feel the anger he was giving off. Where's Annabelle? He asked without taking his eyes off of him. With Jessica and Luke. I said, running a hand through my hair. I said, running a hand through my hair. He nodded. I could tell he took a liking to Annabelle. From the first time I brought her here, I knew my dad would love her. I didn't think he could ask for a better mate for me than Annabelle. Okay, everyone, thank you for your time. But I am afraid we have to end it here. Go back to your homes and be careful. My dad yelled with authority in his voice. He looked at Michael and nodded his head to him. I will talk to you later, right now. I have some business to attend to. My father said. With respect, Michael bowed his head and walked away. Let's go. He said. We walked inside the house where Annabelle, her parents, Jessica and Luke were sitting on the couch. Annabelle had an expression I couldn't really understand. When she looked up at me, happiness danced in her eyes and I would give anything for her to stay that way. I walked over to her, picking her up and positioning her on my lap. I could feel the protectiveness over her becoming stronger. What's going on? She asked softly. That guy you saw outside isn't someone you should socialize with. He's no good and he wants my pack. My dad said. She looked over to him. With you being Nicolie's mate only makes it easier for him to take us down. You get hurt. Nicolie would more than be distracted and would be too angry to protect himself. He gets hurt. The pain from my son would be too much for me and anyone can claim my spot as Alpha. Jessica won't be able to do it because she isn't trained and isn't 18 yet. My dad continued to say. Annabelle's eyes widened. Is it my fault that this guy is here? I heard her thoughts. I heard her thoughts. I didn't want her to think that I had invaded her privacy, so I didn't say anything but held her tightly. A knock was heard from the front door, making us all stand up and be on edge. We all had a feeling of who it might be but didn't say anything. My father opened the door and in came the devil himself. I heard Annabelle gasping from beside me. Damon? She asked. I looked at her in disbelief. She knew this guy. I glared at Damon. He smirked. I wanted to beat the shit out of him. Bell. He said. Annabelle ran to him and gave him a hug. I growled and took a step forward but my father stopped me by putting his hands on my shoulder. I watched as Damon wrapped his arms around Annabelle's waist. What are you doing here? She asked. 
It came out as a muffle since her head was pressed against his chest, but seeing as us werewolves have enhanced hearing, we understood. He pulled away and gave her a sad smile. I felt like I had to interrupt. You know him? I asked Annabelle. She nodded. This is my cousin. She said softly. Oh, if only she knew what her cousin was really like. I stared happily at the boy before me. Damon. I haven't seen him in a long time. The last time I saw him was three years ago. I ran to him and gave him a hug. What are you doing here? I asked. I knew he could hear the surprise in my voice. Damon pulled away and there was this expression on his face that I couldn't understand. You know him? Nicoly interrupted, putting emphasis on the word. Him. I nodded. This is my cousin. I said, slightly confused. A dark expression came across Nicoly's face and I was taken aback. Get away from him now. Nicoly roared. I flinched and my dad walked over to me. Now you aren't going to talk to my daughter like that. My father said. Nicoly growled loudly and I was scared even though I knew I shouldn't be. I had never seen this side of him before. I backed away, bumping into Damon. Nicoly took a step forward towards me and yanked me away from Damon. What are you doing? I asked. That's my cousin. I yelled. Well, your cousin is the devil's son. Nicoly fired back at me. I gasped. I glared at him. And why do you think that? I asked coldly. He killed one of my best friends. Nicoly said furiously. I looked up at Damon. Now you know I had my reasons. Now you know I had my reasons. I had to defend myself. Well, you didn't have to kill him. Enough. Mr. O'Connell yelled. I looked at him and quieted down. Now I want to know why this filthy mud is on my territory, and I want everyone to sit down. Mr. O'Connell said using his alpha tone. We all did as he said and sat down. Nicoly sat next to me and pecked my cheek. I'm sorry for yelling at you. He whispered to me. I nodded. It's okay. I'm sorry too. I said softly. Now you... Mr. O'Connell said, pointing to Damon. Why are you here? He asked. Everyone listened attentively to hear the answer to that question. How did Damon even know where I lived? I came here to warn you. Damon said seriously. I am a part of the Moonblood Pack. My Alpha wants to take over your pack and have Annabelle as his mate. Seeing that she has wonderful gifts, he wants her by his side no matter what, even if she already has one. Damon said, looking at Nicoly. Damon said, looking at Nicoly. Nicoly wrapped his arms around me and pulled me closer to him. Mine. He whispered, so that only I could hear. I waited for Damon to continue. The Alpha will be here in three days and you have to prepare. Someone from your pack betrayed you and they want Annabelle out of the picture. I remember walking through the hall in my pack house and passing the Alpha's office and there was a girl talking to him about you. My eyes widened. Someone who hated me that much. Do you have any idea of anyone who dislikes you this much for them to betray their own pack? Damon asked me. I couldn't think of anyone who didn't like me. At school, I kept to myself and only talked to Nicoly, Jessica, and Luke. I didn't know anyone outside of school except for the people at work, which I was probably fired from all the days that I didn't come in. A thought came into my head. This isn't over. Jenny. Wait. Jenny. I said. She thinks it's my fault that Nicoly doesn't want her anymore. It's kind of your fault. Luke said playfully. I glared at him. Not funny, I said. What does she look like? Damon asked. She has blonde hair, brown eyes, and loves to wear makeup. I said, naming the basics. Basically she looks like a slut, Jessica said. I snickered and nodded my head in agreement. What she said, I replied. Damon looked in thought and realization flashed in his eyes. That was her. She has sort of a squeaky voice, right? 
I nodded. You have to be careful. The Alpha has people watching your every move. Why don't you call your Alpha by his name? Mr. O'Connell asked Damon. If we don't, consequences would be made. Damon said, flinching as if he was remembering something. Well, here we go again. Drama was everywhere I turned to these days. It's the same thing over and over again. My father said to no one in particular. What is? I asked, looking at him confused. It seems like all the people that are after you only want you for your looks and power. What's worst is that they know who you are to me. He said with a frustrated sigh. My mother put a hand on his shoulders and squeezed it. We can get through this you know. She said smiling as best as she could. I knew and so did everyone else, could see that my mother felt the pain that my father was feeling. Everyone in here with mates can relate to this scene before us. I only wanted what was best for my daughter. Keeping her in the dark until now for the benefit of her safety didn't go as I planned it to go. People are after her and I clearly don't know what to do. My dad said with sorrow in his voice. My dad isn't one to give up without a fight. If he has to fight for himself he would do it without any hesitations. Family is important to him and seeing him like this broke my heart. No one has known my father to be clueless about anything. He always had a plan or some kind of idea that would be of great help. Dad everything is going to be fine. We will find a way around this. I said softly, getting up and kneeling down to him. Everyone slowly got up, giving us our family time. The only people that stayed were Damon, seeing as he was family and Nicoly. I wouldn't want him to go either way. He was soon to be a part of my family. Uncle there is one thing that can be done. Damon said. We all turned our heads to him. And what might that be? My father asked with a sigh. You can always go back to your castle in Italy. Damon said. I never knew my father was Italian. You're Italian? I asked bluntly. We're all Italian. My father said pointing to my mother and myself. You were born in Italy, but as people were plotting to kidnap you, we thought it would be best to move. We stayed in New York for the rest of our lives until we recently moved to London. He said. I nodded and sighed. This has been going on from the time I was born and people are still trying to find a way to get to me. As if sensing my distress, Nicoly pulled me to his chest sitting on the floor. I suppose that going back to Italy would be the only place that can keep you safe. My dad said. A low growl left Nicoly's lips. I rested my hand on top of Nicoly's. Will Nicoly be coming? I asked. I had a feeling I knew the answer to that question. It would be the only reason why I had to ask. My father had a hesitant look on his face and that alone gave me the answer. No, I'm sorry. He said, genuinely meaning it. I whimpered and Nicoly roared. You can't just take Annabelle far away and say I'm not coming. You must be delusional if you think I would stay back and wait when Annabelle is fighting for her life. Nicoly growled out. I looked at my father with pleading eyes. He can't do this to me. It would be the worst torture I would ever go through. I can't be away from Nicoly. I won't. And we won't have to be. I heard Celeste say in my mind. I nodded mentally agreeing with her. You won't do that to me. Would you dad? I asked, looking him straight in the eyes. My dad was contemplating with himself. I knew it. He sighed. Okay, but we have to get going as soon as possible. Tomorrow night for the latest. The Moonblood Pack is already preparing for battle as we speak. My dad said. How bad is it this time? I asked. When Jason took me it wasn't all that bad. I could take care of myself with who I was before. Now that I had changed, I didn't know what to expect. I can't use my powers on my own time now because I would go back to who I was, or wasn't before and God knows I didn't want to relive that moment again. I don't want you to worry about that. Damon said to me. I clenched my jaw in agitation. How else would you expect me to protect myself if you won't tell me anything? I yelled in pure anger. I wasn't angry at the fact that no one would tell me what's in store for me. 
I was mostly angry because everyone is treating me like a child when clearly I'm not. I already went through this once. I'm sure I can go through it another time. You have an alpha in his whole pack that wants you to belong to them. If you minus out the women seen as they can't fight, you have to fight off about 50 men. As much as that is extremely less than the men in this pack, the moon blood are very strong. You would need to a lot of strong men to fight them off. Damon finally said after waiting for a few seconds. Nicolie's hands tightened around me. I could feel his anger rising. He put his face in the crook of my neck sniffing softly. Calming down, he raised his head up. No one's going to take you away from me again. He murmured more to himself, kissing my neck. We won't get separated from Nicolie again. Celeste said faintly. Are you ready to go? I heard my dad yell from downstairs. I packed up the last of my belongings and rolled my suitcase out of my room. Walking down the stairs, my mother and father were waiting by the door with about four suitcases. I had no doubt that most of them were my mother's. Mom, how long do you think we're staying for? I asked her incredulously. She shrugged. Anything can happen. She stated with a look in her eyes that I couldn't explain. Are you ready? My dad asked once again. I nodded and we headed outside to the car. Popping the trunk of the car open, we put our belongings in and got in the car. My dad put the keys in the ignition and we drove off to the airport where we would be meeting Nicolie. Pulling up to the airport was a relief. I couldn't wait to get out of the car. My butt has been hurting me from the time I sat down in the car. The airport is a far distance from my house. No kidding. Celeste said to me. I rolled my eyes and got out of the car and stretched, walking to the trunk of the car to get my parents and my things. As I was getting the last of the suitcases, a hand clamped around mine. I snapped my head in the direction the person was standing and I came face to face with Nicolie. I jumped in surprise and put my hand on my chest. Geez, just give me a heart attack will ya? I said to Nicolie, smiling. He smiled back. Sorry. I just thought you needed some help. You seem like you're struggling. He said with a smirk. I playfully hit his chest and he got two of the suitcases. My parents came around and spotted Nicoli. Oh good, you're already here. Let's go. My dad said, grabbing his belongings. We walked inside the airport and Nicoli's family along with Damon was standing there waiting for us. Whoa. I didn't know your family was coming. I said, startled. You really thought we were going to let you leave and not help you? Mr. O'Connell said. We are family, remember? I smiled. Even though this was an airport, my father pulled a few strings so we could get a private jet. In no time, a man escorted us to our plane and we got in quickly. Taking our seats, we buckled up and everything was quiet. I knew no one wanted to say anything to disrupt the comfort of the silence. I leaned my head on Nicolie's shoulders and he wrapped his arms around me. I closed my eyes and soon I was in a deep sleep. I woke up with someone shaking me softly. Kitty cat, wake up. We landed. I heard Nicolie say to me. I opened my eyes and Nicoil smiled softly at me. I looked down and I was lying on the couch. I got up slowly and took Nicolie's hand. I looked around and everyone was off the plane. Well, that was quick. I thought to myself. Shaking my head, we walked out of the private jet and reached up with everyone. I made a few calls and some of my people are coming to pick us up. My father said. We nodded and took our things and waited outside of the airport we were now in. It was already nighttime here and I was exhausted. I couldn't believe I was in Italy. A few minutes later, a limo pulled up. I turned to my dad with a shocked look on my face. What is your status exactly? I asked. He laughed. Like I said darling, I am the king. He said. Everyone chuckled and the driver of the limo got out and helped us with our things. Once everything was settled, we got into the limo and we were all off to a place that I had never been before, or couldn't remember. My eyes widened in awe at the sight in front of me. There was a huge castle in front of me. 
I turned to look at Nikoli, who had the same expression on his face as me. You were living the life. Nikoli said to my dad. I giggled. I never knew that my father was this rich, or maybe I did. I've got to stop doing that. I thought. I heard chuckles that came from everyone in the car. Rolling my eyes, I was the first one to get out of the car and walked up to the castle. I had to call it like I saw it. I giggled inwardly at my joke. A lady came up to me and smiled. Welcome back, sweetie. She said to me. I gave her a crooked smile and she guided me inside the castle. I never met her in my life and I knew that for a fact. I glanced behind me and everyone was walking behind me. Walking into the castle was mesmerizing. The walls were an off-white color with light blue on the ceiling. I did a 360 and my father walked up to me. Just like old times. He said. I smiled. Suddenly, something came crashing through the window. Fire started to erupt and everyone started to panic. I looked around and spotted a figure coming through the open door. We hadn't even been here for an hour and trouble had already found us. Fire. All I could see was fire. Everyone was surrounding me like bodyguards. Rolling my eyes, I blew out the reddish-orange oxidation by focusing on it. Nikoli took a quick glance at me before focusing on the intruder and with a ghost of a smile on his face. My little kitty cat will always amaze me. I heard him say through the bond we share with each other. I smiled slightly and looked at everyone else who were standing in fighting stances. I stared at everyone with love swirling in my eyes as they would put their lives on the line for me. Pay attention. I heard Celeste say to me. Focusing back on the person running towards us, it seemed as if they had been running towards us for hours. I put up a shield around everyone so they couldn't be touched. As the intruder ran up to us, he abruptly stopped knowing what just happened. He made it a tisk a sound with his tongue and stopped in front of me. You can't keep this up forever. He said, motioning to the shield that was forcing him and I apart. I smiled. I can always try. I said. Let it down. Celeste said to me. Why? I asked. Then you have a better chance of catching him off guard when you or anyone else charges at him. She said. I nodded and took it down. I stepped forward to the man who I didn't know the name of and watched him with caution. What do you want? I asked. I could feel everyone's eyes on me, especially Nicolie's. The man smiled. You, of course. I have come here on a mission to take you back with me. If you don't come willingly, consequences will be made. He said, with a sinister smile on his face. I heard Nikoli growl at him and heavy footsteps were heard and I glanced at Nikoli, who charged at the man in front of me. Taking him by his neck, Nikoli threw the man against the wall. You wouldn't dare put a hand on my mate, Nikoli said, with a menacing look gleaming in his eyes. All the man did was chuckle as he stood up. Shaking his head to clear it, he walked up to Nikoli. I think I'll have a go at you first, the man said. What did that mean? I thought. Guys. He yelled. In no time, a group of werewolves stood before us. The man only smiled. Now I will have my way. He said, looking at me. In a flash, the man and Nikoli shifted. I turned back to see my family and Nikoli's family already in their wolf forms. I was the only odd one out and I felt out of place. Shifting into my wolf, I felt free and ready for the kill. The man charged at Nikoli and soon everything was chaos. I saw from the corner of my eyes that my dad had butt another wolf in the face. Feeling a sense of dread, I knew someone was looking at me. Turning my attention to the culprit, I saw a dark brown wolf staring at me intently. Making small but quick steps towards me, I knew I was in trouble. The way this wolf made me feel was overwhelming and not in a good way. I followed his movement and charged at him in the least expected way. As if he saw this coming, he moved out of the way before I could jump on him. A growling noise escaped my mouth and I turned back around to watch him. Walking in circles, he watched me like I was his prey. I knew I was doing the same with the way I was looking at him. Determination was evident in my eyes and I knew I had to take this man down. He thought he knew more things than me. 
that I knew because of the look in his eyes. Confidence. I took a chance again and charged at the overly confident man before me and luckily it didn't backfire. He fell to the ground with me on top of him and I took my claw and scratched at his face. He hissed in pain and pushed me off of him. Getting up quickly, I bit his hind leg and he fell to the ground again before he could even stand up. The sound of his whimpers filled my ears with every other noise that was coming from other people. I looked at him with a small victory swimming in the pit of my stomach. He got up slowly with a hint of pain in his eyes and held his head high. I could tell the pain was unbearable. Taking a step towards me, the wolf tried to charge at me but I didn't take any time in moving out of the way. He left me an opening to his neck where I plunged my teeth into. I watched as he fell limp on the floor. A searing pain started to form in my chest. Everything was going in slow motion. Something was definitely wrong. Looking around, the room looked like a complete mess. Blood was shed, tables were broken, lifeless bodies were lying on the floor. The pain started to intensify and I looked around frantically for the source that was causing the pain. I looked around for Nicoly, who was too engulfed in sinking his teeth in a wolf's neck to be hurt. My eyes wandered around hopelessly and it soon landed on my father. He was lying on the ground with another wolf on top of him. He looked weak and helpless. Lifeless. My father's head was turned to the direction I was standing in and my thought was indeed correct. My father held no emotion. I felt like the air was swept from my lungs. My father was dead. The word dangled in my head a little longer. Dead. Tears fell from my eyes as I watched the man who took part in giving me life. He was now lifeless on the floor. I whimpered and the one who did this turned to face me with a wolfish grin on his face. It was the man who first barged in here. If you don't come willingly, then consequences will be made. Looking back at the wolf, pain and sorrow engulfed me. This was the consequence. I heard the screams from my mother as she ran to my father. Falling to her knees, her sobs got louder by the minute. The pain she was feeling coursed through my body like twenty knives trying to jab their way into my body. Most of it was from me. Pain. Sorrow. Agony. Silent tears fell from my eyes as I watched my mother. She lost half of herself. To her, the world revolved around my dad. Her mate. I'm positively sure it would have been the other way around if my father was still alive. He would make my assumptions true, but I knew I wasn't just assuming. I was speaking the truth. I was still in my wolf form, alert of anything else that could happen. Also, I didn't have any clothes close to me. Nicoly walked up to me and handed me a shirt of his that I could wear. I looked up at him and worry was written all over his face. I looked away from him and grabbed the shirt with my mouth. Walking behind a wall, I shifted and quickly put on the shirt before anyone could see. Dead. It was all I was thinking. My father couldn't be dead. But he is. A voice in my head said which wasn't Celeste. My conscience. I couldn't do anything about it. Using my powers to bring back the dead is dark magic. I don't plan on going down that road again. Even if I could bring my father back, he wouldn't remember me or my mother. His body would be here, but his soul would be somewhere else. Getting myself together the best way I could, I walked back to everyone as they were standing around my parents. No one did anything as they knew it wouldn't change a thing. My father was gone and no one could do anything about it. Now you see what I was talking about. Someone said from behind me. I jumped in shock, as did everyone else. The man who killed my father was standing so close to me I could wring his neck, but I restrained myself from it. Nicoly grabbed me gently and pressed me against his chest. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? My mother asked shakily. I want your daughter and the only person in the way was her father. I wasn't going to kill her mate as that would have been too obvious. The man, who I have yet to know the name of, said with a smirk on his face. You killed my husband. My mother yelled ferociously. Underneath it all, she was filled with distress. A heart-wrenching pain encircled my heart as my mother watched me. She had a distant look on her face. She looked back at her no longer alive husband with complete emptiness. 
I looked back at the loathsome little swine with rage in my eyes. Don't look at me with such hatred. I did you a favor. The man said. I looked at him like he was a deranged psycho. How the hell did you help me? You killed my father. Please enlighten me with the little brain you do have. I yelled, breathing heavily. The man only chuckled. Now you can be princess in no time. He said. I growled lowly. I felt my eyes turn to a bright purple color. I was livid. Don't do it. Celeste pleaded to me. Why? Why not? He killed my father. I screamed at her. I know and I'm really sorry. You can't go back. She said, knowing that I would understand her vague answer. I couldn't go back. I knew that. I watched as the man watched me with a broad smile on his face. Ah, oh, feisty, I see. He said. I clenched my fist together wanting to punch him square in the face. Restraining myself would be something I would have to work on. You are disgusting. I shouted. Crumbling to the ground, I sat on the floor with my head in my hands. Tears fell from my eyes. I really couldn't do anything. Nothing. I felt a presence next to me and I knew it was Nikoli. He wrapped his arms around me, whispering soothing things in my ear, but I barely heard him. I didn't want to. My mother is disheveled and has no one to make her feel like she's on top of the world. The only person who could have done it is now gone. If this is how losing your mate would feel, I don't want it. Any of it. Now don't talk like that. I heard Celeste say. Ignoring her comment, I continued to cry with Nikoli trying to calm me down. Now, I hope you understand what has just happened. The man said to me. I raised my head from my hands and looked at the man. He was kneeling down in front of me, making me recoil back in disgust. I hope next time you will listen and do as I say. W who said there would be a next time? I asked shakily. There will always be. You might want to sleep with one eye open from now on. The man whispered to me so no one could hear. He slowly got up and looked at me one last time. It was nice meeting you for the first time. I raised my eyebrows. It wasn't hard to seek you out, seeing as you are blood related to the deceased king of this place. He said looking around. Not to mention I could smell your blood. It's very rich and smells like your father's. He continued. It was as if he was taunting me. Let's go, guys. The man said. The men that were alive walked over to him. If my father hadn't been killed, I think we would have been able to finish the rest of the men off. Who are you? I blurted out. I at least had to know the person's name who killed my father. I'm the beta of the Moon Blood Pack. With that, he and his men left. I couldn't do anything to save my father. My mother is a mess and I'm not sure what to do. The only thing I was feeling was something I knew I would feel for the rest of my life. Sorrow. I watched as the beta of the Moon Blood Pack turned his back on me and shifted into his wolf form. I knew that his name wasn't given to me, but I would take what I could get for the moment. I was tired and guilt was eating its way inside of me. My father died trying to protect me. Taking a last glance at me, he grinned a wolfish grin and sprinted out of the now destroyed castle. I clenched my jaw, trying to prevent myself from running after him and killing him the way he killed my father. If I ended up killing him, there would be more pain. I sighed in frustration at not being able to take action and stood up, turning around to everyone who were watching me intently apart from my mother. Nikoli wrapped his arms around me, a way of trying to comfort me. I forced myself to not move away from him. I knew it would hurt him and his wolf, and I didn't want that. Surely when you're hurting, your mate would be the only person to help you relax and take the pain away, but it seems as if the pain is only getting worse for me. It felt like nothing could help me anymore. My mother would never be able to feel her mate's touch again. You only get one chance at having a mate and my mom's slot is closed. My father is dead. I didn't know how much longer my mother could hold on. I was hoping she could hold on as long as she could before letting go. At least I would know that she tried before leaving me, but I didn't want her to die. I needed her in my life. Are you okay? Mr. O'Connell asked me. 
Anger seeped through me as he asked me that question. My mother was in more pain than I would ever be and he had the nerve to ask me that. Annabelle, calm down. I heard Celeste say to me. Taking a deep breath, I slowly calmed down as Celeste wanted me to. Fine. I muttered. Taking small steps to my mother, I knelt down beside her. I didn't say anything as I didn't know what to do to make her feel better. The only person that could ever fulfill that is the man lying down lifeless on the floor. I opened my mouth to say something, but the sobs that were threatening to escape my mouth stopped me from uttering a word. I took a deep breath and looked away from my father. And mom? I whispered softly. She had her head on my father's chest and her body shook violently by her silent tears. It pained me to see her like this. So broken and in so much pain. I felt like the rest of my heart was breaking as my mother looked at me. Her eyes were bloodshot red and puffy. From ever since I was born till now, I had never seen my mother look so shattered. She was always a joyful person. Now that I knew the whole truth, I knew she wouldn't ever be that person again. She lost her happiness. I wrapped my arms around her. Now that my father was gone, we had to be there for each other more than before. Surely my mom knew that I would always be there for her. Everyone, including the people that worked here, helped to clean up the damaged areas as best as we could. My mother was escorted a while ago to a room where she could rest. As much as I wanted her to be okay, I knew that sleep wouldn't do her any justice. I finished up the cleaning I was doing. I wanted to make sure my mother was okay. I walked up the stairs quickly and rounded the corner which led me to my mother's room. Slowly opening the door I smelt something odd. A metallic-like smell hit my nose like a ton of bricks. Sniffing slightly, I walked further into the room and gasped. Blood was all over the floor and left a trail that led to the bed. No. It couldn't be. Please let her be okay. Please. I thought. I walked up to the bed and tears spilled from my eyes at the scene in front of me. A white piece of paper fell from the foot of the bed with a necklace. Picking it up, my mother's handwriting was sprawled across it. My dear Annabelle. I couldn't hold on any longer. The pain was too much. I have failed you and for that I am sorry. Your father was my world, my everything. Now that you have found your mate you can understand the pain that I was feeling. I know it wasn't long after your father died that I killed myself, but I can't stay without him. My life revolved around him and it will forever. You have grown into a beautiful young lady. Your father and I have been through it all with you to see it. Your father was very proud to have a daughter like you as I was also. We couldn't ask for a better child than you. Don't think that I left you because you caused it. It wasn't your fault that your father died either. He protected you for as long as he could and you should be proud of him. He was a well-known and honored man. Now that we are gone, you are to take the throne as queen and Nikoli as king. You hold the true power of running our kingdom and no one else. Remember, you are the daughter of Kevin Male Dante and Mary Male Dante. Now you might be thinking why we gave you the last name Thompson. Even though you know our actual last name you never seem to ask questions. Your last name helped us from not getting caught from the people that are after you. Somehow they have caught up to you and they would do anything in their power to have you. You have a mate that loves you along with his family. Don't take them for granted. Everything would come into place. Just wait, my love. Take this necklace and keep it with you. We will always be with you and watch over you. Love. Your mother. I screamed in agony for the death of both of my parents. They left me to fend for myself, but I couldn't blame any of them. They both wanted what was best for me and I appreciated that. I now had Nikoli and I wouldn't want to lose him. I would not take the title of queen until I have Beta of the Moon Blood Pack's head on a platter. I whispered to myself. He was the reason for my father's death and the result of my mother committing suicide. I would make sure to kill that Beta on his own territory and have his pack watch him along with his Alpha. I heard footsteps running up the stairs as I sat at the bedside by my mother. Staring into space, nothing really mattered in that moment. I had no parents that could tell me everything's going to be alright. They wouldn't be here to hold me when I was feeling sad or angry about something. 
Yeah, I had my mate, but sometimes it's good to be held by your mother. She was the first protector along with your father you have when you're born, and it's a wonderful feeling to be close to your parents, but sadly I stopped having the comfort of my parents for a few hours now. I sighed as the footsteps got closer. I just wanted to be myself for a while even though that wouldn't do me any good. I watched my mother for a few more seconds and turned my attention to Nicoly and his family. Damon pushed through them and looked at my mother. Once his eyes landed on me, surprised filled his eyes. He walked to the bed and knelt down just watching my mom. A tear fell from his eyes. My mom was his favorite aunt. When my mom and I go out, she would always let Damon come along. That was until we got older. We did everything together when my mom had the time. I looked away from him and looked at the ground. When will it stop hurting? Never. I would have to live with this for the rest of my life. A warm hand wrapped around me and I looked up to see Nicoly. I leaned into him knowing that I need him right now. My mother's words floated in my head. You have a mate that loves you along with his family. I knew Nicoly loved me and I loved him just as much. He wrapped his arms tighter around me and the waterworks started. I cried for the death of my parents, Damon's pain, and the love that I have for my mate. If I ever lost Nicoly, I would go insane. I just knew it. Burying my head in Nicoly's chest, I wrapped my arms around his torso and just cried. I had to let it out some time. If I bottled up all this pain, I would lose it. Nicoly rocked me back and forth. It's going to be okay. I promise. He whispered to me, kissing my head. I sniffed and lifted my head from his chest. Putting his index finger under my chin he lifted my head up to look at him. He brushed his lips to mine. Closing my eyes, I cherished this moment. I pressed my lips against his and melted. No one would be able to make me feel the way Nicoly could. I could have never asked for a better mate than him. All my worries were gone from that one kiss. I pulled away and smiled slightly. I love you, kitty cat. Nicoly whispered to me with so much love. I love you, too. The next day couldn't come any slower. I wasn't ready to face the day yet. The sun was shining through the curtains in my room and the birds were chirping. While outside was bright and sunny, I was feeling the opposite. Dull and lifeless. Two feelings that I don't think would go away. Everything from yesterday came tumbling down on me. Unshed tears formed in my eyes but I refused for them to fall. I would have to stop mourning my parents and forget about them. I had to start living in the now and not the past. Although my parents died not too long ago, I still had things to take care of. I couldn't let my parents' death hold me back. I knew that they were both in a good place and watching over me from above. Getting out of my bed, I attempted to wear something bright. Maybe that would lift up my mood. After I picked out my outfit I walked to the bathroom and started to take a shower. Staring at the white walls as I took a shower, it felt like I was in a mental asylum. Everything was just white and I felt caged in. Quickly trying to finish my shower, I washed my hair and cleaned the dirt off my body. I got out a few minutes later and walked back to my room putting on the clothes that I laid out on the bed. I sighed and looked at myself in the mirror. I wasn't the girl in the mirror. No. The girl in the mirror looked happy and joyful. On the inside I was feeling hurt and troubled. I scoffed at myself and smiled. Although it was a forced and broken smile, I didn't care. I needed to forget and that's what I intended to do. I opened the door to my room and walked out going down the long stairs that I would probably not get used to. I walked into the living room where everyone else was and sat down next to Nicoly. He smiled at me and kissed my cheek. How are you feeling? He asked. I smiled and nodded. I'm fine. I said. Everyone looked at me with pity and I didn't like it. I looked away from them. Are you guys going to look at me like that forever? I asked. I asked. No one said anything but looked away from me. I sighed and put my head in my hands. I I am sorry. I just don't know what to do. I said shakily. That was somewhat true. I wasn't going to fulfill my mother's wish of ruling this kingdom until I killed that beta. 
Nikoli put a comforting hand on my back and rubbed it softly. I put on a fake smile remembering that I had to forget this ever happened. Werewolves had known death all their lives and I was just another one of those wolves. Somehow I knew I could never forget that this tragedy ever happened. It was buried at the front of my mind where it would stay forever. I will find that beta or if he came to me with that filthy alpha of his, I will be ready. I realized that forgetting would be the hardest thing to do. I would never be able to. A week has passed since the death of my parents. No had been the same and everyone barely talked. Almost all of our kingdom of wolves heard the news and were devastated about it. I, on the other hand, hadn't done anything at all. I hadn't stepped foot outside and gone anywhere. My wolf had been bothering me to go for a run to let out all the stress, but I wouldn't listen to her. I didn't feel like doing anything. I'd been cooped up in my room with Nikoli by my side every day. I only left my room to get food. But today wasn't like any other day. No, today was the day that I would get my revenge. The Alpha of the Moon Blood Pack hasn't come like Damon said he would. I didn't know what he was waiting for. If he would have come, I would not be going anywhere with him anyway. Maybe he was just waiting to attack me seeing as my parents are gone, but he should know he shouldn't do that. Only a fool would wait. I was getting stronger by the minute because of the pain I was feeling. That's the only thing that was carrying me right now. The pain. Once I laid my paws on the beta, he would be done for and I wasn't going to show any mercy. Walking out of my room with fresh clothes on, I made my way across the hall to the O'Connell's room. They knew that I would be willingly going to find that Alpha and Beta. They knew my plan for revenge. Well, everyone knew and they agreed to help me. At least, now I wasn't far from the Moon Blood Pack. They lived here in Italy and it would be very easy to track them down seeing as we had one of their pack members on our side. Damon. I really was curious to see how the Alpha ran his pack. Knocking on the door, I heard the faint voice of someone telling me to come in. I opened the door and slowly stepped in and stood by the wall. I smiled slightly at both Mr. and Mrs. O'Connell. As if they knew what I was coming in here for, they smiled at me and nodded their heads. We will be down in a little bit. Mrs. O'Connell said to me in a soft voice. I nodded my head and left them to finish whatever it is they were doing. My next stop was to Nicolie's room which he was sharing with Luke and Damon. Without even knocking on the door, I barged in knowing that they were still sleeping. I soundlessly walked inside the room and looked over at Nicolie. He looked so cute while he was sleeping. I wanted to kiss him. He was shirtless and a blanket covered the lower part of his body. You must be thinking why he wasn't sleeping in my room and vice versa. Well, he said he wanted to give me space to mourn my parents' death in peace and I was thankful for that. He understood me and my pain. I really did have a wonderful guy as my mate. I sighed dreamily and walked over to his bedside and pushed him lightly. Nicolie. I murmured softly in his ear to wake him up. He didn't move and refused to wake up. I got up on the bed and stood up ready to jump, but before I could do anything, Nicolie grabbed me by my ankle and pulled me down to lay next to him. I giggled and propped up on my elbow. I know you're awake. I said, watching him. He opened one of his eyes and when he saw me looking at him, he quickly closed his eyes. I rolled my eyes with a smile on my face. God, I loved him. Wake up. I said, laughing a little. I combed my hand through Nicolie's hair and I heard him growl. He loved it when I played with his hair. He wrapped his arms around me and pulled me closer to him. Morning, kitty cat. He said in a husky voice. Damn, even his voice sounded sexy. I bit my lip. Morning. I said softly. He sat up and I followed his actions. Putting me on his lap facing him, Nickley watched me intently. It was like he was trying to remember every detail of my face and engrave it into his mind. Are you sure you want to do this? He asked me with concern in his voice. I nodded. He knew what I was about to do was very dangerous and probably could get me killed. He tried talking me out of it before, but he knew I had to do this. I had to avenge my parents. I have to. I said with certainty. My heart was heavy in my chest and it felt like something was weighing it down. 
maybe if I avenge my parents, the weight would lessen and I could finally breathe again. He nodded and kissed my forehead. I got up off of him and he got up. I'll wake up the guys. He said, looking at me. I nodded one last time and walked out of the room. I was going to go to Jessica's room, but I heard her voice downstairs. I walked down and saw her with her parents eating. I smiled and walked up to them. Jessica was the first to see me. Hello, Sleeping Beauty. She said to me. I haven't seen you in a while. She continued teasing me. I rolled my eyes and laughed. Yeah, was all I said. An hour had passed and the boys were now coming down, dressed and ready. Finally, I was just about to come up there. Jessica said. We all laughed. Now Annabelle, are you ready to do this? Luke asked me. Yes. I replied. Time to get this show on the road. It didn't take long for us to find the Moon Blood Pack's location. Surprisingly, they were five miles away from the castle. Since we had one of their pack members on our side, we found them faster than we expected. I looked up at the fairly huge pack house in front of me and smirked to myself. I had the chance to take down the beta and the alpha of this place. I was going to turn this place upside down. There was no turning back now. I fixed my shirt and got ready to knock on the door when Nikoli grabbed my wrist, stopping me. Are you absolutely sure that you want to do this? Nikoli asked me again. I could see the concern and fear for my well-being in his eyes. I simply nodded my head and turned around to knock on the door. In a few seconds, an unknown person opened the door. He had blonde hair and brown eyes. Looking at us suspiciously, the man began to talk. Who are you people? He asked with confusion written on his face. I mustered up a fake smile. We came here to meet your alpha. I said with a smirk. He looked at us blankly and I knew he was communicating with his alpha through the mind link. I waited patiently for him to finish. Come in. He said once he was done talking to his alpha. I guess the alpha gave us permission to enter. We stepped foot inside the house and I looked around. The pack house was luxurious. Everything looked expensive and worth a lot. Oh, and breakable, if you know what I mean. We followed the man in front of us who was guiding us to the Alpha in his office. He was in for the surprise of his life. I couldn't wait to see the look on his face when he sees us. Bet he didn't expect his prey to come knocking on his door. We reached a wooden door that had Alpha's office engraved on it and we stopped in front of the door. The man left us to our matter with his Alpha and I smiled at him. Knocking on the door, I didn't wait for the Alpha to say anything. I barged in his office with everyone following behind me. To say that the look on the Alpha's face was priceless was an understatement. It was beyond hilarious. I wanted to laugh but I kept up the serious facade pretty well. The Alpha looked like he didn't know what to do. After barely composing himself, he smiled up at me. Well, 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 what do we have here? The Alpha said with a condescending smirk on his face. It seems that I don't have to come get you myself. Did my beta finally get to you? He asked. Hardly. I came here willingly to teach you a lesson. I'm sure you're aware of my parents being dead since it was all you're doing anyway. I said. The Alpha put on an innocent face acting like he didn't know what I was talking about. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Care to elaborate? He said with a fake smile. I laughed. He disgusted me. It would be so nice to finally rip your head off. I said snarling at him. The smile on his face never went away but just stayed there. It was very annoying. You wouldn't dream of touching me. You do know that once you are here you can't leave. He said in more of a statement than a question. And why is that? I spat. You belong to me. He said simply like it was a fact and got up from the chair he was sitting on. A growl left Nikoli's mouth as he too stepped closer to me. I could feel the anger radiating off of his body. He was very possessive of me. You can't have her because she's mine, Nikoli said. I shivered at his choice of words. It made butterflies erupt in my stomach. I shook my head, 
getting those thoughts out of my head and focusing on what I had to do. Which was killing the son of a bitch and his beta. You won't be able to stop me as I have people that can easily take away Annabelle for me. The Alpha said. I growled at him. He wouldn't dare. And who do you have in mind? I asked him. Slowly, the door to the office opened as two people came inside. Everyone looked at them. The first one was no surprise, as I knew she was a betraying bitch. She betrayed her own pack. Jenny walked in with her head held high, but I could tell she was scared by the rapid beating of her heart and the fear in her eyes as she looked at Mr. O'Connell, her alpha. Nickley bared his teeth at her and she flinched, but nevertheless, she still kept walking. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this young lady. Sad, really? She wanted Annabelle out of the picture because she loved you, Nickley. The man in front of me said. Nickley rolled his eyes and glared at the Alpha. He didn't even spare a glance at Jenny, who was looking at him with longing in her eyes. Surely, she knew that I've always wanted to find my mate and knew that there could never be anything serious between us. Nickley growled out. Someone cleared their throat which in turn made everyone whip their head in the person's direction. The person that was standing in front of me wasn't supposed to be here. No, it was impossible. He was supposed to be dead. Jason. There's no need to have that shocked expression on your face, Annabelle. You do remember me, right? I heard Jason say to me. I was beyond shocked. I opened my mouth to say something, but closed it. I didn't know what to say or do at that moment. He wasn't supposed to be alive. I clearly remembered him being dead. I opened my mouth and closed it again. I probably looked like a fish out of the water, but I didn't care. You're supposed to be dead. I stated the obvious, dumbfounded. I'm sure everyone in here had the same expression as me with the exception of the a big bad wolf and Jenny. The alpha was smirking like he already won the battle before it even began. Jason chuckled and looked at me with a smile on his face. The same smile that I used to fear and hate. And you are still the beautiful girl I know. He said, ignoring what I had just said. A growl was heard from Nicoly and he wrapped his arms around me, pulling me against his chest protectively. Watch it. He snarled at Jason. If looks could kill, Jason would be six feet under because of the way Nicoly was glaring at him right now but it bothered Jason at all. A chuckle erupted from Jason's mouth and he had an amused look on his face. Everyone was quiet, just watching the scene at hand cautiously so they could be ready to attack when the time comes. You are not the only one who is a witch in this world. After you killed my witch and supposedly killed me, Mr. Alpha here found me in the woods and took it upon himself to help me out. He saved me. Jason said confidently, looking at us and then the Alpha. I glared at the Alpha for helping him. And why would he do that? I asked. Jason glanced at the Alpha with a smug look on his face, like he knew something that everyone didn't. He's my uncle. I looked at the Alpha and then back to Jason. Now that I looked at them properly, I noticed that they both resembled each other very much. Seeing as we both want the same thing which happens to be you. Jason started again. My uncle thought it would be a good idea to work together. He has a witch in here, so don't think you can do anything. You and your pathetic friends are going to end up dead, if you do. He said, smiling at me cheekily. I rolled my eyes. He really didn't know me, did he? What made him think that a single witch could stop me from killing him and his uncle? You wouldn't be able to stop me if I wanted to do anything. Which I do. I said walking closer to him. He scoffed, not believing me. It looks like you changed. You're no longer evil. So there's nothing you can do. Jason said, shaking his head like he was disappointed. Oh, how wrong he was. I raised my eyebrow and thought about pain. In no time, Jason was on the floor clutching his hand to his head. I may have done this when I was evil, but it won't do anything to me. This is simply just pain that would go away when I stop. If only we can do this longer, but you can't, you know what would happen. Celeste said to me. I took her words into consideration and stopped. Now what were you saying? I asked Jason. How dare you? 
I whipped my head around to see the Alpha with a raged expression on his face. I smiled. How dare I? No. How dare you? I yelled. You ordered to kill my father so why can't I do harm to your nephew? I spat at him. All I was seeing was red dots even though my eyes were purple. My wolf was coming out. That's the only reason my eyes were red. My witch's eye color was different from my wolf's, but it didn't mean anything. I took a deep breath to calm myself down. I wasn't ready to let my wolf out yet. Growls were heard from behind me and I knew it was Nikoli and his family. Well mine too, but no one made a move. They listened. I told them on the way here to stay put unless I asked them to move. I wanted to do as much damage by myself as possible to satisfy the pain that I would feel forever. Okay, yes, I ordered them to have your father killed. He was a worthless bastard who wasn't fit to take the crown and become king of this kingdom, and neither are you, but I want you, and I always get what I want. The Alpha growled out. The more he talked, the more my anger and temperature was rising. I was so hot that I couldn't control my wolf. I didn't shift, but my wolf was to the surface. I was able to stay in my human form and let my wolf out without shifting. It made me feel more powerful when I approached my enemies who didn't know that. I'm not even sure Nikoli knew that. Well, now he knows. Gasps were filled in the room and the Alpha smiled. More talents that are shown to me, I think I love you even more. He said smiling. I roared and launched at him only for him to step out of the way. Jason was next to his uncle in an instant and I growled. Not so fast. William. The Alpha said. William? Who's William? I thought. We'll just have to wait and find out. Celeste said to me. A few minutes later, a brown-haired man came into the office. A smirk led its way on my face. So the beta's name was William. Now I knew what to write on his grave. You. William smiled cheekily at me. Yes, yes, it is me, Alpha. How come you didn't tell me we have visitors? He asked, looking around at everyone in the room. I found out not too long ago seeing as they just came into my home unannounced. The Alpha replied with a snarl. I laughed at his hypocrisy. I think you are in no position to talk about not announcing our visit here. It can't be too long ago that you had your people barge into my father's castle and kill him. I said anger evident in my voice. The Alpha smiled at me with a teasing glint in his eyes. I already told you I was doing you a favor. You are a princess now, and your true self has more than likely come to surface. Now that you are princess, your powers are strengthened even more, and your title would actually mean something. Everyone who comes across you, human or not, would know where you come from. Your father was a well-known man and there are stories about him. People adore him. Even the humans. I'm sure no one has told you the whole story of becoming a princess. The Alpha said. I was really confused at this point and I knew so was everyone else in this room without looking at their faces. What does this have to do with you anyway? I asked. It's quite easy to explain. You are mine and your powers are mine. You're a princess and I'm your prince. Everything that belongs to you belongs to me. The Alpha said. Nikoli growled next to me and took a step forward to the Alpha, but I put my hand in front of him to stop him from doing anything. I'm yours. I told Nikoli and kissed his cheek. I knew his wolf was at the surface. He slowly calmed down and I turned to face the Alpha. I will never be yours. You are even worse than your nephew. I said angrily. I looked at Jason and he had a smirk on his face. What can we say, you bring the crazy out in us. Jason said. Let's stop this chit chat and get down to business. Celeste said to me. I smiled at her impatience. It seems as if we've been talking too much and no action is taking place. My wolf is getting restless and I know exactly who I'm going to start with. I said looking at William. He looked scared, but masked it with a blank expression on his face. You can't fight me. William finally said after a few minutes. Are you sure about that? I can kill you right here and right now in this office. After all, I promised myself I would kill you right in front of your alpha. 
I said. You wouldn't be able to kill me even if you wanted to. William said. I smirk. Oh, he didn't have a clue on what I could do. I think that's a challenge. I said. William smirked and that gave me his answer. Shifting into his wolf, I watched as he snapped his teeth at me. I'm surprised that this office could hold a wolf in here. I wonder if it has space for another wolf. I smirked mentally and looked at the wolf before me. William had no clue of my actions. I wouldn't change into my wolf until I'm ready. I could fight in my human form against a wolf. William growled and ran towards me. I moved out of the way, sliding under him. I swiftly turned around and punched him in his snout. He whimpered and headbutted me. I went flying to the wall. I growled. If this is how he wanted to play, then we shall play. I got back up on my feet and plastered a menacing look on my face. This will end now. I turned into my wolf and jumped on William biting his neck. He stumbled and fell on his back falling on top of me. I thought of pain and sent it through his body. He whimpered and thrashed around. I sunk my teeth further into his neck and his body fell limp on top of mine. I pushed him off of me and looked at the alpha with rage in my eyes. Nicolie handed me a bag that had clothes in it and I walked out of the office and into the hallway. No one was there and I quickly pulled out a shirt and a pair of jeans. Putting on the sneakers I had on before, I walked back into the office. One down, two to go. The alpha looked at me with a shocked expression. He didn't know what to say or do seeing as I just killed his beta. You're now beta-less. I said with a smirk on my face. The alpha looked at me with an unknown expression. You just killed my beta. He finally said. I laughed at him. Indeed, I did. I said. I lived up to my promise. Now do you want to go next, or do you have someone else in mind? I asked knowing that he wouldn't fight against me. A smirk made its way on his face and a lady walked into the office. I didn't recognize her. And who might this be? I asked, looking at the woman with caution. This right here is my witch. He said. I laughed again. You are a pathetic alpha if you can't fight for yourself. I said turning my attention to him. He scowled at me and gave the woman a nodded, telling her to do what she had to do. I snapped my head in the woman's direction and put up my shield. It would be fun to fight someone just like me or somewhat like me. I don't think she was a wolf like me. I smiled at the witch and watched as her face turned to a frown as she knew what I did. So do you really want to fight for this pathetic man and die? I asked her. You will not speak about my alpha like that. She snapped at me. I laughed. He's not really an alpha if he can't fight for himself. Am I correct? I asked. I let down my shield and punched her in the face. I won't use my powers until I am ready. For right now, I want her to feel the pain of me using my fists. She stumbled back and held the right side of her face. I smirked. You know, I don't have to use spells to kill you. I said to the witch. I will make sure you won't get out of here alive. She spat back at me. I chuckled. I would like to see you try. I said, challenging her. Let's get this over with. She's making me angry. Celeste said to me. I chuckled at her impatience. Neo. I whispered. I looked at everyone's face and they all held confused expressions. Where did she go? I heard Jessica ask. I looked at her. I'm right here. I thought. You are invisible. Celeste said. I smirked. Really? Now I would definitely love to mess around with this witch. I kicked her in her stomach and she went flying across the room. I mentally laughed. This would be too easy. No one could beat me unless I let that happen. Quite frankly, I wouldn't let anyone get in my way. If I had to kill you because you deserved it, I would. The witch got back up and looked around her cautiously. Nicoly looked in my direction. I knew he knew where I was standing. He might not see where I was, but he knew where I could be. He could smell me. I turned my attention back to the witch. 
she hadn't a clue where I was. I walked up to her and moved behind her. How do I become visible again? I thought to myself. Leave it to me to do a spell and not know how to undo it. Say half an eight. Celeste said. I did what I was told and everyone gasped. I grabbed the witch's neck and held onto it tightly. I'm over here. I whispered to her and snapped her neck. I let go of her and she fell to the floor. I looked back at the Alpha and he was furious. Now I don't think you want to send any more of your people to die. So why don't you do the honor and take me on? I asked with a hint of humor in my voice. He snarled at me and in a swift movement he tackled me to the floor. I tried pushing him off of me but it only led to him slightly losing his grip on me. I took the opportunity and punched him in the face, making him fall next to me. I stood up quickly in a fighting stance and waited for the Alpha to get up. He stood up slowly and I snickered. I couldn't possibly have hit him that hard. I thought to myself. He got up and cranked his neck. I rolled my eyes. Waving at him seemed to upset him even more than he already was. This was just too funny. I needed to hurry up with this man so I could cut to the chase. This revenge was totally sweet. Now I would make this easy for you. I'm going to kill you. I said simply. The Alpha laughed. I think that was meant to be said the other way around. I will most definitely kill you. I realize that you're not really worth the fuss. You're nothing good to look at. He said, smirking. Nikoli growled and ran to the Alpha. His wolf took over. Before he could get to him, Jason held him back. That set him off even more. You have the nerve to touch me. Nikoli growled at Jason. I put my attention back on the Alpha and smiled. Ready for your death to come? I asked. He snarled at me and I just smiled. I knew he was nervous. I could smell it off of him. I used the invisibility spell that I now knew I had. I watched as the Alpha roamed around alarm trying to find where I was. I took the chance to look at Nikoli. He was trying so hard to calm his wolf down, but it was no use. He was already over the top. Nikoli shifted and turned into his wolf and Jason wasn't too slow to follow after him. Nikoli clawed Jason in the face. All my concentration was on Nikoli now. I was worried, of course. He was my mate and if anything were to happen to him, what would I do? Annabelle, watch out. Celeste screamed at me. What? Why? I thought. Your invisibility is fading, you're not concentrating on it. She said worriedly. As I looked to my left, I saw the Alpha lunging at me. Before I could move out of the way, he hit me in the face, making me tumble to the floor. The impact of the hit was hard. I would give the Alpha props for that one. I tried getting up, but I couldn't. It felt like my brain was shutting down. What's happening to me? I asked Celeste. The only thing that can kill us slowly, Wolfsbane. She said weakly. I gasped. Closing my eyes, the last thing I saw was Nikoli biting into the neck of Jason. At least I knew he was all right. Nikoli's POV. I was livid. All I was seeing was red. Blood. I bit down on Jason's neck and he went limp on the ground. I could finally say that he was gone for good. There was no coming back to life for him anymore. I looked at my precious mate, Annabelle, on the floor. I turned my attention to the Alpha and snarled. How dare he? The only thing that was in my interest was the Alpha. He must be killed and by me. He touched the only thing that mattered to me in the world at this point. My wolf wanted revenge and revenge we shall get. I advanced to the Alpha and slashed him across the face. It was close to his eyes and I hoped I blinded him. He shouldn't be able to see. No, he shouldn't be living. Looking back at Annabelle, my anger rose to the top. I glared at the Alpha and he smiled. She's not dead, you know. But by the time you finish with me she might be. I glowered at him. I injected her with Wolfsbane. She might not have much time if she doesn't fight it off. He continued. He was provoking me. I growled and jumped on him. He turned into his wolf. I rolled my eyes. 
now he wants to do that. It won't stop me from killing him anyway. It gives me more advantage to beat him since he's not in his human form. Oh God, Nikoli, she's dying. My wolf whimpered to me. I growled. She's not. I won't let her. I said more to myself. My claws pierced down his neck and I cut through it. Blood oozed out of his neck and I watched as he lost a lot of blood. I smiled. He would die in a minimum of two minutes. I picked up the bag that had Annabelle and I's clothes in there and shifted into my human form. I didn't care if anyone was looking. I wanted to get to Annabelle quickly. After changing, I picked Annabelle up and listened to her heartbeat. My heart nearly shattered at the sound of it. I could barely hear her heart. I called one of the people from the castle to come to us with a car. Annabelle's father gave it to me before everything. I heard my father say. I nodded slightly. Jenny, you're coming with us, and your consequences would be made by the time we get back to the castle. My father said to Jenny. I didn't even glance at Jenny. I walked out of the office with everyone following behind me. Looking down at Annabelle, pain shot through me. She can't die on me. I quickly walked out of the house and the car was already there. I slid in the back of the car and waited impatiently for everyone else to get it. All I wanted to do was get to the castle and have someone look at my little kitty cat. I wanted to know that she was going to be all right. Don't let her die on us. I heard my wolf say. I shook my head vigorously. To everyone else I might look crazy, but hell I didn't care. She won't. She's a strong girl. I said, trying to reassure my wolf and myself that she would be okay. It was a 20 minutes drive back to the castle. Within those minutes, I was getting restless. My impatience was getting the best of me. My father was giving me a pitiful look along with everyone else and I avoided eye contact. My only priority right now was Annabelle. As we reached the castle, I dashed out of the car and walked quickly to the door. Well, there wasn't a door to begin with. Someone had to fix that. People were already standing there with a man who I presumed was the pack doctor. I rushed up to them and he reached out his hands to take Annabelle. I growled in warning and he took a step back. Leading the way, we reached the hospital wing of the castle. Relief flooded through me as we walked in. Annabelle would be able to be looked after in good hands to make sure that she would be all right. Place her on the bed there, the doctor said to me. I did as I was told and put her down gently on the bed. The doctor ripped open her shirt and I suppressed a growl. I knew he was just doing his job. He listened to her heartbeat and he shook his head. There were three gashes on her face where the alpha slashed her. The wolf's bane is spreading. I'm not sure I can do anything about it. The brain is the most severe part of the body along with the heart, the doctor said. What? You better do everything in your power to save my mate unless you want to die, I said, grabbing him by the shirt. He nodded quickly and took a needle from beside him and started to fill it with a liquid. I watched him intently, watching his every move. What is that? I asked him. He glanced at me and quickly went back to concentrating on what he was doing at hand. It's something to burn the wolf's bane out of her and trigger her wolf to heal so it can heal it, he explained to me. I nodded and watched Annabelle. She looked like she was in so much pain. I wish I could do anything to help take the pain away, but I couldn't. I held her hand in mine and watched as the doctor injected her with the needle in her head. I watched cautiously at her to see what would happen. The doctor hooked her up to a machine to monitor her heart and to get for. My family along with Damon we would be family if we liked it or not came in and stayed with Annabelle. They all wanted her to get better. I wanted her to get better. I couldn't lose her. She was my everything. She was my light when it was dark. She was there when I needed her to be. I sighed mentally. I wanted to be the first face she sees when she wakes up. She's going to be okay. My mom told me resting a hand on my shoulder. I nodded. She would be okay. Won't she? For the next hour, we all sat down in the hospital waiting to see if Annabelle would improve. If anything, she was getting worse and I could feel it. My wolf was howling inside of me and I refused to think that I was losing my mate. 
It was getting harder to breathe by the minute. I swallowed the lump forming in my throat and sucked in a deep breath. Pain shot through my heart and tears fell from my eyes as I watched the heart monitor. Her heart stopped. Nicholas POV. The world around me was slowly moving. Everything was spinning and I didn't know what to pay attention to. My heart was pounding in my chest and it felt like it would fall out any minute now. My breathing became faster and faster. Annabelle? She was gone. No, she wouldn't leave me. I watched her as she laid lifeless on the bed. Tears started to fall from my eyes as I watched her. I didn't know what to do. My life, my world just slipped away from me. She couldn't possibly leave me. I shook her trying to wake her up, but nothing happened. She didn't move. She can't die on me. She promised. She said she wouldn't leave me. Nicoly, honey. It's going to be okay. I heard my mother say. I looked at her with tears in my eyes. She's not gone. She can't be. I said more to myself. My wolf was slowly breaking with every passing moment. He bonded with Annabelle's wolf as it is natural that he did and she just left him, left us. I took short and sharp breaths to calm myself down. My wolf wanted to come out and let his anger out on something. More tears fell from my eyes as I kept thinking about Annabelle. Why did she leave me? She promised. She promised. As I touched her, she had a normal temperature. It felt as though her blood was flowing properly in her body. Hope seeped through as I noticed this. Maybe she would wake up soon and everything would be alright. I wanted her to wake up. No, I needed her to wake up. I wanted her to tell me everything was going to be okay. I wanted to feel her touch as she caressed my face. I wanted her to melt into my touch as I wrapped my arms around her. I wanted her to tell me she loves me, but I knew that couldn't happen. If only I had gotten to her faster and left the Alpha, she would be here with me and not laying here lifeless. She would be with me and everything would be back to where it should be. I started to hyperventilate as I realized that this was my fault. She left because of me. She was gone because I was too selfish to help her first and kill the Alpha. I was too blind in my rage, hatred, and need for revenge to save her. I clenched my jaw at the newly found information that I had just found. This was all my fault. Son, maybe you should leave and calm yourself down. I heard my father suggest. Instead of having the authority in his voice like he always had, his voice was sorrowful and torn for his son. I sighed and shook my head. I want to stay here. She will wake up soon. I said softly. I knew I had to believe the fact that my mate was gone, but I couldn't seem to wrap it around my mind that she was no longer here. I sat back down on the chair that I was in before and watched Annabelle. She had to wake up. I had never cried so much in my life. The one person that meant the most to me besides my parents was gone from the face of the earth. No one knew what to do. Everyone saw me as the guy who held his head high in confidence. I had never just let go and released all the emotion that was inside of me. I had always endured, but I couldn't do that now. Annabelle was my everything. She couldn't just leave me here alone. She hasn't lived her life fully yet. We didn't get to have children, grow old and live our life together forever. We didn't even start our lives together yet. I continued to watch Annabelle to see if anything would improve with her. I could hear the footsteps of everyone leaving. I was left alone to think with my self-destructive thoughts and everything that has happened in the past few hours. I rested my head in my hands, trying to calm myself down. Nothing was working. I wanted her back with me. I felt like someone ripped my heart out and stomped on it a million times. I knew that Annabelle would come back. When she did, I would make sure that she was safe. I would make sure that when she comes back she wouldn't have to deal with any more drama and she would be stress-free. I would be with her every step of the way to make sure that she would be okay. I would make sure that I take away all the pain that I could when she was feeling down. I took Annabelle's hand and held it with mine. Right now this was as close as I could get to her. Nothing felt the same without her here. Of course she was here, but she wasn't here. She wasn't here breathing, looking at me with her wonderful big eyes or holding me. The tears wouldn't stop falling and I didn't care. I didn't want them to. 
I wanted them to flow so I knew that all my sorrow and emotions are for the girl that I love. What makes me so upset is that I didn't get to tell her I loved her because I was too busy killing the alpha. A frown was set upon my face as I thought about this situation more. If the alpha hadn't wanted someone that wasn't his, Annabelle wouldn't be like this. She would be smiling at me and laughing at the lame jokes I made up just so I could see a smile on her face. Although this should have made me feel better, it didn't. I couldn't just blame something on someone else knowing that it was also my fault. Annabelle would have been here if it had not been for me. I felt horrible and worthless. Annabelle, my love, please come back. Nicholas POV. For days, I waited and waited for the time Annabelle would wake up. Nothing. Nothing happened during those days that I stayed by her bedside and held her hand. She didn't move and I was beginning to doubt my theory. She wasn't dead, but now I was not too sure. The pain that I felt in my heart intensified each day. I couldn't stand to see her like this. I woke up every morning and before I did anything, I came here to the hospital to check on Annabelle. My parents didn't bother me because they knew what I was going through or tried to understand, since they had never felt this way before, but they didn't say anything. I knew they wanted me to be happy again, which wouldn't happen anytime soon. I could only be happy again when I knew Annabelle was awake and staring at me with love in her eyes. I could only be happy again when I knew that Annabelle was here standing next to me. This morning wasn't any different. I woke up and took a shower quickly, wanting to see if Annabelle had any progress. My heart was filled with hope and a newfound strength that something was going to happen today and not anything dramatic. Something worth my hope. I got out of the shower and walked to my room. I picked out some random shorts and a t-shirt. Walking out of my room, I swiftly walked down the stairs and through the basement, walking into the hospital wing. There, I saw the doctor, who I didn't have any time to ask his name, writing something down on a clipboard. As if noticing my presence, he turned around and smiled slightly at me. Hey! I said softly to the doctor. Here again, I see, he said, trying to lighten up the mood. Yes, of course, I said. I sat down on the chair and watched as he examined Annabelle. Is there any improvement? I asked him with hope in my voice. He glanced at me. No, I'm sorry, he said. But I'm not sure if we can keep her body here any longer, he said cautiously, looking at me with wary eyes. What do you mean you can't keep her here? I practically yelled. You think she's dead? I asked. The doctor flinched and took a step back. There's nothing more I can do at this point. The only thing I can do is give her the injection I gave to her the first time she was here. The wolf's bane is almost gone and her scars are all healed up, but she's not responding to anything else. She's not breathing and I don't know what's the cause of that. He continued. I looked at him without saying a word for a few seconds. You better find a way to keep her here. She's not dead and I know it. Find a way. I said and walked out of the hospital wing. I would not stand for that doctor to lose hope for Annabelle. She will come back to me. It could be days, weeks, months, I don't care. As long as I knew that she would come back, I was okay to wait for her. I walked back to my room and laid down on my bed. Wrapping myself in my comforter, I rested my head on my pillow with dark thoughts roaming through my head. She couldn't be dead, right? She wouldn't leave, right? All these questions would go unanswered, seeing that I didn't have the answers for them. Tears formed in my eyes as I thought about this. I don't remember a time where I ever just cried every day over something. Come to think of it, I never cried like that at all. What if I would never be able to see Annabelle again? What if I wouldn't be able to hear her sweet voice again? I sighed frustratingly and looked up at the ceiling. Everything just went downhill for me. I thought I would have a life where nothing could go wrong. My mate would be here with me, I would have nothing in the world that mattered to me more than my mate, but no. My life was about not having that special someone next to you. My wolf howled with agony. We both wanted the same thing. Our mate. I sniffled and got up, putting my head on the headboard. A knock was heard from my bedroom door. Someone was outside. I groaned, not wanting to be bothered right now. What? I mumbled to the person. Can I come in? I heard Luke ask. I sighed. Yeah. I said. 
The door soon opened with a worried-looking Luke coming through. I looked at him and stared behind him. For the past few days, my head has been in a grey cloud with nothing to think about, but the face of my beautiful Annabelle. I couldn't think about anything else and I didn't want to. If I were to, I would just go right back to the thoughts of Annabelle. I wanted her here. Unknowingly, tears fell from my eyes once again and I forgot about Luke's presence. Hey, man, I have never seen you like this before. Luke said to me. I fixed my gaze back on him and shook my head. Words couldn't form in my mouth and I knew if I talked I would cry more instead. He walked and sat down on the bed next to me. You need to get out of this room, out of this house. He said. I shook my head. I couldn't leave. What if Annabelle woke up when I wasn't here? I know you miss Annabelle. We all do. She was one heck of a girl, but we are trying to help you and we can't if you don't want to take it. He continued talking. I scoffed. I didn't need anyone's help. I can take care of myself. Nicolie, Annabelle's not going to come back. He said softly. I snapped my head in his direction with a scowl on my face. He opened his mouth to say something but closed it back. It's been a long time and she hasn't made any movement to say that she's alive. Nicolie, she's not breathing. Luke said trying to make me feel better, but his words only made it worse. Get out, I said, laying my head back down on the bed. I only came in here to tell you that your dad wants to speak with you about something in the cellar. He said and left without saying another word. I burst into tears when he left. I want you back, Annabelle. I need you back. I thought to myself. Ten minutes later, I got out of my bed and walked to the bathroom. I stood in the mirror and watched my reflection. Nose red, eyes swollen with bags underneath them. I looked like shit, but I didn't care. I walked out and went down to the cellar of this castle and saw my dad along with my mother and Damon. Jenny was in a cell sitting, looking terrified. You wanted to see me. I said lowly, talking to my dad. My dad looked in my direction and smiled sadly at me. Yes, I wanted you to be a part of this decision. What do you want to do with Jenny? He asked. I looked at Jenny and glared at her and she flinched under my gaze. I want her dead. Nicolie's POV. What? No, you can't kill me. Jenny exclaimed with fright. I glared at her. I can't kill you. I can't kill you, I yelled back at her. She was pissing me off with just her voice. I really really wanted to kill her at that moment. And why the hell not? Do you know what you put me through? How can you do this to your own pack? You betrayed us and your Luna. And you were telling me I can't kill you? I breathed out. I scoffed. She must be mistaken that I would let her go that easily. She was the one that had my poor Annabelle lying on a bed fighting for her life. Now, Nicolie, let's not be rash about this. We need to sit down and think about this. My father said calmly. What's there to be reasonable about? She wanted my mate dead. I screamed. Annabelle is dead, accept it. I heard Jenny say. She really wanted to die, didn't she? I growled loudly at her. My wolf wanted out, but I didn't let that happen because I knew that things would get out of hand. I would hold my tongue if I were you. I don't think you want to be left without it. I said lowly. I took a step close to the cell she was in and grabbed her by her collar. Fear was written all over her face. Good. She should fear me right now. Nicoly, put her down. That isn't a way to treat a lady. My mother said. I laughed. Her? A lady? I shook my head. This is no lady. This is a selfish monster inside and outside. I continued, looking straight at Jenny with hatred in my eyes. You will listen to your mother. Let the girl go and we will discuss this like mature adults. My father said. I growled and let Jenny go, dropping her to the floor. Talk. I said, getting annoyed with this already. I just wanted to go see Annabelle again. I would rather have Jenny killed or far away from me so I didn't have to look at her face again. We cannot kill anyone from our pack no matter how much damage they have done. 
That was the rule we had made. My father said to me. Stupid rules. Can't we change it then? I asked. No. He said, shaking his head. Then I want her out of this pack and never come back here. I want her family to come down here as well. They will also be banned from this pack. You cannot say no because this will happen. I said with authority in my voice that I got from being the next alpha in line. I turned to look at my father and he looked at me, but didn't say anything. I sat down on the chair that was leaning up on the wall. My father was mind linking the Websters to come down here. They were informed to come to Italy as soon as possible after we learned about Jenny. I wanted this done as soon as possible. The faster this girl was out of my face the better it was for me to calm down. She hurt my mate because of her selfishness and greed. She wanted me but I didn't want her. I had no need for her. I didn't know why I even went out with her in the first place. I guess I just wanted her for my own satisfaction. In a way, we were both alike wanting things and taking advantage of each other, but you didn't see me going around and disrespecting my pack. I sighed frustratedly and ran my hand through my hair. I could hear the footsteps of the Websters close by. I stood up, standing next to the door as they opened it. I watched as they looked at their daughter with a stricken expression. What is the meaning of this alpha? Mr. Webster asked softly to my father. Your daughter has betrayed the pack and therefore, because of her actions, I ask you to leave this pack and never to return. I said, seeing that my father didn't say anything. I don't understand. Mrs. Webster said, with a confused look. Your daughter is the reason for my mate being in the hospital. She gave away information to the Alpha that wanted to take her away from me. I said with anger in my voice. My daughter would never do that. Mr. Webster said with a matter-of-fact tone. I shook my head. He didn't even know his own daughter. Ask her yourself. I said and moved out of the way so they could get a good look at their disgrace of a daughter. She stood there with tears running down her face. Is this true? Tell me it isn't true. Mr. Webster yelled at his daughter. She couldn't say anything because it was obviously true. Looking down in shame, she nodded her head. I opened the cell so she could go to her family. The Websters looked at my parents and I. I am so sorry that this has happened. I am truly sorry for what happened to your mate. I am so sorry that this has happened. I am truly sorry for what happened to your mate. She would have made a wonderful Luna. We will leave in the morning. Jenny's father said and grabbed Jenny, walking out. I sighed. Now that I was done here, I could leave. It was silent for a moment until my father started to talk. I know what you're going through is hard, Nicoly, but you have to leave the pain aside when taking care of business. He said. I looked at him like he was a deranged fool. You don't know what I'm going through. Your maid is standing right next to you, I said, pointing at my mom. And you can't tell me when to stop feeling pain. I can't and never will until Annabelle wakes up. I know she will, I said, getting angrier by the minute. My wolf was pacing inside of me, but not from anger. He felt giddy and full of excitement. She's awake. I was confused for a minute. What? I asked. Annabelle, our mate, is waking up. I heard my wolf say. A bright smile made its way onto my face. I felt the burning passion, happiness, and my heart racing all at once. My Annabelle was awake. I sprinted out of the basement with my family shouting questions at me. I ignored them, of course, and focused on the news that I had just received from my wolf. Walking up the stairs as quickly as I could, I made it to the hospital wing. There, I saw the doctor frantically writing something down. I ignored him as well and looked at Annabelle. I stood next to her bed and closed the distance between us. I ran my thumb across her face and her eyes opened. I knew she wasn't gone forever. I only had one thing on my mind. I had my Annabelle again. Annabelle's POV. Have you ever felt like your soul was being sucked out of you? My body was on fire. I couldn't move even if I tried. It was like my hands and feet were tied down to prevent me from moving. My eyes wouldn't open and I felt so alone in this darkness. 
Where am I? I thought. The sound of my heartbeat could be heard from a mile away. Annabelle? Baby, open your eyes. I heard someone say. Nicoli? I was alive? The tears that wanted to fall from my eyes didn't, and I had no capability of letting them fall. I tried opening my eyes, but nothing happened. I wanted to see him. The more I tried to open my eyes, the more the darkness consumed me. What if I couldn't wake up? I wouldn't be able to see Nicoli. Baby, please? Nicoli said desperately. I could feel the warmth of his hands touching my face. Annabelle, wake up, you have to. Celeste said to me. I already did my part in healing us, it's all on you now. She continued. Did I want to wake up? I wanted my family too. I wanted to be reunited with them. I wanted to know, needed Nicoli as well. I willed myself to gather up the courage to wake up and opened my eyes. The light was blinding, but I forced myself to keep them open. I came face to face with Nicoli. Tears fell from his eyes as he watched me with relief, adoration and love. We didn't say anything, only looked at each other with a thousand unsaid words in our eyes. A tightening in my chest started to form. Everything started to come back to me. My parents, the Alpha, Jason, Jenny. It suddenly felt harder to breathe at that moment. Looking into Nicolie's eyes, I felt like I was at home. I didn't know how long I had been away for. Heck, I didn't even know where I was, but I knew I didn't want to be away from him again. I was hyperventilating inside. Tears formed in my eyes. I promised him I wouldn't leave him. I said I would always be there. I left him to be alone. Oh God, he probably hated me. No, don't think that, he loves us. Celeste whispered to me. I watched as Nicoli wiped the tears from under my eyes. I moved away from him. He hated me. I didn't keep my promise. I left him. Nicoli turned around and looked at a man behind him in confusion. For the first time since I had woken up, I looked at where I was. In a hospital? What was I doing here? The Alpha injected us with wolf Spain. Celeste said. I automatically raised my hand to my head. I felt something smooth wrapped around my head. Why couldn't I just die and go with my family? I had failed Nicoli. More tears fell from my eyes. He didn't love me anymore. Everything came crashing down on me. I really had lost my parents. I had no one. Nicoli hated me, my parents were gone and I was pretty sure Mr. and Mrs. O'Connell didn't like me either. I left them with a son who was heartbroken. I could see it all over Nicoli's face. It was my fault that he felt that way. It seems as if she is suffering from psychological trauma. Everything that has happened to her is coming back with full force and there's nothing she can do. She's broken inside and the only thing we can do is help her. I heard an unfamiliar voice say. I didn't care at the moment. My mind was way into the dark clouds that were floating around me. I was useless. Everyone that was close to me always got hurt. My head started to pound angrily inside my skull. Thinking too much was overwhelming, but I couldn't stop the images of my parents and Nicoli out of my head. The picture of my father with a chunk of his neck bitten off, the bloody body of my mother and the look on Nicoli's face right now was running through over and over again in my head. Nicoli, why did you run? Someone said, but never finished the sentence. I could feel eyes upon me, but I never looked up from where I was staring. I wasn't staring at anything particular. The room was all white and colorless, just like how I felt. Lifeless, but living at the same time. I fidgeted with my fingers hoping that would get rid of the feeling of dozens of eyes watching me. I felt so ashamed of myself. I was never fit to be Luna. I shouldn't have ever gotten an Alpha to be my mate. Aluna was always supposed to be by the Alpha's side. She was supposed to make sure that her pack was happy and safe, but all I ever did was cause trouble for everyone. I was a burden. I started to hyperventilate even more and I couldn't breathe. My breath hitched in my throat and I didn't know what to do. Do something. Nicoli cried out to someone. I put my hand over my chest hoping that I would be able to breathe again, but it only got worse. 
a man who I didn't know came up to me and gently rested me back down on the bed. He put a mask over my nose and mouth and my chest slowly started to loosen. I took in a deep breath and exhaled slowly. I refused to look at anyone. They would judge me and blame me for this. They wouldn't care. I turned my head to the other side and looked at the heart monitor. Closing my eyes, my mind went blank. I felt a hand on my shoulder. The sparks traveled through my entire body and I knew who it was almost instantly. I stiffened, but soon relaxed at Nicolie's touch. Kitty cat, I'm here. Don't think that I will leave you alone. He whispered to me. I whimpered. He was lying. I knew he was. He was going to leave me just like I left him. I cried silently to myself and whimpered occasionally. He didn't mean anything he said. He was playing with my heart because I played with his. He would leave me and wouldn't even look back. I love you. He whispered to me and kissed my cheek. I shut my eyes tightly. No, he didn't, but I did. I loved him with all my heart. I just wish he could love me again after I did this to him. I could feel the pain emanating from him and flowing through me. My heart ached for him and for myself for putting him through this. Now I could understand what my mother was talking about. She killed herself because she couldn't live without my dad, only this was different. Nicolie didn't kill himself. He was standing next to me, trying to talk to me, but I wouldn't say anything. I felt numb and hopeless. Nothing would be the same. We might be mates, but right now I didn't feel like we were. I betrayed the promise that I made to him and I didn't think he would be able to forgive me no matter what he said. I wanted him to love me again. Annabelle's POV. I groaned. I had no more tears left, which in turn started to make my head hurt with the small amount of tears I had left. I woke up from the nap that I had and opened my eyes to see Nicolie and his family watching me. Shame washed over me and I avoided their stares. I didn't know what to do. Heck, I didn't know what was wrong with me and I didn't want to find out. I looked down at the white sheets that were covering me and I made sure I concentrated on them as much as I could. The room was silent and it was killing me. I was waiting for the yelling and screaming to start, but nothing happened. Annabelle. I heard Jessica say. I didn't look up. I was feeling hot all over and the pounding in my head wasn't making me feel any better. I bit the inside of my cheek and racked my brain to think of something to say. Yeah, I said shakily. How are you? She asked, trying to keep the conversation flowing but to a minimum. I didn't say anything. How did I feel? I was in a hospital with no clue about what was wrong with me. Fine, I said, trying to end this. I sat up on the bed and Nicoly rushed over to me, putting his arms around my waist to help me. I yelped in surprise and backed away from him. I didn't want to be touched by him. For all I knew, this could have been an act of his and then when he felt like it, he would lash out at me. The frown that came upon his face made my heart hurt, but I didn't show it. I glanced at him but quickly took my eyes off of him when I saw him watching me. I really wanted to be near him, but at the same time, I didn't. Confusion took over me and my head wasn't clear enough to think of the outcome of this situation. Annabelle, please? Nicolie pleaded. I felt like crying, but I had no more tears left for me to cry. We will leave you two alone. Mrs. O'Connell said. I heard their retrieving footsteps fade away as it was just Nicolie and I alone. Talk to me. Nicolie said. I didn't know what to say. His voice was making me sadder by the moment. I felt like I tortured him. I felt like I had been asleep for days. Do you hate me? Those were the first words that came out of my mouth. I dared not look at him because I knew the look that would be in his eyes. Hatred. I took the chance and sneaked a glance at him. Anger and sadness were the two most noticeable emotions that I saw. I shook my head. It was probably my imagination. Hate? How can I possibly hate you? Nicolie roared. I flinched and leaned back onto the bed more. His features softened as he watched me. Kneeling down at the side of my bed, he turned my face towards him. I can never hate you. How can you think such a thing? He asked. 
I bit my lip. Because I left you and now you hate me for it. I said softly. I saw him shaking his head. He put his index finger under my chin and lifted my head to look at him. I don't want you thinking like that. Ever. Yes, I was angry at the fact this has happened to you, but I can never hate you. He said, looking at me. I really wanted to believe him, but I couldn't find it in me to do it. I shook my head and pulled away from his grasp. Don't lie to me. I know you hate me. Why can't you just say that? I asked, looking at my hands. I can't say it because I don't hate you. I love you, Annabelle. You are my kitty cat. He said softly. I looked at him in the eyes and the truth was swimming through his eyes. Tears that I thought I didn't have fell from my eyes. Do you believe me now? He asked. You know that Nicoly loves you, believe him, he's our mate. Celeste said to me. I nodded my head to Nicoly's question and he smiled widely at me. I returned the smile slightly and I turned away from him. When will I get out of here? I thought to myself. There was a comfortable silence between Nicoly and I. Nothing was said for a long time. We were just bathing in each other's presence. Although it was just Nicoly and I, I couldn't help but feel tense. I felt like at any moment Nicoly could just flip a switch and turn on me, but I believed him. I knew he wouldn't hurt me as much as I hurt him. He forgave me. Nicoly took my hand in his and kissed the front of it. I looked at him. I love you, Annabelle. He said in a whisper, looking at me intently. My cheeks flushed. I love you too. I said shyly. Footsteps were heard coming closer to the room I was in and Nicoly turned around. I saw the doctor come in. He gave me a genuine smile. Well, it looks like you're ready to leave from here and go upstairs. He said. Upstairs? I asked, confused. You're in the basement of the castle. This is where the hospital is located. He explained to me. I nodded. Let me just give you a little checkup to see if everything is going smoothly. The doctor said. I waited patiently for him to check my breathing and heart. He checked my head injury and did an x-ray. Okay, everything is fine. The doctor said, looking at me. You have a small case of psychological trauma. You will experience insomnia or nightmares. You might be scared for a while, but other than that, you're okay to go. I want you to take these pills when you feel like your head hurts, okay? The doctor said in a serious tone. I nodded my head and swung my legs to the end of the bed. Nicoly got up quickly and stood in front of me. I put my feet on the floor and flinched. It was so cold. I got off the bed and my feet wobbled underneath me. I haven't gotten off this bed in weeks. I balanced myself and walked slowly. Let me carry you, Nicoly said. I looked at him unsure, but didn't protest. I was tired. He picked me up and wrapped my legs around his waist. He walked out of the hospital and up the stairs. It was quiet. I guess everyone was in their rooms. We made it to my room in no time and Nicoly opened the door with one hand. Walking inside the room, Nicoly put me down on the bed. I'm in need of a shower, I said. Nicoly chuckled and nodded, pinching his nose. You do, he said. I gasped and slapped his chest. He laughed. I'm going to go downstairs and make you something to eat. I raised my eyebrows. Really? You want to take up on that promise we made now? I asked. He smiled. Yes, yes I do. He said. I giggled. Okay. What are you going to make? He smiled cheekily. You'll see he said and ran out of the room. Within a few seconds, he came back and kissed me on the cheek. I laughed and he left again. I shook my head and walked to my closet. I took out a pair of short sweatpants and a tank top. I then went to the bathroom and took a nice, hot shower. I probably spent an hour or more in the shower. I really needed it. Once I was done, I put on my clothes and went to the kitchen. I found Nicoly standing by the counter looking deep in thought. I creeped up behind him and wrapped my arms around him. He jumped and turned around quickly facing me. 
I smiled and he returned it. You took quite a while in the bathroom there. He said. I laughed. Well, when you stay in the hospital for that long, I think you'll need one. I said. A frown was placed on his face. What are you thinking about? I asked. I'm glad that you're okay. He said, wrapping his arms around me. Pulling me closer, he rested his head on my neck. I couldn't stand the thought of losing you. I wouldn't know what to do. He mumbled. You know I had a feeling you were going to wake up. I didn't want to think you were gone for good. He continued. He squeezed my waist a little tighter, pulling me closer to him. He sniffled. He was crying. I held on to him tightly. I'm here. I said. He lifted his head from my shoulder and looked at me. I wiped the tears from his eyes. When I say I love you, I mean it. He said. I looked down and nodded. I know. I love you, too. I hope everything gets better from here. Nikoli pulled away from me gently. Now I'm going to make you something to eat. He said to me. I smiled and nodded. What are you going to make? I asked. He smiled at me. I honestly don't know, but I will think of something. He said. I giggled. Why don't I just make something? I said. He looked at me. No. He said sternly. I raised my eyebrows at him. Why not? I asked. He lifted me up so I was sitting on the counter. I just want you to sit right there and relax. He said. I sighed but nodded my head. I watched as he got a pot out and put water in it. Putting the pot on the stove, he turned on the stove and covered the pot with its rightful cover. He sauntered back to me and wrapped his arms around my waist. He nuzzled his head in between my neck and I felt him breath in slowly. I love the way how you smell. He said. I giggled. You're one weird boy. I said. But you love me either way. He said in a soft voice. I bit my lip and nodded. Even though he couldn't see me, he felt it. Very much so. I said. He lifted his head from my neck and looked at me intently. What were you thinking when you wanted to go kill that Alpha? Nikoli asked me slowly. I looked at him stunned, taken aback by his question. I'm not entirely sure of how to answer that question. I've always had an answer made up in my mind. I wanted to do this for my parents and myself. I could feel my heart beating faster and faster by each moment I took to answer the question at hand. I glanced at Nikoli and his eyes were laced with concern and worry at the very least. I, uh, I, I didn't get to finish my sentence. The tears spilled from my eyes and it was getting hard to talk, let alone breathe out a sentence. Hey hey I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you upset. Nikoli said quickly and embracing me in his arms. I just wanted to know why you put your life on the line. He said rocking me back and forth. The only thing that I could think about right now was my parents. I missed them so much and there was nothing I could do about it. I wasn't sure on what they had done with the body, but I hoped it was some place that I could go to any time I wanted. They couldn't keep the body here in the castle because we would be able to smell their bodies decomposing every second, and I wouldn't want to be here for that. I rested my head on Nikoli's shoulder and sniffled. I I am sorry. I said. He shook his head. Don't be. I'm sorry for bringing it up. He said. I looked up and the water was overflowing from boiling. The water is overflowing. I whispered to Nikoli letting go of him. He turned around and ran to the pot turning off the stove. He waited until the water got back down to level and put the spaghetti in. I watched him stir the pot and put all the ingredients that he wanted to put. Nikoli never seemed like the type who would be in the kitchen often, but seeing him now was intriguing. I loved a man who could cook. I sat still on the countertop and watched as Nikoli cooked. I could tell he could feel me watching him. You know staring is rude. He said turning around to glance at me and going back to cooking. I rolled my eyes, but didn't say anything. Once he was done, he took down two plates and put the spaghetti on the plate with some pasta sauce. 
He took out two forks and brought the food over to me. He handed me my plate and stood next to me eating his food. Tell me what you think, he said with a smirk on his face. I giggled and twirled the spaghetti in my fork and investigated it. You sure I won't get food poisoning from this? I asked teasingly. Nikoli growled playfully at me. Just eat it, kitty cat, he said in a purring sound. I gasped and bit my lip. He stifled a laugh and put the spaghetti in my mouth. The moment the spaghetti touched my taste buds, I was in a bliss. This tasted so good. I closed my eyes and moaned in pure happiness. I heard a growl and snapped open my mouth to see Nikoli right in front of me. His eyes were a dark black and I knew his wolf was in control. He took my plate of food away from me and stepped between my legs. By instinct, I opened my legs for him to stand between them. I'm guessing you liked my food, he said with his mouth dangerously close to mine. I looked at his lips and back to his eyes. Biting my lip, I nodded. You know what I like? He asked me getting closer to me. I shook my head no and he growled placing his hands on my hips. Pulling me closer, his lips brushed mine and I was going crazy. I loved this feeling. The way he came to me made me feel loved and lust at the same time. I wasn't sure how I could have stayed that long without feeling this, but I knew I couldn't go without this again. I like the sound that just came out of your mouth. Nikoli said. I whimpered at the longing I was feeling. My heart started to beat faster and the adrenaline I was feeling was overwhelming. I wanted his lips on me now. I crashed my lips onto his and Nikoli immediately responded back. I wrapped my arms around his neck and pulled him even closer to me. A moan escaped my mouth as he licked my bottom lip. I granted him access and he plunged his tongue inside my mouth. I tangled my hand in his hair and tugged in it. I heard him groan and tighten his grip on my hips. Damn, I love you, Nikoli said once he pulled away. I whimpered and pulled his face back to mine and kissed him again. His lips were so soft and I loved it. Or maybe I just wanted to kiss him. I licked his lips and pulled away. I love you too, I said. Someone cleared their throat which made me jump back in surprise. Fear crept up to me like the wind and I didn't know what for. I looked at Nikoli who growled lowly and looked behind me. I turned around and his parents were standing watching us or me with caution. I shrunk back into Nikoli feeling small with all the attention. I just wanted to talk to Nikoli, Mr. O'Connell said. I bit my lip. I'll be back, Nikoli said kissing my forehead. He moved away from me to his father. It felt cold all of a sudden. I didn't want to be alone. I looked down at my hands from stopping the tears that wanted to fall. I needed to know how to be on my own again. I had to find a way for this trauma to go away. I had to try. Nicholas POV I glanced back at Annabelle who was being comforted by my mother. She didn't look relaxed and that had me on edge. I could see the tears that wanted to fall from her eyes as I moved away from her, but I didn't know from what. Turning back around, I walked behind my father to who knew where. The image of Annabelle didn't leave my mind. Why was she about to cry? I asked myself. My father abruptly stopped. A warning could have been nice. I said, backing up a little. My father shooed me off and opened a large door. Once I was fully in the room, I looked all around us. This looked like where Annabelle's father did all his work. What are we in here for? Are we even allowed in here? I asked my father. This is going to be Annabelle's office when she becomes queen. It would also be yours seeing as you are her mate. He said, sliding his fingers along the desk. I watched my father with curiosity. Why are you telling me all of this now? I asked. He stopped walking and sat down on the couch. I followed suit and waited for his answer. The doctor told me something about Annabelle that I think you should know. He didn't want to tell you because he knew you had a lot on your hands already. My father started to say. At the mention of my mate. I sat up straight and listened. Annabelle won't be herself for a while. She won't change into anything, but her mind would be somewhere else. 
he stopped to look at me. I motioned for him to continue with my hands. And a bell would be an emotional wreck and it's going to be up to only you to help her. And a bell would be an emotional wreck and it's going to be up to only you to help her. As you can see, you are the only one that she's calm with. When your mother and I walked into the kitchen, I knew you saw her tense up. I didn't come any closer as I knew what was going to happen. He said. What are you saying? I asked. I don't want Annabelle to feel like she's not safe with us. We are family, after all. I know she's probably lost everything that meant the world to her besides you. But I want her to know that she's a part of this family and we love her. My father finished. I sat back on the couch just thinking over what my father had said. I was also happy that Annabelle would only feel at bay with me, but it also broke my heart that she would be scared almost all the time. I didn't want her to feel that way in this world. She would be safe with anyone inside our pack. She is the Luna, after all. She would be the queen that ruled over our kind in a short period of time and I didn't want her to feel like she was in danger. I looked at my father with a smile on my face. I knew from the time that I brought Annabelle to my home that my father took a liking to her. He knew that she was the one for me even if she wasn't my mate and that's how I felt. I knew that I wanted to get to know her, mate or not. She was so innocent and still is. I would do anything to protect her. Why don't you tell her yourself? I said. My father looked at me with kind eyes. Besides talking about his wife and mate, my mother, he had a twinkle in his eyes when talking about Annabelle. I wasn't going to feel offended because he meant no harm. I was quite sure that he was happy to have Annabelle in the family. He was proud of her for still thriving on with all that had happened. She was a strong girl. My wolf purred at the thought of our mate having a good effect on everyone. He liked the fact that my father was saying such words about her. Are you sure? He asked. I nodded. If you want her to know that, then you tell her. She is already scared of you and maybe if you tell her how you feel, then she might just warm up to you again. I told him truthfully. He nodded and stood up. Well, are you coming? He asked with a hint of amusement. I laughed and followed my father out of the door. It was times like these that I liked being with my father. There was no yelling or arguing. Just a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. A father-son bonding moment. Once we got downstairs, my mother was rubbing Annabelle's back and whispering soothing things in her ear. They never left the kitchen and it looked like Annabelle didn't want to. She was still sitting on the kitchen counter where I left her. I could feel her pain from where I was standing and my heart slowly broke seeing her like this. I looked at my father from the side and nodded at him. You should do this, I said to him. He cleared his throat and my mother and Annabelle looked up. I caught the gaze of my precious mate and relief washed over her. I walked over to her and took her from my mom, pulling her to my chest. She calmed down almost instantly and I just stood there rocking her back and forth. I kissed her forehead. Hey, my dad has something to say to you, I said to her softly. I felt her tense beside me. He won't hurt you and you know that, I said to her. She nodded and we both got up. Annabelle looked at my father with caution and I heard him sigh. This would be hard with her condition, but I was sure it would be okay. My mother went alongside my father and we all went to sit down in the living room. Where's Luke, Jessica and Damon? I asked. It was awfully quiet here. They are in their rooms. They all don't know what to do and want to come down when Annabelle is all right. They don't want to frighten her. My mother said sadly, watching Annabelle. I nodded understandingly. I pulled Annabelle to sit on my lap and wrapped my arms around her waist. She relaxed into me and I smiled slightly. I loved her so much. Annabelle. My father called out to her. My father called out to her. She looked at him and I just watched without saying anything. You know that we would never hurt you, right? My father asked her. My father asked her. She looked down at her lap and bit her lip, shaking her head. Yes, you do. You know that, and I would never let you get hurt more than you already are. I know that you have lost so much in a short period of time. 
but you know that me and my wife love you. We loved you from the first time we saw you. I couldn't pick a better mate for my son than you. You make him so happy and clearly you're happy with him. You are now a part of this family and I hope you know that we protect our family. My father said to her. By then, my mother was in tears and so was Annabelle. Annabelle slowly got up from my lap and walked over to my father. She looked at him for a few seconds and tackled him into a hug. My father slowly wrapped his arms around Annabelle and tightened his grip. It shocked me to see my father showing affection to anyone but to my mom, Jessica, and I. It was a rare action for him. I felt a tear fall from my eyes and I quickly wiped it away. Thank you. I heard Annabelle say softly. Annabelle has officially made me soft at heart, but I didn't care. She was the only one that could make me feel this way. Annabelle's POV. I couldn't stop the tears that fell from my eyes. I felt like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders. I've always had it in my mind that Nicolie's parents would hate me forever because I left their son with a broken heart, but they didn't. They loved me like their own child and that was something I needed right now. Parents. I mentally sighed. I couldn't think about my parents now, they were gone. All I could do is keep them in my heart. I had a new family that would love me like my own parents would. I'm here for you if you ever need anything. Mr. O'Connell whispered in my ear. I nodded and pulled away from his embrace. Mrs. O'Connell was crying beside him and he wrapped his arms around her waist, pulling her closer to him. Oh sweetie, we really do love you. She said to me. I smiled slightly. It's always good to have people that love you by your side. I sniffled and more tears fell from my eyes. I wrapped my arms around myself and looked at my feet. I turned around to look at Nicolie and he had tears in his eyes. I walked slowly to him and he watched my every move. I bit the inside of my cheek and stood in front of him unsure of what to do. There were many times that I saw him cry, but at this very moment, I didn't know what to do. There were so many emotions in his eyes and it overwhelmed me. Nicoli? I said softly. He rested his arms on my hips and pulled me down to sit on his lap. I wrapped my arms around his torso and buried my head in his chest. God, baby girl, I love you so much and you better believe it. He said with a shaky breath. I had no doubt that the tears were threatening to fall. I love you, too. I mumbled in his chest, but I knew he heard me. I hope my father got to you. I want you to know that no one would hurt you again. I don't want you to feel like this. He said to me. I held on tighter to him and he kissed my head. Why are you crying? I asked, lifting my head to look at his face. He looked down at me and smiled with watery eyes. Because I have the most precious person in my arms right now. Nicoly said. The tears fell freely from his eyes and I lifted up my thumb to wipe them away. Thank you. I said, looking him in the eyes. For what? He asked in a whisper, not letting go of my gaze. For just being there for me. I said looking away from him and down at my lap. Nicoly lifted my chin up with his index finger to make me look at him again. I will always be there for you no matter what. He said to me brushing his lips against mine. I shivered at the contact and pressed my lips against his. The love that radiated from this one kiss had me on cloud nine. I would give up anything to always feel this. I pulled away after a few seconds and smiled. Let's do something. Only you and me. Nicoly said. What do you have in mind? I asked. He shrugged. I'll come up with something. I just want to spend some time with you. He said to me. I laughed softly and nodded. Okay, I just need to change and I'll be back down in a minute. I said. I kissed his cheek and dashed back up the stairs. Making it in my room, I went into my closet to see what I could wear. I picked out a denim shirt and some khaki pants and sneakers. I went to the bathroom and stripped down and got in the shower. I did a quick wash and got out. Wouldn't want to keep Nicoly waiting, would we now? I giggled at my stupidity and went back into my room. I got dressed into the outfit that I picked out and gave myself a once-over and left my room. 
I walked down the stairs and into the living room where Nikoli was sitting, waiting for me. Once he saw me, he smiled and walked over to me. Ready? He asked. I nodded and he held out his hand for me to take. I rested my small hand in his larger one. Mom, Dad. I'm going out with Annabelle. We'll be back soon. Nikoli yelled from upstairs. I knew they heard him. Okay, be safe. I heard Mrs. O'Connell say. Shall we go? Nikoli asked in a horrible accent. I laughed. We shall. I said with the same horrible accent. He laughed and opened the door. I walked through the door and felt the sunshine on my face. I hadn't been outside in a long time. Nikoli came up to me and put his arms over my shoulders. Come on. He said. Where are we going? I asked. I want to show you something. He said to me. We walked to a car and he opened the door for me to get in. He got in the driver's seat and put the key in the ignition. So what do you want to show me? I asked after a while of silence. A place that I found when. He paused for a while and glanced at me. I took his hand that he wasn't driving with and held on to it. When? I asked for him to continue. When I needed to think during the time you were gone. Nikoli said, watching the road again. I squeezed his hands reassuringly. You know it's not your fault why this happened to me. I said. Yes, yes it is. I should have just came to you when I knew you were hurt instead of going after that alpha. He said, squeezing my hand tighter. I didn't say anything as I knew it wouldn't change anything. We sat there in the car for about 20 minutes in a comfortable silence. As the car stopped, I looked around and saw that we were in the middle of nowhere. It wasn't exactly nowhere, but the woods. What are we doing here? I asked. I always came here when I wasn't next to you in the hospital. I came here to clear my mind. He said. I stayed quiet and nodded. Getting out of the car, Nikoli came to me and intertwined his hand with mine. He guided me through the woods and in no time we were in the part of the woods that had flowers all around it. Trees were standing healthy and tall. There was a lake in the middle and the water was clear. It was beautiful. It reminded me of you. Nikoli whispered to me. I blushed and pushed his chest lightly. He chuckled and sat down on the ground. He pulled me down to sit between his legs. Wrapping his arms around me, he rested his head on my shoulder. You know we have to go back to London soon. Nikoli said. I nodded. I know. I said softly. Hey. It's going to be okay. I'll be there to help. He said. I smiled. Yeah. We talked and laughed for hours about nothing too important. He took my mind off of a lot of things and I was thankful for that. I truly did love Nikoli and no one could change that. Annabelle's POV. I woke up to find myself in a soft surface. A bed? When did I fall asleep? Matter of fact, when did I get back to Nikoli's room? A heavy-like object was resting on my waist. I turned around and found Nikoli sound asleep next to me. His head was resting on my shoulder and he had his arms wrapped around my waist. I smiled. He brought me here. Last night was one of the best moments I've ever had with him and that was saying something, there was a lot. I softly giggled as his mouth opened a little. I put my hand over my mouth to quiet down so I didn't wake him up. In an instant, Nikoli pulled me closer to him and I stifled a laugh. What did I tell you about staring? It's rude. Nikoli mumbled in my ear. I laughed out loud and looked at him. His eyes slowly opened as he watched me with love. Well, I'm sorry. Next time you should keep your mouth close. I wouldn't want anything to fly in there. I said getting up. He pulled me back down and held me close to him. No, don't leave. No, don't leave. Can't we stay here a little longer? He groaned. I shook my head, but agreed anyway. Yeah, I said. I laid back down with him face front. We just stared at each other not saying anything. It might seem awkward, but it wasn't. Nikoli could stare at me all he wanted and it wouldn't matter to me. 
I would feel safe. He raised his hand to stroke my cheek. I shivered at the touch and he smirked. I mentally rolled my eyes. This boy. Just because you're the only one that can make me feel this doesn't mean you have to get all cocky with me. I said. Nikoli laughed. You can't stop me from doing so. I will always be the only one who can make you feel this way and I made sure of that. He said, crashing his lips to mine. I instantly responded back moving my lips with his. I wrapped my arms around his neck and he pulled me on top of him making me straddle him. He bit my bottom lip as I knew what he wanted but I denied it. He growled and tightened his hold on my waist. He tried once again but I didn't let him in. That's how you want to play? Nikoli asked with a husky voice. He bit down on my lip hard and I moaned, opening my mouth at that small gesture. He slid his tongue in my mouth and sucked on my bottom lip. Nikoli sat up and pulled me up with him so I was sitting on his lap. I could feel his little friend in between my legs and that almost set me off. This gave me an idea. I started to grind against him and I heard him groan. Kitty cat. He warned. I smirked and continued to do what I was doing. What? I asked. I pulled away from him and started to kiss his neck. I could feel him more than ever and before he could say anything else I jumped off of him and ran to the bathroom. I knew he would get me back for the stunt that I just did, but what could I say, it was funny. The look on his face was priceless. I stripped down out of my clothes and turned on the shower. I knew Nikoli was keeping his wolf at bay and so was I. I wanted to go back to him and finish what we started but I knew better than that. If we happened to do anything, we would not be coming out of that bed anytime soon. My face flushed at the thought of that. The first time Nikoli and I ever did it was amazing. I went in the shower and let the water fall on me. I wanted to calm down as much as possible. Every time I thought about Nikoli, the feeling of just wanting to be so close to him find its way in my mind. I washed my body and hopped out of the shower. I looked around the bathroom and realized that I forgot my towel back at the room. The bathroom was connected to the room if I haven't already mentioned that. I poked my head out the door to see if Nikoli was anywhere in the room. Once I didn't see him, I walked quickly out of the bathroom and into the room. I found my towel on the back of the chair, but before I could wrap the towel around my body, a hand was on my waist in an instant. I turned around to see Nikoli looking down at me. He had fresh new clean clothes on. Lust was evident in his eyes. They were pitch black and I knew his wolf was at the surface. That wasn't a very nice thing to do. Nikoli whispered in my ear. I gasped and leaned myself into him. He growled and picked me up wrapping my legs around his waist. My towel fell from my hands and I knew I was naked, but I didn't care. It wasn't like I was never naked in front of him before, but that didn't mean I wasn't still self-conscious about my body. Nikoli walked to the bed and laid me down on my back. He hovered over me and licked my neck where his mark was present on me. At that small gesture, I closed my eyes and a soft whimper left my mouth. I think I need to teach you a lesson, Nikoli said with a mischievous glint in his eyes. His hands roamed over my body until he found what he was searching for. His hands were in between my thighs close to my lower region. Lust filled my eyes and I looked up at him. I inched closer towards him but he pulled away. Shaking his head, a chuckle left his mouth. I wouldn't do that if I were you, he said. I stopped and bit my lip. What was he trying to do? He traced the outline of my thighs and I shivered. It tickled a little. I tilted my head back as his finger found my lower region. A moan escaped my lips as he went faster. He slid in another finger and that's when I lost it. Closing my eyes, I bucked my hips towards his hands. I was getting close to my climax and before it happened, Nikoli took his fingers out of me. He stood up and walked to the door. Now you know how it feels, he said with a smirk on his face. My mouth fell open at the realization. You Lee Dash. Before I could say anything Nikoli ran out of the door. I heard his laugh down the hall and I cursed out every word I could think of at him in my mind knowing that he could hear me. Don't curse. I don't want those words coming out of your mouth," Nikoli said to me using our mind link. I rolled my eyes and got up from the bed. 
I would get Nickley back for this I put on some clean clothes and walked down the stairs to the living room. I could hear everyone there. As I walked into the living room everyone got quiet. Nickley walked up to me and nuzzled his face in my neck. I could feel him laughing. What? I whispered. I can smell your arousal and so can everyone else. He said chuckling. I turned around to glare at him. You did this to me, you idiot. I said. Only because you did it to me. He said. He guided me to sit down on the chair and everything was awkward. No one said anything for a while. So Annabelle, how's it going? Luke said to me trying to sustain himself from doing anything. I knew he was unmated and so was Damon, but that was my cousin, so I had nothing to worry about with him. I would so get Nicoly back for this. Nicoly didn't know what he'd got himself into. I would make sure he would suffer worse than before. I wouldn't torture him with violence, but with sexual frustration. Although I started this game and he had his fair share of putting me in the same situation I put him in, I would end this game. I sat down in the living room with everyone else thinking over what I could do to this boy. I could admit it wasn't fair what we both did to one another, but I couldn't say it wasn't funny. The look on Nicolie's face when I left him there to help himself was hilarious. I bit my lip to stop myself from laughing. Everyone was indulged in their own conversations, but I was working up a good plan to get Nicolie back. A light bulb lit up over my head at an idea I just came up with. I smirked to myself and turned to look at Nicolie next to me who was talking to Luke. As if sensing someone looking at him, he turned his head to me with a look of confusion. I all but smiled widely at him with a wink. His confusion deepened and I shook my head with a smile plastered on my face. He didn't even know what was going to hit him. I got up from my seat on the couch and walked to the kitchen. Nicoly would follow me either way. As if on cue, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned around when I got in the kitchen and smiled cheekily at Nicoly. I filled a glass with water and set it down on the counter. Is there a reason why you're following me? I asked innocently. Nicoly came to me in a swift movement and put his hands on my waist. What is going through that pretty little head of yours? He answered my question with a question of his own. I laughed. What you did back there wasn't nice. I said pouting, making sure my bottom lip was sticking out. A smile spread across Nicoly's face as he figured out what I was doing. Are you trying to tempt me, kitty cat? He asked with a smirk on his face. I scoffed, acting oblivious to his question. No. I was really embarrassed. I said frowning. You didn't have to do that to me. Nicoly quickly wrapped me into his arms and held me. I felt guilty for what I was going to do, but as fast as it came, it went away as I thought about the stunt he pulled a few minutes ago. I'm sorry. Nicoly murmured in my ear. I wrapped my arms around his waist and pulled him closer to me. Don't think I won't forget about this. I said. What if I help you forget about it? He suggested. He's falling right into my trap. I smirked in his chest and pulled away. What do you have in mind? I asked. Without saying another word, Nicoly crashed his lips to mine. I responded and wrapped my arms around his neck. I pulled his hair making him groan. He bit my lip and I moaned. I could feel his friend poking at my leg. Before he could slide his tongue in my mouth, I pulled away. He growled and I shook my head. Does this look familiar? I asked. He growled. I inched closer to his face and licked his bottom lip. I watched as he closed his eyes. As he opened his eyes they were pitch black. I moaned at the sight of him. He lifted me up on the counter and opened my legs slightly to stand between them. He started to kiss my neck and lick where he had his mark. I tilted my head to the side and inched closer to him. He pulled my face towards him and kissed me on the lips. I responded and kissed him back. He bit my bottom lip and he slid his tongue in my mouth. He growled and I smirked. I pulled away before we could go any further. I glanced down at his friend and looked back at him. I see someone's excited. I said with a smile on my face. I think I can help you with that. I suggested. Can you, really? Nicoly asked me, inching closer to my face. 
I nodded and a hint of mischief was in my eyes. I want you up here. I said and jumped down off of the counter. Nickley went and sat down on the counter where I was and I couldn't wait to see the expression on his face when I was finished with him. I pushed him gently on the counter and glided my hands down the fabric of his shirt. I watched as he shivered under my touch. Who's smirking now? I thought. Nickley would get you back for this. I heard my wolf say. I can handle a little competition. I replied back to her. I took one of my hands and slid it under his shirt. A low growl came from his mouth. You like that? I asked seductively. I inched my way down to his jeans and looked at him. The look on his face told me that this devilish idea that I had put together would be the funniest thing I had ever done. He was really enjoying this. I unzipped his jeans and looked at his reaction. His eyes were closed. I passed my hands over his manhood and the loudest growl escaped his mouth. I could tell that everyone could have heard him through the massiveness of this castle. I was positively sure that everyone in the living room could already have a hint of what might be going on in the kitchen. So, help me God, Annabelle, if you don't stop teasing me I w dash. He didn't get to finish his sentence as I took my hand and guided it to his lower region. He gasped and snapped his eyes open to look at me. I smiled innocently at him. I took the hand that I wasn't using and searched for the glass of water that was on the counter. I continued to look at Nicoly as I gave him the pleasure that he wanted from the beginning, but as he was getting more and more into it, I poured the glass of cold water on him. His pants were now soaked and it didn't register to him what just happened. I raised myself up and leaned closer to his ear. Payback's a bitch, huh? I moaned as Nicoly licked the mark he made on my neck. Pleasure was flowing through every inch of my body. You know the feeling where you felt so hot that you might go into overdrive? That was me. I wanted Nickley as bad as he wanted me, but he kept teasing me. My lower region was throbbing for Nickley and I knew he knew it. I lifted his face from my neck and smashed my lips onto his. I pulled his body closer to mine wanting to feel every inch of him. I was filled with want and need and only Nickley could give me what I wanted. I arched my back and grinded my hips on him. I heard him groan and he bit my bottom lip. I gladly let him in and he slipped his tongue into my mouth. I moaned and sucked on his tongue. He growled and his arms tightened around my waist. I pulled away, biting on his lip in the process. I pulled his head down so his ear was by my mouth. I licked the side of his ear and he shuddered. I want you to take me now, I said breathlessly. Nicoly slowly raised his head up to look at me. A low chuckle escaped his mouth. It doesn't work like that. He said to me kissing my lips. I wrapped my arms around his neck and my legs around his waist. He sat down and he leaned on the headboard so I was straddling him. I moved my hips slowly on him and he growled. Keep doing that and I might just have to take you. He said with his eyes closed against my lips. That was my intention. I responded. I licked his lip and he groaned. He got up and threw me down on the bed. He unbuttoned my shirt and took it off of me. He kissed down my chest and to my stomach. The places where he kissed left my stomach burning. He reached my pants and tugged on it. I took his hand and put it on my belt. Just take it off. I growled out. Nickley wasted no time in unbuckling my belt. He dragged off my pants and threw them on the floor. He opened my legs slightly and came in between them and rubbed my thighs. I took my hand and lifted up his shirt to take it off. I pulled it over his head and he continued to caress my thighs. What are you doing? I asked impatiently. I wanted him now and it was actually taking him so long to give me what I wanted. I think this is my punishment for teasing me. He said with a smirk on his face. I groaned. Can't we just forget that ever happened because I want you in me now. I could feel my eyes turn to a darker shade of purple. He growled but shook his head with a small smile. Damn, he could stay in control well. Nicoly roamed his fingers over my underwear, but making sure he didn't get too close. He slipped off my underwear and looked at me. The challenge that passed through his eyes didn't go unnoticed by me. I knew what he was trying to do, but I wasn't going to stand for it. 
I sat up and took his finger and placed it in my mouth. I twirled my tongue around it and slowly took it out. I guided his finger and placed it in front of my entrance. I think you know what to do. I said. He watched me the whole time, but he slowly put his finger inside me. I arched my back and propped up on my elbows. And Nicoli. I moaned out a little too loud. He smirked. Is this what you want? He asked. I shook my head. I want you inside me, but I guess this will do. I said with a smirk of my own. He growled but went faster and slid another finger into me. I bit down on my lip. Nicoli hovered over me and placed his mouth against mine. Oh, you're so wet. He growled out. I moved my hips along with the rhythm of his hands. I bit down on his lip as I was reaching my climax, but Nicoli pulled out of me. I whimpered and looked at him with hungry eyes. I never said you were in charge and don't order me again. I will do whatever I want with you tonight, okay? Nicoli said huskily. I moaned and nodded my head. I watched as Nicoli took off his pants and boxers. My eyes roamed over his body with lust. Nicoli grabbed me by the hair and flipped me over on my stomach. I could feel him breathing down my neck indicating that he was close. He licked my mark and I moaned with pleasure. Just remember that I'm in charge here. He said. I nodded my head and turned my head to look at him. He squeezed my butt and bit down on it. I gasped and put my face in the pillow. Get on your knees. He instructed. I did as I was told not wanting to be told twice. He passed his hands on my lower region, but I suppressed a moan. Don't keep it in. I want everyone to know what I'm doing to you. You're mine. Nicoli said. I could feel the tip of him coming close to me. Every time he came to go inside me, he pulled away. He spread open my legs and I moaned. Nicoli, please. I said in a whisper. All this torture was driving me crazy. Holding onto my waist, he thrust inside of me slowly. I gasped. He was so big. He pulled out and thrust into me again. I moaned and tried to move along with him. No, don't move until I tell you to. My heartbeat was beating faster and faster by the minute. Once he did it again, it was the last straw. I couldn't take it anymore. Oh gosh, Nicoli. Do it. Just give me what I want. You want to. I said desperately. With that being said, Nicoli thrust his way back into me and went faster. I held onto the headboard to keep me steady. Nicoli took me by the hair and pulled my head back. He kissed me roughly on the lips. Oh, someone likes it rough. I said. And so would you when I'm done with you? Nicoli said, pecking me on the lips one more time. He lifted one of my legs up. I moaned out loud when he went deeper inside me. Oh. I gasped out. I heard Nicoli groan in satisfaction. Harder. I said in between moans. Nicoli listened and went harder. I could feel myself getting to the climax. Oh, Nicoli, I'm going T-dash. I couldn't even get the words out of my mouth. I screamed in pleasure as I felt myself release. I heard Nicoli grunt and pull out of me. We collapsed on the bed and looked at each other. Nicoli had this cheeky grin on his face. How did you like your punishment? He asked me. I bit my lip and smiled. Wonderful. If this was a punishment, then I think I wanted Nicoli to punish me all the time. It had been a month since I've been in Italy along with everyone else. I had good times and bad times here, but that's what life was all about. When it gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Cheesy, I know, but it's true. I hadn't known that I would be leaving here so soon, but it was probably for the better. All the memories that I have here aren't all the best that I could actually smile about. A fight broke out with the Moon Blood Pack. All because of me. My parents died. All because of me. My heart was broken. I did it to myself. I was injured. Trying to be someone I'm not. I hurt my mate. All because I wasn't thinking properly. The list could go on and on only if I stayed here, but I knew I would be back soon with more calming thoughts and to do what I was born for. 
I sighed as I looked around the large empty room. I would miss this place. I was born here after all. I had no memory of my childhood here. Everything was a blur. I never knew what it was like here. If my parents said that I was almost taken away from them as a child then we were always on the run. We only settled in London for a few months and then here we were in Italy again. Although this time, it wasn't for a reunion of all the packs and family members that I had yet to discover. It was a time to hide away from my protection. I scoffed in my mind. And what did that bring to me, the death of my parents? I fought back the tears that were trying to escape from my eyes. As much as the doctor said this condition of mine would be gone already, I didn't think it had. Every day I felt like I was being sucked into a different world. I had my moments where I was happy and content with everything, but lately I haven't been here if that makes any sense. A knock on the door made me jump in surprise. I walked slowly to the door and opened it to find the one person that would do anything for me. Nicoli. As soon as I saw him tears fell from my eyes. He had his arms opened out for me. I rushed to him and rested my head in his chest. Did I mention I had become really emotional lately? What's wrong, kitty cat? What's wrong, kitty cat? I can feel your distress. I shook my head in a way of saying nothing as I couldn't speak at the moment. He pulled me away from him slightly to look at me. What's wrong? He asked in a more stern way. I looked at him in a helpless way which I knew I wasn't but I couldn't help it. I, uh, I don't know what to do. I said, trying to figure out the right words to say. What about? He asked in a concerned voice. I don't want to leave here. I said. This would be the only connection I have to my parents. They were buried here in Italy and I would have no connection to get to them if I wanted to just see their graves if I went back to London. It wasn't like I could get a flight for the next day to come back down here. I buried my face back into his chest and let the tears fall freely. He wrapped his arms around me and caressed my back. Shoo. Everything's going to be okay. I know it's hard, but I'm here with you. Nicoli reassured me. I sniffled and nodded my head. Come on, everyone is waiting for you so we can leave. He said. I bit the inside of my cheek and took a last look at the room I was staying in. We walked downstairs and everyone like Nicoli said were sitting around the living room waiting. The flight back to London was in two hours and we needed to get to the airport early so we could settle down. There was no private jet as my father didn't leave the person's name with us. I didn't really care for a jet right now. It just wouldn't be the same. Jessica was the first person to notice me. She offered me a smile which I returned and turned away from her. Everything has been weird lately. One day everyone is happy and getting along with each other and the next everything is back to the way it was. Distant and quiet. Maybe it was just me. Mr. O'Connell smiled at me sympathetically and embraced me in a hug as he got up from the couch. Don't forget what I have told you before. He whispered to me. We're all here for you. He continued. I nodded and pulled away from him. I leaned into Nicoli and he kissed my forehead. I think I'm ready to go now. I said looking around. Everyone had their bags and suitcases by the door. They all nodded and we walked to Sarah. She was the kindest lady I had ever known. She was a good friend of my mother and that brought us closer as the month went by. I would really miss her. Have a safe trip sweetie. She said to me. She engulfed me in a hug and I responded to her. She was like a second mother to me. I nodded and pulled away. I smiled weakly at her. Ready? Nicoli asked from beside me. I picked up my backpack and opened the door. I took a painful step outside and looked back at Sarah. Tears were falling from her eyes and I turned around quickly knowing that any minute now, I would have to force myself not to cry. I sniffed and made my way to the car that was waiting for us. Once everything was inside the trunk of the car, we were off to the airport. It didn't take us too long to get to the airport. As I got out of the car, I saw the private jet outside. I was confused. You didn't think I wouldn't have the connection of my own jet? Mr. O'Connell said to me after looking at my face. 
I laughed softly and we walked inside the jet. Nikoli sat next to me as we got on and I rested my head on his shoulder. He wrapped his arms around me and pulled me closer. When everyone got on, the door was closed and the jet took off. Everything was quiet. It was like everyone was in their own thoughts. My life has changed drastically over this past month. I didn't know how I was going to get through this, but at least I knew I wasn't alone. As the plane took off, a feeling of uneasiness washed over me. I felt like I needed to throw up. I gripped the fabric of Nicolie's shirt. Annabelle? He called out to me. I sat up straight and dashed through the bathroom as I felt the need to throw up even worse. I opened the door quickly and bent over the toilet, throwing up all the food from last night and this morning. What was happening? I woke up with a pounding feeling in my head. I slowly opened my eyes to see multiple eyes on me with worried looks in them. The light blinded me to the point where I had to close my eyes again. What happened? I asked myself. I tried to think back to what caused me to feel this way, but nothing came to mind. The only thing that I remembered was talking to Jessica when we were on the private jet. What happened? I asked. Where are we? Did we reach London already? I continued to ask questions one after the next. Annabelle, calm down. We are still in the private jet. You passed out. Nicoly said to me coming to my side on the bed I was lying down on. He took my hand in his and held on to it tightly. I passed out? How? I asked. I sat up slowly, but I was feeling dizzy. I put my hand to my head and sat still. Easy there. Nicoly said to me. I glanced at him and looked down. I couldn't think of anything as to why I felt this way. Maybe it was because of sleep. I haven't slept well for a while. I probably just needed a little bit more sleep. I sighed. What is it? Damon asked me. I snapped my head in his direction. Big mistake. I ignored the dizziness and watched him carefully. I hadn't noticed him standing here before. He had a look of concern on his face and I found myself gathering all the tears that would fall from my eyes any moment to stop from falling. Every second that passed with me just looking at him had me think about what a horrible cousin I was. I let him cope with his emotions all by himself when I knew he needed some type of support that I had gotten when my parents died. He was feeling the same emotions as I was and I only distanced myself away from him. D. Damon? I asked. He smiled softly at me and stroked my cheek. Nicoly growled from beside me as Damon touched me, but I didn't have the energy to argue with him. I knew he was my mate and males didn't like to watch their mate being touched by any other male and also he was an alpha, so it made it a little more difficult. There wasn't any reason for me to start an argument right now. I could practically feel the energy draining out of me. I will leave you two alone to catch up. Mr. O'Connell said to us. Let's go. He called out to the others. Everyone started to walk out of the door, but Nicoly said right by my side. Nicoly. Mr. O'Connell said. He growled and looked at his father without a word. Don't you growl at me, Nicoly. I watched as they looked at each other with a challenging look in their eyes. Nicoly slowly got up and grumbled something that I couldn't understand. He walked out of the room. I didn't want him to leave me, but I wanted to talk to Damon as well. Once they all left, Damon and I sat in silence. We didn't say anything for a while but only basked in each other's presence. I fiddled with my fingers, getting anxious with the silence that was surrounding me. I'm sorry, I said after a while. I could feel the gaze of Damon's eyes on me. You don't have to be, he whispered. I shook my head not wanting to hear that. I am. I wasn't there for you when you needed someone, I said. He shrugged. It's okay really, I needed time to myself. I knew he was lying. I could read him like a book. I didn't understand why men had to act tough all the time. There was nothing wrong with letting your emotions flow once in a while. No one was going to judge you for feeling the way you feel. Why can't you just tell me how you really feel? I asked him, meeting his watchful gaze. He sighed. He looked me in the eyes. 
I don't feel anything. I feel lost. I feel like something has drifted away from me. Your mother was special to me. She was always there for me. Your parents were like my own. I couldn't ask for a better uncle or aunt like your parents. He said. Tears sprung to my eyes and I watched as he had unshed tears in his eyes. I crawled over to him on the bed and wrapped my arms around his neck. He wrapped his arms around my waist and pulled me into a hug. I am so sorry, Annabelle. I am always here for you. Damon said to me. And I will always be here for you as well. I said truthfully. We were landing in the airport of London. We were finally back to the place where I once called home. London. Now it just felt like a place where I could run away from my problems. We got our belongings together and walked off of the jet. A car pulled up as soon as we got out and we put our stuff in the trunk. Alpha Luke, Luna Marianne, it's nice to have you back. A man in all black said while walking up to us. I guess he was a member of the pack. Mr. O'Connell smiled softly and nodded. We got in the car and Nicoly came next to me and placed me on his lap. I snuggled up against him and rested my head on his shoulders. Are you okay? He asked. I nodded. We don't have much driving to go since we landed in a different airport. Nicoly explained to me. I nodded. I'm fine. I said looking out the window. I just wanted to go home and sleep. I yawned. Don't sleep now. Nicoly said to me. Why not? I whined. He chuckled and pulled me closer to him. Because we're almost home. He said to me, kissing my cheek. I could see the house in view. In no time, we were in front of the house and everyone was getting out. I tried to slide off of Nicoly's lap, but I couldn't move as Nicoly still had his arms around me. He slid out of the car with me in his arms and I looked at him in confusion. Aren't we going to help with our stuff? I asked. He shook his head. I want to take you to the pack doctor to see what's going on with you. He said with seriousness in his voice. I don't need to go to the pack doctor. I just need sleep, that's all. I tried to reason with him. No. You already threw up and passed out on me. I'm taking you. He said and there was no arguing there. He walked up to the front porch and opened the door and quickly walked to the pack doctor upstairs. Dr. Hale? Nicoly called out to the doctor. A man with gray hair came into view as I looked around the hospital-like room. Nikolai, when did you come back? He asked. That doesn't matter. Can you give Annabelle a checkup for me, please? Nikolai asked. Dr. Hale looked at me like he was seeing me for the first time since we got here. A look of sympathy was evident on his face. I looked away. Of course, set her on the bed over there. He said. Nikolai did as he was told and placed me on the bed. I sat down as Dr. Hale did a once-over on me. What happened? Why do you want Annabelle to have a checkup? Dr. Hale asked Nicoly. She passed out and threw up on the way back here. I just want to make sure that she is fine. Nicoly said. The doctor nodded. Can you lay down for me please, Annabelle? He asked me. I laid down on the bed and he raised up my shirt, feeling around my stomach. It was awkward as it wasn't Nicoly touching me, but I didn't complain. He was a doctor, after all. I need you to pee in a cup for me, he said. I nodded and he gave me a cup. I took it and went to the bathroom and slowly did my business. It took at least five minutes of waiting to see if I would use the bathroom or not. When I was done and cleaned myself, I walked back into the room. I handed the doctor the cup and he nodded. I'm going to have this tested and give you the results maybe later tonight, Dr. Hale said. Nicoly and I nodded and the doctor left. What is this all about? I asked Nicoly. He shook his head. I could feel the nerves flowing off of him. Nothing. I can't be protective of you. He asked me. I laughed. Any time, if you will. I know that wasn't the real answer that he wanted to give. I just wanted to know what was going on. Nicoly's POV. You know that feeling when you think something is going on, but you don't want to admit it to yourself yet? Well, that's how I was feeling. 
I had a feeling in my gut about what was wrong with Annabelle, but it couldn't be true. Not that I wouldn't be happy if it was, but it wasn't possible. My wolf started to pace around and was excited all of a sudden. The only thing I wanted to figure out was if my assumptions were right. I was currently in my room laying down on my bed. A lot of thoughts were going through my mind right now and I didn't even know what to make of it. Son, can you come down to my office? Your mother and I have some things to discuss with you. I heard my father say through the mind link. I sighed. Okay. I replied back to him. I slowly got out of my bed and walked out of the room. Walking towards the direction of my father's office, I wondered what he wanted to talk about. Did he know something? I asked myself. I raised my hand to knock on the door as I got to the office, but hearing the voice of my father halted me to a stop. This isn't possible. I heard him talking to someone. Likely my mother. This can only mean one thing. My mother replied to him. I looked around confused. I knocked on the door and their talking stopped. Comment. My father called out. I walked inside and the tension around the room was overbearing. What did you want to talk about? I asked slowly, watching my parents with suspicion. A small smile rested on my mother's face and I knew she had knowledge of something. My father nodded at my question. My wolf was anxious. He too knew something and it looked like I was the only one that was left in the dark. I sat down on the couch that was by the door. Your mother here thinks she knows what's going on with Annabelle. My father said. I looked to my mother and she had a smug look on her face. I looked at her urging her to say whatever it was that was in her mind. As if sensing my impatience, she squealed and came to sit right next to me. I'm finally going to be a grandmother. She yelled. I looked at her in shock. Did I hear her right? Yes, you idiot. I heard my wolf say. I rolled my eyes. Annabelle can't be having a baby. I didn't bite her again when we completed the mating process. I said to him. I don't care about that. You should be happy as I am that she's carrying our pups. My wolf said excitedly. I blocked him out after that. I would be happy once I hear it from Annabelle herself or even the doctor when he got the results from earlier on. I had my suspicion of this, but it couldn't be. My mother was looking at me eagerly to see my reaction. I had a blank expression on my face and I knew she wasn't too keen on it. I chuckled. That's impossible. I said to her. You think I would lie about something like this? I have a motherly instinct about this. My mother said. She may not be my child, but I am a female wolf. I would know something like this. Why aren't you happy? She asked. It's not that I'm not happy. I'm just shocked. I haven't even done the second step for Annabelle to become pregnant. I said. I was deep in thought now. I don't think that matters. I heard my father say. I looked at him. And why not? I asked. Her bloodline. Her wolf is Celeste. She may have other plans for her. He said. To say I was at a loss for words was an understatement. Annabelle was pregnant with my pups. My mate. I'm not going to believe this until I hear it from Annabelle herself. I told my parents as I told myself before. My mother shrugged. You're going to believe it either way. Annabelle is pregnant with your pup and I'm going to be a grandmother. My mother squealed once again. My mother wanted me to have children for a long time now. It didn't even matter if I didn't have my mate. When I finally found my mate, it just made her more excited to think about me having children. As a wolf, it didn't matter at what age you have pups. You find your mate at the age of 16 and if you happen to get your mate impregnated by 18 you were technically an adult. Well as long as I didn't have an exact answer to this then my mother would have to wait for a while. You will be waiting for some time for you to become a grandparent. I told her. She frowned at me. If you find out that Annabelle is having your pups you better take care of them. It was my turn to frown. Why would I not take care of my own child? I asked. You're not taking this very seriously. She said. I am. I just want proof, that's all.
I said. She nodded. Where's Annabelle? My father asked. She's with Jessica. Why? I asked. The doctor would like to see you too. He said. I nodded and quickly left the office. I walked up to Jessica's room and pounded on the door. Annabelle, the doctor needs to see us. I said as I opened the door. Well, how about knocking next time? Jessica said. I grunted. Annabelle got up from the bed and walked over to me. What's wrong? She asked me. I shook my head. I think the doctor has results for us. I said, kissing her cheek. She nodded and we left to go to the pack doctor. As we reached the door, my heart was beating quickly against my chest. I was nervous. Annabelle took my hand in hers as I knew she could feel my anxiousness, but was confused as to why. Ah, come in, Dr. Hale said. We walked in and I sat down. I pulled Annabelle on my lap. I have some exciting news for you, the doctor started. My hands started to shake. I could feel droplets of sweat starting to form on my forehead. I knew what was going to come. Annabelle, you're pregnant, Dr. Hale said. Oh shit. I was going to be a father. Annabelle's POV. Pregnant? Pregnant? I was pregnant. The word felt so foreign on my tongue. I stared at the doctor and was starstruck at the information he just told Nicoly and I. I turned around to face Nicoly and he had the same exact expression on his face, but a ghost of a smile fell onto his face after a while. I had the feeling that he knew about this already. I'm going to be a father. Nicoly said in a whisper to me. I'm going to be a father. He yelled excitedly. I looked at him and smiled. I couldn't believe I was having a baby. Wait, I thought I couldn't get pregnant. I didn't recall Nicoly biting the mark he gave me a second time. A look of confusion crossed my face and Nicoly frowned. Aren't you happy? Nicoly asked me. He stroked my cheek and watched me. I'll leave you two alone, I heard the doctor say. His retreating step told me he was already leaving. I have a feeling that you know about me being pregnant, I said. A sheepish grin was evident on Nicoly's face. He said. I raised my eyebrow. She knew that I was already pregnant? I asked. He nodded. She knew since we were in the plane. What are you thinking about? He asked me. I shook my head from all the thoughts. I don't understand how I can be pregnant. I said. Nicoly sighed. My father had the theory of you becoming pregnant because of your bloodline and your wolf. Celeste is a part of you and she is also the moon goddess. She may have had other plans for you. He said slightly confused. I wasn't even sure he knew what he was saying. Why would Celeste have the idea of getting me pregnant? Why don't we go back up to our room? Nicoly suggested. I nodded and he picked me up bridal style and walked to the door. As he opened the door, bodies started to fall face flat on the floor. I looked down surprised and saw Nicoly's parents along with Luke, Damon and Jessica lying on the floor. They all had embarrassed looks on their faces. Busted. I thought. I looked up and Nicoly had an annoyed expression clear on his face. I'm going to be a grandma. Mrs. O'Connell yelled excitedly. I looked at her in amusement. You just couldn't wait. Could you? Nicoly asked bitterly. I had a feeling that the question was directed to his mother. His mother leaned back into Mr. O'Connell. Do not talk to your mother that way. Mr. O'Connell said, slightly raising his voice. I pulled Nicoly face down to look at me. Don't be mad at your mother. She's only excited that her son is going to be a father. I whispered to him. His eyes were pitch black but turned back to its normal color as he looked at me. He pulled me tighter to him and looked at everyone with a hard expression on his face. Can we pass, please? He said. He didn't wait for anyone to say anything and pushed past them and started to walk to the room. I sighed and rested my head on his chest. I would think that the female would be angry if she heard that people already found out about her pregnancy before she even did. 
I wanted for us to tell them our ourselves. I wanted you to have something you could be happy about in your life. I don't understand. What are you talking about? I asked. She said to me. Tears sprung to my eyes and I forced them away not wanting Nikoli to see. You did this for me? I asked. Yes, and so that Nikoli's mother's wish could come true, I could literally feel the longing rubbing off from her. I giggled. I leaned back on Nikoli and rested my head on his chest. He slowly started to rub my stomach. I can't believe there's a baby growing in there. Nikoli whispered to me and kissed behind my ear. I couldn't believe it either. I thought. My eyes widened at that thought. I couldn't have a baby. I was 18 years old for crying out loud. I hadn't even finished high school yet. I started to hyperventilate. Annabelle, what's wrong? Nikoli said. I can't have a baby. We're too young. What if I can't take care of him or her? I said hysterically. He took my face in his as I did to him when I was calming him down and kissed my lips. I melted instantly as his lips touched mine and wrapped my arms around his neck. I pulled him closer to me and deepened the kiss. I was hoping you would be having a boy. Nikoli said against my lips. I giggled and pulled away. You would be an awesome mother. He said, kissing my cheek. I smiled. You wouldn't leave me, right? I asked. I knew I shouldn't have asked that question, but I wanted to reassure myself that I wouldn't have to do this alone. Nikoli pulled away from me and looked at me with hurtful eyes. Why would you think I would leave you? I wouldn't dream on it. He said to me. You're my mate and I am yours. This baby is made for the both of us. I am the father of the child and you are the mother. Don't you ever think for a second that I would leave you. Get that thought out of your head right now. He said. A tear fell from my eyes. I would have never thought of having a baby now. Everything seemed so surreal at this point in my life. I never knew witches and wolves were real. I never thought of ever having a mate, but here I was with Nikoli holding me and telling me he wouldn't ever leave me. Nikoli wiped the tears that were falling from my eyes and kissed my eyelids. I don't want you to ever cry again. You won't have to as long as I am here. He said to me. I pulled him into a hug and buried my head in the crook of his neck. I love you so much, Nikoli. I said. I love you too and possibly more than you can think. Nikoli said, hugging me tighter. I couldn't believe I was already starting a family of my own. The days became longer and the nights became shorter. Who knew everything would turn out like it did? I was in my room looking at myself in the mirror. It was weird that my stomach didn't grow this past month. It looked like how it had always been. Flat. The shock of me becoming a mother hasn't left me yet. I would have to wait till I actually give birth for the surprise to go away. I felt arms wrap themselves around me and I looked up to see Nikoli. What are you doing? He asked me. I shook my head. Don't you think it's weird that my stomach isn't showing any signs of me being pregnant? I asked him. He chuckled. You're a werewolf. You won't have the same signs as a human. Your pregnancy would be less than that of a human. Instead of carrying your child for nine months in your stomach, it would be at least three months. He said to me. My eyes widened. I would become a mother in less than three months, seeing as I am already one month in. The nervousness was creeping up in my body. Don't worry, I will be by your side. Nikoli said to me, sensing my nerves. I smiled and nodded my head. Come on and get ready. We are having a get-together with the pack in a few. He said to me. He kissed the top of my head and left me to get ready. I was going to be a mother. I smiled. I put my hand on my stomach. Who knew I would have another me or Nikoli growing inside? I shook my head and walked to my closet. I settled on what to wear. I picked out a pair of jeans and a hooded flannel shirt. I wonder what the gender of my child was. I wanted it to be a girl. I would love to do everything my mother did for me. I smiled sadly at the thought. My parents wouldn't even be there to see their grandchild. 
I was taken out of my thoughts as a prancing Jessica burst into my room. I watched her for a few seconds and rolled my eyes. Is there any reason that you just came into my room without knocking? Is there any reason that you just came into my room without knocking? I asked. She shrugged. No, I just felt like bothering you. She said. I gave her a knowing look. Seriously. I said. I sat down on the bed and she followed by planting face first onto my pillow. What's going on? I asked. It was silent for a few minutes until Jessica lifted up her head from the pillow. I found my mate. She whispered. I turned my whole body towards her and squealed. What? How? I asked. She beamed and looked at me. I was walking back home from going to get my mom something and there he was leaning on a wall. He is so gorgeous. She said. I was truly happy for her. She has been looking for her mate ever since we came back from Italy. The smile on her face slowly faded. What's wrong? I asked. I ran away from him. She said in barely a whisper. I looked at her like she was crazy. Why the hell would you do that? I asked. She bit her lip nervously. He's a rogue. She said. I gasped. I could see why she ran away. Rogues aren't really committed to anything. The reason why they left their packs. Also, this pack had a policy of rogues. Nickley has told me of the rogue attack they had before I was involved in all of this. You should go find him. You should go find him. He's your mate, after all. I'm sure your father would understand, especially when one of his pack members and daughter has found her mate. I said. Her face brightened with the smile she had before. Thanks, Annabelle. She said. What are friends for? I said. Now get out. I need to get ready for this get-together. I said playfully. She put her hands up in surrender, playing along with it, and I laughed. Sometimes we could be so stupid. See you later. She said. I nodded. I started to put on my clothes. After I was done, I did my hair. I gave myself a once-over and smiled in approval. I opened the door to my room and walked down the stairs. I found Luke and Damon rampaging on the floor and I knew not to get into it. I walked into the kitchen where Jessica and her mom were making the food. Why are Luke and Damon on the floor like hooligans? I asked. Jessica looked over at them. She rolled her eyes. I think Damon won a game they were playing, and you know how Luke gets when he loses. She said. I laughed. Luke loves competition. Do you guys need any help? I asked Mrs. O'Connell. She turned around and beamed at me with a smile. She glanced at my stomach and shook her head. I don't think we need any help, dear. Jessica has everything under control. She said. I nodded and smiled. I guess I will be going, then. I said. Jessica looked at me and smirked. I rolled my eyes and went to the backyard where everyone else was doing something productively which I should be doing the same. Sometimes it gets annoying when Mrs. O'Connell wouldn't let me do things. I knew she was trying to look out for me, but I wasn't handicapped. I sighed and leaned on the door watching everyone get things together. Hey. Someone whispered to me in my ear. I turned around and Nicoly was smiling cheekily at me. Yes? I said, smiling up at him. What are you doing here and not with Jessica and my mom? He asked. Your mother doesn't want me to do anything. I said, pouting. He chuckled and kissed me on the lips. I wrapped my arms around his neck and pulled him closer to me. A soft tug on my pants made me pull away from Nicoly and look down. A little girl with dark brown hair and pigtails and big brown eyes was looking up at me. I squatted down to her level and looked at her. And who might this cutie be? I asked her. My name is Lily. She said. I picked her up and placed her on my hip. Well, Lily, that is a beautiful name. I said and softly poked her on the nose. She giggled. 
I looked at Nikoli, and he looked at me with adoration in his eyes. Where are your parents? I asked Lily. She looked around for a few seconds and pointed to my left. Her parents were sitting on the bench. As if sensing eyes on them, they turned around and looked at their daughter and then at me. I waved at them. The look of surprise was on their faces and I chuckled. You're going to be a great mommy, Lily said. I snapped my attention to her. She put her hand on my stomach. What shocked me the most was what she said after. It's a girl. How did she know that? You could hear a pin drop and that was cliché, seeing as we were wolves. I looked at the little girl and she was smiling up at me. I didn't know what to say. How could one little girl know that I was pregnant? No one found out and I was hoping I would tell the rest of the pack soon. I didn't think I had to wait anymore. Everyone was staring at Nikoli and I with anticipation to see what we were going to do. I put the little girl down and she ran back to her mom who was looking at us curiously. How did that little girl know I was pregnant? I asked Nikoli through our bond. She is one of the children in this pack that has special abilities. I waited for him to continue. She can tell when a female is pregnant. He continued, explaining to me. I bit my lip. What were we going to do now? What do you think we should do? I asked. There's nothing to do now but to inform the pack. Everyone has already heard it. Nikoli said with a smile. I nodded. His parents came out of the house and I was sure that Nikoli mind linked to them. They stood by our side and I was thankful that they came. Can I have everyone's attention, please? Mr. O'Connell said. Everyone watched him with great interest. As you all know, Nikoli had found his mate for a while now. They have been through ups and downs, but all is well now. It is my pleasure to say that my son and his beautiful mate are expecting a child. I blushed as everyone started to cheer and congratulate us. Nikoli wrapped his arms around me and I leaned into him. I love you. He said to me and kissed the side of my head. I know. I said and smiled cheekily at him. I said and smiled cheekily at him. He playfully glared at me. Won't you say it back? He asked with a pout. I giggled. I love you, you big baby. I said. He smiled. Well, I am your big baby, so you're gonna have to deal with it. He said. That was so cheesy. I said in a fit of laughter. And you love me for it. He said. I rolled my eyes. It's a shame that I do. I said. He growled. Don't play with me. He said. I giggled. I was only kidding. Yes, I love you for all the cheesy things you say. I said. We walked around the backyard and talked about random things. Nikoli would say the most cliche lines and it would make me laugh no matter what. I guess this get-together turned out to be for Nikoli and I. Everyone would come up to us and congratulate us. I smiled every time someone came up to us. It just made me think more about being a mother. I would love this child unconditionally. Suddenly, Nikoli pulled me out of my thoughts as he stopped without any warning. A warning would have been nice. I said. Shoo. He said. I looked around curiously. What's wrong? I asked. Someone is here that wasn't invited. He said. Go back to the house. I shook my head. I'm not leaving you. I said stubbornly. Nikoli just took my hand in his. If you're trying to hide, it's not working. Nikoli called out to nothing. Shortly after, a man came out behind a tree and looked at the two of us. He didn't look threatening, but Nikoli thought otherwise. He pulled me behind him, so he was standing in front of me. What are you doing here, rogue? Nikoli asked the man. You have something that belongs to me and I want it. He said, looking past us at our house and the people outside. Nikoli growled and took a warning step towards the man. If you mean to start trouble, you can leave. He said. Nikoli, I don't think he means any harm. I don't see anyone else with him. I said softly. 
Annabelle, where are you? Nicolie's parents are getting worried about you guys. I heard Damon say to me through the family bond that we have. He has never done that before. I guess he's trying to be closer to me because we are the only family we have since we don't know every single relative of ours. There's a rogue here and Nicolie thinks he's a threat, but I think otherwise. He says that we have something that belongs to him. I replied back to Damon. I didn't get a reply back and I was sure that he told Nicolie's parents already. Most likely his father. The man never made any move to leave. He stayed where he was and just watched us. I felt awkward. I heard footsteps coming behind us and I turned around to see Damon and Mr. O'Connell coming towards us. Nicolie. Mr. O'Connell called out to him. Nicolie stepped back from the man and looked at his father. Why don't we take this into a more civilized place and talk about this? He suggested. Nicolie growled and mumbled some incoherent things and pulled me along with him to the house. I didn't say anything to him. I wanted him to calm down before he did anything else. Everyone else was behind us and I could hear Mr. O'Connell and Damon talking. As we got back to the backyard, everyone started to look our way. Once they saw the man that we encountered, everyone started to murmur. We walked into the house and the man walked past us and into the kitchen. The only person that was in there was Jessica. You are mine. We heard the man say. I gasped. He was the man Jessica was talking about. We walked into the kitchen and Jessica was in between the counter and the man. Jessica looked terrified and the man had a smug look on his face. Didn't I tell you you had what belonged to me? The man said. Jessica gasped and shivered. We all knew the effect this man had on her. I looked at Mr. O'Connell, but nothing seemed to cross his face except for a smile. He was smiling. That made Jessica smile. She ran to her father and hugged him. Thank you. She said. It was like a silent connection between them. She grinned at me and took her mate's hand and went to her room. I hope she didn't go too fast or did anything she wasn't ready to do yet. After everything was calm and settled, we all went back outside to enjoy ourselves. Jessica's mate would have to join the pack, but we gave him time to think about that. More than likely, he would be a part of this pack because his mate is here. I was happy for her. Now the only people that need to find their mates are Damon and Luke. I said to everyone. Shut up. Luke and Damon said together. I laughed and stuck my tongue out at them. I want to take you out tonight. Nicoly whispered to me. I smiled and nodded. Where do you want to go? I asked. Wherever you want to go. He said. I giggled and nodded my head. Where should we go? Nicoly's POV. Ever since I found out that I was going to be a father, I have mentally told myself that I would do everything possible to keep Annabelle and my child safe. I would have two very important people in my life that mean the world to me. As I sat next to Annabelle, I smiled at the memory of when I first met her. It was like a roller coaster. I definitely wanted her from the time I smelled the sweet scent that came from her. I didn't hold myself back, but she sure did. Jessica did everything possible to keep Annabelle away from me and my little mate let her drown her with false thoughts. At the end, I still got her though. I wouldn't have left without a fight until I made her mine. Come to think of it, I should let Jessica get a taste of her own medicine since she found her mate, but I'm not one for doing that. Everyone deserved to have a mate and whoever didn't want them, then it was their loss. Having a mate is the best feeling in the world and I would know that. She was sitting right next to me. I pulled Annabelle closer to me if that was even possible and rested my head on her shoulder. She leaned in closer to me and I felt her heated gaze fixated on my face. I looked at her through my eyelashes. What are you thinking about? She asked me softly. I smiled up at her. Just the days when you would run away from me, I said, kissing the side of her neck. She giggled. Well if you hadn't been the hulk of a man that you were then, Maybe I wouldn't have. She said teasingly. Or you should have just not listened to Jessica. I said. I knew my words had a double meaning behind them. I could hear it in my voice and by the frown on Annabelle's face, I knew she heard it too. She sighed. 
Oh, come on, I didn't know you were a wolf and, besides, all the things Jessica was telling me were quite funny. She said, placing a grin on her face. I chuckled. So, you're saying that if you knew I was a wolf, you would come to me without question? I asked, raising my eyebrows. She laughed. No, I would probably laugh in your face. She said. I laughed. You already did. I said. The smile on her face turned into a confused expression. Oh, yeah. She said, remembering. I shook my head. I think you need to check that brain of yours. It seems like you're forgetting things. I said. She punched my arm and I laughed. I have a perfect memory, if I might say. She replied. I smiled. We fell into a comfortable silence and watched as everyone talked with each other. Dude, I need your help. I mind linked to Luke and Damon. Now that Damon is part of our pack, I can mind link to him too. What's up, lover boy? Luke said. I looked over at him and he had a smirk on his face. I shook my head. I want to take Annabelle somewhere, but I have no clue. I said honestly. Just say you want to be a helpless romantic and you need my help to do so. He said with that smirk still present on his face. I laughed at his own stupidity. But seriously, I need help. I said. Do what you think Annabelle might like. Knowing her, she would like anything you do. She is your mate, after all. Damon finally stepped in and said. I nodded slightly at that. I don't want her to just like it because she knows I did it. I want her to like it, regardless of that. I said. That girl got you wrapped around her little finger. Luke said. I chuckled. I don't care. She's everything to me. I said, glancing at Annabelle, who was engrossed in a conversation with Jessica. As if sensing me looking at her, she turned around and smiled at me and went back to talking to Jessica. I pulled her onto my lap and a squeal escaped her mouth. Immediately, her body relaxed against mine. Didn't your mother ever tell you it's not polite to interrupt people when they're talking? She asked me. I smirked. It seems as if you're enjoying this position, so maybe it would be best if I interrupted you sooner. I said. She shivered at my words and I kissed her neck. I love you. I whispered to her. She turned around and looked at me. I love you too. She said. Staring into her eyes made me feel like we were the only two people here. Everyone just disappeared. I brushed my lips against hers and I heard her whimper before crashing her lips to mine. I wrapped my arms around her waist and licked her bottom lip. She quickly granted me access and I slipped my tongue into her mouth. Before we could get too carried away, I pulled away reluctantly. We are still in the presence of people. I pecked her lips once more and smiled at her. Go get ready. I'm taking you out tonight. I said. It's almost eight o'clock. She said. All the more reason for us to go out. I said. I had something in mind regarding where I wanted to take her and I knew she would love it. She bit her lip and looked at me for a second with a smile set on her face. Surprise me. She whispered before getting up from my lap and pulling Jessica up from the chair and heading for the door. Oh, I intend on doing so. I said through the bond we share. She turned around and winked at me before going inside the house. I chuckled to myself. What did I do to get a mate like Annabelle? I think I know where I want to take Annabelle. I said to Luke and Damon through the mind link. Where? They said simultaneously. You know the fireworks that we have every year in regards to us being werewolves that only we know about? Well, I want to take her there and I know what I want to do after that. It's at midnight so we have a few hours to do other things. Do you think you guys can help me set up my treehouse? I asked. Damon smiled at me and Luke still had that look on his face. You're actually using your brain. Luke said to me. Damon laughed. Yes, yeah, sure, man. Damon said. We start now. I wanted this date to be perfect because that's what my mate was. Perfect to me. Annabelle's POV. One thing to remember, never let Jessica help you find clothes for a date or any occasion for that matter. 
my closet that was once neat and organized is now ransacked through and a complete mess. I don't know what you're looking for, but my closet doesn't have to look like yours. I said to her, sitting on the bed. Hush, I'm trying to find clothes for you. You're the one that asked for my help. She said to me. Come to think of it, I was perfectly capable of getting ready myself. She looked at me and rolled her eyes. Where are you going anyway? She asked me. I shrugged. Not sure. Nicoli only told me to get ready. I said. She nodded her head, but still went through my clothes. I guess you should go classy, but casual at the same time. Jessica murmured. I laid back on the bed, facing the ceiling. I wonder what Nicoli was going to do. Where was he taking me? All these questions were running through my head. Oh, stop worrying. You would be happy with anything that Nicoli does for you. Oh. I heard my wolf say. I scoffed. I'm not worrying. I said, ignoring her second statement. Really? I can feel the nervousness in you. She said. I rolled my eyes and ignored her. Of course, I would be nervous. It was my mate we were talking about. Every time Nicoli comes near me, butterflies start to erupt in my stomach. All the thoughts that run through my head disappear. I sighed happily. Okay, I found you an outfit. I heard Jessica say to me. I turned my head around and looked at the outfit she was holding. White skinny jeans, white and black blouse, black boots, and a leather jacket. I like it. I said. Hopping off of the bed, I grabbed the clothes from her and went to the bathroom. You're welcome. Jessica grumbled. I chuckled. Thank you. I said and closed the bathroom door. I quickly put on the clothes that she picked out and walked out of the bathroom. So how do I look? I asked her. Fantastic. Now, let's do your hair. She said. He dragged me to a chair and I plopped myself on it. She plugged in the curling iron and started to curl my hair. When she was done, she did my makeup. I went all natural since I didn't wear makeup often. My work here is done. Jessica said when she was finished. I laughed. Thanks. I said. Are you ready, kitty cat? I heard Nicoli say through our bond. I'm coming down in a few. I said. Hurry up. I want to see your pretty face. I better get going. Nicoli is one impatient boy. I said to Jessica. You don't say. Jessica said. I shook my head and opened the door to my room and walked down the stairs with Jessica in tow. As I reached the bottom stairs, Nicoli was there watching my every move. He walked slowly to me. As he reached up to me, he wrapped his arms around my waist pulling me closer to him. I can see why you tortured me by waiting so long. Shall we go? Have fun but not too much fun. I heard Mrs. O'Connell say. When did she get there? I looked down, trying to hide the embarrassment from her words. Nicolie chuckled and pulled me along to the front door. Where are we going? I asked as we went outside. Ah, uh, a surprise. I said. He nodded. Come on, he said, guiding me to the car. He opened the door for me and I got it. He quickly jogged to the driver's side and got in too. He reached over me and put on my seatbelt for me. Really? I said in a flat tone. He chuckled. It's my car and your safety means a lot to me, he said. You make it seem like you're going to get into an accident. For all you know, I am stronger than you. I said. Sadly, your hand is so warm. I said distractedly. He chuckled and raised my hand to his mouth, kissing the back of it. We're here. Gustoso mi amore? I asked in disbelief. Their food was expensive. I wanted to make this special. Any other restaurant would have been special because you're there. I said. Nicoli said to me. My heart melted at his words. I pulled him to me and placed my lips on his. You're everything to me. Let's go eat. Table for two. Nicoli said as we got up to the lady at the desk. Right this way. 
she said. We were placed in the middle of the restaurant. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. She said. I looked around the restaurant. It was so beautiful. There were lights hanging from the ceiling. It gave off a reddish pinkish color. People were eating and having a good time. It felt like a civilized place. I looked over to Nikoli, who was looking at me. What? I asked, smiling. Nothing. I'm just looking at a beautiful girl who happens to be mine. What did I tell you about your cheesy lines? I asked. You didn't say anything specific. You just said you loved me for it. He said with a smirk. I rolled my eyes. Hi. I will be your waiter for today. What can I get you? Someone said. I turned to the right and found a girl standing by our table. She had blonde hair and was wearing all black. She was looking at Nikoli and a nerve struck through me. Jealousy. She looked at him up and down as if she didn't see me there. Yes, well I would like a glass of water and spaghetti and meatballs. It's not polite to stare at other people's boyfriends, you know. Hadn't anyone told you that? I asked her with an innocent smile on my face. I suggest you keep your eyes elsewhere and do your job. What would you like? I asked Nikoli. He was looking at me with an amused look on his face. You can get me a glass of Pepsi and the seven-layer rigatoni. He said, looking straight at me, but clearly he was talking to the girl. I looked at the girl. She was glaring at me. Well, that would be all. Jealousy doesn't look good on you. Your eyes tell me otherwise. I said in a playful voice. He chuckled. Indeed. This girl would not ruin my night. Here, try this. Nikoli said to me. He picked up his food and held it towards me. Open up. He said. I scoffed. I am not a baby. I said, but nevertheless opened my mouth. Putting the fork into my mouth, Nikoli watched me intensely. You like it? He asked me. I giggled. Try controlling your hormones. I said, laughing a bit. Well, I try, but it's the things that you do that keeps me on edge. He said. Eating off of the same fork is such a turn on. He continued to say. I blushed and looked down. And yes, I liked it. I said answering his question before. He chuckled. Don't hide your face from me. He said. I looked at him through the hair that fell in front of my face. I bit my lip and smiled. Now, I want you to try my spaghetti. I said. It's not my favorite kind of dish. He said. I smirked. It's only fair. For all you know I might not like rigatoni as my favorite dish. I said throwing his words back at him. He stared at me. Fine. I grinned. Open up, big boy. I said. He did as I said and I put my fork in his mouth. I laughed as he made a face. There's no need to be dramatic. I said. He chuckled. You have a little something right there. I said gesturing to the side of his mouth. Wipe it off for me. He said with a smirk of his own. I bit the inside of my cheek and leaned over the table. I took my thumb and wiped it over the spot where the sauce from the spaghetti was. I glanced at him and he was already watching me. Why do you always look at me like that? I asked him. Like what? I can't look at you. Nikoli asked. I smiled. I didn't say that. I just asked a question. I said. He chuckled. Looking at you keeps me at ease. He said. And why is that? I asked. Because you're an antidote to me. When you're with me I don't have to be so hard on myself because you're here with me. He said. The words that you say. I sighed dreamily. I watched as he licked the sauce off of my thumb. My breathing hitched in my throat and my heart started to beat faster. Why do you make me feel this way? I asked. I'm afraid you already know the answer to that. Nikoli whispered. Our lips were so close to each other that I could only move an inch and our lips would touch. 
as we moved closer to each other, someone cleared their throat. Will you be having any desserts? I snapped my head over to the waitress and sat back down in my seat. I smiled. I don't think so. Do you? I asked Nikoli. The shine in his eyes brightened as he looked at me. A smirk made its way onto his face. I don't know. Do you? He asked, mocking me. I growled lowly only for him to hear. He raised his eyebrows and shook his head, glancing at the waitress. No, we don't. He said. The girl glowered at me and put the check on our table and left. Nikoli took out his wallet and I looked at him confused. I picked up the bill and my eyes nearly popped out of their sockets. The bill was way too much. I'm glad I didn't order dessert. I muttered. I heard Nikoli chuckle. Shouldn't we split the bill? I asked. I still have money from the job that I was doing at the cafe. Speaking of that job, I knew I was clearly fired. No. This is my treat to you. It wouldn't be fair if I had you pay half of the bill when clearly I am the gentleman here. He said. It wouldn't be fair if I sit here and watch you pay for this. I said putting the check in his face. He smiled. Then don't look. He said. I scoffed and sat back on my chair. I really didn't want him to spend all this money on dinner. It wasn't that necessary. I was really thankful for everything that Nikoli had done for me. I really was, but this was way too much. Don't think about it too much, kitty cat. I do this because I love you. Nikoli said. I smiled slightly. He sighed. Don't let this ruin our night. I still have more to show you. Plus, a man's gotta eat. If I was by myself I would spend this much money on food. He said lightening up the mood. I laughed and shook my head. You are something else. I said, giggling. He grabbed my hand and pulled me up to my feet. We walked out of the restaurant with our hands intertwined. And for the record, you should already know that I am yours and only yours, as you are mine. Nikoli whispered in my ear. I shivered at his closeness and smiled. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to put that girl in her place for looking at what was mine. I said. I gasped and looked away from him. Did I really just say that? I asked myself. I heard my wolf laugh in my head. You sure did. Your hormones are taking a toll on you. Your possessive side is coming out. She said to me. Nikoli chuckled beside me. He placed his hands on my waist and backed me up against the car. I hadn't even noticed that we had gotten into the car. Possessive, are we now? Nikoli asked with a raised eyebrow. I like it. Now I know I'm not the only possessive one here. He said with a smirk. He brushed his lips against mine. From the corner of my eyes I saw him reach out and open the car door. He pecked me on the lips. Ready for the next stop? He asked and walked away, going around to the driver's side. I stood there for a few seconds just going over what just happened. I shook my head and got in the car with a pout. You know you can't just leave me hanging like that. I said, glancing at Nikoli. He had a smirk on his face. Do you want something? He asked, resting his hand on my leg. No. I said, shaking my head. I think you do. Nikoli said. What? I asked with a smirk on my face. Where is this boldness suddenly coming from? I asked myself. Your hormones. My wolf said. Right. I replied. This. He said. He leaned over to me and crashed his lips to mine. I responded quickly and wrapped my arms around his neck. I moaned as he bit my bottom lip. Before I could do anything, he pulled away with a knowing smile evident on his face. Where are we going now? I asked with a smile making its way onto my face. To my treehouse. Nikoli simply said. The treehouse? I asked. Nikoli nodded his head with a smile on his face. That alone made me smile along with him. It was really hard not to. Everything that he did put a smile on my face and I knew that was what he intended to do. 
Did you do something to it? I asked, feeling whimsical all of a sudden. I asked, feeling whimsical all of a sudden. Nicoly smirked and glanced my way for a second. You'll have to wait and find out. He said, grabbing my hand in his. I looked down at our intertwined fingers and smiled. This day couldn't get any better. With Nicoly being next to me, I have everything I could ever ask for. We fell into a comfortable silence and I played with Nicoly's fingers. The silence was making me a little restless. I turned on the radio and put on the music station. Call Me Maybe I started to play and I smiled widely. I glanced at Nicoly, who grimaced after hearing this song play. I giggled. Hey! I just met you and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me maybe. I sang along with the song. I poked Nicoly in the cheek and he had a slight smile on his face. Oh come on you know you want to sing along with me. I said. He growled. I do not. This song is annoying. He said. I pouted. Well, I love this song. You might be hearing this song more often. I said. And since we're having a daughter, she might grow up listening to this song. I continued taunting him. And suddenly I want a boy. He murmured. I laughed at that. Well your wish won't come true because we're having a girl. I said sticking out my tongue at him. He snapped his teeth at me as my tongue was close to his face. I pulled back and glared at him. Bad dog and keep your eyes on the road. I said, smirking at him. He growled and I giggled. I will not tolerate you calling me a dog. After all, we are the same species, so that makes you a dog too. He said, putting emphasis on the word dog. I scoffed. I'm far from being a dog. I'm your lioness. I said. You consider yourself a lion? He asked, chuckling. He asked, chuckling. I nodded my head. What's so wrong with that? I am above you since I am a lion. Aren't you a dog? I asked, smiling innocently. He chuckled and rolled his eyes. Whatever you say, kitty cat. He said. I smiled. Nicoly and I could talk about anything. It could be something as ridiculous as this, but we still had fun. My phone started to vibrate in my bag. I took it out to find a text from Jessica. Don't have too much fun now. Seeing as we are wolves, we can continue to mate with each other even if the female is pregnant. You never know, you might get twins if you do it again. Anyways, don't worry about me. I'll be waiting for your little summary of your date when you get back. <laughs> Jessica. I grew bright red as I read her text. The car came to a stop and Nicoly looked over my shoulder at my phone. A huge smile spread across his face. Well it seems as though Jessica thinks we're going to do the naughty. Are we? He asked with a smirk on his face. I giggled. The naughty? I was amused. He nodded. Isn't that what you girls say? He asked as his face turned red. I burst into a fit of giggles. That was so funny. I said after I calmed down a bit. I said after I calmed down a bit. Nicoly grumbled some incoherent words and I just laughed. Come on. He said getting out of the car. He walked over to my side and opened the door for me to get out. We're in the woods already? Wow, time flies when you are having fun. I took his hand that he held out to me and got out of the car. We walked slowly into the woods with silence around us. The owls were singing and the moon was bright in the sky. I liked it. As we got closer to the treehouse, I saw a flashing light. I glanced at Nicoly who was smiling at me. We got closer and the sight in front of me was breathtaking. Around the treehouse there were lights hanging down from it. The water from the lake was shining because of the brightness of the lights. I took in my surroundings and a large smile came across my face. It was beautiful and to know Nicoly had something to do with this made it even more special to me. When did you do this? I whispered still in awe. Well, I had a little help from Luke and Damon. He said nervously. I smiled. I love it. I said. The best part is not even out here. He said. 
We climbed up the ladder to the treehouse and I walked in. Candles were lit everywhere. In the middle was a blanket and a plate full of chocolate-covered strawberries. My favorite. You really didn't have to go to this much trouble. I said looking around. Stop saying that. I would do anything for you. He said, kissing my cheek. I nodded my head. He guided me to the blanket. He sat down and pulled me sideways onto his lap. Wrapping his arms around me, he rocked us back and forth. He put his head on my shoulder. Taking a strawberry from the plate, he put it on my lips. Take a bite. He said. I opened my mouth and licked the strawberry before taking a bite. I glanced at Nikoli who was struggling under my gaze. I giggled at the effect I have on him and took the strawberry out of his hands and ate the rest. He grabbed my face and crashed his lips to mine. I moaned. Nikoli picked me up and let me put my legs on each side of him. I wrapped my arms around his neck and pulled him closer to me. I clenched a fist of his hair in my hands and tugged on it. I heard him groan. I bit down on his bottom lip pulling away and a growl escaped his mouth. I closed my eyes as he kissed my neck. He lifted his head and stared at me intently. Do you know why I brought you here? Nikoli asked against my neck. Why? I asked breathlessly. The look in his eyes was beyond love and passion. I wasn't sure of a word that was stronger than love, but it made my heart beat faster and faster. I want to give you something. Something that would bind our love together even more. Something that would show you that I love you endlessly and my promise to you. I'm not saying that we are going to get married, even though I would love to. I want you to know that my love for you goes to the moon and back. My love for you is more than the love that I have for myself. I love you so much and this is my promise to you. He said, slipping a ring on my finger. I looked down and gasped. It was beautiful. Tears formed in my eyes. I looked at him and a tear fell. He wiped it away with his thumb. Don't cry. Everything I said was the truth. He said, placing a gentle kiss on my lips. It was filled with love and passion for one another. I love you. I said to Nikoli as we pulled away. I love you so much more. He said to me. Nothing could compare to how I felt. We sat on the floor taking in each other's embrace. Calm. That was all I was feeling right now. I was on cloud nine and it was only because of Nikoli. I have one more thing to show you. Nikoli whispered to me. We were sitting on the floor wrapped up in each other's embrace. I groaned. What do you have to show me now? I asked. He chuckled and let go of me and suddenly it got cold. I'm tired. I said. It was almost 12 o'clock. I know but I have to show you one more thing, so get your lazy behind up from me. Nikoli said. I narrowed my eyes at him and pouted. Just because you said that, I will not be moving from this spot. I said leaning my back against the wall and crossing my arms over my chest. I watched Nikoli who had a smirk on his face. You sure do smirk a lot. I said. He smiled. You always give me a reason to. He said, walking closer to me. So what's my reason for you smirking now? I asked, poking his face. For giving me no choice but to do this. He said. I raised my eyebrow at him. I was swept from off the ground in seconds. He threw me over his shoulders. Hey, you douche, put me down. I said laughing. I don't think I can. He said. Oh, yeah. How are you going to climb down the ladder with me over your shoulder? I asked like it was the most obvious thing in the world. He chuckled. You'll just have to wait and see. He said. One minute we were standing in the treehouse and the next we were on the ground in the forest. You idiot. Did you just jump? Are you crazy? I yelled. I might seem mad right now, but I have to admit it was fun. Stop acting like you're angry. It was awesome, wasn't it? He asked me. I rolled my eyes but shook my head yes. We both got up and I dusted myself off from the dirt that was on my clothes. Are you okay? 
he asked me as he took my hand in his and started to walk. I nodded. Are you okay? I asked. Of course, I'm okay. I don't get hurt easily, he said with a cocky grin on his face. I giggled. Talk about conceited, I said with a smile on my face. He laughed and wrapped his arms around me from behind. Hey, we can't walk like this. If I fall, you're coming down with me, I said with a slight chuckle. You won't fall because I won't let you, he said. He pulled me closer to him. I laughed and he kissed my cheek. I glanced up at him and pulled away from him and running deeper into the forest. I giggled as I heard him running behind me. I hope you know I love to chase, he said behind me. I ran to my left catching him off guard. I looked behind me and he was just centimeters away from me. I quickened my pace and ran faster. Turning around once more, I didn't see Nikoli anywhere. I twirled around in circles in search of Nikoli. I couldn't seem to find him. Maybe, I'm lost. I thought. No you're not, but if you are it's your fault. No one told you to run away from our mate. I heard my wolf say. I scoffed. Thanks for the support here. I said. She chuckled. My head snapped around as I heard footsteps coming towards me. I ran behind a tree to hide myself. I peeked behind the tree and didn't see anything out of the ordinary. You know for someone who is the most powerful being of our kind, you sure don't know how to hide. Someone whispered to me. I squealed as I turned around and Nikoli was standing right beside me. For your information, if you were anyone else I would have made sure to kick their behinds, and I wouldn't need your help and thank you for admitting that I am more powerful than you. I said cheekily. He chuckled. Well I know I have a shield on my side. I can't have my face getting messed up. He said jokingly. He put his hand on each side of my head trapping me between him and the tree. You should be more careful in the woods, no matter how strong you are. He whispered to me. Lord knows what I would do if something happened to you. Nikoli said coming closer to me. I bit my lip. Why do I get the feeling that you want to kiss me? I asked with a teasing glint in my eyes. What if I want to? He said, brushing his lips against mine. He bit my bottom lip with his eyes staring intensely at my own. I gasped. There's no need for permission. Go ahead. I said breathing heavily. Before he could have done anything, I crashed my lips onto his. I just wanted his lips on mine. If you wanted to kiss me, why didn't you just say so? Nikoli said against my lips. I smiled. Shut up, I said. He pulled me closer to him. Nikoli licked my bottom lip and I responded immediately, letting him slide his tongue into my mouth. I moaned and I wrapped my arms around his neck. His hands roamed over my body and I couldn't help but shiver at his touch. He growled and pulled away from my lips to kiss down my neck. He placed soft kisses on my mark. I arched my back wanting to get closer to him. I could feel his hand go to my lower region. Pleasure was flowing through me. My head was clouded with nothing but excitement. Nikoli traced the outline of my jeans between my thighs. I ran my hands through Nikoli's hair and tugged on it. If it wasn't for him holding me, I would have fallen. I rested my head on his chest liking the feeling he was giving me. You like that, huh? He asked huskily. I whimpered in response. He slowly moved his hands away from my lower region. I bit my lip. I would love to take off that pants of yours, but I don't think it's an appropriate time. Nikoli whispered to me. I giggled and nodded my head not wanting to let him go. We have somewhere else to go. He said kissing behind my ear. Do we have to? I asked with desire evident in my eyes. A smirk made its way onto Nikoli's face. I promise I will make it up to you. He said. I nodded my head once more and he pulled me off of the tree. Taking my hand, he intertwined our hands together and we walked through the woods. What can he possibly want to show me at this time? Nicholas POV As we walked through the woods I watched Annabelle with an intense gaze. I chuckled lowly at the expression on her face. Frustration and desire. She glanced at me, 
but quickly turned her head away. What are you looking at? She asked with a slight attitude in her voice. I smiled. There's no need to be angry. I would surely give you what you want, but not now. I said with a smirk on my face. I already knew what she wanted. We both wanted the same thing, but I wanted to wait right now. I still had one more place to show her. She bit her lip and looked down with a small smile on her face. I don't know what you're talking about. She mumbled. I laughed. It's okay if you do. I want the same thing. I said wrapping my arm around her shoulder. I pulled her closer to me and kissed the top of her head. Where are we going? She asked me. We're almost there. I told her. I could hear people talking and music playing. We were close. Lights started to come into view and Annabelle walked away from me to get closer. Hey, don't be so quick to walk away from me. I said with a playful tone in my voice. She giggled. Who said I was trying to get away from you? She said. I hope you never try it. You can never get away from me because I won't have it. I said nipping at her neck as I placed my hands on her waist. She leaned against me. Why must you do this to me? She asked with her eyes closed. Don't tempt me, I said to her. She laughed. What is this? She asked me as she looked all around at the people dancing. This is a celebration that happens every year for our kind, I said, explaining to her. What for? She asked. The greatness of our ancestors, I said. She nodded. Can't humans hear this? She asked. Yes, but they don't pay too much attention to it, I said. I grabbed her hand and we walked through the crowds of people. Dance with me. Nicolie? I heard Annabelle say softly. Hmm. I answered her with my eyes closed. Thank you for today. She said. I opened my eyes and put my hand on her face, turning it so she was looking at me. Stop thanking me. I like doing things for you. I said to her. I kissed her on the lips and bit her lip as I pulled away from her. She looked at me with clouded eyes and swept her finger across my lips. I opened my mouth and bit down on her finger, but not hard enough for it to hurt. She gasped and turned around completely to face me. I could feel my wolf rise to the surface as my eyes turned pitch black. I nuzzled my head in her neck and breathed in her scent. I tightened my hand on her hip. I was careful not to hurt her. I groaned. I want you. I said to her. She whimpered. She said. I growled. A banging noise was heard throughout the forest. I looked up just in time to see the fireworks going off into the night sky. Look, I said to Annabelle. She lifted her head up to look at the sky. Wow. It's beautiful. She whispered in awe. I smiled. You sure are, I said. She giggled. Let's get out of here. I can hear Annabelle's wolf calling to me. I heard my wolf say. I chuckled. You need to have patience, I said. Apparently so does Annabelle's wolf, because she sure is persistent. He said. Your wolf and you both have the same personality, I said to her. She looked at me. Aren't we supposed to? She asked. I shook my head. Not really. You can both have different mindsets, I said to her. According to my wolf, your wolf wants the same thing you want, I said kissing her neck. She shivered and looked at me. Can we go? Is there something you want to do or go to? I asked her. I moved my body along with the slow song that was playing and she followed suit. I don't know, maybe I do. I'm suddenly not tired anymore. She said. She moved her body closer to mine. I groaned at the contact of her body against mine. Really now? I think we should get out of here. It's about time. I heard my wolf say. She nodded. She said. I wrapped my arms around her and kissed her lips gently. It was slow and soft, but it seemed as though Annabelle didn't want that. She deepened the kiss and bit down on my bottom lip. 
I put my hands on her thigh, lifting her leg up so she would wrap herself around me. Noticing what I wanted, she jumped on me and I held on to her. Start walking. She demanded. I growled at her demanding tone but did as she said. We should go back to the treehouse. I said, against her lips. She nodded her head eagerly and ran her hands through my hair. I groaned. Keep doing that. I like it. I need to climb up the ladder. I said to Annabelle. I need you to stop kissing me. I said with great difficulty. She laughed. You'll manage. She said. She sucked on my lip. Go ahead. She said. I took my time going up the ladder. As I reached the door I opened it and laid Annabelle on the blanket that was on the floor. I hovered over her and kissed her neck. I want you now. I heard Annabelle whisper in my ear. Mischief was running through my eyes. I took off her jacket and unbuttoned her shirt. You're so beautiful. I said to her. She smiled and kissed my lips. And you're handsome. Please, I'm sexy. I said. She rolled her eyes. I want you now. She demanded. I was pretty sure you would know how this ended. Annabelle's POV. Have you ever woken up with the biggest smile on your face after realizing what happened the night before? The thought of that in your mind makes you probably the happiest person in the world. At least that's what I would think. Waking up in the warm embrace of Nikoli had to be the best way to wake up. Even though it happened all the time, today was a lot different. I propped myself up on my elbow and looked at Nikoli. He looked so peaceful and adorable. How did I get so lucky? He was everything I ever wanted and more. I ran my hands through his hair that fell in front of his face. I heard Nikoli groan from underneath me and I pulled my hand back. His eyes slowly opened and connected with mine. Why'd you stop? He asked me. Stop what? I asked. Running your hand through my hair. He said, moving so he was lying on his back. Are you finally admitting that you are a dog? I asked. What does a dog have to do with you playing with my hair? He asked, confused. Only dogs like it when people rub their head. I said, patting him on the head. He growled and pulled me down to him. I giggled. If I'm a dog, then you are the one that is in love with one. Who said I was in love with you? I asked. You did. Nikoli said. I smiled. Yes. I love you so much. I said. He rolled us over so that he was on top of us. And I love you so much more. He said. I looked up at him. Why do you do this to me? I asked. What? This? He asked and crashed his lips on mine. He asked and crashed his lips on mine. I immediately responded and wrapped my arms around his neck. He pulled me closer to him and I wrapped my legs around his torso. Were you talking about this? Nikoli asked against my lips. I smiled and nodded my head. He slowly got up so we were in a sitting position. He bit down on my bottom lip and slowly pulled away. I moaned. I ran my hand down his chest and rested my head on his shoulder. I think we should get going, Nikoli said. I nodded and got up from him. I sat on the floor knowing that I was naked. No need to be shy. You weren't a few seconds ago and last night, he said with a smirk on his face. I scoffed. I stood up and rested my hand on both sides of my hips. I am not, I said. Nikoli's eyes roamed my body and his eyes started to turn pitch black. You're tempting me, Annabelle, he said in a husky voice. How so? I asked. In no time he was in front of me. He rested his hands on my waist. The way you're standing. I can feel your body calling out to me. I can assure you I can go another round, he said. He pulled himself closer to me. I could feel his friend poking into me. I bit my lip. I'm going to get dressed. I said. He chuckled. I picked up my clothes and started to get dressed. I tried fixing my hair the best way that I could and put on my boots. Ready? 
Nikoli asked. I nodded my head. We walked out of the treehouse and climbed down the ladder. How about I race you? Nikoli asked eagerly. I giggled at his childishness. I can't, remember? I said pointing to my stomach. The doctor said you at least need a little exercise. He said. Touché. I replied. I sighed. Okay, fine. Ready? I said. Nikoli took off running, thinking I was behind him. I laughed to myself. I really didn't want to run. I thought about where his car was and snapped my fingers. In no time, I was leaning against the car waiting for Nikoli to come. In a few minutes, I saw Nikoli running up to the car. I laughed. What took you so long? I asked. You cheater. He said pouting at me. You never said what the rules were. I said before getting in the car. Nikoli followed suit and got into the driver's side. I turned on the radio to fill the silence of the car. When we get back home you have a checkup with the pack doctor. Nikoli said while turning on the ignition. I nodded. Yeah, I remember. I said as we got on the road. I looked out the window as we drove. Last night was the best night of my life. I didn't know Nikoli could do all of this. He was so sweet. I sighed happily and took Nikoli's hand that was resting on his lap and played with his fingers. It was a habit I had. He didn't say anything, so I just did it anyway. How do you think the checkup will go? I heard Nikoli ask me, pulling me out of my thoughts. I don't know. I think everything would be fine. I did everything the doctor told me to do. I said. We pulled up to the house and I ran out of the car and up the porch. A little eager, are we? He asked. I'm just really tired. I said. Nikoli looked at me with a knowing smile on his face. Not like that, you perv. I said pushing him lightly. He chuckled and unlocked the door to the house. Guys, we're home. Nikoli yelled. Geez, just make me deaf. I said. He chuckled and kissed my cheek. Oh sweetie, you're home. I heard Mrs. O'Connell say, walking down the stairs. She walked up to me and gave me a hug. She smiled widely at me. Darling, you're glowing. She said. I laughed. Okay. We are going to the pack, doctor. Nikoli said. But you guys just got here. His mother said. It's better to do it now. It won't take that long. He said. He grabbed my hand and we walked to the basement where the pack doctor was. You're taking this checkup really seriously. I said. Well, yeah. I would like to know how everything is going with you and our baby. He said. I giggled. As we got to the basement, Nikoli knocked on the door. Come in. I heard the doctor say. I opened the door and he turned around. Aw, Nikolai, Annabelle. The doctor said with a smile. Nikoli and I walked into the office. Annabelle, sit down please. The doctor said. I walked to the bed and hopped on it. Nikoli was sitting down on the chair next to the bed. I need you to lay down for me. The doctor said. I did as he said. He lifted up my shirt and poured a cold liquid on my stomach. I shivered. As you know due to the fact that you are a werewolf, you are already four months pregnant. The doctor said. I nodded. He moved the machine on my stomach and had a look of thoughtfulness on his face. You might start to show next month or maybe even in the middle of your fourth month. He continued. He was concentrated on the screen. Annabelle. When was the last time you were intimate with Nikolai? He asked. I glanced at Nikoli. Last night. I said, my face turning red. You are a rare wolf and you know that. Well it seems as if you are. The doctor started to say. I am what? I asked. You're having twins. I looked at the doctor in shock and looked at Nikoli. He had the same look on his face, but it slowly turned into a huge smile. I was going to have twins. The world around me started to spin. Or was it just me? The words the doctor said were floating in my head over and over again. Twins? 
I looked at the doctor who had a smile on his face. I looked at him dumbfounded. I had no clue of what to say or even do. I should be happy as I am. More ecstatic if I must say, but my facial expression didn't change. I was in a state of shock. How could I possibly have twins? How would I be able to take care of them? Would I be capable of doing so? All these questions started to form and I had no answers to them. Of course I knew the answers, but they just weren't coming through my mind at the moment. I glanced at Nikoli who had a frown on his face watching me intently. Are you okay? The doctor asked me, putting his hand on my forehead. I nodded and moved his hand away from me gently. What happens now? I thought. You should be happy. My wolf said to me. I sighed. I am happy. I'm just shocked. I said. Well, get that smile on your face. She said. I nodded, but I just didn't have the energy to. My mind was still trying to wrap this all up to make sense to me. Are you sure you're okay? The doctor asked once again. I nodded my head. Yes, I'm fine. I said. He looked at me worriedly before leaving me alone. Can we have a second alone? Nikoli asked for the first time since we found out the news. The doctor nodded quickly and left the room giving us the privacy that we needed. Nikoli was sitting on the chair with his arms crossed. He watched me with the most intense glare that a shiver went through my body and not the good kind. I could literally feel the tension in the room. It was suffocating me to the point where I couldn't breathe. What's wrong? I asked him. I asked him. He didn't say anything for a minute and I wondered if he was going to say anything at all. I was getting uncomfortable by the minute. I didn't know what was going on and I wasn't sure if I wanted to find out. How can you ask me what's wrong? Nikoli said after a long time of waiting for an answer. What are you talking about? I asked, sitting up on the bed. How can you be so blind all the time? He growled at me. I was taken aback by his tone. He never talked to me like that but only when we weren't being too serious. I don't know what you're talking about and if you answer me with all these questions, I won't know. I said, getting irritated from this conversation. How does he expect me to understand him when I have absolutely no clue on what's going on and he's not telling me? You don't want kids. He said it in more of a statement than a question. I looked up at him as if that was the dumbest question in the world. What kind of question is that? I asked frowning. Answer the damn question, Annabelle. He said, raising his voice in the process. I flinched at the tone of his voice. What has gotten into him? I thought to myself. Of course, I want kids. I have two growing inside of me. I said, raising my voice as well. Well, you sure as hell don't seem like you do. He said glaring at me. Why are you doing this? I asked him. It seems like I am the only person that's trying to make this happen. He said. From the moment that we found out you were going to have twins your facial expression showed it all. He said. You don't want them. He continued. Tears threatened to fall from my eyes, but I didn't let them fall. What has gotten into you? I asked. I asked. The look in his eyes made me want to cry. It was like he was repulsive of me and I didn't want him to look at me like that. I wanted the love he had for me in his eyes to come back. You did. He said. My blood boiled throughout my body. I was getting sick of this conversation. Why are you being such a dick? I screamed at him. Why are you being such a bitch? He retorted back at me. I looked at him with pain as the anger quickly slipped away from me at his choice of words. Everything doesn't revolve around you. He said icily. I never said it does. I said trying to gain back the confidence I had before. You don't have to because you're implying it with every action that you make. From the moment I met you, everything revolved around you. I risked my life on the line for you to get revenge on the people that killed your parents. I was there for you when you needed me the most. Why can't you just be happy with me for once? Am I not good enough for you? He asked, getting frustrated. How could he ask me something like that? 
we just came from the most wonderful date I could ever think of. I gave myself to him, he marked me. How in hell could he ask me that? What hurt the most was that he said I thought he wasn't good enough for me. The tears that I made sure didn't fall before ended up falling like a waterfall. How can you think that when I tell you I love you all the time? You are my mate and you're asking me if you are good enough for me. I'm having your children. I said exasperatedly. And somehow I don't think you want them. He muttered. I growled. How can you say such a thing? Of course I want my children. I would not be going through this pain for months to just throw them to the curb and not want them after I brought them into the world. I yelled. Then try and take your head out of your ass and pull yourself together. You having my children makes me the luckiest man in the world. I love you, I really do, but you need to stop being like this and be thankful. He said before leaving and not even looking back at me once. What did I do that was so wrong? We have never argued before and I hadn't thought we would ever cross that path because of how well things were going between us. What had made this start? As Nikoli left and closed the door, an empty feeling took over me. I felt like a part of me was missing. He said all those harsh words and didn't seem to regret any of them. I cried until there wasn't a tear left. I slowly got up from the hospital bed and walked to the door. I opened the door and quickly walked up the stairs so no one would see me. I went to my room and stripped down from my clothes and hopped in the shower. I was numb all over. Not even the warm water that was hitting against my back could take that feeling away from me. After about 30 minutes in the shower, I got out and dried off. I walked back into my room and just put on anything that I could find. I couldn't be bothered right now. I settled on a pair of sweatpants with a sweatshirt and socks. I curled up in my bed and just laid down. It was still early in the morning, but there was nothing I wanted to do at this point. Why did we argue? Nicholas POV What the hell is wrong? My wolf yelled at me. I groaned and pulled my hair that was already messed up from constantly running my hand through it. I paced my room back and forth trying to find a way to make this right. I didn't mean any of it. I said back to my wolf frustratedly. Of course, the world revolved around Annabelle. She was my world and, therefore, she was all that mattered to me. In my dreams, thoughts, she was everything. I felt a huge chunk of my heart get ripped away from me. She wasn't here with me in my arms and that bothered me. It's all your fault. My wolf growled at me. I sighed and plopped down on my bed. I covered my face with my hands and groaned. I know. I said, sighing. I could hear my wolf whimper as I thought back to the look on Annabelle's face as I left her. Tears were streaming down her face and she looked helpless. All because of me. I'm glad you can see that. My wolf said sarcastically. I growled. Damn. I know I messed so can you stop rubbing it in my face? I yelled at my wolf. Nothing was heard after that and I knew my wolf retreated away from me. I sat up on my bed and rested my elbows on my knees. I just probably ruined the only thing that mattered to me. I can hear the whimpering coming from the room next to mine. Annabelle. Silent tears rolled down my face as the sound of her crying didn't comfort me at all. How could I be so selfish? I didn't even let her say anything without me yelling at her. I just wanted her to be as happy as I was because we were having twins. I wanted to know that she wanted them as much as I do. I was more than happy to have Annabelle carrying my children. I just didn't know what overcame me. You misunderstood her expression. I answered for myself. I knew I did. She clearly had an expression of shock on her face and I read it wrong. I thought she didn't want to be a mother, but she did. I left her to fend for herself in this situation. I growled at my stupidity. My heart clenched at the mistake that I made. What should I do? I asked myself. You will march your behind to our mate and get her back. My wolf said, appearing again. Oh so, now you're back. I thought sarcastically. Although that does sound like a good idea, I can't do that. Annabelle is probably the most stubborn woman I have ever met. She won't take us back that easily, I said to my wolf. He growled. 
she would have to take us back. She's our mate. He said. I agreed to that. Mates can't stay that long without each other. That was one of the reasons why when a male finds his mate he automatically wants to take her back to wherever he lives if not in the pack house with his pack mates. If I can't stand to be this far away from her and it has only been an hour, what makes you think I could spend a whole day without her? I stood up from my bed and walked to the door of my room. I slowly opened the door and started to walk to Annabelle's room. So you think you can just leave Annabelle in pain and get away with it? Someone asked with venom dripping from their mouth. I swiftly turned around to see Damon leaning on the wall watching me with hatred in his eyes. He walked up to me and, without even noticing his next move, he punched me in the face. I stumbled back from the impact of the hit, but it didn't really affect me much. I sighed. I guess I deserve that one. I said. Damn right, you do, I can hear Annabelle crying all the way from downstairs and it's bothering me, I knew it had to be you that did this to her, she won't let me in, what the hell did you do? He yelled at me. I gritted my teeth at the disrespect he was showing me, but I knew it was only out of concern for his cousin. I may have said some things that hurt her, but I swear I didn't mean it. I said in all honesty. He looked at me for a minute or two and looked away. Fix it he said and walked away. I sighed. I continued to walk my way to Annabelle's room and the crying became louder. Pain shot through my heart as I continued to hear this. I stopped at her door and raised my hand to knock on it. He did what? I heard Jessica yell. Jessica? I thought she was not letting anyone inside. I put my hand down to listen. Annabelle didn't say anything. She sniffed. Her heartbeat increased and I knew then that she knew I was standing in front of her room's door. I smiled slightly at that, but frowned when I remembered the reason why I was here. Annabelle. Jessica asked. Why? Yeah. She said. My heart broke at the sound of her voice. I'm going to kill him. Jessica said. Annabelle chuckled half-heartedly and sighed. I figured I should knock on the door and so I did. Go away. Annabelle said. She knew I was here. Please, I just want to talk. I said, pleading with her. She scoffed. The door opened and Jessica glared at me. She slapped me in the face. How dare you? She said and walked out of the room, leaving the door open. I rubbed my face, which was going to turn red soon, and walked into Annabelle's room. Annabelle? I asked softly. She was sitting up on her bed staring at the wall in front of her. Kitty cat? I said, trying again. She laid down on the bed, turning her back to me. I sighed and closed the door. I walked to her bed and sat down next to her. I rested my hand on her back. The sparks that ignited as our skin came in contact felt amazing. It was short-lived as she shrugged my hand off. Annabelle, I'm so sorry. Please. I didn't mean any of what I said. I said to her. Go away, I don't want to see you right now. She said in a whisper. I sighed in defeat and stood up. I'll be here if you need me. With that I left her room and slid down the door as I closed it behind me. What the hell did I do? Annabelle's POV. With every step that Nicolie took out of the room, my heart broke every time. I could feel his presence behind the door, but didn't dare to move. Tears fell from my eyes and I hadn't a clue about what to do. The words that he said hurt me and I never knew he was capable of saying those things to me. Okay, well, maybe I had a feeling, but who knew he would say it to me? Suddenly the tears stopped. Anger seeped through me. I wouldn't let him get the best of me. Yes, he was my mate and I loved him, but he wouldn't get the satisfaction of seeing me cry because of the words he said. He even had the nerve to ask for my forgiveness after. I rolled my eyes. I knew deep down he was truly sorry, but I wouldn't give in that easily. No, I want my mate. Forgive him. I heard my wolf whimper. She was hurting as well and I just wanted her to be happy. No, he hurt us. I said back to her. I know, but he didn't mean it. Please. She said. No. If he wants my forgiveness, he needs to try harder. I told her and blocked her out of my mind for now. 
I didn't want to have an argument with her. I sat up on my bed and swung my foot to get up. As my feet came in contact with the floor, I shivered at the coldness. Even though I had socks on, it didn't help much. I sighed and went to the bathroom. I turned on the switch on the wall and closed the door behind me. What made Nikoli so angry? Why did he say those things to me? I thought as I looked in the mirror at my reflection. I didn't know what happened and I wanted to find out, but just not now. My eyes were red from crying and my hair wasn't any better. I slowly ran my hand through my hair and pulled it into a messy bun. I washed my face from all the dried tears that were on my face and walked out of the bathroom. I looked down at my stomach and caressed it slowly. I just knew that when I had my children in my arms, everything would change. I sighed softly and opened the door to my room and Nikoli was still sitting down. As the door opened, his head snapped up to look at me. Pain and regret were evident in his eyes, but I didn't pay attention to it. He should feel the pain he made me feel. Why are you sitting down on the floor in front of my room? I asked softly. I didn't have the energy to get angry with him. I just didn't want to see him right now. I knew you would have to come out eventually. He said. I nodded and walked past him. He grabbed my wrist and twirled me around to look back at him. Annabelle, please, I didn't mean any of what I said. He said. I almost cried again when I heard the pain in his voice, but I didn't. I took my hand away from his grip and sniffled. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have said it anyway. I said and quickly made my way to the kitchen. I needed to eat for my children and also for me. I was hungry. As I got to the kitchen, Mrs. O'Connell was cooking dinner. I smiled softly at her as she looked up at me. Her face brightened as she saw me and I chuckled. This woman was very happy that she would have grandchildren soon. Hey sweetie, are you okay? She asked me sympathetically. I sighed and nodded my head. You know that Nikoli didn't mean anything by what he said. I'm sure he has a good explanation as to why he said what he said to you. I know my son and he loves you. She said. A single tear fell from my eyes and I quickly wiped them away. I nodded. Yeah. So, what are you making? I asked, trying to change the subject. I didn't want to keep talking about this. I knew I couldn't stay mad at him forever. It was just not possible, but I wanted him to suffer a while. No, it's not cruel. He needed to know that I wouldn't come crawling back to him as soon as he said he was sorry. I wanted him to know that I was not that gullible. I wanted him to figure out something to do that would actually get me to forgive him. I was very stubborn and he knew that. Your favorite, spaghetti. Mrs. O'Connell said. I chuckled. You don't have to. I said. Oh but I want to. I don't want you to feel like you're not welcome here. We are family and I want you to feel just that. She said. Did everyone want me to cry? I thought to myself. I laughed inwardly. I smiled softly. I never feel unwelcome. Everyone is so nice to me and I'm thankful for that. I said to her truthfully. Tears fell from her eyes and I hugged her. You're going to be a great mother. I just know it. She said. And I will spoil those kids rotten. She continued. I laughed. As long as it doesn't get too out of hand. I said. We laughed and she continued to cook. I knew if I asked her if she needed help she would say no. She didn't like me doing much and it was frustrating, but at times it could be good for me. Well, aren't you guys getting along? I heard Mr. O'Connell say as he came into the kitchen. He walked up to Mrs. O'Connell and kissed the top of her head. I smiled at them. Who said we never got along? Mrs. O'Connell said a little rudely. Mr. O'Connell put his hands up in surrender. No one, sweetheart. He said. I giggled at them. Hey Annabelle, do you want to go shopping with me and Jake? Jessica asked me through the mind link with hope in her voice. I laughed. Yeah. Let me just get changed first. I replied to her. She squealed. Okay, hurry up. She yelled. 
ever since she found her mate she was much happier. Jessica wants me to go shopping with her and Jake. I said. Okay, sweetie. Hopefully, when you guys get back, dinner will be ready. Mrs. O'Connell said. I nodded and walked out of the kitchen and up to my room. I picked out some black skinny jeans, a blue shirt, blue converses and a jacket and took my hair out of its bun. I took my comb and combed through it. Once I was satisfied, I put on a coat of lip gloss and took my phone. I took my bag and walked back downstairs. Jake and Jessica were waiting for me by the door. What confused me was why Nicolie was there. Jessica gave me a sympathetic smile. I sighed. I thought I would be able to go with Jessica and Jake to get my mind off of things, but it seems I can't do that now. Ready? I told Jessica. She nodded and a smile formed on her face. Annabelle. I heard Nicolie say. I glanced at him and opened the door. Jessica locked her arm with mine. We walked out of the door and to the car. If you want my forgiveness, you are going to have to try harder than saying only sorry. I said to Nicolie through our mind link. Car ride to the mall was awkward, silent even. I was looking out the window trying to kill time, but it was no use. Jake was driving and, of course, Jessica was sitting in the front seat. I sighed. Why didn't I just stay home? There are way too many things on my mind right now. I could feel Nicolie next to me. The heat from his body was radiating off of him. It was rather difficult not to sense his presence even if I tried to ignore him. The tension in this car was way beyond the sky. I didn't even know why Nicoli was here. Jessica didn't tell me anything about this. I rolled my eyes. Of course, he invited himself. A whine was heard from my wolf. What? I asked her. Can't you just forgive him already? She asked in all hopelessness. I sighed and shook my head lightly. No. I don't want to argue about this again. I said. She growled at me. You're being stubborn right now, do you know that? She said, getting angry. Okay, fine, how about this? If he has a reasonable explanation as to why he said what he said, then maybe I would consider forgiving him. I said. My wolf purred with happiness. Okay and don't change your mind? She said. I chuckled softly. The car came to a slow stop and my gaze went to the huge building. The mall. I really didn't want to buy anything, but I knew Jessica did. We haven't actually spent time together since she found her mate and I have been pretty much spending all my time with Nicolie. The only time we had together was this morning when I told her everything that happened. I was the first to get out of the car. My legs were cramping. I stretched and watched as everyone else got out. A hand wrapped themselves around my waist and I felt myself leaning into their touch. Annabelle, I can't stay away from you for a long time and you can't stay away from me. Please just let me explain. I heard Nicoly say to me in a whisper. I sighed. What he was saying was true. I could never stay away from him for a long time. The most I stayed away from him was no more than two hours. Only when he had to do pack business with his father to get the hang of things was when I was not with him. His father said I might be a distraction. I smiled inwardly at that. It was hard staying away from your mate and especially when you had already finished the mating process, but I didn't want to give in to him that easily. But like I promised to my wolf, I would let him explain. Fine, you can explain. I said. I looked up at him to see a smile on his face. We began walking and I didn't try to take his hands away from me. I wanted them there as much as I wanted him close to me. I looked around and Jessica, along with Jake, was nowhere to be found. Thought we might give you two some privacy. I heard Jessica say through the mind link. You can't read my thoughts, can you? I asked suspiciously but in a playful manner. No, only your beloved mate can, but hear him out, I really don't want you two to fight. She said. I laughed. Okay. With that, I blocked the pack bond between Jessica and I and focused my attention on Nicolie. Are you going to explain? I asked. He sighed. I am really sorry for saying those things to you. 
I was thinking properly dash. Clearly. I said cutting him off. I looked ahead instead of looking at Nicoly. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. He continued. Then why did you? I don't recall doing anything to you. I said, getting frustrated with this conversation already. Blame the hormones. My wolf said. I know. I thought you didn't want to have a child and hearing that we were going to have twins just made me snap. He said. Why didn't you just come and ask me? Sure it might have made me feel disappointed that you would have thought that, but we wouldn't have been in the situation we are in now. Arguing. I said. We were still outside of the mall and I was thankful for that. There weren't many people out here and I didn't want people to be in our business. Nicole stopped me and turned me around to face him once we were at the entrance of the mall. He moved me to the side and placed my back against the wall. His eyes looked over every inch of my face and lastly connected his eyes with mine. Believe me, when I say, I am sorry. I know that there were other ways to approach this and I am really sorry. I love you so much. I would never want to hurt you, but I did and I regret every second of it. If I could take back every word I've said, I would, but it's already out in the open. The only thing left for me to do is make up for it. To tell you how much I really love you and that you're the only one for me. Nicole said. Silent tears streamed down my face and Nicoly took his thumb and ran it over my cheek. I love everything about you. From the shyness you put out to the stubbornness you have when you don't want to listen. I love the way your eyes sparkle when you see me and how your heart rate increases when I'm near you. Only I can be able to do that and I love it. He continued. I giggled and rested my head in the crook of his neck. He wrapped his arms around my waist and pulled me closer to him. I really do love you. Nicoly said to me. I love you too. I said. He pulled me away from him and lifted my chin up to look at him. You are so beautiful and I'm so happy that you are the one to carry my children. Nicole whispered to me. I bit my lip. He was so close to me. He ran his thumb over my lip. Don't. He said. My heart started to beat faster. He pulled me by the waist and smashed his lips on mine. I miss those lips of yours. Nicoly murmured. I giggled and wrapped my arms around his neck. Just kiss me. I said to him. I didn't have to tell him twice as he placed his lips on mine again. He licked my bottom lip and I eagerly opened my mouth for him. I missed this. As stubborn as I was, I just didn't give in to him. I bit down on his lip and a groan left his lips. I shivered at the sound. Hey, you hooligans, this is not a place to be doing these things. There are little kids watching. I heard someone say. I quickly pulled away to see an old woman holding the hands of two little boys. I think they were liking the entertainment. Nicole said with an amused look on his face. My eyes widened at what he said and I watched as he got beat up by the lady with her bags. You disgust me, you fool. She said. Nicole began to growl and his eyes started to turn black. I couldn't stop giggling. I pulled Nicoly away from the lady and he instantly calmed down. We are sorry. I said holding down the laughter that I wanted to let out. I quickly pulled Nicoly, who had a scowl on his face, into the mall. Once we were away from the lady I started to laugh. Stop laughing. Nicoly said. I continued to laugh. You should have never said that to the lady. I said in between giggles. I looked over to Nicoly who was pouting. That only made me laugh more. It wasn't even that funny. He grumbled. It's been a week since I got back together with Nicoly. We didn't break up, but it felt that way when we argued. It's been a week since I'd been out of the house. It's been a week since I went to let the doctor check up on me. He was wary when he looked at Nicoly and I, but I told him Nicoly and I were fine. Since that day, I had been dreading the time that I would have to give birth. I wasn't too far off either. The doctor told me sometime this week would be when I'd be fully ready to start my delivery. I sighed and ran my hand through my hair, pulling it out of my face. I was in the room with Nicoly sitting next to me on the bed. Don't worry your pretty little head. 
I know you'll do fine. He reassured me. I smiled. I'm not worried about that. It's the pain. I said resting my head in between his shoulder and neck. He chuckled. That's what being pregnant is all about. He said. I smacked the back of his head and giggled. I will be with you through it all. He said and kissed the top of my head. Stop being a baby and worrying about your pregnancy. You'll do fine. I heard my wolf say. Plus I want to be able to see the children I would call mine. She continued. I rolled my eyes, but didn't respond to her. Sometimes she can be too much. Nicole and I sat there in silence just relishing in each other's embrace. We knew that we wouldn't be with each other often because of the two new responsibilities that we would have to take care of. Do you want to hear a story? Nicolay asked with a smug look on his face. I glanced at him trying to see if I would regret it, but I couldn't seem to find a reason to. What? I asked with raised eyebrows. When my mother was pregnant with me, she told me that my head was too big to fit through her and the doctors had to wait at least two hours for her to dilate a little more with my head still stuck through her. She said my dad was there laughing and passed out after two minutes leaving her by herself for a while. He began. I looked at him with horrid images in my head. I looked at him and the only thing I saw running through my head was a hopeless young woman in pain waiting to see if her son would come out anytime soon. I would have never imagined Nicolie like that. I stand corrected. How big was your head? I asked in shock. He shrugged like this was a natural thing to talk about. I don't know. My mom never told me. He said. Why are you even telling me this? I asked a little uncomfortable. Relax. I thought it would help with all those thoughts running in your head about you being pregnant. He said. Oh, you helped all right. I said sarcastically. He laughed. Then my work here is done. He said. I rolled my eyes. I looked at him for a few seconds and couldn't contain my laugh anymore. Why are you laughing? He asked. I shook my head not being able to reply to him at the moment. I couldn't wait to tell that story to my children. Your head. I said in between my fits of giggles. He chuckled along with me and for at least two minutes, we just kept laughing. The laughing died down when my stomach started to growl. Someone's hungry, I see. Nicoly said. I smiled sheepishly and nodded my head. He helped me up off of the bed and we walked slowly down the stairs with Nicoly helping me by my side. Once we got to the last step, Nicolie's mother was in front of me. Oh my goddess! She exclaimed happily. You look wonderful, my dear. She said. Oh yeah, looking like an oversized whale is a sight to see. I mind linked to Nicolie. I heard him snort next to me. I smiled at Mrs. O'Connell. Thank you. I said to her. Oh you must be hungry. I'll go fix you up something. She said hurriedly. I shook my head lightly. That's okay, I can do it myself. I said touching her shoulder. Are you sure? She asked. I nodded. Okay well, I'll be upstairs if you need me. She chirped and skipped up the stairs. I laughed lightly and shook my head. My mom really loves you. Nicoly said. I smiled. Yeah. I love her too, I said. We walked into the kitchen and Nicolie had me sit on the chair. What are you doing? I asked. Making you something to eat, he said, taking out a pot. I don't think you would want to make me what I want, I said. He looked at me confused and raised his eyebrow. What do you want? He asked. I got up holding my stomach and walking to the cupboard. I took out two slices of bread, Doritos, peanut butter and jelly from the fridge along with pickles. I took out chocolate and vanilla ice cream from the freezer. I took out a plate and started to make my sandwich. When I was done, I sat down and stared at my food with hungry eyes. I looked up and Nicolie was watching me with an amused look on his face. What? I asked innocently. That is disgusting. He said laughing. I frowned. Let me be, I said. 
I lifted up my sandwich and took a huge bite. I moaned happily. This is so good. I said to no one in particular. It didn't take me long to finish. I don't play when it comes to food. I leaned back into the chair and rubbed my stomach. Are you satisfied? Nicole asked me. I nodded. Very. Nicole sat next to me and started to rub my stomach for me. It had probably been close to an hour and I started to feel tired. All of a sudden a pain shot through my stomach. I stood up quickly and Nicole stood up with me. What's wrong? He asked worried frantically. A pain just shot through my stomach. I said. I winced in pain as another one took over me. A liquid substance trickled down my leg, but before I could look down, a scream escaped my lips. Oh my god. It hurts. I said doubling over in pain. Nicole knelt down in front of me and pushed the hair out of my face. What is it? He asked, concerned. Screw his concern. They're coming. I'm going to give birth. I yelled at him. He yelled for his parents and everyone else and picked me up and rushed to the doctor. All I could think about is the pain. Relax, kitty cat. Breathe. I heard Nicole saying in my ear. He slammed open a door and gently laid me down on the bed. I pulled him by his shirt collar so he was face to face with me. Don't you think that's what I'm doing? The pain was intensifying by the minute. It hurt so freaking much that I could barely breathe. Lying down on this bed only made my back hurt even more than it already was. The doctor was here checking my breathing and everything else to see if I was capable of giving birth right now. You are only 10 centimeters away for your delivery to start. We would have to wait another 20 minutes maybe. The doctor said to me. I laughed sarcastically. He had no idea what kind of pain I was going through. He told me to wait. Wait. What the hell do you mean wait? Do you have two babies kicking at your stomach to get out? Do you know how it feels? I don't think so, because you're a damn man. You had better turn that 20 minutes into five. I exclaimed. The doctor looked at me with a frightened look on his face. Good. He should be scared right now. I'm sorry, there is nothing I can do. He said before scurrying off so I couldn't give him a piece of my mind again. Nicole was sitting right next to me on the chair and his parents were out in the hallway. Nicole had a worried expression on his face. Every so often, Mrs. O'Connell would come in and see how I was doing. There wasn't a lot of space for everyone to come in and stay, so they agreed to wait outside. Everything is going to be fine. Nicole said to me. He was trying to comfort me but it wasn't working. The pain was too much to bear. I scoffed and rolled my eyes. It also made me extremely irritable and everything was pissing me off. Easy for you to say. I don't see you having to push out two babies out of your vagina. I said to him. A pain shot through me and I winced, biting the inside of my cheek and drawing blood. Oh my god. I yelled. I held my stomach, trying to reduce the pain, but it wouldn't go away. Why didn't anyone tell me how much this was going to hurt? Just breathe. It will be over soon. Nicole reassured me, wiping the sweat from my forehead. It just made me more angry. If I hear you say that one more time, God so help me, I'm going to rip your tongue out. I said through gritted teeth. He smiled sheepishly at me. Well, if I didn't say that all the time, then I wouldn't be of any help to you. He said. I raised an eyebrow at him. What made him think this was helping me? That's not helping me. I said in a flat tone. He didn't say anything, knowing that I wasn't in the mood for talking. All I could think about was when I would be able to get these babies out of me. Who knew being pregnant meant going through all of this pain? Your own children were hurting you in a way and they didn't even know it. I chuckled a little at the thought. What's so funny? Nicole asked me. I shook my head. Nah, so. I screamed. Where the hell is the damn doctor? All of a sudden, the door slammed open and I was hoping it was the doctor, but unfortunately, it wasn't. I am here. Jessica said, running up to me and standing beside my bed. I looked at her blankly. 
You are clearly not the doctor. I said to her. She looked at me confused. No, but I am your best friend. She said with a happy tone. So? I asked her with frustration in my voice. I groaned and rested my head on the pillow. The pain subsided a little but it was still there. I need the doctor. Where the fuck is this doctor? I mean, isn't 20 minutes up already? Why did I have to get a slow ass doctor? I said to no one in particular. Nicolie snickered next to me. I snapped my head in his direction and gave him a glare. I have never seen you so irritated before. Can you just calm down a little for me? You are doing okay. Just wait a little more and the doctor is going to be here soon. Nicoli said to me. I will not calm down. I said stubbornly. The sweating became worse as the pain continued to increase by the minute. Do you need more ice? Jessica asked me. I shook my head. I don't need those. What I need is for a doctor to march their ass in here and tend to me so I can have my babies in my arms and not in my stomach still. I said to Jessica. Is this what being pregnant is like? She asked me curiously. Why? Do you want some of your own? I asked, wincing in pain. Oh no. She said, shaking her head with a look of discomfort on her face. Not now, at least. I was just curious. She said. The door opened and the doctor came back with a nurse behind him. Oh, thank God. Finally. I whispered. He came over to me and spread open my legs a little to see how far I was. I was hoping and praying that I was ready so he could get the babies out already. He nodded his head. Okay, you are ready. He said to me. You should have been here a long time ago. I said to the doctor, annoyed. My patience had long gone out of the window. Nicoli stood up from his chair and took my hand in his. He gave it a squeeze as if to assure me he was going to be there through it all. Are you ready to give birth to our children? He asked happily. I nodded. I have been ready from the time I've been lying down here and waiting. I said. Jessica giggled and I looked at her to see she had a camera in her hand. She was aiming the camera towards me and Nicoli. I glared at her. You better not record this. I warned her. Oh, but I am. She said. When I tell you to push, I want you to push as hard as you can, okay? The doctor said. I nodded my head. I looked at Nicoli and he smiled, reassuring me I could do this. One, two, three. The doctor said. I pushed as hard as I could, squeezing Nicoli's hand in the process. The doctor told me to push for about two more times. It was hurting so much. I can see its head. You are almost there, just two more times. He said. I breathed in a mouthful of air and pushed hard. Nicoli, this is all your damn fault. I screamed at him. How? He growled out because of the way I was holding his hand. You couldn't keep your little guy in your pants and ended up getting me pregnant. I yelled. I gave him a pull so he was close to my face. This should have been you here in this bed. I said. We all know men can't give birth. He said. I glared at him. He glanced down towards my nether region. Holy shit. Before I could ask him what was wrong, he collapsed on the floor. I looked at the doctor, then at Nicoli. He saw the baby's head. The doctor explained to me with an amused look on his face. That bastard. He left me. I yelled. One more push. The doctor said. I did as he instructed and gave my last push. A cry was heard from in front of me, but I knew I wasn't done. I had one more baby to give birth to. Congratulations. It's a girl. The nurse said. I smiled. I knew one of them would be a girl due to the fact the little girl, Lily, told me. I wonder what the gender of the other baby was. You only have one more baby to push out. Can you handle it? The doctor asked me. Well, I am lying here to give birth to two children, not one. So, what do you think? I asked the doctor. He gulped and nodded his head. 
on my count then. One, two, three. I pushed as hard as I could with the energy I had left. You were almost there. The doctor said after the third push. I gave my all in the last push and collapsed on the bed, exhausted. Another cry was booming throughout the room. I smiled with tears falling from my eyes. I did it. I gave birth to two babies. I was officially a mother. Congratulations, Annabelle. You have a boy and a girl. The doctor said to me. Jessica ran over to me and wrapped me up in her arms, giving me a big hug. You did awesome. I'm going to be an auntie. She squealed. I laughed. A grunt was heard from beside the bed and Nicolie's head popped up from the floor. He was finally awake. What happened? He asked. You passed out. I said to him, shaking my head. He got up from the floor as the doctor cleaned the babies from the blood they had on them. You did great, kitty cat. He said, kissing my forehead. You were out cold for most of it. I said, pointing it out. He laughed. Well, I am here now. He said. The doctor handed me the babies and I held them on each side of me. I looked down at them adoringly. They were so so beautiful and innocent. I could call them mine. I had twins. I can't believe we are officially parents now. Nicoly said in disbelief while looking at the babies. He kissed me on the lips lovingly. Neither could I. Mr. and Mrs. O'Connell came into the room after a few minutes to see their grandkids. They were the only people allowed to come in after all the excitement died down. Jessica left, so Nicoly and I could have a moment to ourselves with the babies. How does it feel to be a mother? Nicoly asked me with a smile on his face. It feels wonderful. At least none of their heads got stuck. I said, referring to the scary story Nicoly told me about his mother giving birth to him. He laughed. You were very fortunate. I don't think you would have wanted to stay an extra hour without giving birth, would you? He asked. No, thank you. I said giggling. How are my two favorite people in the whole wide world doing? Mrs. O'Connell said as she came into the room with Mr. O'Connell right behind her. I smiled at her. She got close to the bed and looked down at the twins. She smiled and a happy tear fell from her eyes. I am a grandmother. She whispered. She rested her hands on my cheek and looked at me. Your parents would have been so proud of you, Annabelle. She said to me. I bit my bottom lip to stop myself from crying. I knew that if my parents were here, they would have been wonderful grandparents to my children. My parents would spoil them just like how any other grandparents would. I could see my mother making cookies every time I would bring the children to her home. I just wish that they were here. I wish they could see me and the new life that I was slowly slipping into, but I knew that they were here. They were in my heart, watching over me and silently giving me their support. I could almost see the smile on my parents' faces as they watched me now with the babies. I could hear the words that they would say. We will always be with you. Those were the last words my mother wrote in the letter before she killed herself. My parents were everything to me. We did everything together and it was hard not seeing them here right now. They were like my best friends. I would tell them everything and they wouldn't mind listening to me. So much had happened in the time that I moved here in London, but something good came out of it. I found out that I was half witch and werewolf. My parents were king and queen in Italy of the kingdom of werewolves. I was a hybrid princess. Most of all, I found my mate. The one that was destined for me. The only one that could make everything feel better even when it was not. The only person that could make me feel special and wanted. If my parents dying was a way to tell me that I could live my life with grief and sorrow, then so be it. I had amazing people that were willing to help me and I would welcome it with open arms. Don't take them for granted. I could almost hear my mother whispering to me. Tears fell from my eyes. I would do as my mother says, but I knew I could never take Nicoly and his family for granted. It was just not possible. They took me in and loved me unconditionally without me having to ask for it. They were like another family to me and I couldn't have been happier. Everything was coming into place and it felt right. Annabelle, 
everything seems fine with the test we ran on your children as we took their blood before. I heard the doctor say, pulling me out of my thoughts. You are free to leave and take them home. The doctor told me. I could feel Nikoli rubbing his hand over my head in a slow motion. I was thankful for it as I felt stressed at the moment. I nodded at the doctor. What would you be naming your children? The doctor asked me. I smiled. Ever since I found out I was having twins, I have already been coming up with names. I looked over at Nikoli, and he smiled. For a girl I was thinking Anna Marie Arabelle O'Connell, and for a boy I was thinking Nicholas Isaac O'Connell. I said smiling. I love it. Nikoli said to me and kissed the twins on their tiny foreheads. The doctor nodded and wrote it down. I will see to it that you get your birth certificates for your children. The doctor said and left to give us a little more privacy. I will tell Jessica to get you some clothes to change into and then we can leave. Nikoli said, kissing my forehead. I nodded. Can I hold one of them? Mrs. O'Connell asked hopefully, referring to the babies. I smiled and gave her Nicholas. She beamed and carefully took him in her arms. She would be a wonderful grandmother to them. In no time, Jessica came into the room with the clothes. She handed me a pair of sweatpants and a sweatshirt. I smiled gratefully at her. Do you want to hold her? I asked Nicoli. He looked hesitant for a moment and nodded his head. I watched as he took her from me. He looked scared, as if she was made of glass and he would do something to hurt her. I smiled as he smiled down at Anna Marie. I got up slowly and made my way to the bathroom and put on the clothes that Jessica gave me. I sighed happily. My life was turning into something I could genuinely be happy about. After fixing up my appearance, I walked out of the bathroom. Ready? Nikoli asked as he walked up to me. He was still holding Anne Marie and I giggled. He looked so precious, holding her so carefully. What? He asked, confused. I shook my head. Mrs. O'Connell handed Nicholas back to me with a smile on her face. We all walked out of the hospital and started to walk up the stairs. As soon as we reached the top, cheering started to erupt. I looked around surprised to see the pack members standing there with smiles on their faces. Nicoli kissed the side of my cheek. We smiled at the pack as we continued to walk to the rooms that we made for the twins. We walked into the room and placed them in their cribs. Nicoli walked behind me and wrapped his arms around my waist, pulling me against him. Tired? He asked. I rested my head on his chest and nodded. Very. I sighed. Come on. With one last look at our children, we walked out of the room, turning off the light and walking to our room, which was next door. As soon as we walked into the room, I planted myself on the bed. Who knew giving birth would take such a toll on you? Nikoli took his shirt and pants off. It was hard not to stare at him. He wiggled his eyebrows and I rolled my eyes. No. I told him flatly. He chuckled. He got in the bed and he wrapped his arms around me. Get some rest, kitty cat. He didn't have to tell me twice. As soon as my head hit the pillow, I was gone. An hour hadn't passed and a cry was heard from the room next to us. I groaned and got up from the bed. I didn't even get an hour's worth of sleep. I got up, got off of the bed slowly without waking Nicoli up and walked to the twins' room. Nicholas was crying and I picked him up, cradling him in my arms. I walked around the room for a few minutes, trying to calm him down. He wouldn't stop and I thought he was hungry. I sat down on the chair and lifted my shirt. The doctor said the best way to feed your newborn children was by breastfeeding and I would do anything to give them what was best for them. As I started to feed him, Nicoli came into the room. He smiled at me. He came behind my chair and rested his hands on my shoulder. Nothing was said for a moment. Now I have two more people to protect. Nicoli said, breaking the silence between us. I looked up at him. I am a mate to a beautiful woman and a father to two very beautiful children. I would do anything to protect you and our babies from harm. You and my children will be two of my top priorities and I'll be damned if anything happens to one of you. I love you, Annabelle and my precious kids. I was left speechless because of what Nicoli had said. 
The only thing I could do that showed him how much I loved him was to kiss him with all the love and passion I had for him. And that was exactly what I did. This was the start of a new life for me, my mate and our children, and we were ready to welcome it with open arms. Five years later. M not. R2. M not. R2. Annabelle chuckled at the two siblings incessantly arguing with each other. They were bickering back and forth like the children that they were. This had been going on for the past 30 minutes and nothing could get the two of them to be quiet. They were arguing about who was older, even though everyone knew that Anna Marie was the older sibling. Annabelle tried to stop their arguing at first, but now it was just too funny. She watched the twins with amusement on her face. Mommy, please tell Nikki that I am older than him. Anna Marie whined to Annabelle. No, she is not. I am a boy, so I should be older. Nicholas retorted back. The only thing that Annabelle could have done was laugh. Her answer didn't even matter to them because no matter how many times she answered these questions, their arguing started right from the beginning. They only stopped fighting if they were too tired to argue or someone mentioned ice cream to them. Why don't you guys stop arguing and we can go visit Grandma and Grandpa's house today? Annabelle asked the twins with a smile on her face. She knew that they would agree. The twins loved their grandma and grandpa, and they loved the twins just as much. They spoiled the twins rotten every time they visited their house, which is why they liked visiting so much. Can we go get ice cream after? Anna Marie asked with hope in her voice. She looked like a little puppy asking for treats. She looked so cute that Annabelle couldn't possibly resist her and say no, and so she nodded her head. As long as this would get the two of them to stop arguing then she was fine with doing anything. Only if you two stop arguing and be nice to each other, okay? Annabelle said to them. The twins smiled happily and nodded when Annabelle agreed and high-fived each other. As soon as they heard about getting ice cream, they were getting along just fine. Where is Daddy? Nicholas asked Annabelle. Nicholas wasn't home because he had to deal with some pack business. He was an alpha now so he was getting busier every day. Annabelle also had to work because she was the Luna but she decided to stay with the kids today and spend some time with them. He went to work. He will be back before you know it. She explained to him. What does Daddy do? Anna Marie asked curiously. Annabelle tried to come up with a reasonable answer this time. They didn't know that their father was an alpha and we were werewolves. She hated lying to her own children and knowing how it felt to be lied to by your own parents didn't make it any better. Nicolay thought it would be better to not tell the kids about who they truly were until they were at an age to understand. It would be safer for them to not know until they were mature enough to handle it. She didn't agree but knew not to argue with Nicolay. Arguing with him was like talking to a brick wall and it wouldn't solve anything. She had to admit that the kids were safer because they weren't involved with any pack business but still she didn't like lying to the kids. Daddy is the chief of a business. Annabelle said after a moment of silence. The kids nodded their heads as if knowing what their mother was talking about. Annabelle sighed with relief because they believed the lie. The door to the house opened and footsteps were heard coming inside the house and slowly coming towards where Annabelle and the kids were. Hey, kiddos. A deep voice said. Nicolay. He was finally home. Annabelle wanted to run into his arms because she missed him a lot but it seemed like her kids missed their father just as much. The kids snapped their heads at their father's direction and smiled brightly when they saw him. Daddy. Anna Marie and Nicholas exclaimed together with pure joy in their voices. They ran towards Nicolay and they jumped on him, tackling him to the floor. Nicolay laughed and held his kid tightly in his arms. Annabelle watched their interaction with adoration in her eyes. She loved the bond that the twins had with their father. Did you guys miss me? Nicolay asked with love in his voice. Yeah. The twins answered at the same time. He got up with Nicholas on his back and holding Anna Marie on his hip. He walked over to Annabelle and kissed her on the cheek. Did you miss me? 
Nicolay asked with a cheeky smile and a raised eyebrow. Annabelle chuckled and nodded her head. How could I not? She said and embraced him in a hug the best way she could with him holding the kids. How was work? She asked him. She was worried about him. He had been looking tired for the past couple of days every time he came back home. Tiring. Rogues were sighted on our territory, but there is nothing to worry about. He said. She glanced at the kids who were playing quietly with each other. Will this affect the pack in any way? She asked with concern. Nicoly shook his head. Don't worry your pretty little head about it. He said, patting her on the head. She chuckled. Annabelle and Nicoly took the titles of Alpha and Luna last year after they finished college. Annabelle got a degree in the medical field while Nicoly got a degree in business. They led their pack bravely and became one of the strongest packs in the world. Many had tried to attack their pack but no one could defeat Alpha Nicoly and Luna Annabelle. Nicoly's parents took care of the kids when they were busy with the pack, but they still found time to spend with their children. Nicoly as an Alpha was cold, strong and powerful but he becomes soft and kind whenever he is next to his Luna. No one knew that he was the most loving and protective man when it came to his family. He would do anything to protect them. Annabelle was protective over the kids too. One time, when the kids were only two years old, a very powerful witch attacked their pack and tried to kidnap Annabelle's children. She wanted their powers for herself because she knew they would one day grow up to be very powerful hybrids. They were both half witch and half werewolf and they would have access to their powers when they were older. Annabelle stopped the witch before she could kidnap them and defeated her alone without anyone's help. Annabelle's power only grew with time and she was known as the most powerful hybrid of all time. She didn't want her kids to go through what she did and so they didn't involve them with the supernatural world. They grew up with a normal life and a normal loving family. Anna Marie and Nicholas had similar features in their appearances. After all, they were twins. The only difference between them was their hair color. Nicholas had dark brown, almost black hair like Nicoly and Anna Marie had dark brown hair like Annabelle. They were the little troublemakers in their family. They loved to play small pranks on each other and going to Annabelle or Nicoly to complain. Even though the twins had fights all the time, they knew they loved each other and would always be there for one another. If Anna Marie fell and hurt herself, Nicholas would be the first one to comfort her. He even offered to share his ice cream with Anna Marie because she was crying. Annabelle and Nicoly were proud of how kind and compassionate the kids were growing up to be. Can we go to Grandma and Grandpa's house now? Nicholas asked Annabelle. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. I promised them a trip to your parents' house and then they could go get ice cream before you came. Annabelle told Nicoly. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Nicoly yelled playfully and ran outside with the kids laughing behind him. Annabelle laughed, shaking her head and walked out of the house. Sometimes Nicoly could act like a kid with the twins. Where do you kids want to go first? Annabelle asked them. Ice cream! Anna Marie and Nicholas said together. Nicoly chuckled. We can get ice cream at Grandma and Grandpa's house. Nicoly suggested and the kids nodded their heads. Last one to the car is a rotten egg. Nicholas challenged Anna Marie. Ready, set? Before Anna Marie could finish Nicholas started to run to the car, leaving her behind. You cheater, Daddy, Nicholas ran to the car without me. Anna Marie whined. Then you better hurry, Nicoly said, chuckling. Were they like this all day? Nicoly asked Annabelle as he wrapped his arms around her waist and gave her a kiss on the top of her head. You have no idea, she said as they walked to the car. When can we tell the kids about who they really are? Annabelle asked Nicoly. When the time is right, Nicoly said. You say that every time. Do you know how hard it is to lie to them about what you do? I had to tell them you were some kind of chief in a business. Annabelle said. You weren't technically lying. I am a leader of something. 
Nicole said to her jokingly. Annabelle sighed. This isn't funny. I won't have my children grow up like how I did. She said. Mommy. I want ice cream. Nicholas yelled. She smiled at her son and nodded. Come on before they get restless. Annabelle said to Nicole. We'll tell them soon. Nicole said. He kissed the side of Annabelle's neck and she giggled. You know, not every time I'm angry with you will I forgive you with just a simple kiss. Annabelle said with a playfulness in her voice. Oh really now? Nicole teased. He opened the door for the kids and strapped them into their car seats. Annabelle got into the car. As soon as she was going to close the door, Nicole stopped it with his hand. Do you need me to buckle your seat belt for you too? He asked, smiling playfully. Annabelle rolled her eyes. No, I don't think so. She said and laughed. Nicole got into the car and started the ignition. Are you kids ready? He asked looking into the rearview mirror at the kids. Yes. He took Annabelle's hand and intertwined their hands together. He kissed the top of her hand and smiled. I love you. He said. I love you too. She said. They say that love was the answer to all the things in the universe. That it would open many doors for you. That it would make you a better person. At this moment and the years that would come Annabelle knew that if she never had met Nicole her life would have been incomplete. She would have never felt the way she felt now if she hadn't met him. She would have never found her true self and be the strong woman that she was now without him. No one could have been there for her when she lost her parents like him. He literally saved her life and she saved his. Nicole made her see a different world, made her experience different things and most importantly loved her. She found a best friend in him, someone she could confide in when times were tough. She saw a man that she would live the rest of her life with and she couldn't ask for anything more. She had a family of two children that meant the world to her and that alone was enough.